watching Rogers TV St. John's. If you have a comment about this program, we'd love to hear it. Email or call us or send us your feedback through social media. Hey everybody, how are you doing? It's your boy DC, Thursday night host of Rogers Out of the Fog. Right, you kind of got to make your own fun. Yeah. Which was a transition for me right. going into the morning show There's here. Crowd, keep doing the amazing work, will you? Um, they're learning about how to hire people. 20 years of local matter, so join me every Thursday night and see what's going on in the fog. You're watching Rogers TV St. John's. Going to be 21 degrees <laughs> and low winds. <laughs> you low say wind. low wind as I hold down my paper, but this is low wind for a rowing, so this is good weather optimally. I think so. It's a mix of sun and showers. I know the committee when they made the uh, the call at six o'clock this morning to go ahead with the rowing that um, they were hoping that the showers would just be brief and hopefully during the afternoon break. Okay. But um, it seems favorable for rowing conditions. Okay, so this is my first time hosting a regatta and getting to see the whole thing happen. So I'm so excited to be here with you, who I'm rowing as the queen of the regatta for today's <laughs> ceremonies. Oh, thank I'm you. here as your lovely comic relief and keeping everyone <laughs> entertained. So thank you to everyone who's tuning in. We can't wait to bring you all the racers, all our guests. It's going to be a great time, so stay tuned with us for the whole thing. We have the ode that's going to be coming up, as well as the anthem. And because you can't have an event without doing a land acknowledgement, that's going to be coming up too. So I'm so excited that we get to bring all of that to you here on Rogers TV. And we'll get a chance to introduce you to some of our sponsors throughout the show. So this is going to be so wicked. Sit back, relax, and you will have us keeping you entertained for the majority of the day. Yeah, I was looking back, actually, and this is my first broadcast with Rogers was 2012. So this is actually the 11th year. Oh I've been coming down to help out my friends at Rogers, and it's a really nice way for me in the years that I'm not rowing, because I do, I'm normally a participant, okay. um, but in the years when I'm not rowing, it's a really nice way to stay engaged with the community in touch with the sport that I love so much and uh, has been such a big part of my life as I'm sure it is for many of the rowers coaches coxswains down here today uh, just such a, a great event to take part in a goal to train for uh, physical fitness everything else and so it just it really makes me happy to remain part of the community in a capacity that doesn't require getting up at 5 a.m. okay <laughs> so I still got up at 5 well, that's true. <laughs> So in getting ready for a regatta, when would one start or when would a team start prepping for this? Yeah, that's a great question. It's, it really depends on the uh, level of competitiveness and commitment, I guess, and dedication that your team wants to uh, put into the regatta. So the serious teams who are hoping to crack those top five um, top five fastest times of the day, which of course they get an opportunity to row again in the evening okay. in the championship races. So they will look at start training, uh, you know, no later than January. Oh, goodness. So a full eight, nine months. Okay. Um, so in the winter months, they're uh, not on the water here because kitty bitty, we can't row all year round because yes. it's frozen. So they do training on the ergometers or the rowing machines, oh, uh, nice. cardiovascular, cross training, weight training. So that starts first thing in January and it takes you up until August. Some crews don't stop, they train year round. Okay. Yeah, and there's a lot of multi-sport athletes, especially we see in the younger crews coming up. Um, you know, some of the juvenile and intermediate teams, I see that they're participating in sports like cheer and also uh, volleyball, basketball, some hockey players, you know, okay. they do their hockey in the off season or in the winter and are rowing in the summer. So. Uh, yeah, and then, you know, we have more competitive crews. I was reading in the program last night that their crew has only been together since June 22nd. So we have okay. all, all, right. of, all, all the ranges. different ends of the spectrum and all ranges for, you know, the people who st train year round to the people who just started a, a few weeks ago. Okay, so let's say 
I'm listening for the first time and I was like, I, this is, this is the time. I'm going to decide I'm going to row in a regatta. Oh, nice. What do I do? Oh, that is also a great question. Um, so in the past number of years, the uh, Royal St. John's Regatta Committee, who's responsible for this amazing event that's being put off here today, they have an event called, or a program called the Chevron Learn to Row program, okay. where people can come down because to enter a crew, you need six dedicated athletes who are gonna be the rowers. You need someone to steer the boat called the coxswain. Um, and you need a sponsor. And so that's a lot to kind of put together yeah. uh, for someone who's just wants to learn, learn to worry about learning how to row. Um, so if you have some of those barriers, you can just come down here and say, I want to learn how to row and the Chevron Learn to Row program will help you out with that, even if you don't have the team and uh, the coxswain. Okay, yep. so you said the word sponsor and I think this is a <laughs> perfect opportunity to plug one of our sponsors today. So. Home Depot has a barbecue that they're going to be giving away. Now you might be thinking, hey, it's August, summer's over. Not a chance. We know our summers sometimes take us into September. So this is the perfect time to log on, check out Rogers TV on Facebook and enter or call in because you might not see the sun right now, but I would like a barbecue. <laughs> so if you would like a barbecue, definitely enter. You can call in, go on Facebook or our website and drop your name on a little ballot box and hopefully you will invite both of us to join you on your barbecue adventure. It's not just any barbecue, it's this beautiful Home Depot, it's like stainless steel looking barbecue, and it's always a big thing, a lot of excitement on Regatta Day for Rogers viewers to put their ballot in for the barbecue, so this is awesome. And like, I'm so, now I'm thinking food, I'm thinking excitement, so make sure you enter. Thanks again to Home Depot for sending that well, not our way, but your way at the end of the game. So. And speaking of food, okay. you can come to the regatta. You should come hungry because when things get in full swing and operation around here, there are tons of vendors and concessions where you can get a lot of people come to the regatta just for the Indian food. Oh. So the Indian food is up the top of the lake there. Okay. That's what they usually set up. There's also cotton candy, popcorn, uh, Ziggy's, the French fries. So all those smells are like wafting <laughs> down. So at any point, if you hear a growl, know that it's not the races. It's probably just my stomach. So yeah. we'll keep that in mind. You know, I think a lot of people who live in St. John's in Newfoundland, they don't even know at first that the regatta is about boat races because this is just a big garden party it's called exactly. uh, not only is it the longest it claims to be the longest running sporting event in north america it's i think must be the world's or at least newfoundland's biggest uh garden party okay so we have all sorts of games of chance and activities um happening around the lake today which is made possible by the royal st john's regatta committee Rogers and TV is set up over there and we have plenty of sponsors we I believe do. that we would like to thank. We have a ton of sponsors who help bring this all together. We want to give a shout out to Spirit of Newfoundland and Steel Hotels who I know some of the rowers might be coming down from not just around St. John's so perfect time to have a night at the Steel Hotels and Spirit of Newfoundland which brings us so many shows and great things throughout the year. So thank you so much for supporting the regatta and Rogers. Yeah and it's not like you know you can tack this regatta day attendance onto a weekend because this is a midweek weather dependent holiday. <laughs> so there are lots of reasons why the regatta is special, but that's got to be up there in the top few is that um, the regatta has always been in the middle of the week. So we get up at five or six in the morning and the regatta as committee assesses the weather and they make the decision whether go or no go. So uh, yeah, it's a midweek weather dependent holiday. So as someone who isn't from Newfoundland originally and came here for university, when I found out about Regatta Day, I was shocked <laughs> that there was one holiday that could exist that was weather dependent. And I was like, how do you decide whether or not I get a day off my life <laughs> based on weather? But as now a resident Newfoundlander, Ooh! Congratulations! I am saying I, I'm down for it. I will regat a roulette on every opportunity <laughs> to be down here. So I missed it last year because I did not win the roulette. <laughs> but I'm super excited to be down here this year. That's right. So that's an example for some of the viewers about how chaotic it can be is last year because it, the weather was not favorable when we woke up on Wednesday morning. The regatta was delayed and you and I were supposed to be down here doing this exact same thing exactly. last year, but we both had planes to catch. <laughs> <laughs> so we missed it. We missed it. But luckily here we are on the proper Wednesday, middle of the week, uh, going ahead as scheduled, as planned. So uh, all the vendors, all the people who were hoping for a holiday, whether they were on George Street last night or just wanted that day off, 
Um, we've got it. So it's going to be a great day for the 205th St. John's Regatta. So 205 years <laughs> is a long time for an event to have been hosting. And I'm excited to see how things have changed and progressed. I know some of the guests we'll have with us today will give us a chance to talk about how things have changed over the last 205 years, what they're excited to see, because 205 years, in my view, is just the beginning of a lifetime of regattas. Oh, that is hope. a blip. I hope so. <laughs> so, so the 205, the, the 205th anniversary of the regatta, there's a lot of things that have changed even in the last um, 10 years or so, like the online bookings. Um, there's some changes to the distances that the we have some male crews today participating in the short crew short course around 11 o'clock and we have some women's crews participating in the long course so it's an event steeped in tradition but it's definitely um changing with the times let's say so here to bring us some information of all that change we have the president of the regatta ashley who will be joining us I think she's the vice president. Oh, she is the vice president. Okay. And, and, and the captain of the course. Okay, so Ashley is, I'm, I'm taking away your title for a minute. You are no longer queen. You are deputy queen I'm of Regatta. Deputy queen. We will hand queen title over to Ashley, who will bring us lots of greetings, some information, and hopefully share with me some of the secrets into deciding a go or no go for a regatta. Because she was the voice who made the call this morning, and she's also uh, my former crewmate, okay. my pal. And here we have the NTV men on the screen who are warming up for the first men's race, which is scheduled to get underway at 8 a.m., race number one. Uh, the Satellite Network Amateur Senior Men slash Under 21 races. And so Ashley is going to join us and tell us what we can expect for today and a little bit about what went into the preparations and the decision to m call the go uh, decision this morning in the early hours of the morning. Good morning. Good morning, uh, Ashley. Thank you so much for welcome, well, joining us here and deciding it is a go because I was up at 5 a.m. looking at Twitter waiting for your decision. So first, let's introduce you and get our audience to know who you are if they don't already. So your name is Ashley, but what is your role with the Royal St. John's Regatta? This year, I am Vice President and Captain of the Course. Okay. So a part of my role really is um, a lot of the operations throughout the day, as well as with each of the races, organizing the schedule, the committee roster. So really getting everything organized for the crews to be able to put off an awesome day of racing. Okay, so how long have you been involved? I know the regatta is 205, but unless you're ageless, what's your secret? <laughs> she is, can you tell? Can you tell? <laughs> well, I think I started rolling back in probably Oh my gosh, it must have been around 2002. Okay. And then I joined the committee, I think around 2015. Okay. I am not one of those uh, former rowers that can remember years you won, times you raced on a team. So all the years just blend together. I can me. tell you when you won. <laughs> <laughs> that is not my skill set. <laughs> See, that's fantastic. So in making a call for whether the races will go ahead, what was your decision like? This morning, so, um, well, I was up about quarter to four. Okay. So <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Starting to look at the weather, and I went to bed at midnight checking the weather. Oh, okay. So four hours of sleep is what we're running yes, on today. That's okay. All we get. It's like Christmas. It is. <laughs> <laughs> so um, really looking, checking all the different um, weather um, readings that we could get, whether it was Environment Canada, the Weather Network, from Windy, listening last night um, to, within the news hours. Um, so lots of, I guess, ideas go into what we need for a regatta day. So really looking at the winds, Kitty Vitty is a, is a niche little spot because it can be so windy somewhere and it'll be a nice calm rowing day. Um, or it can be so windy down here and you leave home and you're like, it's a beautiful day. I thought it was going to be a green or a yellow flag. So really looking um, today, we are calling for uh, southwest winds. Okay. So down over the hill here on Kitty Vitty Lake, we do like that southwest winds. It gives us a little bit of a buffer on the winds. So hopefully today uh, the winds will prevail throughout the day and not be too gusty throughout the afternoon. We won't see too much precipitation for all the vendors and participants on the lakeside taking in the Regatta Day festivities. So what is your hope as Vice President 
tapped into the course. If someone said, Ashley, if you would picture an imperfect regatta day, would it be today? You can say yes. <laughs> right now, yes, this is an ideal uh, regatta day. It's overcast, it's not too hot, it's not too windy, there's no precipitation. So if this continued on for the rest of the day, we would be like all happy rowers, all happy um, vendors and committee committee members as well and as well anyone coming down lakeside to take in a game of chance and some food perfect now do you ever see yourself taking a seat back on the boats rowing in a regatta oh hmm. 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 inquiring minds need to know <laughs> Um, if I'm, um, I guess, re-elected on the committee, on the executive, I would have about four more years on the executive okay. here. So um, I'll, I'll be a while ways out, yes. Okay, so four years we can expect to see you back on the boats is what you're telling us. No, maybe I might be out on like one of the judges or punches. <laughs> <laughs> so, so your time as a rower is done, but you're excited to still be part of the committee and bring us more regattas? Yes, for 100%. Ashley, thank you so much for chatting with us. We will lovely check back in with you later and you can hopefully have answers for us on the winner's circle. Awesome. But it's been a pleasure chatting. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. <laughs> and we will be right back with some more guests, but we are going to throw you back to the winner's circle area where we're be joined by our wonderful colleagues Mitchell and Lori who will be interviewing winners throughout the day. So Mitchell, Lori, what's going on down in the winner's circle? And we are, we are back and we have the wonderful, as I misintroduced the first time, we have Noelle joining us who will be giving us her lowdown on what she's hoping for this regatta. Noelle, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. So I'm so excited to introduce you to all our viewers who may or may not know who you are. So let's start with that. Sure. Who is Noelle? Who is Noelle? <laughs> well, I like long walks on the beach. <laughs> so not the beach, but the regatta. Not the beach. Um, I like long walks on the dock. So. I'm Noelle Thomas-Kennell. I'm the current president of the Royal St. John's Regatta Committee. And so glad to have you. So what, as president, who is ruling the regatta, not the <laughs> countries, what would we love to know about your role and what it comes to bringing us a Royal St. John's Regatta? Well, it certainly is a lot of work. Um, this is something that cannot happen without our wonderful volunteers. We have a, a complement of about 50-ish. Normally, it's a, we top out at 50 volunteers, plus some honorary life members that come help us out for the day. So. Um, it's an all year round planning. We'll take about a week off and start again okay. <laughs> for next year. Wow. So 205 years is how long this regatta has been going on. That's As right. current president, what are some changes you've seen in your tenure? Well, of course, um, I guess Ashley probably also spoke about it, but our, our favorite is the change that we've made with the options for the long course for women and the short course for men. So we have our very first short course uh, men's race you'll see today. Today at 11. I'm really Whoa. excited. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Regatta Day. So uh, we Manelli can hear in the background <laughs> things are getting started. <laughs> so. Paul will read the land acknowledgement. Yeah, they're reading the land acknowledgement and the Ode to Newfoundland, correct? The O Canada and the Ode. Yeah. So we will take a pause and let them do Good morning. We respectfully acknowledge the province of Newfoundland and Labrador as the ancestral homelands of many diverse populations of indigenous people who have contributed to 9,000 years of history, including the Beothic on the island of Newfoundland. Today, this province is home to diverse populations of indigenous and other people. We also acknowledge with respect the diverse histories and cultures of the Mi'kmaq, Innu, and Inuit.
Thank you, Paul. I'd now like to introduce close quarters, Pam Penny Thomas, Michelle Carew, Mary Jane Maloney, and Carolyn Best. They are going to uh, bring us the O Canada and the O to Newfoundland. having the close quarters and we're going to throw it down to Mitchell and Lori down in the winner circle. They're not ready yet. Okay. So we got a little bit of a hold up as we do that and we still have our wonderful president sitting here with us. So as we look at the plan for the day, how did you guys put together your committee because that's a very important part in getting things ready to go. Absolutely, and uh, the committee is, is actually a long-standing committee. There's uh, an awful lot of people who have been involved for an awful lot of years. Um, we have five new members this year, so we've got some worker bees. And, okay. Um, essentially, Ashley, take our captain of the course and vice president, she takes the uh, the complement of our our volunteers and she creates what we call the roster for the day. So we're all, everybody is placed um, what job they'll be doing, what uh, heavy lifting they'll be doing. So it's it's really all up to Ashley to tell us where to go. Because it's a day. long day, right? That's this a is a long day. day, yeah. No shifts. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> See, we get shifts. So, yeah. we get to, okay. there's, so there's a break, there's a lunch break and a supper break. Okay. That's what we get. So <laughs> when someone, when you guys got together to decide that the regatta was going to go ahead this year. Yes. 
were there any like secrets that us watching and viewing would not know that you now want <laughs> to share with to us? Share? Yes, <laughs> trade secrets openly shared right well, now. I mean, luckily the, the weather wasn't too bad. That's essentially the entire meeting is okay. we arrive at, uh, the doors are locked at 5.30. Okay. It's like a secret conclave. Okay. Um, we You're right here at the boathouse? We're at the boathouse, yeah. oh. yep. So we're all here by 5, 5.15. Okay, doors so. are locked and uh, Ashley will give her so there's update. no way for us to like hint <laughs> to you in. that we want to forget the day or no. Oh, listen, there's a lot of people who hint. Okay. <laughs> not so subtle. Not either. subtle. I'm getting messages all yesterday. <laughs> Every regatta eve, we get messages. Think it'll go? Do you think it'll go? Okay. Um, so we're we're pretty good at uh, keeping it as vague as possible. Okay. <laughs> With no promises. There are no promises. There's no ever. fun for roulette if they uh, know exactly. I see. I'm so as I was telling my lovely co-host earlier, so when I first moved here, finding out there was an entire holiday decided <laughs> on weather was the most absurd thing to me. But as a Newfoundlander, true and true now, I am, I roulette very... <laughs> do you, do I, you roulette? I roulette. My, this year's roulette yep. was done with a Burger King ice cream because I was not risking <laughs> no. a 5 a.m. call. So it was a strawberry sundae. That, that is was a, today's an awesome roulette. That sounds exactly like what <laughs> I would do. Yeah, And also a holiday voted on by volunteers. Yeah. <laughs> so and then I'm everyone goes very, along with it. Everybody <laughs> just goes along with it. I don't know how we get away with it, really. So <laughs> you're saying that next year, even though I will be part of the Rogers crew, if I want to helpfully be part of strawberry this sunday strawberry sunday <laughs> start <laughs> showing up at your house like for a year a consecutive strawberry well, sunday thing unfortunately i'll still take the strawberry sundays but unfortunately i won't be president so i oh. i'll have no say so what happens <laughs> i'll have that? a vote uh, i'll be the immediate past president for okay. two more years okay. so i do stay as sort of an advisory role to the next president. So does Ashley become the president now? Uh, she'll have to be voted in. Okay. But um, barring anything unforeseen, I think she's done a really great job uh, for, for her sure. two years. So is your four-year term up already? It is. Has it, has it gone quickly? <laughs> it has gone, well, I mean, if I look back on it, COVID was in there. Oh, I, wow. I canceled a regatta as Last the- Last year? The 2020. Oh, yeah. No, canceled 2020. Oh. All together. I'm in the history books. pandemic. Oh. Yes. Wow. So that was, cap my, that was my first year as captain of the course. And oh, then, a very uh, challenging term. So challenging. Yeah. We understand and forgive you. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I know there and wasn't a whole you, lot of actually. time. <laughs> I would. I don't. I think it was the right call to make at that time. Definitely. I'm. I'm not sure we had much choice. No. Exactly. <laughs> yes. But speaking of fun things that you get to do, we're going to throw it down to the winner's circle, which you obviously helped pick where it would be this year with the committee as well. So we're yep. going to throw it down to Mitchell and Lori, who are going to be down in the winner's circle talking to some guests. Thanks for everything. No problem. Am I done? Hi, That's and awesome. welcome to. <laughs> That's great. Great. Easy peasy. St. John's Regatta. My name is Lori Lydia Loveless, and this is my co host, Mitchell Drydak. How's it going today, Lori? It's going really great. We're so excited to be here, and we're going to be here all day at the Winner's Circle interviewing the winners and their families. Yes, and uh, I'll be honest, Lori, I'm a little bit surprised that the regatta went ahead today. Um, we all saw the forecast. I think we were all thinking it. Tomorrow looks beautiful. Today looked a little bit foggy, a little bit rainy, but here we are persevering. It is absolutely beautiful. Yeah, there's some showers in the forecast today, but you know, it's going to be a great day. Lots of fun things to do. Lots of fun things to do. And so I normally come to the regatta. I love coming to regatta every year. So have it yourself. Uh oh. So I'm actually from Ontario. I came to Newfoundland in 2018 and I helped Rogers TV with the regatta back in 2019. I did social media and I'll be completely honest. That was the last time I was here. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. So I'm still a little bit of a newbie. You're going to have to show me around. Love it. There's lots of vendors here that we're going to be going to and lots of great food, lots of great things to do today. So lots of good things that you can see and you know we can definitely um get some you know keith and uh, some other vendors that's here but uh, yeah so with today we're going to be talking to all the family members and the winners and i love the races so it's really fun oh gosh yes i was actually doing a little bit of research last night about the history of the regatta kind of what the races look like like i said it's been a little bit since i've been here so uh you know i've got some learning to do myself and uh, i'll have my eyes peeled um so we can you know ask the athletes really what you guys want to hear um and and their families kind of like what all went down so 
Yeah, absolutely. So here's the thing too, you know, while we're at the regatta, there's lots of things that we're going to be talking about and, you know, we have lots of energy. So the two of us are going to be <laughs> having lots of fun. You know, it could be the caffeine or <laughs> it could be lots of things, but we're definitely going to have lots of fun today and we're so excited to be here. All right. Now, um, you'll uh we'll be done here and uh you can meet our hosts uh thanks everyone and we'll talk to you soon okay and we are now back with shannon who is the director of sponsorship for the royal st john's regatta shannon thanks for joining us no problem thanks for having me so before we got you here my lovely co-host amanda was saying that you were oars woman of the year now i have no <laughs> idea what that means and i guess some of our viewers might not either so let's start with what is an oars woman and how did you win that award so there's an award every year and a oars woman and oarsman of the year um it's basically a vote of okay. all the rowers get the chance to nominate who they think should be the winner this year and i won it for, in 2018 for the 200th year oh so it's okay. a big year so i have that little piece okay. that is quite exciting for me <laughs> so as your role as director of sponsorship yeah. what does that entail and how do people get involved with you <sighs> okay so we have some sponsors that we have for many years like rogers is one of our bigger sponsors so each year um, we start out in the fall we reach out to our previous sponsors, then we reach out to other people who have expressed interest and we see who wants to join us. Um, it's a great thing to do. As you can see on the screens and everywhere, there's so much advertisement. You're supporting the community, you're supporting our heritage. So a lot of people come back year after year and each year we usually have a couple new ones. So okay. yeah, so we work hard to get everything that we can and make this event happen. So how long have you been director of sponsorships? With this the is only my second year. Okay, so, so I'm new. We're yeah. still new into this. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's so been lots new. of fun. Um, so I'm, we're a minute into the first men's race okay, here. Okay, I want to do a pause. Let's go <laughs> it's hard to know. it. it. <laughs> uh, so on the screen we have the first race of the day, the NTV Satellite uh, Network Amateur Senior Men's Race. And the uh, in lane one or stake one, we have the Capital Home Hardware crew, Cox and Kevin Greeley, rowers Jason Wade, Brad White, Doug Jackman, Ian Power, Morgan White, Jonathan Houlihan, uh, manager Dana Reed and coach Ray Cadigan. On stake number two in the Iceberg Gold, we have NTV, coxed by my good friend and former coxswain, Dean Hammond, stroked by Paul Hussey, Dexter Decker, Mike Burns, Frank Norris, Mark Duff, Blaine Edwards, spare Chris Roach, coaches Tyler Young, Alyssa Devereaux, and manager Donnie Decker, former rower. And in stake number three in the Pomerloo, we have the crew Fine Strokes Plaster and Painting Limited, Coxon, and also a sponsor, Craig Whittle, uh, rowers James Cadigan, Dan Cadigan, brothers, household names here, Eric King, Brent Payne, Adam Cavanaugh, Matthew Manning, spares Jamie Travers, and Craig Whittle. And on stake number four in the Jerry Angel, we have Andrew McDonald, General Contractors Limited, Cox and Jimmy Carroll, Stroke Perry Duran, Brian Healy, Joe McGraw, Steve Ring, Gary Squires, and Dale Kearley. And on stake number five in the Dictator, the Dictator, we have <laughs> an up and coming young uh, intermediate crew under 21, I should say, East Coast Kia, Cox by the one and only Gord Delaney, uh, rowers Ian Morris, Thomas Dw Dyer, Tyler Hallwell, Ty Mitchellmore, Nathan Ryan, Luke Power, Spare Riley Cadigan, and manager Charlene Devereaux. Great race underway. We saw, as um, Laura Bell was talking to Shannon, the start. It was a nice clean start and we're about three minutes in. So they've now gone past the short course kegs and they're into the quarter of their race. This is the second quarter now as these five boats approach the turn for the long course. So there's five big orange buoys down here at the bottom of the pond, I would call it. Some people call it top of the pond. And the coxswains are now lining up their marks so they can approach the men's or the long course kegs and do their turns. So we have in the lead here, what it's always a bit uh, difficult to tell, but um, with the angle, it looks like fine strokes is ahead going into the turn. Wow. And then uh, in second place, it's pretty close between um, Capital Home Hardware and NTV. So of course, NTV, last year's champions in 2022, 
Uh, but so far this year in time trials and also the Placentia Regatta, Home Hardware, Capital Home Hardware, uh, has been really performing well um, and taking the cake each time they've raced the NTV men. So, um, yeah, this is a great race underway here now. And the turn is upcoming, make it or break point of the race. And fine strokes going in first here in the black. Wow. Oh. <laughs> As you can see, it's so stressful watching these turns. And we have home hardware in the red now starting the cut. You can see as their line of their boat goes from straight to kind of that U shape, that's when they're the coxswain is cutting their oh. rudder so they can turn the boats and stakes four and five in the Andrew McDonald General Contractor Limited and East Coast Kia approaching their turns on stakes four and five right now. So coming out of the turn first, I would give again the bump to uh, the crew on stake three. Yeah. Oh, wow. Which that is a sharp. Whoa. Yeah. That is, as Shannon knows, <laughs> it's, it's a very <laughs> stressful time getting around that buoy. Yeah. Um, did you row in number one? I was number six. Oh, so I was holding water around yeah. that turn. That's where all the pressure is. Okay. <laughs> so uh, yeah, to fill you in, Laura Bell, going around the turn, every seat in the boat has a different role. So numbers yeah. one and three, who are furthest away from the coxswain on the bow or the starboard side, they're just having to row really hard okay. to try and turn the boat. And the rowers on the stroke side or the port side, like Shannon was, yeah. they dig in their oars to try and help pivot the boat and oh, turn it around. Okay. See, yeah. this is super cool to watch because this is my first time seeing it so detailed up close. And yeah. I was terrified as they went over the turn because my <laughs> immediate thought is, don't fall in the water, don't fall in the water, do not fall in the water. So seeing the amount of that skill too. it takes to do that, <laughs> is absolutely amazing and how quickly they yes. did that and so precisely i and not just individual skill but um timing yes, and precision yes. of of six well really seven different humans because the coxswain is also pulling his whole or her whole weight on the rope to try yeah. and achieve the maximum turn so the what we have the exciting part here now is they're in the third quarter so okay. this is a part where they call it no man's land everybody's yeah. the most tired oh, they're not at yes. the finish True. they've gone they've they might be gassed from how far they went on the way yeah. down and it is my guess because fine strokes is a boat full of former champions oh. um, yeah. but they're also a little bit uh on in years i'll say as compared to the capital home hardware and ntv men so i would say fine strokes is just trying to hang on to that lead that they've established yeah. on the way down yeah and the question is are the, is the red boat on the far left of our screen yeah. going to overtake this third boat here um by the time they get back to the finish line oh yeah. see. so we've got a great race going here this is, is a good race. This is really exciting because like this, I'm now invested. And I, I thought know. like a three-legged race was hard in terms of making sure you manage <laughs> to be on par with your teammate, but six people rowing doing a turn yes. seems just supernaturally cool to me. It so. looks a lot easier than it is. You know, uh, you think it's easy, but it, it's not. Uh, when, when you're in that boat, it's uh, very choreographed. So thing. they're going through these little orange dots here on the yeah. screen. That is the short course keg, okay. formerly wow. referred to as the women's kegs, but it's really the halfway point. Okay. So as the boats pass through those orange kegs, they're now into the fourth quarter okay. of their race. Oh, yeah. and that gap seems to be wide. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So okay. this is where they're in a couple strokes. Once they get up to it, well, they'll be going behind us with the boathouse yeah. is right behind us. And when they get past the boathouse, they'll start what we call their finish. Okay. And yeah. when they start the finish, it's usually a structured um, plan to get you from very tired wherever <laughs> you are all the way to the end. Uh, and it would take a lot right now for uh, stake three to lose their lead. Yes. yes. Um, but, so I think they're going to do it and they'll be they should be happy with th with this. Uh, but we still have a minute or so to go here. So how much hype is needed from, I guess, the coxman would be the person directing them to get them that energy level needed to make it to the end, so. It's a really special relationship, I would say, yes. between the coxswain and all the <laughs> rowers. Uh, it's a long season of getting to know what makes your rowers tick and what doesn't. Um, they know what they're gonna say here. They know what each yes. rower wants to hear to be able to get that last, bit, last little bit of gas out of the tank so they can uh, come across the line uh, in the best possible way. And most likely what we're looking at here is a crew of rowers who will also be rowing tonight again. Okay. So in the front here in the first place, we have James and Daniel Cadigan, brothers, yeah. um, former champions uh, and record holders with Crosby Industrial. We have Eric King, um, Brent Payne, Adam Cavanaugh and Matthew Manning. And I read in the media info last night that um, these guys have lots going on, including 
Brent and Matthew welcomed brand new babies on the same day this year. Oh my oh, goodness, I'm so their baby rowers. <laughs> I'm sure the babies are here. You, yeah, I bet the wives and the babies are all here because, yeah. you know, it's really a family effort. And uh, for these guys to be running their careers and rowing every day and young and growing families, mm -hmm. it's truly impressive. It is. Uh, and they're doing a great job. And so the cox in here is, it looks like Craig Whittle, and he is also the sponsor wow. of Fine okay. Strokes. So they will be pleased with Woo! that. 9.16, wow. a great That's time. Great. And uh, they haven't, they haven't uh, crossed the line first once this year, so they'll be pleased with that. And I think next we're going to have in the red the Capital Home Hardware coming across. And here in stakes four and five is uh, East Coast Kia furthest away. And there we have the Home Hardware boys coming across. And next will be NTV. Um, NTV is in a gray. Here we go. Looks like they stopped just a little bit before they crossed the line yeah. and, you know, hunched over right away. I don't blame them that. Yeah, I don't blame <laughs> them To either. do all that in under 10 minutes, yes. I could not, would not, There's, would have not made it fast the first quarter. There's no gas left in the tank at that point. That's what we used to say. Absolutely. See, I think a rowing machine is a difficult thing. So doing this with the actual resistance of the water <laughs> and that turn, you, you would be hard pressed to yeah. find me make it. Wow. to the winner's circle by any means. You would. It, okay, so. so we don't have the official times yet, but we know that the fifth fastest time of day sure. is the Blues in the closest to us. Okay. So in the next men's race, the people who, um, they're gonna be, the crews are gonna try and get a faster time than berths four and five in this first race to okay. try and earn a spot in the championship race tonight. Okay. So here we are congratulating each other at the finish line, a successful first wow. race of the day. Wow. Goosebumps. I know. Like, and it's not from the weather. <laughs> <laughs> Which is cold itself. So that was an amazing first time for me to be watching a full first race. That was so cool. I learned so was much from both. First, this first is my first full round. race to watch it beginning to end. So thank you for both of yeah. you for coaching me on what all the terms mean because I was coming in here blind as a bat. So I have fantastic teachers to guide me through this. So we know later we'll be checking in with Lori and Mitchell who are down in the winter circle. But I have a few questions now that I have seen my first full race. And because both of you have each rode before, what would the feeling be like for you guys at the end of a race? Regardless of your position, mm -hmm. what would be going through your minds as you guys finished? Well, the last part of the race is so hard that you, you just kind of want it to be over. Okay. So <laughs> when you get past the finish line, it's like a breath of relief. You're like, I did it. And hopefully you're in first or second okay. place. Sometimes you're not, so you feel a little bit discouraged and sometimes you feel great. So overall, like everybody in the boat, they love to row and they love the challenge okay. of getting there so every day is a great day it's just just super adrenaline rush like the moments leading up to regatta day and the minutes when you're getting ready oh. it's such a great it's very addictive okay yeah. so i still know i will not be rowing because that is just not my <laughs> skill set but amanda as a previous rower who's done the race multiple times what were your thoughts when you made it to the end were you as shannon was saying was just like we made it. <laughs> yeah, you're definitely tired, but it's also uh, filled with, you know, so much emotion for yeah. the people you're in the boat with and also the people who are supporting you to be able to do what you do. So, uh, for example, in that boat, we just watched uh, Gord Delaney Cox, the under 21 East Coast Kia crew and the stroke or in that boat, Ian Morris. Yeah, uh, I was speaking with Gord Delaney and Ian uh, Ian's father, Greg Morris, was inducted to the Royal St. John's Regatta Hall of Fame last year. Oh, wow. Um, and as we know, across the lake, there's a Cougar Flight um, 491 Memorial. Yeah. And Ian's father, Greg Morris, went down on that Cougar crash. So it is a very wow. emotional day. Uh, wow. And he is rowing to honor his father, his family. Wow. And it just gives me goosebumps to say that. Um, but in one way, you know, Things like this give you that extra push to get out there and truly feel like, you know, you're sacrificing your body for um, some a greater good kind yeah, of thing, you know? That's so, an awesome You story. mentioned earlier that this is part of, like, tradition and this is part of the legacy of Newfoundland right. Labrador, and I think connecting it to that for Ian, this is the legacy, this is the tradition, this yes. is the heritage of what the regatta is, why the rowers participate in. There's so many That's right. stories, it feels like. So no one just does the regatta on a whim of, oh, I no. felt like it. There's usually oh. family tradition of people There's who've rowed before. And then if it is your first time, you're starting that tradition. 
for your family and the legacy to come yeah. after. So that's, oh. I mean, so you're so starting cool. a new tradition. I, I, I have my new tradition of sitting here, not rowing, but cheering for the rowers because the amount of respect I have for them and what they do is immense. I don't, I know, yeah. not I don't think, I know I do not have the skill set nor the upper body strength. You may, you might surprise yourself. Ah. We do have a Chevron Learn to Row she program. She was that I, you could, if you wanted to test the waters, you um, could certainly try that. See, I have ever, I've only ever barely survived a telly. This is going to be pushing <laughs> me to a whole new level of athleticism. That, well, I've never done a telly, and I've done this a lot of times. And done it well. Yes. See, okay, so we'll switch. We'll switch experiences. I'll teach you how to survive a telly, not when, survive. And you can teach me how to survive rowing. Okay. And you know, okay. a lot of people think it's upper body, but it's just it's as not. much lower body. <gasps> yeah. It's oh, a see, full it's body so workout. to get out one way on like a level of, it's fine, it's yeah. fine. But okay, so full body workout. I would say so, yeah. Full body you're, you're Like that's one of the, um, you know, we've talked about changes and modifications to the sport. And I think the focus now is really on sliding back and forth yes. on your seat, even though the sliding. seats don't move, but that's why the rowers are talking about their sore hands and their sore bums yes. because they're trying to maximize the length of their strokes. Oh no, ma'am. Okay, so you're talking like quad workouts and the full thing. Butt burn and everything. But, okay, so this is a year-long training thing that you yes. guys are now setting me up for. Great. I will see you in the gym in two weeks because I think I need to recover before we start training for next year's regatta. Absolutely. But you'll um, love it. Okay, so we are starting a new... All right, viewers, you're hearing this first, that they are going to train me to one they participate in a regatta if i fall in the water we blame them and we will see each other on the other side this has been so cool um mm -hmm. before we throw it to the winners look i wanted to find out a little bit more about your role as director of sponsorships yeah. so you've been in it for two years yeah. have there been any memorable moments where you've gotten sponsors that are coming into this we'll say blind but have decided i could never not be a sponsor of a royal st john's regatta we have well this year Last year was a little bit slow because we were just coming out of COVID. So we had mostly our regular sponsors that we had in previous years. But notably this year, right on this page, Kent is one of our newest sponsors. Okay. And they reached out to us. I oh. did. So they, wa they want it. Yeah. I know. They called me and we're like, we want in on this. Okay. So it was exciting to get okay. them on board. So they're coming down for their first time in the uh they get a vip okay. boat ride oh. with the sponsorship as a part of a sponsorship package so they're going to be coming down at nine o'clock for their first time ever okay. doing that so um once you get in the vip boat and you get to watch these rowers close up you want to come hooked. back every it, year it has to, so i know kent is a great community sponsor so yeah. i'm so glad to see that they came to you and you didn't have to go I to know. the... It was one of my easy ones, I See? definitely... Well, we know the role of director of sponsorship is a That's hard right. one. And you do put in the legwork and yes. the power to get there. So having one come to you, it means you've done the work previously. <laughs> exactly. So. so it was good, but it's very rewarding. I love it. It's it's a full-time job on top of my regular oh, full-time exactly. job. Exactly. But it's worth it to know that you help this whole event happen, you make this happen. So I wouldn't leave it for the I, world. And I think that's amazing for you to say it's a full-time job on top of your already full-time job. Because people sometimes forget that you guys are volunteer committee members putting yes. this together. It is yeah. not, you guys have lives and roles and things yes. to do, but you are so committed mm -hmm. to the history of the regatta and wanting to see it continue yes. into the next coming years that you give time that might not always be readily it's available. <laughs> to put this together we're we're so lucky to have such a great committee i i have to say that and it's just every time we all come down here i just realize how much everybody's in it because they love it and we just do it and especially like the board of directors we spend we work all year round yeah and it takes away a lot of time from friends and family but again we're all in it for the love of the sport and the love of the event so I I think that just goes to show how much volunteerism is part yeah. of Newfoundland Labrador culture. Because people sometimes think these things that have been so much a part of our lives just yep. show up each year. But there are a lot of human <laughs> beings who of give work. of themselves yeah. year after year, day after, after year. day, minute after minute yeah. to create 
this. This is an amazing event. These guys rowing are giving up their time. They have lives outside, as, right. we, as we heard. Two new babies are in the world, who <laughs> I'm secretly hoping will also be in the winner's circle. They will. But, I'm sure they will. <laughs> I'm sure they will. But coming together to do this kind of work, I want to thank you yes. for the role that you guys do for the committee. Thank for you. Over the years, we know we had to cancel one due to the pandemic. That's but right. to see the turnaround that you and the committee and the teams have put into making this a success, it's already yep. beginning to get busy out here on the course we see people coming down that is just to show how influential the work that you guys do is you're gonna see the exciting moments at the okay, winner's so circle like, which i'm really <laughs> excited for when we get to throw to mitchell and Lori, who are going to get a chance to talk to the winners and see what they're doing but to the other rowers it's amazing the work that they do like it's i said the committee's a lot of work and the board of directors i rode for so long that i was thinking about it last night it's like I think rowing is actually more work. It's your life at that point, right? Like <laughs> it's the workouts, the time yeah. in the gym, the full years of training. Yeah. And then we I was worried about a five AM wake up call of whether or not this would go. <laughs> they would be they've been trained, they need this they to go this, ahead. They want this to happen and they don't want it to get pushed another day because it's another day they're not on the water. Right. So, See, I didn't even think yeah. I would be thinking, oh, darn, I have to go to work or all this. But they're like, no, no I rode. I'm, I'm ready. You, I'm like, ready to my go. energy is set. Do yes. not. Okay. Yep. These, are, these are the things that, as a non-rower, I don't, think, don't about. think about. But now I'm getting the inside scoop. Yes. So now when I run into anyone who's like, oh, I rode in regatta, I will give them their praise, their flowers, because <laughs> goodness knows it would, it would not be I it's until you guys have obviously trained me. And then... <laughs> And then you'll be ready to go. I you'll be will trained be ready. Right. To go. Okay, we'll throw it to Amanda who oh has God. some information I'm just coming like through. Itching to watch All right, the race tell us, tell us. <laughs> Thank you. I could hardly wait. Uh, so they're lining up the second race, number two, the Chevron All Comers Senior Men's uh, Masters races. Uh, Chevron also the sponsor yes. of the Learn to Bro Learn to Row program. So in stake number one in the broker, okay. we have <laughs> the crew is Torbay Cindy Thornton Real Estate. Cox and Graham Roach. So another family connection here. Cindy Thornton is the sister of Graham Roach, uh, sponsoring his crew for another year. The rowers in the boat, Noah Bradbury, Lucas Roach, Noah Percy, Kyle McGraw, Connor Cavanaugh, Francis Griffin, Spears Ryan and Riley Roach, coach Robert Bradbury and manager Tina Roach. On stake number two in the Oz Network, we have O'Day Earl, it's a law firm. Cox by Haley Ivany, a championship, um, former championship coxswain who started out on the slide seat side. The rowers we have Andrew Williams, Marty Whalen, Nicholas House, Ian Cowley, Luke Godden, and Michael Williams. So I know we have some oh, former multi-sport athletes in that boat, uh, swimmers, so triathletes, so uh, so rowers on the slide seat side and the fixed seat side. And they're in blue and white hats. And on stake number three, uh, I believe they're in the red or kind of burgundy and white in the boat called the Henley. We have the Canadian Armed Forces men, Cox by Ben Colburn, rowers Rick Blanchard, Jonathan Roberts, Zach Lang, Jeff Kelly, Robert Peddle, Colin Parsons, Spears Devin Sparkles, and Matt Martin. And the manager is Alicia Chalk. So welcome to the Canadian Armed Forces men. And on stake number four in the president's choice, heat pumps, all the rage these days. <laughs> <laughs> I know I got one. Keep it just cool and warm when needed. <laughs> Iceberg Heat Pumps Limited, Coxon, household name around here, Tina Ring, uh, Stroke, Robert Ring, Rowers in the Boat, Matthew Hiscock, Jeff Clooney, David Jeans, Mike Lacey, Mike Lester, Spears, Trevor Ring, and Derek McGraw, coached by Eric Smith. And stake number five in the blue, we have the Smith Stockley Lakers, coxed by Denise Carew. Rowers consist of Eric Crane, Don Lynch, Fabian McGraw, John Tucker, Kevin Greeley, Derek Mercer, Spears, Gary Collins, and John Brocklehurst, and coach John Fagan. So here they are at the starting kegs, getting ready to go. It looks like uh, the 
the crew on stake number one, which is the Torbay Cindy Thornton Real Estate, is just gone to take another loop, I would say, before they get their toggle. Okay. So uh, coxswains are now, the. you can see in the middle there, Ben is standing up. He's holding on to something called a toggle, okay. which is a rope that's okay. connected to the orange starting kegs. Okay. Um, so yeah, we're just waiting for the two bookends on stakes one and five to come and take the mark. Because the challenge is, if you get there early, you need to keep your boat straight. Oh, um, okay. Or, and, and if you can't keep it straight, then the coxswain gets off course, and okay. it's a whole thing, isn't it? It is a whole thing. So I have a <laughs> That's question. That's the worst part. Yeah. So the, I guess, yes, it would be the coxswain, the person sitting at the top. Mm -hmm. I know we're in the men's races, but I've seen as we've gone through the previous, we've had women sitting as coxswains, regardless of, I guess, the race. Does it matter who your coxswain is at this point? Nope. So as you can see in the boat there, hey, Haley is coxing um, the men's crew of O'Day Earl, and you have, um, so she's identifying as female, coxing a men's boat, and same thing with Denise Carew here, so they're in the um, turquoise, and you can also have men coxing um, women's crews or girls' crews, it's, it doesn't matter okay. um, about the gender of the coxswain, doesn't have to match the gender of the uh, racers. Okay, yeah. see, maybe that would be my role since a coxswain doesn't have to row, they just need to know the skills to motivate the team, correct? That's right. You can motivate me. Okay, so there we go. <laughs> I am coxswain of a regatta race. We will not be rowing, but we will be coxswain. But it's super cool to see, learn information about if you get there early, you need to hold on to a toggle and finding all that out. So when you do, I guess we'll call it a pre-row, because if you get there early, what does that affect your energy levels as you have to, you know, row for the actual race did you guys find that that was ever a thing or was this just a way to burn that nervous energy before the race started for you a lot of teams when they get in their boat they leave the wharf they like to warm up and go okay. around um, but for m myself when i get to the toggle i'm ready to go okay so you're <laughs> I'd like rather not wait there you're like, let's, <laughs> let's do this yeah, okay so it's, it's good to get a little warm up, but you don't want to waste too much energy yeah. at the dog. Oh. And you were sitting in six, so you were right next to the coxswain. All you just have to do is hold onto your oar and yep. wait till, so they have the gun which goes off and that indicates the start of the race. But when you sit at the back of the boat, like I did, yeah. uh, so the people furthest away from the coxswain, they're actually the lowest numbers. So the people in the very back, that's rower in the furthest seat from the coxswain is seat one, and yep. then in front of that person is seat two. So one and two are asked to do things called touches. Okay. So like little mini strokes oh, to no. keep the boat straight. <laughs> so I was having to work back there. Oh, yeah, no, that's a solid, my role is coxswain. There will be a hat and a shirt, but I will not be doing that. Okay. Good morning, you everyone. It, you know, like yeah. it, it got to the point where if I didn't have race a little job to do at the start, one, the I feel like the, uh, you know, I should be doing something. <laughs> uh, but everybody else is expected to sit still and it's Rowing a challenge for the people in the boat in the not to be looking around. Yeah. With a time everything of 9, on the shores, 12, everything, everyone in the boat Capital next home to them, hardware. people have been rowing again Cox for years, Kevin Greeley, sometimes decades. Rowers Jason Wade, Brad White, Doug Jackman, Ian Power, Morgan White, so we have Jonathan the race Houlihan, results coming out right now. Spare so we're Sean going to be White, to that. Coach Ray and I Cadigan, know in a little bit, but maybe Dana before Reed. this race starts, we might end up getting some chance to chat with the winner's circle. Or oh, presenting no, medals on behalf of NTV General Manager Lindsay Andrews. Andrews. <laughs> also coming out. This is you catch on quickly. So I can tell you a little bit about um, who do we have here on stake number three, the Canadian Armed Forces men. This is their third year uh, participating in the Royal St. John's Regatta. So here you can see they're asking every boat, are they ready? Yeah, okay. Ready number five. And now the gun. Okay. Are you all ready? And the gun, and here they go. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay. and so this is the start. Oh. So the start, they're doing like some short mini strokes to take the boat from a full stop to moving at the fastest rate of speed that is possible um, as quickly as they can. So and they're off. They're, they're off. off. Okay. So it's that anaerobic portion of the race We're until you get to at least 45 seconds. Um, you're really, really pushing. And then as you go by the boathouse, you transition and kind of get into a longer, slightly lower strokes per minute to take you through the body of the race. So, yeah. So this is like a full body sprint is basically what this feels like as a rower, wouldn't it? Yeah, I mean, and you just have to adjust your race to if you're gonna be rowing for 
uh, eight minutes, 13 minutes, five minutes or seven minutes. Oh. <laughs> okay, so let's go. Typically timed out, how long would one expect a long course to go? Uh, average crews, I would say, are around 10 minutes. Okay. So you can see here the um, Graham Roach there in the coxswain seat of the gray. So their time in time trials was 11 minutes and one second. Congratulations, sure Capital Home Hardware. Uh, wanting to knock some time off that today, but I don't know what the weather was like on time trials, Shane. Do you remember? It was a good can day. Can I have fine strokes, Similar plaster, and painting okay. limited behind the winner's circle, please? So they're presenting some medals here behind us, and we'll just quiet down for a bit as we hear the results of race number one. Great drone footage of the races. It seems closer, this one. Yep. The drone footage has really changed the whole regatta. It's, it's such a great view. Yeah. And all the rowers, like you will study yourself after oh. the regatta. You'll all get together usually and watch yourself and see where, who made the mistakes or who, what you did just to try to make yourself better and not do that again. Okay. You know, I think I'm hooked now. This is, this is intense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so the spread between uh, the first crew going in, the 1101 Cindy Thornton Real Estate Cox by Graham Roach, and 1143 for the Smith Stockley Lakers Cox by Denise uh, Carew. And Smith Stockley certainly is a household name here at the Royal St. John's Regatta. I think since the 1900s they've been sponsoring teams. Uh, and I know that those that group of rowers is extremely grateful to the uh, Smith Stockley for their continued support and sponsorship. Uh, they're Cox by Denise. In first Kalu. place in the NTV Here Satellite Network Amateur Senior Men's. Okay. In stake three, rowing in the Pomerleau, Fine Strokes Plaster and Painting Limited. Coxon Craig Whittle, James Cadigan, Dan Cadigan, Eric King, Brent Payne, Adam Cavanaugh, Matthew Manning. Spares Jamie Travers, Craig Whittle, Coach Ben Colburn, with a time of 9:52. Oh, sorry, 9:18:17. Wow. Apologies. So, oh. Our unofficial time was 9:16, but they'll be happy with 9:18. Presenting medals on behalf of NTV is General Manager Lindsay Andrews. So the official time for the Fine Strokes Plaster and Painting Limited, who came first in race number one, 918. And we can see them getting their medals here. Uh, you might recognize James Cadigan, who is the communications officer with the Royal Newfoundland Constabulary. He's on the TV every time I turn it on. And There's he, a baby! Here he is again. <laughs> So I think that's his son, uh, James Jr. James married to a fellow rower, Kalia Cadigan, who we'll see just in, in who we saw in the first race. Adam Cavanaugh there waving to his uh, friends and family. The only person who's unfamiliar to me is the guy who's getting his medal there right now, um, Eric King. Oh, and we have uh, the results for the official results for race number one in the first place, 918.17 fine strokes on the television here now. Uh, second place, Capital Home Hardware, a time of 942.12. Cox and, and Kevin Greeley. And the NTV Trophy, once again, Lindsay Andrews, General Manager of NTV. And Lindsay Andrews, General Manager of NTV, will be giving the boys their, there we go. So. They're giving him the <laughs> trophy because it's probably his, maybe his first race or he certainly doesn't have as much experience as the uh, rest of the guys who have been around here rowing since, you know, their furniture here at the lake. Uh, the Cadigans, you know, preceded by their uh, late father, Ron Cadigan, legendary Fox hockey Fox player, Fox proud Limited. Outer Cove, okay. uh, Tor Bayman. Ooh, here's the turn. <gasps> oh, oh, no. oh, oh, that was tight. Yeah, it's okay. tight. So you can see how the number two or back here on the boat yeah. closest and to us, they were kind of Kia tagged the out the and then the they circle. just picked it up. Yeah. And you want to stay in your lane. So as you're getting um, around the turn, you want to kind of make a straight U back to the starting line and not cover a whole lot of extra ground. Okay. Yeah. 
The turn could make or break a race, really. You could be in first place until you hit the turn and have a bad turn and oh, yeah. So, yes. and the uh, third place with NTV in the first race of the day, NTV champions last year, um, their time was 9.51.68. So, um, I, I expect we'll definitely see Fine Strokes, NTV, Capital Home Hardware back in the championship men's race tonight. And the crews who are rowing right now, the time to beat for them is 10.20 okay. uh, to knock East Coast Kia out of the championship race um, or 10.22. So 10.22 and 10.20. Okay. So this is like... Oh, so now I can see like the differences between who is rowing ahead. But we're going to be throwing out to the winner's circle where Lori will be chatting with some of the winners. Results for race number one, the NTV Satellite Network U21 Men's. Okay. Hi, I'm here today with the winners of uh, the first race, and I'm here with Craig Whittle. Yes, that's right. So tell us what winning means to you today. Uh, you know what, we, uh, today was a very important for us because we, uh, we had a bad row on Tom Charles, and, uh, you know, we wanted to regroup. Well, the last three weeks our training has really stepped up, and, uh, you know, we were confident we'd have a good row today, so it was nice to actually do it, you know? That's excellent. So we're so proud of you, and is there anyone that you want to say hi to? And my wife and my daughter Jenna. Jenna's first year rowing this year, so I'm quite proud. Uh, whatever. So uh, you know, we're pretty happy. And this is my little fellow Jasper. Hi, Jasper. Do you want to say hi? Hi. Hi. Well, congratulations to everyone, and uh, all the best. Thank you. Thank you so much. And that was amazing to get to see Lori chat with some of the winners and see the little winners wearing their medals. I think it's a great way to look at the future rowers as I'm now nominating their titles. <laughs> so back to you, Amanda, as we're watching this race, what are, we'll say, what are your predictions for how this is going to go? Well, we're past the eight minute mark here now and the first and second place crews uh, are well into their fourth quarter so they just passed the short course kegs they're into the place where they're almost at the boathouse and they'll be starting their finish so assuming we have uh the stake one is the furthest right we have uh the tour Bay cindy thornton real estate in second place and it looks to me like oday earl is in first place led by uh cox and haley ivany yeah, and we have a bit of a different view here now. So I think that we're looking at here the Canadian Armed Forces men, mm -hmm. Cox by Ben Colburn. And then in the fourth and fifth stakes, uh, who are just going out of the screen there now, is the Iceberg Heat Bumps and then the Smith Stock Lead Lakers. So. Yeah, that is definitely Ben. Okay. And they are pushing it, as we will say, going through this. So they are definitely putting in the work. And I love to see how synchronized they are. There isn't a single one of them out of time with the other. That's right. Timing is the name of the game when you're in the boat. Uh, so they need to beat 10.20 to get into the championship race. I th it's going to be close. Uh, it depends how... Uh, how much uh, our clock is on or off but the unofficial time 938 if they can crack uh, 1022 they'll be in the championship race for tonight but we are not sure that is what everybody's looking for uh, Ben Colburn certainly driving his crew hard now to try and go under that 1022 mark they're in stake three in the boat uh, the Henley okay so the Henley also the name of a Famous regatta. Okay, so here's that overview shot. They have a commanding lead okay. uh, coming in on stake three. It's looking from my uneducated <laughs> prediction that they might go. Oh, if we get that overview shot, I can make a prediction, <laughs> but right now I do not see the buoy, so I'm not sure. Okay, so it definitely depends on the official times, but at this moment, it Isn't looks it like the top five spots are going to the first five men's racers. Yeah. Uh, you can see they're celebrating. They're happy with that row. Um, these men, they're uh, 
trying a new sport. Okay. Um, it's truly an honor for them to be part of the long-standing sport while also represent the Canadian Armed Forces. Certainly, we thank them for their service and also their rowing. <laughs> I love the rower who has decided pro and position is the way to come in. Like a spaghetti noodle. So uh, you can see standing there just going off the screen, Graham Roach, uh, fellow Torbay man. I'm from Torbay as well. See, he lied right down back in the boat there. Uh, that looks like Tina Roach there who just brought in her iceberg heat pumps and uh, the number one Mike Lester laid down in the back of the boat. Here's Denise Carew bringing in her Smith Stockley Lakers. And now we're just waiting for um, for the O'Day Earl crew. Okay, so I must have had it wrong when I thought the O'Day Earl was in first because um, they just came across um, fifth place. Unofficial time for the first place was 10.29. You can see here the timing tower. Yeah. Uh, looks like the camera is zooming in or the drone is going over the timing tower now. So up there, they ha they can do video replays okay. to look at, because certainly there have been what we call dead heats yeah. when boats cross the finish line at the oh. exact same time. So you can see here the drone is getting a close up of what's going on at the timing tower. Um, and the water is flat like, calm it this is. is really nice conditions great conditions for rowing um the lakeside shores are really filled with the diehard fans now lots of friends and family members watching their um crews and loved ones row and there is the statue um we used to call him sam the rower okay see i was never sure of his, oh well, that's a ground view of sam over there yeah it'd be cool if the fence wasn't there but <laughs> in 2016 the uh regatta committee regatta committee commissioned a new trophy and okay. it's like a miniature but still a very large uh, version for a trophy it is that statue oh wow and so every year since 2016 the championship crew's names get installed on the side of that trophy oh. it is absolutely stunning oh my goodness that mm -hmm. is gorgeous i love hearing about the rowers and how they all got into but hearing the history of the regatta is oh, i'm learning so much this is better than any <laughs> history class so if people are looking for a great way to brush up on the history come down to the regatta that is my standing rule learn more about our history by coming down to the regatta and so if you didn't catch us earlier we were talking about the weather might not seem barbecue ready but home depot knows any season is barbecue season and to help with that they are giving away a barbecue so we're asking you guys to enter the contest all you got to do is visit rogers tv on facebook check out the website or you can call 709-701 8606 mm -hmm. and remember to put the 709 we've done that number change we can no longer just dial digits 709 is essential to make sure that you get your name into the running of winning a barbecue and if you win we like grilled things <laughs> we really love a grilled thing make that a hot dog a burger i will even eat a vegetable version of those things <laughs> but we would love for you to enter we want to thank home depot again for giving this is it is a spectacular looking barbecue so make sure you get your names in and thank you again to Home Depot. Yeah. And so a little bit more on the history because you know since we're, it's we're steeping doing you it, in all the tradition, all the knowledge. I just want to let you know that the uh, Sydney Thornton real estate the Cox and Graham Roach he's a uh, Cox and the crew in the gray yeah. he was inducted into the hall Royal St. John's Regatta Hall of Fame in 2019. He has been steering crews on KDVD Lake for 26 years. So, okay, yeah. so I was newly into the world, not to age myself, but we will age ourselves. So for longer than I have known this province to exist, he has been steering crews. That's, so he has seen the changes that have gone on. He has won a couple, mm -hmm. lost a couple, and knows what is needed to motivate a crew. So I guess we need him as my coach on coxing in a team? <laughs> yeah, I okay. think he would, he, I mean, we'll have to ask him. He's okay. a nice guy. And maybe he's your coach. Maybe he'll be the guy. We will build a roster. There are rosters of rowers. You guys will be a roster of coxswain trainers. So that yeah. way, when Rogers decides to put a boat in the race, Rogers I will not be rowing, but I am here to motivate our rowers <laughs> and then give you the background on what it takes. Absolutely. Maybe we can have like a little, the drone can cover the footage, a little mic in here, keep people motivated. Yeah, and Graham, in uh, 2013, he put together a squirt crew. So not only is he coxing these, um, you know, championship time or qualifying men's teams, but 
he takes the time to develop the next generation of rowers, okay. which is very important for the sport to keep it going. It's okay. all about the youth and the kids and getting them involved. And certainly that's uh, what he's done because um, some of these rowers who Graham just coxed in this race here, they were on that 2013 score crew okay. and now they're in the top 10 men's crews, um, top 10 men's times of or long course times, I should say, um, of the year. So it's really nice to see that. So as someone who's once again learning about the regatta, so we'll say we start off with the Chevron Learn to Row. Mm -hmm. And then if we make it past that and we've decided rowing is for me, I'm going to row. Squirt crew, we hope to get on a squirt crew. You might be past the squirt crew age by now. Uh, well, OK, <laughs> we, we will pretend. <laughs> so for our young rowers, who are potentially young rowers mm -hmm. who are watching, so learn to row with the mm -hmm. Chevron learn to row. Yeah. Hopefully get on a squirt crew because you've then gotten the rowing bug. It's bit you, you want to train, get on a squirt crew and then hopefully make it to racing. Is that, yeah. is that the journey we're looking to be on? Absolutely. And some of the rowers choose to um, refine their technical skills uh, by doing the slide seat variety of the sport. So. Okay. Uh, today during the lunch break from 12 to do the St. John's Rowing Club. So there's actually this large, beautiful boathouse we have here. There's two organizations operating out of it. There's the Royal St. John's Regatta Committee, which is bringing together the um, regatta the first Wednesday in August, and it has for 205 years. And on the far side of the boathouse is the St. John's Rowing Club. Okay. So the SJRC, as it's called, is the um, slide seat, the provincial rowing Newfoundland operation. And the boats are a little different. Okay. So it's a kind of a different style of rowing. They have singles, doubles, pairs, uh, quads, fours, and eights. Okay. Um, and the seat slide is the big difference. Okay. So in these fixed seat boats, we're trying to make our stroke as long as we can by moving our butts to the front of the seat and then the back of the seat. And friction is not on your side. No. But in the slide seat boats, there's actually wheels under the seats. So oh. you can roll all the way up, all the way back. So you get the full um, compression of your legs. Okay. And those are the boats that you see when you watch rowing in the Olympics okay. or the World Championships, you're watching slide seat rowing. Okay. Yeah, which is different than the fixed seat rowing we have here today. So another aspect of the see? tradition that brings together our great sport. Okay. And so we're talking about our sponsors because this couldn't be held without wonderful sponsors. We have Steel Hotels again who might be hosting some of the rowers who have come in from other places and we have Spirit of Newfoundland and Labrador who put on amazing shows. So once again, if you're looking for, let's say you're building the ideal night out, you've come to the regatta, you've decided I played roulette, I won roulette and I'm going to take the rest of the week off. Might as well book a hotel room, see what shows are going on with Spirit of Newfoundland and make a whole day week weekend of the thing. But we want again to thank them for sponsoring because it's due to their funds we're able to have the Royal St. John's Regatta be what it is and sponsors like them. So speaking of the up and coming crews in the frame here now we had the um, in the gray shirts that's the, they're getting ready and preparing for the first women's race of the day okay. or the first short course race of the day um, and we had a bunch of young, high-performing up-and-comers here. So Gord Delaney, we saw him out in the um, with the, his East Coast Kia crew yeah. in the race number one, and now he's back with the Noonan Piercy crew. A okay. uh, bunch of former champions in that boat, very experienced rowers. And I was just going to mention the crew that will eventually line up next to Gord's crew here in the orange is called uh, Smith Stockley. And that is another um, young up and coming crew uh, to watch. These people still definitely in the under 23. Um, and we have Cox and John Barrington, who is the son of John Barrington Sr., who's rode with um, NTV in the, you know, the heyday of the NTV. And just generations of family traditions continuing. And in this race, we have Krista Brown, okay. whose maiden name is Krista Carew. She's in number six. She um, was just getting her outer layer off there. So she's stroking uh, Gord Delaney's boat. And we also have back out Denise Carew. Okay. So Denise Carew is Krista's aunt. Okay. Yep, so they'll be rowing against each other. Oh, wow. And we also have another uh, connection in that um, uh, the Carew family has a third family member it's Maggie in um, 
the Pomerloo with the Smith Stockley. So in three boats, we have three different Carews. And I'd like to give a big shout out to Nikki Carew, my good friend. I'm not sure if she's down here um, today, but former rower herself. Uh, I'm sure she'd love to be lakeside. If she's not, if you are, uh, hopefully I'll see you, Nikki. But good luck to your family. I'm <laughs> saying that's going to make a really interesting family <laughs> dinner at the end of this. Uh, three different boats, three different family members going up against each other. The camaraderie and the competition must make Sunday dinners one to be. I would love to be a fly on the wall at this coming Sunday dinner to be like, so saw you were rowing there. Yeah. How'd that feel on the end of that? Absolutely. So the Carew services. Um, men's crew that entered you know the regatta a number of years ago the program would be every single last name in the boat or it would be Carew. okay <laughs> so we're pretty close to it maybe exactly. one other uh, but yeah just to get the first women's race of the day or sorry short course race of the day filled with uh currently women identifying participants but as noelle alluded to at 11 a.m we'll have a crew of uh, women rowing the long course and a crew of men rowing the short course. Okay. So this is like groundbreaking. It's um, still exhibition at this moment, but I'm very interested to see the times of um, the crew, the Studio Verso, who will be rowing oh, the, yes. the long course, just to see how they stack up against those the all uh, male crews rowing the long course. I am going to give Studio Verso a major shout out because that studio is fantastic, and I'm mm -hmm. excited to see them kick some major butt and get themselves in if not anything else they're making history and being part of this long course so that is a spectacular position to be in 250 of the regatta it's the first time we have a basically like a mixed we'll say yeah long it's a mixed race because last year they exhibitioned the women rowing the long course but there were no male crews that opted to row the short course okay so and you know change takes time every, every especially after 205 years of doing the same thing you're not going to have every crew rushing to do a different distance on year number one so uh it's exhibition this year exhibition last year um, but you know it's happening and exactly. that's the main thing so baby steps you see Denise Carew here um, oh the race results for uh, the race number two Canadian Armed Forces official time of 10 30 39 uh, Graham Roach's crew the Cindy Thornton real estate 10 46 91 iceberg heat pumps 11 03 05 Smith Stockley Lakers 11 15 24 O'Day Earl 11 20 49 so I guess based on those results, we would say the ones who raced the first race would be the ones making it to the championship. Is that, you, am I getting it? You got it, Pontiac. <laughs> you got it. And so, yeah, that is, it looks like, as Laura Bell just said, currently the top five t uh, men's times of the day or long course times of the day come directly from race number one. So those crews are probably now collected their medals as we just saw and they'll be getting out of here to go home or go to a, a house or hotel and be all together throughout the day and rest. Okay. So that's what's probably happening with them. And we're going to throw it back to the winner's circle with Lori and Mitchell who will be talking to our under 21 winners. Let's see what they have to share. Hi, I'm with East Coast Kia today and they're the winners of the under 21. So tell us what winning is like for you. Uh, it's incredible, especially for this year and last year since we both both years we made championship and excellent. this year it's going to be even better because we know we can keep up with the crews that we row against excellent is this your first time rowing uh no i've been rowing for like eight years now excellent. and roughly the same for these guys and what's your name ian morris ian? luke power Ty mitchell moore nathan ryan uh, Riley Cadigan. Excellent. Well, it was so nice to talk to all of you and congratulations. I hope you enjoyed the rest of the day. Yes, thank you. Thanks thank so you. much. Thank you. Woohoo! Thanks, guys. Thank you. Good to see those under 21 East Coast Kia uh, rowers there, the future of our sport. They're Cox and Gord Delaney. You know, can't say enough good about them. What a great bunch of uh, young athletes they are. They say thanks, Gord, after every spin. and really show a lot of appreciation for uh, the people who make it possible for them to row. So really hope that those guys stick with the sport and, and keep it going. Well, I don't think they couldn't. I don't think they can leave. I'm like, <laughs> this is my first time here, and I already know that I'm committed. For as long as the regatta is going, I will be 
part of it. So I think once, as you're saying, once you've got the rower's bug, you got the rower's bug till yeah, you and can't <laughs> row anymore. I'm doing all I can to stay in my seat here and not go jump in one of those boats. <laughs> See, it's, I'm holding you down. You are not allowed to leave me. <laughs> well, certainly this is when I would be pushing off for uh, to do the warm up here with the um, well, hopefully, I'm presuming I would be in the first women's race of the day, but certainly that's the place when we usually rode. And a little bit of information, um, they started alternating back and forth. So now this year, the men's races are first uh, and the women's races come second. And next year, the women's races will be first and the men's will be second, okay. uh, which is really great to see because that wasn't the case. Uh, for a number of years, it was always the men's first. And of course, earlier in the day is the more favorable weather, less wind, and that's what the rowers want, especially the years when crews are set on breaking records. Okay. It is absolutely everything to get the um, low winds early in the day. All right. So yeah, the first race for the um, short course is 9 a.m., race number three. We're just watching the crews warm up here behind us. Uh, the the wind is staying low the pond is staying flat it's it's they made the call they made, they made the made right the call. call yeah this is so so there would this be so this is a short course so this is going to be how many were we doing quarters or halves for so they're going to turn around uh at the orange kegs that are just past the boathouse okay it's a short course 1250 meters on the crew here is last year's champions and triple crown winners okay. they're called high flow drolic coxed by Robert Roach and a seasoned uh, stroke Kathy, Catherine and Kelly. And now we've switched to the purple crew, which is uh, Denise is in the coxswain seat. Da and Burke have been absolutely cleaning up this year. Um, tune into the results here now. Rowing in seat number one in the broker with a time of 10.46.91, the team of Sydney Thornton Real Estate. Coxing Graham Roach, Noah Bradbury, Lucas Roach, Noah Piercy, Kyle McGraw, Connor Kavanaugh, Francis Griffin, Ryan Roach, Riley Roach, Robert Bradbury, and Trina Roach. Presenting medals on behalf of Chevron, Vanessa Newhook. There's your coach, oh, Graham. Okay. He's there on the screen. Hey, Graham. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica Gallant with the Royal St. John's Regatta Committee is holding the platter of medals. Okay. And another uh, sponsor or a committee member is crowning the, the um, Cindy Thornton Real Estate crew with their medals. Although it says Canadian Armed Forces men on the screen, but I do not think that's who it is, but that's okay. It is definitely Graham Roach um, in the gray and they rode on stake one in the second men's race of the day. Uh, Cox by Graham Roach, Stroke, Noah Bradbury, Lucas Roach, Noah Percy, Kyle McGraw, Connor Kavanaugh, Francis Griffin, Spears, Ryan and Riley Roach, coached by Robert Rab Bradbury and their manager, Tina Roach. So yeah, like I was saying, Graham put together a score crew in 2013, which the stroke or Noah Bradbury yeah. and number five seat Lucas Roach rode on in okay. 2013. So they started rowing at the age of 12, and ever since they've been together, with the exception of COVID. Okay, so and presenting the, the Bernard L. <laughs> Once you Collins catch it, you Memorial catch it. Exactly. Uh, so in 2015, Graham, Noah, Disregard. Lucas, and Coach Robert, uh, who lost, actually almost, who rode himself with the RNC, they broke the male squirt record, uh, and the Telegram published an article about them called uh, "Pond, comma, Hockey: A Good Combination." See, that's cool. Yeah, that's, so that's really cool. They were doing the uh, off-season training as hockey, on-season was rowing, and after that, the squirt participation really took off, okay. which is wonderful because you got to get them young to get them started and get them confident. So I'm going to line up the first women's race of the day. Sorry, first short course race of the day, race number three, uh, on stake number in one place, in the Miss Two Wheeler. Cox by George Laney is Noonan Piercy, Stroke, Krista Brown, formerly Carew. 
uh, Laura Roach, Kirian Ennis, Allison Jones, Jennifer Carroll, Kalia Cadogan, Coach Zachary Meany. Uh, on stake number two in the Parmalu is Smith Stockley. Household name around these parts, Cox and John Barrington. Stroke, um, Maggie Carew, rowers Anna Barrington, Hannah Martin, Mackenzie Cal, Tessa Thorne, Mel O'Brien, Spare and coach Wilhelmina Martin, former Kean Tech rower, wonderful crew, lots of family connections here as well with a mother daughter uh, in Mackenzie Cal and Wilhelmina Martin. Stake number three in the Jerry Angel, we have the crew Dot and Burke who have been cleaning up this year when it comes to time trials and the out of town regattas. Uh, Coxon, Denise Carew, Stroke, Lindsay Freeman, Megan McCabe, Beth Davis, Megan Saunders, Amanda Muse, Katie Breen, Spare, Nicole Saunders, Coach Jack Fagan. And I believe due to injury, they had a last minute lineup change um, with their uh, Nicole Saunders, who was originally supposed to be in the boat, uh, was replaced by the Spare, and the gun just went off, and they're underway. Stake four, the High Flow Drawlic Crew, Cox by Robert Roach, Stroke, Catherine Kelly, Rowers, Teresa Butler, Nicole Hamlin, Jenny Wadden, Sarah East, Tracy Roach, Spares, Ellen Glado, and Coach Anna Walsh. Stake five, the Cal Group, Cox by Haley Ivany, Stroke, Shannon Driscoll, Stephanie O'Quinn, Heather Gillis, Courtney Langmead, Hannah Burton, Jennifer Kryzak, Lindsay Hallwell, and Andrew Williams is the coach. So first short course race of the day underway. They're going by the boathouse. Uh, super exciting. This is going to be a very close race. Okay. And yeah, you can tell that already because it is and seems to be neck and neck from the get-go. Yeah, and so the, the short course race is different because there's not that... You know, the long course, they have 2,500 meters to spread out, really get into a groove. But this, it's like a minute is over, you're gone by the boathouse, you're already gearing up for the turn. So you can see on the screen here, closest to us is Noonan Piercy, Cox by Gord Delaney, championship coxswain, many championship rowers in this boat. Um, on number one, we have Kalia Cadigan, who's the wife of James Cadigan, who we just saw in the fine strokes. Uh, number two, Jennifer Carroll, who I'm normally used to seeing in the stroke seat, but she's back here in number two. Okay. Uh, also in the boat, Allison Jones, also a championship rower. And here's the drone shot that again shows how close it is going into the turn. Whew! Whoa. Like Burn it, burner. It is literally neck and neck. I think the widest distance you have is the width, not the length of the rowers. Yeah. So on the far left of our screen is Noonan Piercy. Um, and then in the middle here that they seem to have a bit of an edge is the Don Burke crew. And then in the yellow next to them is High Flow Drawlic. And just coming onto the screen here in stake five is the Cal group. Um, and they're, they've just gone out of the screen again now. As we're going to watch as the coxswains start their cut. They start their cut and the boat is going to start to gear up to go into the turn. So. This is kind of the rockiest time going around the turn. You can see in stake one, they've started their cut. They're approaching the turn. At this point, the coxswain is asking the starboard or the bow side to really push hard as the stroke side eases off their rowing power yeah. as they prepare to hold water. So they're holding or backing as much as they can to keep the boat close to the orange kegs as they turn. All crews turning together. Uh, the stake five in a little bit slower and we're seeing the pickup here now. It looks like to me, Noon and Piercy in stake one is picking up first okay. with a bit of a lead. See, wow. This is where your expertise comes in because to me, it seemed like that was synchronized. Mm -hmm. The entire thing seemed to go all at once without a clear leader. But as we're drone footage is showing, we can see a little bit, well, I guess would be in stake five would be seems to be a little bit behind the rest of the rowers. Exactly, yeah. So sometimes with the angles and, and things, it can be a little bit deceiving when you're watching. Uh, but stake five is clearly in the fifth place position. And I'm going to stick with Noonan Piercy uh, leading the charge here at an unofficial time of 3 minutes, 24 seconds. Their time trials time was five minutes, 17 seconds. So I'm absolutely positive they'll be looking to knock some time off that today. Um, to hopefully get in the certainly low teens, if not um, break that 
510 threshold. So they're having a really clean race. Um, anybody's guess who's going to come in second. This is Robert Roach and the High Flow Drawlic crew here. Uh, I can see Kathy Ann's braid swinging back and forth as she's stroking the High Flow Drawlic uh, women. Uh, Nicole Hamlin in the four seat is my longtime former pair partner in the slide seat. We competed in national regattas uh, and she is a very solid one to have in the middle of the boat there. Oh, certainly the bringing them footage home. is definitely. Yeah, really helping us out. So they're going by the marquee now. Yeah. Um, high flow hydraulic... seems oh. to be who the drone is favoring. And this young crew here closest to us is in the black. That is Smith Jockley Cox by John Barrington. Um, they really, are putting in work. Well, you know, it's anybody could take first at this point. I think that on stake four, the high flow hydraulic crew is close enough to yeah. Noonan Piercy that a very strong finish by high flow hydraulic, they could do it. It's anybody's race here for first and second. Mm -hmm. And again, for, um, well, for first and for second, yeah. really. This is a great race, oh, very close. Oh my goodness. This, oh, this is nerve wracking. This is a nail biter. This is one of those ones where I don't want to say who won because I'm oh, nervous. Oh, 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 yeah, oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, uh, okay so it looked, whoa, that okay. was really close. Yeah. Certainly two excellent times. Uh, we don't have anyone throwing their hands up in celebration. It looked maybe high flow hydraulic came in over the stake one Noonan Piercy. Uh, but I'm, I'm You're too close to, to call, call. It, right? yeah. yeah. I'm, I know all those women in the boat uh, too well to know, uh, to let them down and, and not make the right call on who came across first there. So we're gonna have to wait for the official results. It looked like high flow hydraulic, but I'm not sure. Certainly an excellent race and Absolutely. an excellent time. Excellent time. So their unofficial time of 5, 5.13 means they took time off okay. of their time trials row. So the time trials happens in July. Okay. Uh, when all of the crews come down and just, you know, it's like uh, heats where they where they row just for time to see where they're going to be seated and placed uh, for the races on regatta day. Okay. So we are going to be heading back to the winner's circle to get for the winners of last race. So not this one that just ended, but the winners before. So I guess that was the Chevron all, all so, yeah, the Chevron all corners, corners. all commerce <laughs> senior. Yeah, yeah, we're learning the things today. and the men's masters. Yes. We're gonna go talk to those guys, and that would be Lori. <sighs> I'm here with the winners of the Canadian Armed Forces men's team. Yes, yes, and I'm here with Colin today. So, Colin, please tell me what, it's, what it means to win for you today. Uh, it's a pretty big deal today. Uh, we've been training really hard all year long, basically, and uh. Wanted to put our best our best race in today, and I think we did that. So pretty excited. That's excellent. Yeah. And so, is there anything else? Like, you know, what did you do to prepare? Any other things that you've done to get here today? Uh, this is the year that we put the most time in on the water. So a lot of pond time, a lot of erg time, and stuff like that. Excellent. And I and I heard that that was your best time. It was yes, 10:30 uh, I believe. So excellent. fastest time of the year. So. And who are the rest of this wonderful team? Robert Pedal. Rick Blanchard, John Roberts, Zach Lang, Jamie Travers, and uh, the Cox, Ben Colburn. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. And so how long have you all been rowing now? This is my third year. My third year as well, yes. Uh, my third year. My first. Uh, too many to remember. <laughs> and, uh, oh, I, probably eight or ten years for me, certainly more than that. <laughs> my first year as well. Excellent, excellent. So is there anyone that you want to say hi to or do a shout out to? Can I shout out to my Nan? Yes. Oh, I love that. I'll see you later. <laughs> love you, Mom. Love you, Nan. Love you, Mom and Dad. Love you, Mom and Dad. Love you, Ben. Uh, my whole family. And I think we should probably thank the rest of the Canadian Armed Forces. You know, I think, I think this is a big team here that we're pushing today. So that's, uh, that's pretty good to have them all behind us. Excellent. And same, just my dad. That's it. Excellent. But well, we're going back now to Laura Bell and Amanda. Thank you so much. We just finished the short course. So that was, I'm going to say, that nail was biting. nail biting. I was hanging on to the edge of my seat because it was neck and neck till the final minutes. Like we did not feel comfortable calling a winner and I'm okay with that because I do not want to be held responsible for saying the wrong thing. 
but what information do you have on those who just finished that race? Well, that information is uh, they should be very happy because they had a great time. Uh, well, we saw the unofficial time. They improved on their time trials time. And you know, when the races are that close, it's a battle of, uh, who used to say this? I think Mark Hayward, who can make the least amount of mistakes? Okay. Who can make the fewest mistakes? And it's because your nerves are going, your hands are, you know, if they weren't gripping the oar, they'd be shaking. Okay. And so you have to really keep your composure, keep yourselves, um, keep yourself together and try and exert as much pressure and rowing power as you can in that kind of environment is extremely challenging and we didn't see any lost oars any crabs caught is what the term is okay uh, we didn't see uh, you know from our vantage point on the camera everything looked like a clean race a close race uh, which is absolutely what you want to see so that's so cool so I know that's the short course and we had an ex we had an exhibition last year of women rowing the long course mm -hmm. I'm excited to get some feedback from anyone who's rode both, what their experience would be on, if they, if you could pick your race, ideally, would you want it to be the nail biter of, we'll call it the sprint of well, the short course or the track and field version of the long course? Really great question. Cause you know, it's just like any sport. Are you training for the hundred meter sprint or the marathon or the half marathon? Exactly. And it's not that one is harder or easier. They're different. Absolutely. So you're training for a sprint race on the short course and a more longer endurance race on the long course. And I actually have happened to road both. Oh, well then, <laughs> Amanda, share the secrets, trade I thought, secrets. I thought you'd never ask, but actually in the Harbor Grace Regatta last year, um, the Verso crew, who um, we formerly rode together on M5, uh, and the some of that crew went on to row um, under the flagship sponsor of Studio Verso, in the first time that the women's crew was allowed to row the long course last year and they did the out-of-town regattas and one of their members couldn't make it so i stayed busy on the um rowing machines throughout the winter and i hopped in the boat with them for the harbor grace um regatta where the harbor grace regatta too allowed the women to row um in the long course and it's so different i gotta okay. say it's really you know you're racing for double the amount of time it's kind of like the women's race it's almost like you blink and you'll miss it even though it doesn't feel like that <laughs> when, you're you're, doing. when you're doing it but the longer the row it's uh just more t you have to be a bit more strategic about how as a crew you're going to get through those kind of slower points of the race kind of the no man's land third quarter um, so it's very different events both very enjoyable i'm just glad there's an element of um choice now okay yeah so we have the men's or a men's crew rowing the short course at 11 and the crew verso will be rowing the long course so it's super exciting so while we wait on the announcements to continue mm -hmm. speaking of choice so if you were to row again mm -hmm. which one would you pick i think just to support this change and uh because i've always been like a more endurancey person i would try the long course okay but it doesn't take my love away of the short course uh in 2018 we trained our butts off for three years and we managed to go a shade under the previous course record of 456.7 oh, we rode wow. 456.1 so i just want to leave that there and, and only row again exactly. unless i have to okay so you don't <laughs> want to mess with the record with which your name is attached you want Exactly. We'll start new records. Yeah, to let's start a name. new thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that's what I do. I'd okay. opt for the long course, and then, you know, if we have, if someone came along and challenged a 456 one mark on the short course, then you're back in the boat. Yeah, get me okay. out of here. All uh, right, you're. You hold my I mic. I will hold the mic. I, I will run down. <laughs> you attach a little dummy cam D so we can have first hand view of what's going on because drone footage would be great. Yeah. But to see you rowing would be something actually with that uh m5 crew we took you know so much technology we've been talking about the drones all morning with our m5 crew we used to use a gopro okay yeah so either the coxswain would wear a gopro or he'd um dean hammond was our coxswain of m5 he'd mount the gopro onto the footstops of the stroke seat so we could get that rower's vantage point i would pay good money <laughs> to see what that rower's vantage point was from a GoPro. Yeah. Just to see the faces, the energy, and maybe hear what a good coxman 
would be saying to motivate you guys to get you rowing. Yeah, so. it's absolutely really cool. And uh, Katie Wadden, who was our stroke, and it was up close on her. And when we came across the finish line, she kind of, put, we call it a spaghetti noodle. Her oh, she sp spaghetti noodles into the bottom of the boat and just collapses with exhaustion. Absolutely, because yeah. like that's, you're talking bursts of energy to keep you guys going. So I fully saw when we had the the long course where the men were at the end, we're like, I'm done. It's time to lay back, take a couple minutes to catch my breath before we move on to one receiving our medal because everyone deserves a medal for participating. Absolutely, oh. yeah. So we're lining up the fourth race a day here of the day, the 920 CNA Mercantile Senior Women's Race. Um, so as has been tradition in the last number of years, more uh, female crews than male crews, so we don't have to combine the categories. Okay. This is all senior women. So on stake one, we have Momentum Health, coxed by Carolyn Cook, rowers Catherine Ducey, Dana Hogan, Kathleen White, Vanessa Alexander, Leslie Marie Leahy, Allison Summers, Kellyanne Roberts, Lindsay Hallwell. They're in the yellow okay. tank tops on stake one. Some of my swimming friends in that boat, I know. Okay. On stake number two, I am going to make sure that I pronounce this right. Which one? It is, they're rowing in the President's Choice, Pug Lisevich. Pug oh. Lisevich. Uh, Coxon, Melissa Snow, Stroke, Valerie Byrne, rowers Charmaine Wiseman, Melissa Doyle, Stephanie Bolger, Stacy Marin, Vanessa Babstock, Spares Nicole Bolin and Shannon Costello, and the coach Clyde Tucker. Okay. In stake three, rowing in the Oz Network boat, we have All Star Rebar, Coxon, Michael Shea, and the rowers are. Uh, stroke, Stephanie Legassi, Heather Tizard, Erica Brown, Kristen Strickland, Valerie Piper, Anna Cook, and Spare, Stephanie Myers. Very happy to be sponsored by All Star Rebar again this year. Stake number four in the Smith Stockley, the Carpenter Millwright College, Cox by Gary Collins, Stroke, Kristen Hines Brothers, Alicia Witte, Charmaine Freak, Andrea Murray, Michelle Hines, Nicole Smith, and spare Betsy Nicholson. And stake number five, the Newfoundland Herald. St. John's Home Hardware is the sponsor of this crew. Cox and Jackie Warfield, they're wearing white tank tops with red chevrons down the side. Rowers Patricia Churchill, Marina Lethbridge, Jeannie Snow, Tracy Pittman, Beverly Kennedy, Kennedy and Susan Byrne. And we can see here they don't have any spares listed. Uh, and, you know, sometimes the spares really make the season possible. Yeah. So awesome to see the second short course race of the day getting underway here. Um, so before the race, before the gun goes off, a spare is there in case someone can't make the race, right? I am correct in understanding that's the role of a spare. Races and also practices. Okay. And uh, crews, you know, treat this spare role differently. What a great shot of oh, all the boats that's here. That's beautiful. Lined up. But some spares train with the crew, do everything um, just in case on race day they need to jump in and be part of the competition. And other crews don't rely on spares at all. Okay. They want to have their core sticks there at all times. Um, no one missing out. So we saw a little bit of splashed water there yeah. at the start on stake four from the Carpenter Millwright College, uh, but it looks like they've recovered nicely and we're off to another great race. So we've got some excellent race results here from the first short course race of the day. Yes, absolutely. So now the call can be made and it is all, it is like milliseconds difference between Noonan Piercy and Hydraulic Flow Limited and Hydraulic Flow Limited. High hold, Flow Draw Lick. High Flow Draw Lick. There we go. <laughs> I Maintaining got their title. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be a gr another great race again tonight. High Flow Draw Lick 515.83. Not even, you know, a point for a quarter of a second between High Flow Drawlic in first and Noonan Piercy in second. So I don't feel bad that I couldn't see. No. Um, so that was excellent. And we're a minute into this race here now. And we see in the yellow tops, Momentum Health uh, being coxed by 
Uh, long time rower and coxswain Carolyn Cook, they're going down stake one. Um, a lot of, you know, a strong cardio bases in this boat uh, as these athletes have participated in endurance swimming, uh, distance swimming, and now they're uh, doing their best at the Royal St. John's Regatta. So that is wonderful. They are, see, I think I'm going to say I prefer the short course. <laughs> the nail biting, nerve wracking yep. tension of it all is definitely going to so far be my favorite. It's certainly better for the spectators. Yes. I can, I will agree with that because uh, if you want to, you know, jog down and watch the turn where the race is, where the race is, you know, make or break the race at the short course turn, it's possible to get a really great view of that from out on the slide seat docks. Yeah. Um, however, the long course turn is further away and it's harder to get a good view of it. So it appears to me here that the crew on stake three yep. is going in first. And that is All Star oh, Reaver. Oh no, we might be going in. Oh, maybe. Ah, yeah, ah, good. Ah, see, this is the nail bitingness <laughs> of it all for us. Well, yeah, it's really. Um, it could go to either. At this point, we're watching the turns, so you want to keep close to the buoy. Okay. You want. You don't want to go too far below the keg or, or above. I guess if we're looking at on the screen, because that's seconds. That's costing you seconds. So now. Each crew has a sequence for when they get their stroke or port side rowers to pick back up and everyone's rowing in time again. But you're absolutely right. It looks like the crew on stake one, uh, Momentum Health is picking up. Um, See, it seems like they did the turn first, but it seems like stake three seems to be coming back and picking, oh, this is, this is gonna be another nail biter. Yeah, but so I the time to beat for the crew in this race the fifth place time in the first short course race was 525.31 by the Cal Group. Okay. So if we see this first place crew post a time faster than 525, then they'll earn a berth in the championship race tonight. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in this all, we're talking about making the turn across the buoy. I think my biggest fear would be to hit the buoy and throw <laughs> the entire course. It's happened. Okay. Yeah, it's happened. And you know, when you hit the buoy, then the, the rowers on the stroke side have to lift their oars over the buoy. Oh. And so the boat can make a clear passage. So the Momentum Health is having a very clean row. They're looking really strong here as Carolyn coxes them through the final and fourth quarter of this short course race. Uh, some excitement going on next to us as the uh, Lieutenant Governor Judy Foote has just walked onto the Rogers set. Yes, she'll be joining us a little bit later to chat about her experiences as Lieutenant Governor and being part of the Royal St. John's Regatta. But tension on the race. Oh, yep, I'm thinking in the first stake, that's Momentum Health that seems to be leading the charge now. Absolutely. With, with a decent distance between them and the rest of the rowers. Absolutely. And so they'll be gunning for that 525 mark to see if they can knock the Cal group out of the top five spots for the championship race tonight. Looking really strong oh, here. The synchronicity of this all, I, I don't think. It's impressive. It, it's a, literally one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Yep. Just keeping getting six rowers in line, keeping them motivated, making sure no one is even a stroke off is fantastic to see. There's also ducks, you know. <laughs> we forget about course <laughs> obstacles being the wildlife. Absolutely. So sometimes if the ducks go out, don't get out of the way fast enough, they may unfortunately come into contact with one of the um, rowers' oars. And it looks like unofficially we are going to have an upset here as the Momentum mm -hmm. Health rows at an unofficial time of 5.30. Oh, no, that's not true. So it looks like the same five who rode in the first women's race will stay put. Yeah. And the second place crew here uh, comes across. That was the All-Star Rebar. The third place cr coming across is Puglisevic. Puglisevic. And then coming in fourth and fifth, stake four, followed by stake five, Carpenter Millwright College, St. John's. Home hardware, excellent, clean race by all five rowers. Oh, wow. This and is... This is so exciting. I really, like, honestly, I don't think I could have a better seat, except I was in 
one of the boats. But <laughs> having you here to coach me through all this, I have to say, we are a dream team of getting through this. So. Yeah, and I know, you know, you might think watching the races, oh, that crew is disappointed they didn't place first, but absolutely not. For the Car Carpenter Millwright College, who just came in there on stake four, it's their first year rowing together. Oh, my goodness. Uh, so they did wonderful to come in the, you know, they're in the top 10 women's crews or the short course crews of the day. They have a combination of new and experienced rowers, and they said some of their rowers like early morning practices, and some of them don't. <laughs> I am going to be on the team don't. So it's all about compromise. You I, know? I feel like if we had to do this, if I was required to row, I would need to be an afternoon or midnight rower. If you <laughs> wanted a good row out of me, we're in the water at the stroke of midnight. I'm a night owl versus... Go straight from the club. Literally, it's like George Street Fest <laughs> to Kitty Vitty and we're ready to go. Oh, well, I appreciate your cheeriness when we showed up at 6.30 or 7.30 There 30 was an morning. energy drink that was handed to me <laughs> to ensure we were ready to roll. And I was guaranteed, I promised that I wouldn't crash after the one I need to drink, and that is my promise to keep going through this, that there will not be a one o'clock nap time break. Well, so far, so good. I, we're holding firm. Yeah. So and I just want to say the Carpenter Millwright College and their media info, they asked us to spend out a, send out a special thank you to Sean Skinner, uh, specifically, who helped them design their outfits and their sponsor, um, the Carpenter Millwright College. They said a special thank you to Sean Skinner. And um, same thing, the Pug Lisa Vic crew want to thank their sponsor. Um, very excited to continue to be a part of the rowing community. And thanking Pooch Cove Pharmacy as well, uh, who got them started. Many of the rowers on the 25th Pug Lisa Vic crew have been rowing since 2015. And now we are welcoming to the set the Honorable Lieutenant Governor, uh, Judy Foote. Hello, Her Honor. Well, how are you? Been long time no see, glad to have it's you. Nice to see you again. <laughs> so we are here for the 205th Royal St. John's Regatta. Yeah, absolutely we are. And you have been Lieutenant Governor for a few years now, so this is not your first regatta. No, and I serve as the Vice Regal Patron for the St. John's Royal Regatta. So I'm going to need you to explain to me <laughs> and our viewers what exactly that means. That means that uh, I make a point of supporting the regatta in whatever way I can, uh, attending the events that they that they host, but being here on this very special occasion, which we all look forward to, it's such an uplifting experience to be here. It's all about community. Um, so being here in my role is really important for me, and I'm hoping it is for them as well. So I'm gonna ask the question that I want to know, because I'm not a rower. We have Amanda co-hosting, who is a rower. Lieutenant Governor, have you ever road in a regatta? I, I have not. Okay. I have not. And, and the next answer is I have no intentions of rowing. <laughs> okay, so we've already realized that I'm not going to row and Hawksman is going to be my official title if we were to participate. Absolutely. Do you think that is where you would find yourself? I would probably enjoy that, but you know, I like watching. Okay, so and you are I envy all of those who row. I so admire them. Um, there's, I, I think it takes courage. I think it takes strength of character to come down here because you have to practice an awful lot. Uh, yeah, we were going through that. Oh, some are in it for a year, and I know that level. Of, <laughs> I haven't. I've broken my New Year's resolution each year when fitness is on top of that. <laughs> so that level of commitment doesn't sit for me. But do you? Do you think you would do it? Do like if someone said, Judy, Fa, we we're doing a former lieutenant's governor got <laughs> her race. Could we convince you to participate in that? Absolutely, you could. I'm okay. very easy to convince when it comes to something that's really important. Okay. So being here with them, doing whatever I can to support the regatta, and just to I admire. I mean, this regatta doesn't happen on its own. It no. takes a lot of hard work, and they have a 50-person. Um, volunteer committee and imagine bringing 50 people together to put off something of this caliber and uh, to do it annually exactly it's amazing so I applaud everyone who makes this regatta possible mm -hmm. especially in when the 200th regatta was around five years ago it was very special and you were certainly involved in those celebrations 
and uh, the Platinum Jubilee for the 200th. And Absolutely. So exciting. Well, and last year, of course, the regatta was for the Platinum Jubilee. Exactly. And uh, this year, it's the first time that the regatta is taking place when we have a king. Oh, we absolutely forgot oh that. Oh my goodness, so we, that's right. How does this affect this royal event now that we have a king and not a queen? Well, it really doesn't affect the event, but what it does is that any reference I make, it's as the king's representative now instead of as the queen's representative. Excellent. So this pin I'm wearing here yes. is actually the coronation pin. Okay. Uh, so it has the uh, king's okay. cipher, which is what you'll see on the flag that flies when King Charles is in residence anywhere it's the cipher that flies mm -hmm. so, um, so this is the pin and uh, it is the coronation pin did you attend the coronation no no we have a, a wonderful governor general who represents all of the provinces all the lieutenant governors and the territorial commissioners so um, her excellency attended and represented all of us oh wow so seeing as this is King Charles's first regatta being a king do you think there'll be maybe a special message going out to him letting him know how cool this was that this is his first oh always of and of course I'm all over social media as exactly. you know right I, can, I do my own uh, uh, Facebook I do my own Instagram I do my own Twitter account so everything we attend because we believe that government house and lieutenant governor needs to be a part of the community we cover everything so today there will be a post following being here about what is happening at the regatta and they follow everything. I've been wanting to get to yoga on the grounds oh. but I haven't been yet. It looks awesome. It's happening today. Is it? Even though the regatta is going ahead because not everybody comes to the regatta. I don't yes. know why but I know. I mean it's a large crowd. Some it's people large it's not crowd. something that everybody wants to do. Even though we end up with about 50,000 people here annually oh, at wow. the regatta. That's but uh, Yoga on the Lawn is going ahead. Thank you to Nova Yoga. Excellent. They volunteer, their instructors volunteer volunteer their time and their talent, as does Sheila Leonard, who does Tai Chi Cha oh. on the lawn on Tuesdays. And on Thursdays, Sheila does uh, Wisdom Healing Qigong. Okay. And now we have on Fridays, and these are all free wellness breaks because wow. our volunteers give, up Make it give their leadership to lead all of these sessions. So on Fridays, we're now doing Dallas Tai Chi on wow. the lawn so four wellness breaks a week so those two words you know community and volunteers really go hand in hand and it's what it's all about hey Absolutely. at the regatta keeping our community members well uh, a lot of good great people doing hard work to make that possible absolutely yeah. yeah so we were talking earlier about which races were our favorite i have committed to being a short course gal in terms of the nerve wracking nail biting <laughs> of it all and Amanda was saying that if she were to row again, she would do the long course. So since you're not rowing, unless we have a lieutenant governor race, obviously, <laughs> which would you say would be the one that you are cannot miss watching? Oh, my heavens. I watch. I particularly, as a first woman lieutenant governor, yes. I'm really drawn to the races that involve the women. And it's just so exciting for me, particularly when they're setting records, oh, yeah. you know, and now they're doing the long course. Exactly. And I get so excited about the challenge that comes with that and the fact that they're stepping up to the plate. And in fact, they wanted to do that. So anything that the women are involved in, in terms of races, I'm watching. Oh, now, gives me goosebumps. Okay. Right. I'm still interested in men's races, of course, yeah, of yeah. course. <laughs> but as the first woman lieutenant governor, I think I have an, I, I have a responsibility okay. to promote all of the women who do such wonderful things. Well, it's working because for a number of years, the majority of regatta participants have been um, crews fully comprised of women. So, okay. Oh, yeah. see, yeah. look yeah. at that. Another I'm fact. Learning <laughs> so much, so many facts. It's her first passed. regatta. It's my first Isn't full it? regatta. Like I've happened to, when I was pregnant earlier, be part of one of the team, one of the boots that was set up. But this is my first time that I'm going to be here for a majority of the regatta. It's oh, my lovely. first time hosting with Rogers, watching the races, because usually I came for snacks. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> and I'm also quite enjoying the waft of smells coming from the snacks that uh -huh. are. What's your favorite lakeside yeah. uh, regatta tradition? You know, we, when we brought, uh, I was just talking to a young mom who had two little children, and I said, we always came down and brought our children. We have three children. And you spent a fortune trying to win a stuffed toy. <laughs> and you would try, and you have three children, so you had to spend That's a lot it. of money. You could have gone out and bought the toy for a lot less, but it's so important to support the vendors and support the charities. Absolutely. So just 
being here and being part of that community is really important because they all do good work as well. Absolutely. Okay. And then after you spend your fifty dollars on not winning, <laughs> not winning the toy, another family walks by with the most gigantic toy, uh, yeah. <laughs> and the kid looks at you like, as, "How come you couldn't me. do that? How come you couldn't do that? Right? Try harder, mom." Yeah. <laughs> so if you were, so we're going to obviously be partaking in all of the joy that has to be with regatta. Is there one stop that you're making in snacks today? Oh my heavens! I'm I'm trying to avoid the snacks. <laughs> I mean, avoiding the snacks. I'm trying. I'm okay. going to lunch with the with the uh, oh, volunteer the committee. committee. Okay. okay. To we will to forgive it then. thank them okay. uh, for all of their hard work to make this happen. So I'm looking forward to that. Okay. But you know, I'm. Are you salty? I have to say this. I'm salty. Okay. So <laughs> I'm. Uh, uh, I have a sweet tooth as well, but. Poutine is one of my okay. favorites, right? Canadian classic, right? Okay. So yeah. I, I try not to have too much of it, but it's hard to not to. Well, <laughs> so did you notice my pink hair? I did. I, I was going to comment on that I didn't before we let you go. Hair. It's so, awesome. Very so festive. I know. I took my granddaughter, who just graduated, she's 17, to see pink. Okay, so pink hair for pink. Did she fly from the ceiling and everything? Yes, she wow. did. It was an amazing concert. We also went to see Hamilton, of course, the musical. But when we were going to see pink, and I said, I'm going to have pink hair when I go to see pink. So if you Perfect. weren't already the coolest lieutenant governor <laughs> that ever was, the Deal pink hair seals it. <laughs> want to thank you for chatting with us, uh, and we're going to so throw much. it to the winner's circle where Mitchell will be talking to our third heat winners. And we'll Lovely. Well, thank you. Thank you for can having me. Can I get me. a selfie of us? You yes. sure can. <laughs> Thanks so much. Oh. It's good to see I you. I hope Raylene got that one. Hey, this this is Mitchell Drydak with a high fro hydraulic here. Uh, how did you introduce yourself and your team? Hi, I'm Catherine. I row six. Excellent. I'm Robert Roach. I'm Coxon. Nicole Hamlin, row number four. Sarah East, row number two. Teresa Butler, number five. Jenny Wadden, number three. Tracy Roach, number one in the boat, number one in your heart. <laughs> I love that. Fantastic. So. <laughs> you guys have quite the star-studded record. Uh, how does it feel to be here once again today, and what did it take to get here? Um, thank you, Mitchell. Um, yes, yeah, so High Flow Hydraulic, we've won the championship the past three years, uh, but we actually had a really challenging year so far this year. We won Discovery Day, but we came fourth in time trials, and we didn't have a good race in Placentia, so today we were just going to go out and row hard and see um, if we could come out on top, and we did by a second, so it's great. Good stuff. So what did you do to kind of like rebound from that, like a little bit of disappointment in the past? Um, what, what did you guys do to kind of come back from that and, and show today? Yeah, well, we're all experienced rowers. I've rowed for 25 years, uh, and most of the girls have rowed for at least 15. And we've won a number of championships, including uh, Nicole, number four, set the record with Oz. And uh, so we're all experienced, and we had a fantastic program, and we all like each other and like rowing, so we just stuck to the program. Good stuff. That's excellent. And we've got quite the nice day outside. We were just chatting about the absolute heat wave that we've had the last two weeks. And honestly, it is perfect today. Um, do you have any closing remarks? Anyone you want to thank? Uh, we'd love to thank our sponsors, uh, Cheryl and Cal Dwyer. Uh, it's the sponsors uh, who make the regatta possible. And we have the best sponsor on the pond. And we row super hard for them. So thank you. Good stuff. Thank you. Any shout outs that we want to do tonight? Today? So to David. <laughs> okay, David, you did it. You did it. Excellent. I promised I'd give JK Conditioning a shout out for my big legs this year. So perfect. Look at that go. Momentum because we did a lot of our ergs there. Beautiful. Well, fantastic, everyone. Thank you very much. And we're back to Amanda and Lorbell. All right. Bunch of characters on that high flow hydraulic crew. Uh, we kind of hear the interviews, unfortunately, but I could tell um, they're happy as they should be with their squeaker of a win, uh, less than a quarter of a second over uh, the second place crew of Noon and Piercy. And another nail biter for um, between Smith Stockley and Don Burke. Their times were 520.36 for Smith Stockley, 521 for Da and Burke. So we're getting underway here now um, with the fifth race of the day. Looks like we're right on schedule, maybe even a few minutes ahead of time. Yeah. Um, at 9.40 a.m. And we have on stake number one in the Miss Tubular Universal, Universal Corporate Wear. And 
for his at least third time out there today already. <laughs> Gord Delaney, Delaney is in the coxswain seat. Uh, rowers Greta Colford, Georgia Ryan, Lily Byrne, Ella Duffett, Claire Murphy, Abigail Bridger, uh, Spare Emily Pittman, Manager Susan Byrne. And I know we will see some of their moms rowing later today as well. Okay. Stake number two in the Pomerloo. We have Stavanger Dental, Coxon George Wade. Just going to wait till, yeah, there we go. George Wade and the rowers, Caitlin Drover, Annabelle Earl, Haley Edwards, Olivia Weatherden, Cindy Marsh, Emma Strong, Lizzie Mori, Jillian Suley, and Karen Weatherden in the coach and manager spots. Looks like stake three is vacant. It's a four boat race, even though the capacity is five. On stake four, we have coal air contracting. Cox by Daryl Price, rowers Kathy Manning, Avery Cluett, Emma Griffin, Vanessa Elliott, Emily Edmonds, Candace Pollitt, and Allie Ryan. On stake five, Team Menchies. I believe this is their first time okay. uh, sponsoring, but Menchies is the frozen yogurt, right? The delicious frozen okay. yogurt. <laughs> Coxon, Courtney Langmead, rowers Victoria Davis, Claire Emberly, Jasmine Carey, Sophie Fudge, Sarah Grushi, Erica Loveless, Emma Vavasor, uh, Spares, oh, Spare, Emma Vavasor, and Jasmine Carey, coach Jennifer Brown, and manager Donald Emberly. So we already saw Courtney, who's coxing this team Menchies out here as a rower already yeah. today. So uh, race number five is underway, and not only are we on schedule, we are ahead of schedule. Who would have thought? I don't know, the committee, the regatta committee, I guess. So official times, race results from race number four, Momentum Health, 528.31, All-Star Rebar, 538.09, Pugly Stavec, 546.17, Carpenter Millwright College, 555, and a close finish, St. John's Home Hardware, 556. So certainly all those crews knocked a good amount of time off since their time trials time. And we have, the turn is already oh, taking wow. place here. I believe that is uh, Gord Delaney coxing his Universal Corporate Wear crew around stake number one. Um, rowing to see how well they can do. Going second around the turn is stake two, Stavanger Dental. Going third around the turn yeah. is stake four, Coal Air Contracting. And still approaching the turn, Team Menchies. Oh, it looks like someone has come to a standstill. We've just lost our monitor there, but the stake two got into a bit of trouble there on the turn, but they seem to have recuperated on the Stavanger Tentel, and they're moving again here now. Great shot of the Universal Corporate Wear rowing towards us here. Well, it was a great right. shot. <laughs> and yeah, you can see Gord there in his um, neon. neon high visibility yep. uh, vest. Of course, safety is a big uh, paramount here. You see the chase boats yeah. uh, are present for every race in case of any eventualities with safety and also there to monitor the rules and make sure the time guidelines are adhered to. Um, but yeah. So what are the rules of the regatta? Well, after the um, race previous to yours clues up, you have a certain amount of time to get in the boat, get your team ready. I think it's a 10 minute rule. They announced the 10 minute rules in effect and you have to get out, get ready and get to the starting line. Okay. Um, and violations like that, you will have a boat approach you and get you back on track. Okay. So you can see here, some of the rowers are rowing in hats, others are not. Um, so we'll see Connie Duffett later in Studio Verso. Yeah. Her daughter, Ella Duffett, <clears throat> is rowing here in number three seat yep. in the blonde and the black sunglasses there. And also Rhonda Bridger, her daughter, Abigail, is rowing in number one seat there. So okay. they're going by the marquee. They're doing all they can to get to the big forward on their seats where their legs are bent. Oh, I see the scooch see that we were the talking about. The scooch, that's it. That's a great word for it. I would call it the slide, but scooch is way better. Oh, they are working. And see, when I think slide, I think sliding down. So scooching all back and forth to get that. Yeah. So not only is it a bit of friction on your bum, but you're using the front of your calves, I guess, your front shins to pull yourself up oh. and also your hamstrings to pull yourself up. And then for your pushback, we call it the drive. You're really activating your quads, trying to go to full extension and full layback to get the most amount of the pressure from the beginning of the stroke called the catch 
to the end of the stroke, throughout the drive, to the finish. So that full body workout we were talking about, it is every <laughs> aspect. And then the mental aspect that we don't even think about while we're watching this, of how committed and focused they need to be to make their, to sure they're in sync with all their other rowers and the rest of their teammates, cluing into their own strength and energy levels and listening to the coxman. This is I'm, an all around, oh wow, and through. Wow. Already, that was. We don't great. have an unofficial time going, but I'm interested to see what their time was because they have a commanding lead. Yes. Uh, way to go, Universal Corporate Wear. Their time trial's time of 5:41. They were absolutely under that today. Over here, I think we have on the screen is Team Menchies. And they are still putting in work. Yeah, they're still taking it home there, uh, going by the boathouse. And here on the screen in the red is, I think it's the Coal Air. Oh no, this is the Stavanger Dental. Oh, they are just spent. Yeah. Great row by those folks. So Stavanger Dental, who just crossed the line, uh, rowing since age 10 and placed wow. uh, second or first over the years. And last year they came first. Really happy to have Stavanger Dental sponsoring their under 18 girls team, wow. allowing them to row again this year. Here we have on stake four coming through was um, the Coal Air Contracting. There's our pal Judy Foote, who we just got a Lovely selfie chat. with. Yes. Uh, presenting Momentum Health. So we have uh, some former swimmers in that boat, Leslie Marie Leahy and Dana Hogan, uh, being presented with and alongside their coxswain, Carolyn Cook, we have members of the regatta committee posing with the um, trophy with the Honorable Lieutenant Judy Foote and all of their coaches, co Coach Lindsay Hallwell, former championship rower, uh, there for the medal presentations. So Team Menchies, this is their first regatta. And so they are committed. Look at them. They're just really doing great, comprised of new rowers, experienced rowers, super dedicated. They, this is a definition of a multi-sport team as these female athletes are in other activities such as hockey, dance. Um, they love the significance and the tradition of the regatta and they want to give a special thanks to their coxswain, uh, Courtney Langmead, and their coach, Jennifer Brown, for believing in them since day one. All right, and then we're going to go back to the winner's circle and see what's going on down there. Oh, or no. maybe we're, Never, not. we're not ready at the She's winner's played. circle. That's fine. We are still enjoying chatting with you folks. It was not a chance to get rid of you. We do promise that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you now that this part is probably the best part of the day when uh, you're all done. So these crews, based on the times, with the exception of the universal corporate wear, um, they, may, they may have to row again this evening. But, but beyond that, these crews are done for the day done like dinner as snacks. we say snacks it's snacks. games of chance get on the bouncy castle enjoy the regatta 2023 um so it's a really nice feeling when you're sitting up there at the end of the race what i can say for them is that i can smell cotton candy so oh. if i were getting off there i would be running to cotton candy so if they're getting off their boats guys let me know how good it tastes and then we're going to be throwing it out to the winner's circle and i may or may not run to find said cotton candy <laughs> okay <laughs> Excellent. Hi, I'm back with the uh, Momentum Health team. Nice to see you today. Um, so how about we uh, introduce ourselves? So I'm Kathleen White. Excellent. Carolyn Cook. Uh, Vanessa Alexander. Leslie Marie Lahey. Allison Summers. Catherine Ducey. Dana Hogan. And Lindsay Hallwell. Fantastic. Thank you. So how does it feel to win? Like what came into this today? Uh, we did a lot of hard work this season. We gave our first crew last year and wanted to come back and see what we could do with it. So we got together and got a coach, um, Lindsay Hallett, and a new coxswain, Carolyn Cook, and our sponsor, Momentum Health, which took us back again graciously this year. And they're a health facility, so they have like rowing and everything up there, so it really helped with our training process this year. Um, they also have like strength training and everything that we've done, so it's been a great asset to have the, them on board to help us kind of get here today. Fantastic. Well, that's excellent. Congrats again. What uh, what goes into preparing for something like this? Like, do you folks have any kind of like, you know, pre-row rituals that you do? Safe for work, obviously. But uh, like, what goes into this the night before? Uh, the night before, we just all kind of did our own thing. We had a, a nice little picnic a couple days before as a team, and we're just um, really about just a routine that works for each individual, um, but staying connected and lots of little like fun chats back and forth and um, building each other up. 
Excellent. And the, the Lieutenant Governor uh, awarded you folks with the medal. That is fantastic. Congrats on that. Um, do we want to do any shout outs today? Any like uh, thanks or whatnot? Yeah, yeah. Um, again, thank you for our, our sponsor. I said them already, but we couldn't really have been here without Momentum Health. Um, thanks to our friends and family. They uh, <laughs> tolerate and put up with our long rowing <laughs> season. It starts in the winter for us this year. And then a big thank you to Lindsay and Carolyn for taking this on. And what? Oh, and, yeah. <laughs> and Ben, he's my partner, so I, <laughs> I shout it to him anyway all the time. Uh, he's uh, been here for years and just really helped with our technical pieces uh, as we got to move along. Good stuff. Well, thank you very much, everyone. Um, thank you to you folks as well, and we'll go back to Amanda and Laura Bell. And thank you, Mitch, for getting a chance to talk to Momentum. They seem very excited about their win, as I would be. Yeah, that was the Momentum Health crew who came first in the fourth race of the day, the CNA Mercantile Senior Women's Race. So they're certainly full of good energy and positive vibes after they uh, crossed the line first in a commanding lead in that race. So we can hear some fur friends who are also out here enjoying the regatta. And it is so great to see the wide variety of people and families and pets yeah. that are as committed to this as we are. <laughs> yeah, it's in full swing now. It's uh, going on 10 o'clock and we have dogs and strollers. Come one, come all down to the Royal St. John's regatta. <laughs> and the sun has broken through in some patches. So the sun is filtering in and that is so great to see. So. Unfortunately for the rowers, when the sun comes out, usually it means the winds pick up. Oh, oh. But see, hopefully... See, we're learning things. That is no fun for that. As Ashley said earlier today, the winds aren't supposed to go much higher than 20 kilometers an hour, and they're coming from the southwest. So that is favorable conditions. So we'll just cross our fingers that it, you know, pray to the wind gods that things keep light and uh, flat. And then with the sun, and the smell of all the delicious foods, it means a great time to remind you that if you haven't already entered, it could be your chance to win our barbecue prize pack, which is being sponsored by Home Depot. And if you're wondering, how do I get myself one of these beautiful barbecues? All you have to do is visit Rogers TV website, visit us on Facebook or Rogers TV St. John's, or if you're more of a phone person, feel free to give us a call at 709-701-8606 get your name in, get yourself a chance to win, invite both of us down for some grilled fun. We will keep you entertained as long as you keep us fed. And sponsors like Home Depot are also paired up with Steel Hotel and Spirit of Newfoundland who help the regatta be what it is. We wouldn't be able to have such an event without great volunteers and great sponsors because as we can both see, this is a can't miss event. Absolutely. I think if you're planning a trip to Newfoundland, you should absolutely coordinate it around the Royal St. John's Regatta. Um, they had a concert here last night, Shani Ganook. Uh, it almost sounded actually like the lead singer of Shani Ganook did one of the um, race starts. Oh, okay. Yeah, because they sometimes um, get like local celebrities, community members. As we heard from the Honorable Judy Foote, she will be announcing um, the exhibition race at 10.40 a.m. We'll where we'll have Studio Verso, comprised of all women rowing the long course, and we'll have another crew uh, comprised of all men who will be rowing in the short course. And that crew is called the- Ooh, drum roll. Uh, the India Gate. So- <gasps> Ooh, delicious. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, or no, sorry, the crew that will be rowing uh, the short course is the senior Smith Shockley men's. Okay, so not delicious, but still a great <laughs> team to be rowing. Yeah, and it's old, you know, not old, but veterans of rowing, uh, guys, who men who have been down here at the pond since I was growing up, um, rowing in that race, the Smith Shockley senior men's, Coxon Yvonne Knight, uh, Rick Kosh is a stroke, John Hart, who was working at the boathouse previously, Dave Curran, Jimmy Wade, Sandy Snow, Blackie O'Leary, and Spare Rob Prouse. So they're going to kick the short course bucket and see how it goes at 10.40 a.m. And that race will be started by the Honorable Lieutenant Judy Foote. Okay, and we will be right back with you folks after a short break. So use this as your chance to fill up your beverages and come back and join us in about two minutes or so. Enjoy the 
some quality ingredients. <laughs> Listen, what you won't find at Marie's Mini Mart, homestyle bread, sandwiches, plus a variety of artisan breads and delicious single-serve desserts available exclusively at our Frecker Drive location. Marie's Mini Mart with 25 locations wherever you go, there we are. Hello, I'm Loidera Cueto. I'm here at the rooms where we just finished recording a Sharing Our Culture series. This is a place where you get to meet amazing individuals from diverse cultural backgrounds who are making significant contributions to the social, cultural and economic development of Newfoundland and Labrador. Hi, I'm Darren Han. We have an exciting new show coming this fall called Pocket Universe. We introduce you to a variety of artists, filmmakers, and actors who share my love of sci-fi, horror, and all things out of this world. Newfoundland and Labrador has so many talented people in this genre that we can't wait to have them tell you their stories. Watch out for Pocket Universe coming this fall to Rogers TV, Channel 9. Share in the joy and laughter with Spirit of Newfoundland as they celebrate 25 wonderful years. Join your favorite spirit performers as they toast a quarter century of fun, food, and fantastic music. For ticket information and upcoming events, check out spiritofnewfoundland.com or phone 579-3023. Spirit of Newfoundland, a proud sponsor of the Royal St. John's Regatta on Rogers TV. Okay, welcome back to our live coverage of the Royal St. John's Regatta, the 205th running of this event. We've just got underway here with race number six. It's a three boat race, the Rogers Women's Masters Race. On stake one, the furthest boat away from you, we have Steers Insurance, Coxon, Michael Shea, rowers, Cindy Roach, Sarah Anthony, Carolyn Cody, Jennifer Windsor Brown, Kimberly Horwood, Rhonda Bridger, and spare Leona Rockwood. Uh, stake two is vacant. Stake three, rowing in the Oz Network. We have uh, spin, spin Drift Brewing, uh, Coxon Yvonne Knight, rowers Allison Hickman, Kelly Knight, Mary Rideout, Karen Power, Paula Ellsworth, Nevea Fudge, Spares, Cindy Hickman, and Sheena Coyle. Stake four is vacant as it's a three boat race. And in stake number five, in the Smith Stockley shell, we have Kent Building Supplies, Coxon, Russell Teuton, Stroke, Amanda Will, Jenny Bowering, Francine Keough, Shannon Stamp, Kate Chalker, Gloria Brown, Spare, Kelly Roach, Manager Dean Lear. So this is race number six the Rogers Women's Masters Race. What a great sponsor of this oh, race. That's fantastic. We get to sponsor this fantastic event and the rowers are already at the go. So they are three in this stake or do, are we missing any? No, we're not missing any. It's a three boat race. So at time trials, the fastest time out of these three boats is the furthest left on the screen established by Steers Insurance. 
they rode a time of 5.54. And in time trials, the Spin Drift Brewing rode a time of 6.21. But you'd never say it now because these two teams are neck and neck for first place as they're approaching the orange turning kegs. And in third place, is Kent Building Supplies on Stake 5. And Kent, as we were talking to Shannon earlier, this is their first time as a sponsor for the Royal St. John's Regatta. I, I so think she might have had something to do with exactly. that. Exactly. She said she, that they came to her, but I know that it's all the hard work she was doing earlier to prove the, the benefits of being a sponsor of such an event. So some official race results from race number 5, Universal Corporate Wear of 538.37. Vanger Dental collecting their medals behind us, 621.03. Coal Air Contracting, 640.42. And fourth place, Team Menchies, first time, 728.93. Great job by all those rowers. So, does um, Universal Corporate Wear's time put them in? It does not. Okay. So, Universal Corporate Wear, I'm sure they were hoping to. Um, crack it but not this year but i'm sure they will be in that women or the short course championship race in years to come absolutely because they were definitely putting the pedal to the metal so to speak <laughs> this year's the race. oar to the floor the oar, there we go catchphrase of the day they put the oar to the floor so i'm just going to speak a bit about the steers insurance masters ladies who are on the far left of the screen here in first place at the moment um, so steers actually was the first sponsor i ever had okay. uh, when i started rowing in 94 95 and they've obviously stuck around have been a really wonderful sponsor to this um they call themselves a version of this steers insurance crew because it's oftentimes you see the same core members of the crew and different people shift in and out for different life circumstances but um this version of the steers insurance crew has been together for about three years wow uh it's their second year rowing in the masters category uh they were very proud to make the championship race last season especially because two of the rowers in this group before last year had not rowed in a championship race before oh wow um, so last year when it was their first year as a masters crew they got into the top five um women's crews times of the day and rode in the championship race and they actually knocked out just by a second Rhonda Bridger's daughter Abigail so we see Rhonda Bridger here in yes seat number one furthest away from the coxswain rowing her heart out here on the screen um yeah it was a tense few minutes I think as they were waiting to hear the announcements of times last year but this version of steers insurance crew did make the championship crew championship for the short course last year, so I'm sure they're hoping to do it again, but it's not its not looking like they will, but hey, what do I know? A like, lot, but we're still, <laughs> it's not over we're yet. counting on the race gods for them for this one. Exactly, and then with the Spindrift Brewing, another new sponsor, I think, um, not like, you know, the Smith Stockleys and Spears, it's great to see new sponsors, new energy being injected into, um, the rowing community. So the crew would like to thank Andrew Bell of Spindrift Brewing uh, for sponsoring the crew. He's a great friend and wonderful sponsor to um, the rowers in that boat. So the gun just went off behind us on official time of 5.43 for the Smith Stockley Masters women's crew. Okay. So we hear a gun at the beginning and at the end of the race. Yeah, the start line is also the finish line. Okay. Yep, for both the short course and the long course. And you know, in the, here we've got a great finish here by the um, second place Spindrift Brewing. And pardon me, they did, Spindrift did sponsor this crew uh, last year. And getting started on their finish at the moment is the Kent Building Supplies. So you can see them in the green here. Um, the Kent Building Supplies crew have rowed together for more than 21 years. Wow. They say they do it for fun, for the challenges it presents, and for the friendships they've made. And ain't that the truth? Ah, 20 years of rowing. That is, that's a lifetime for some people, but a full commitment to know that each year you're getting together with the same folks to train to do something that you love. Absolutely. 
such a great sport, keeps people coming back year after year. So we just are moving along right on schedule, a little bit ahead of schedule. Yeah. We wrapped up race number six, uh, the Rogers Women's Masters race. In first place was uh, Steers Insurance, followed by Spindrift Brewing, followed by the Kent Building Supplies. And here getting their medals, Jeez, I don't think Gord, the only time he's sitting down Gord, is when he's in the coxman absolutely. seat. Absolutely, <laughs> Gord is a committed coxman. Yeah, so this is a crew to watch. The Universal Corporate where um, they're under 21, um, still in high school, many of them, multi-sport athletes. They won that race by a commanding lead. If not next year, um, they're going to be in the championship race in years to come. I am absolutely sure of it. Their blue medals look super awesome with their blue spandex. It's all about the outfit. I fully am committed, as we saw with her honor, Judy Foote. Her outfit was coordinated. You are in stunning black, and I am pulling the black and red because, well, we're going to stand out either way. So Ella Duffett here holding on to the trophy for the um, that race. And I believe that's their sponsor. Um, Universal Lynn, Lynn Hindi is representing Universal Corporate Wear up there on the far left in the black. Yep. And then it's Gord Delaney. And on the far right, we have in the blue Tina Roach, who is their coach manager, or uh, sorry, Tracy Roach and Tina Ro bleh, Tina Ring Hunt. <laughs> so we call, we, she used to be Tina Ring, Tina Hunt, Tina Ring Hunt. She, they just went off the screen and now getting some shots of just the crew. <laughs> smidging to the right to get it just right for the uh, photographer. Great job to the Universal Corporate Wear. I hope they stick with the regatta because they're going to do great things. Absolutely. And I love how they're positioned perfectly. So they get the Royal St. John's Regatta winners in there. And we see our Lori down in the winner's circle getting a chance to chat with them before we'll get in to check with her later. So it's really cool to see these crew, this crew, even though they're in the under 18, women's category they've been rowing together for seven years since they were wow. nine and ten years old that is i did not think at nine or ten years old if a parent said hey do you want to row hmm. i would have jumped in but to see the commitment or to be committed enough at nine and ten to continue to do that that is that's definitely sort of something about the spirit of and these it's, athletes. It's really nice to see the squirt program starting to reap its benefits. Absolutely. They started rowing at age 9 and 10. They've been rowing together for seven years. They're not even 19 years old no. yet, so no wonder they're rowing so well. Um, that crew that we just saw getting their trophy involved in activities like soccer, volleyball, swimming, cheer, softball, hockey, oh. slide seat rowing, karate. Wow. Uh, what else? And they're all going into grade 12. So some of them attending Gonzaga, some of them at PwC, uh, one in Holy Trinity. Uh, and they have a lot to juggle. Like many of the rowers down here, they have jobs, they have families, they have other sports, uh, and they're hoping to improve on their performance at last year's regatta. Multi-sport athletes with excellent ambition and commitment there is definitely something to be said about the youth and now we're going to go down to mitchell down at the winner's circle they introduce themselves just like uh, they all introduce themselves. hey there we're here with the uh winners of this race universal corporate wear um excellent day excellent race congrats um why don't we introduce ourselves here uh i'm greta colford excellent. i'm abby bridger i'm ella duffett I'm Georgia Ryan, Claire Murphy, Lily Byrne, Emma Piven, and Gorge Lane. Fantastic. Thank you, everyone. So being uh, an under 18 team, I imagine you folks have a lot of responsibilities. How do you balance everything? Uh, well, I mean, we all have our own jobs, so it is hard to kind of balance going to work and getting up in the morning for this. But we, we mainly do morning swims because like 645 is the only time that we're all together. Good stuff. That is fantastic. I myself cannot imagine waking up at 645 every single day. So kudos to you. Um, how does it feel that the hard work paid off? Like, uh, what's what what's the feeling between you guys right now? Uh, we're, we're pretty happy. We've been together for nine years or eight. So we uh, we've been through a lot to try and get here. And it, it just feels good that after all these years, we'll be able to plot a win. Oh, my gosh. Yes, I can imagine. So you folks have been together for nine years, and that is like a significant amount of time. Did you folks know from the very beginning that the regatta was like the end game? Or did it start as just kind of like a fun thing? Like what was what was the beginning thoughts? And you know, well, we 
were only like what nine years old, so it was it was just for a bit of fun. And then after all these years, we just kind of stuck to, stuck together every summer. We'd come together in June and leave each other in August and come back again. Awesome. And now you're here. So uh, do we have anyone that we want to thank uh, before we cut to the host? We definitely want to thank our moms. Our moms plan everything for us. Awesome. So we'd love to thank them and our sponsor as well Excellent. for giving us these awesome uniforms. They look great. Universal corporate wear. Thank you. Thank you so much. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, ladies, for the interview. Um, and we'll go back to Amanda and Lorbell. It was so great to see Mitchell chatting with the winners from the Universal Corporate Wear Rowers and to kind of hear why they do what they do and how excited they feel about participating and winning their heat. That was fantastic. That was a really great row. Uh, lots more in store for today. We're just at the beginning of this awesome day. Absolutely. Lots of time for people to sign up for a barbecue. <laughs> if you haven't already, and I'm hoping you have, because we would love to join you. <laughs> um, for those who are just tuning in, we have been here since about, whoop, as the wind will say, since about seven, but we are having a great time. We are once again doing a wonderful shout out to our wonderful sponsors at Home Depot who are giving away a barbecue. So let's say you make it down here and you didn't find the food that hit your spot, you enter to win a barbecue and you can go home and grill up something. Steak, burgers, hot dogs, I'm not judging. I just want a plate, <laughs> but it's fantastic. And we have other wonderful sponsors like Steel Hotels and Spirit of Newfoundland who continue to help make this such a great event and can help you create your perfect weekend getaway. Not saying that you have to, just saying it might be fun. <laughs> <laughs> so as, and part of that uh, fun comes from the history and tradition of the regatta. And we're gonna have the opportunity to see in the next race, going to get underway shortly, race number seven, the Newfoundland Power Under 21 women's race. Okay. Um, we have actually the granddaughters or the great grandchildren of the late skipper Jim Ring. So he is a legendary name down here at the Royal St. John's Regatta and his great uh, granddaughters will be participating as members of the JAT excavating crew. Heritage. Yeah, so it's super awesome and it's uh, Mackenzie Peril and Renee Hines are great grandchildren of the late Skipper Jim Ring. Um, these girls who will see uh, these young under 21 athletes have been rowing together for a couple of years, also involved in other things like swimming, rugby, soccer, uh, cheer, and I can't wait to see them row. They were first in time trials going into this race, and it's a two-boat race. Okay. So why that happens, we've had some three-boat races, four boat races it's simply because there's not enough crews to fill a certain category so what this means is um, there's two crews in the under 21 race and we saw sometimes the masters categories are combined with the senior men senior women's um, just because it's more exciting for viewers to watch a five boat race instead of um, boats or races with fewer boats and with that wealth of information we're going to take a quick break <laughs> digest some of that get yourself a snack and then we'll be back for new races all right focused on quality hey, ingredients there isn't much you won't find at marie's mini mart home style bread sandwiches plus a variety of artisan breads and delicious single serve desserts available exclusively at our frecker drive location marie's mini mart with 25 locations wherever you go there we are hello i'm loidera quito I'm here at the rooms where we just finished recording a Sharing Our Cultures series. This is a place where you get to meet amazing individuals from diverse cultural backgrounds who are making significant contributions to the social, cultural and economic development of Newfoundland and Labrador. Hi, I'm Darren Han. We have an exciting new show coming this fall called Pocket Universe. We introduce you to a variety of artists, filmmakers, and actors who share my love of sci-fi, horror, and all things out of this world. Newfoundland and Labrador has so many talented people in this genre that we can't wait to have them tell you their stories. Watch out for Pocket Universe coming this fall to Rogers TV, Channel 9. 
share in the joy and laughter with Spirit of Newfoundland as they celebrate 25 wonderful years. Join your favorite spirit performers as they toast a quarter century of fun, food, and fantastic music. For ticket information and upcoming events, check out spiritofnewfoundland.com or phone 579-3023. Spirit of Newfoundland, a proud sponsor of the Royal St. John's Regatta on Rogers TV. a chance to refill your cup so we're going to be joined by a, our next guest we're getting a chance to talk to David Brazel find out what his experience with the regatta is David thank you for joining us thank you for having me no worries it's a pleasure to be here in this beautiful sunny but cloudy enough morning for uh, rowers and for spectators uh, we will alike. say ideal regatta weather 100 percent 100 percent so as we were starting a lot of our viewers know this is my first time watching and being part of the regatta from start to finish well, well, well welcome this is a historic event you're part of thank you Good so you. you are newfoundland they're true and true so how many times we'll say have you ventured down to the royal st john's regatta well i'd say i've been here at least 50 times, okay. maybe more. Right. I, I rode in two regattas in the okay. late 80s and early 90s. I rode with a team of uh, RNC officers here uh, for a couple of seasons. And, uh, you know, but what it's grown to now is spectacular in comparison then, and particularly the female rowers. Yeah. And the younger rowers in those days, there was less of those. Uh, but that's that's exploded and rightfully so you see the athletics that are here now uh, the course being changed that the ladies crews can do the full length of the course you know makes it competitive and uh, obviously is great for the sport and it's great for athletics and it's great for Newfoundland and Labrador as we you know promote this spectacle to the rest of the world to come and visit so when you rode it was just the men doing men were only doing the long course back then. exactly so now we can have men doing the short course if you were to get back into the rower seat what course would you pick? Well, at 60 years of age and hadn't <laughs> rode in 35 years, I'd be taking the shortest you and shortest the course short as possible. <laughs> okay. but, but the challenges of doing the long one, because it's a longer period of time, you got time to strategically yeah. plan for it. Uh, but I do, you know, a couple of times when we do training, a number yeah. of times, we would do the ladies' kegs, as they were called then. Yeah. Uh, so you, you could strategically plan sprints and see what power you had and when you could pick it up. So it was a big a big of a, a bit of an adjustment and difference and we could appreciate what the ladies were going through because yeah. they had a shorter period of time to know when they had to put their push yeah. you know to try to make uh, the turn the boys and then to come back up the pond so you know strategically great if i was back into it now i think anybody 60 and over i'd, I'd welcome <laughs> the uh, half course okay so when you were in the rower seat were you what position were you or was there a preference of where I, you sat I, I was number five because okay. uh, i was shorter than most other people in our in our boat so our, our stroke was a longer guy, so I'd, okay. when he would pull, I'd have to make sure that I could okay. keep in sequence. But we had a good crew, uh, but more importantly, we had great fun here, and we made uh, lots of good friends. I see, you know, uh, one of the marshals here, Campbell Fiend, we rode against them at the mm -hmm. time, and Jimmy Carroll became good friends with me. A number of the key people who rode over the years uh, became friends down here. Okay. So that's what it was about, camaraderie. Um, you know, I, I saw a number of the females crews who were only young then, like yeah. Miss Duff, who now is you know, legendary in this. She was only young starting then. It was only okay. like maybe a dozen female crews at that point. Uh, so, I mean, let's look where the sport has gone and, so and the legacy the people created. Oh, very much so. Okay. So, in the time of seeing the growth, what advice would you give? So, I know that I'm not going to be a rower. I'm a coxman. That is my okay. skill set. What did your coxman need to say to get you motivated when you were coming through, as Amanda so lovely informed me, as the dead zone? Well, I mean, at the end of the day, they'd say keep pacing yourself because okay. it would be instinctive that you wanted to pick up the pace or pull harder. But, I mean, as you know, there's a technique to rowing. It's not just about the muscular ability or physical condition. That's important, but it's about the technique. Okay. And, you know, saying when you go in, and, and obviously the coxswains have a skill set of, you know, how they're going to go into the boys, how they're going to turn, and how you're going to hold water. Yeah. Sometimes people dig in and hold too tight then your, your boat is not steady and it's not moving fluently. Uh, it's a technique to that. I mean, it took us maybe a thousand tries okay. before we felt comfortable on what our turn was gonna be as part of that. I, I will say, and I'm not sure if it was historic for the first time, but we had a female coxswain. Okay. One of the legendary uh, ring ladies uh, was, was our coxswain in 1989. And I, I don't think there was other 
There was no other female coxswain, coxswain a male team at that yeah. time, uh, which was part of it. And, and we did all the races. We did Harbor Grace and we did Placentia, and that was historic. But it was great for us. I mean, we learned, uh, you know, skill set from her, second to none. Our first year, uh, most of us had never been in the boat before. Okay. So it was not only was it a skill set learning, it was learning all the techniques and learning not to do habits you do when you row a dory out in Conception Bay, totally different. See, I've rowed nothing other okay. than a rowing machine. <laughs> so if you were giving me, as a first time rower, I've decided I'm venturing into this, would there be a position you would tell me to go ahead knowing that I am five foot seven and have minimal <laughs> strength in I, this? I take, uh, Number three or because three? you can watch everybody else and then you've got somebody behind you then who can anchor okay. it as part of that. But my advice to any of the rowers, and I, it's ironic, I ran into a couple of uh, kids, I say they're kids, they're probably 40s now that I coach in hockey, who are now rowing and one of their teams will be in the championship race today. Okay. Uh, and years ago when I used to talk to them and they'd ask about it, I'd say, look, first when you're learning it, technique, okay. uh, take it easy. The strength in that will come, pull, you know, pulling your oar, your water. But the thing is about balance and coming out of the water equally on all sides of the, the boat and going back in equally. So that's that's the technique there. And you have it, you got people six foot five and you got people five foot five. So okay. it's a whole difference on your arm length, but it's about getting in sync with each other okay. and the timing is very important. Okay. So as we see, we have the winners for okay. race six, the Sears Insurance. They were a strong team going in and watching them do this was fantastic. I am learning so much watching and I'm learning that I maybe never, but if we got a minister's regatta mm -hmm. going on, would it take much convincing to get you to be part of it? No, not at all. Matter of fact, the uh, the premier wrote a few years ago. Okay. Uh, now he's much younger than I am, but but oh, I have no secrets. qualms either challenging them or maybe we'd get uh, a whole team of uh, you know elected officials okay. to put a team in and go we used to do that for hockey charity okay. games for fundraisers and play some semi-pro teams or media teams so yes be more than willing to participate we've, we've convinced her honor to be part of a lieutenant governor's oh, team so we're trying to convince the rest of you oh, maybe next year's regatta we can oh, see well, you in the rower seat yeah. maybe we'd shorten the course <laughs> Only one way and, uh, and even uh, shorter you for are us. You are a former or you are committing to either the full short course or if we train enough, enough yeah. we will lead you guys on the long course. Oh, I'm in and I'll get my caucus members in and I would suspect the uh, Premier as a former rower too would be uh, engaged in doing that. I look forward to it. So when we get him in the seat, we'll let him know that the, tell, the tell gauntlet has been them. thrown yeah. down. Tell, yeah. The leader in opposition to challenge him to do the same. Okay. And we'll even row. Okay. In, in a sense of camaraderie, we'll row together. All right, so to, we're to hearing that a mixed team to go into yeah. it. All parties. Okay, we're, see, I, th we're coming to the table to have great times. That is what the regatta is all about, the camaraderie 100%. and finding a meeting point. Thank exactly. you so much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for having me. No and worries. enjoy the rest of it. Enjoy oh. your first regatta. Okay, it's fantastic. Thank you so much. And we are all the way into our race. It's already started. So we're seeing right now, what teams do we have? They are approaching the halfway through and we're going to go down to the winner's circle with Mitchell or Lori to chat about who's down there for the previous winners. Nope, never mind. I was wrong on that one. We are going to continue and they are approaching the halfway mark of the short course. Do you have... If you were going to guess as to who you think, because it's a, right now I think we are in a two-team race. We have um, the Jat Excavating Crew, a sponsor right now by the Eastern Valve Control. They are the under-21 women's shot in the dark watching the teams. Who do you think might take this one? Knowing that their time trials had the Jat Excavating team at six minutes and two seconds and the Eastern Valve and Control was at 6 minutes 27 seconds. Do you think they're going to beat their time trials? It's, it, it's, a, it's a big gap to make up there. You know, 5 to 10 seconds pretty well because the time trials, you only got a couple of weeks later to do that. Uh, but right now it'll be harder to make it up. And but you never know. Listen, this is a, about skill and technique. Okay. With that pr prediction, we're going to go down to Lori, down at the winner's circle. I'm now with the uh, winners of Steers Insurance, so it's nice to meet you. And what is your name? My name is Rhonda Bridger. Rhonda. Yep. Jennifer Brown. Cindy Roach. 
Sarah Anthony. Carolyn Cody. Michael Shea. Kim Horwood. Excellent. Congratulations. So what, yes. So what did you do to get here? Do you have like, you know, specific rituals that you do? What was your training like? Yep. Well, this year we started a little later. We always try to get started in January. Uh, this year it was kind of a different pace for us. We, we are doing Masters Race this year for a second time. But um, it, was, it was just a, we wanted to keep it cool. We didn't want to put too much pressure on ourselves. And I find that when we do that, we perform better. So we had a time of 5.49 today and won a race, and we're very proud of that. That is excellent. You guys seem like a great team. So, like, what do you do together? Like, I know that you're training together. Do you hang out outside of work? <laughs> this crowd, we've been friends for a long time, but this crowd does a lot of stuff, and their children do a lot of stuff. But Jane here is involved with coxman, coxing as well, so she does a lot of coxing. All these guys have competitive kids that are involved in all kinds of competitive sports, so it's a, we're a busy bunch. That's right, and yes, a few of you have kids that are actually rowing this year as well, so that's, you know, a family affair, which is excellent. So what does mean, like, what does winning mean to you? Um, it's nice to win, yeah. but for me, it's not everything. Um, with ra racing and rowing, it's it's all about time. So I find like you're always trying to beat your your last time, your best time, and try to get a bit faster. Uh, and you got to be realistic about things like you know what I mean. Depending on training, it can be you can be faster years, depending on what you're willing to dedicate to the to the sport that particular year. So um, no, about like winning isn't everything. It's, it's it has to be fun and it has to be your best performance. You just get out there and do your best and camaraderie. camaraderie. When Definitely. you find a group of six people and a and a great coxswain, I mean it makes winning all that much more fun and but the the main thing is that we're all a team we enjoy each other's company we enjoy just the activity of being on the pond and rowing uh, it's a real community down here as steers insurance our sponsor has been such a great supporter throughout the numerous years so we really want to say thank you to them uh, you know they are they're amazing and to all the sponsors who sponsor crews I mean without them you you wouldn't be able to have a regatta as well as the volunteers so we really appreciate all the regatta committee staff and the many volunteers that help steers be able to get out there on the pond and row so it's pretty awesome Ooh, excellent are there any personal shout outs that you want to do today well, we wanted to say hi and thank you to our family members who couldn't be down here today a lot of them are watching from home mrs casey's watching i know we all have the nurse crowd the cadigan crowd coal crowd bridgers windsors everybody <laughs> jays there's a lot of people down here already but there's a lot that can't be here and if we didn't have our a crowd behind us we wouldn't be able to do it we wouldn't that's the bottom line well, like i say congratulations and now we're going to go back to laura bell and amanda thanks yeah. Oh, perfect. <laughs> see that's the joy of the regatta you get so caught up in what's going on that you sometimes forget that you yeah. no it's, it's going to be interesting <laughs> Race number seven, Newfoundland Power under 21 women's race. And I'm not sure we did get a chance to go through those names, but uh, in stake number one in the Miss Tubular was JAT Excavating, the crew I was telling you about, which has some of the great the great granddaughters of the late Skipper Jim Ring, Cox and Kelly Boost, rowers Fern Zadell, Renee Hines, Jessica Cantwell, Mackenzie Perrell, Amber Pollitt, Cecilia Martino, Lila, Lila McCrate, and Petula Perrell. And on stake number three in the Iceberg Gold Shell, Eastern Valve and Control. Interestingly, Molly Ann Smith, who's a stroke, is the daughter of Deanne Smith, who is okay. a cousin. Okay, so good um, family. And also in the middle of the boat there, Eva and Elle Sullivan are twins. <gasps> um, we've got Kate Bruce there in five seat, Lauren Moores, Ava Bishop, Spare, Susanna Pollock Finley, main manager, Amy Bishop. Both of those crews had a wonderful and clean race. Uh, lots of family connections. Another youthful crew, the under 21s, you can see them here. Um, the JAT excavating, it looks like they're in grayish in the boat closest to the top of the pond, yep. closest to us. And then on the far side there um, is the uh, Eastern Valve and Control. So they had a great row. It'll be interesting to see with the final times how well they did compared to their time trials. Yeah, because these crews have been together. The Eastern Valve and Patrols have been um, rowing together since they were under the age of 14. And oh, they've wow. been, they're all students of um, St. Bond's. So that's, that's not this crew that's in the screen, but a different crew. But a bit more on the Eastern Valve and Controls. 
Um, they broke history last year as they rode in the first long course race, so the ones in the blue over there. Yeah. Um, they participated in the first ever running of the long course race. Wow. And yeah, definitely the youngest. Um, Molly Ann and Kate will be attending Memorial University in the fall. Uh, Eva, L, and Lauren will start grade 12 at St. Bonds. So. Wow. And to take on the challenge of doing the first long course when women were allowed to row the long course, that is, that just shows the youthful exuberance and commitment yeah. to the sport. And again, like we just need to give it a bit of time and then I think we'll see uh, higher numbers of, you know, women's crews competing in the long course or the full course and then the men's crews challenging the uh, half course formerly referred to as the women's course, but just one of many uh, excellent changes that are really helping keep the sport current and competitive. I was just in to grab a coffee while I was on my break and I saw there's a warm up area. Okay. Yeah, so that's a thing that didn't exist a decade ago in that um, there's rowing machines and the area is reserved for the rowers so that, you know, big part of sport is warming up and preparing your muscles and your body. Um, and you don't want to go out cold. No. So the rowers can take advantage of that warm-up area, the warm-up tent, and get on the rowing machines and do their warm-up routine before they get in the boat and race. So that is awesome. See, because I was curious of what that warm-up looked like. I was like, did you guys just warm up in the morning when you got down, or was there like some way to keep your muscles and joints moving before you got in there where you weren't exerting too much energy, but were still ready to go once Absolutely. you hit the... Yeah, like I was saying, there's a 10 minute rule about how much time you have in the boat once you're all ready and fixed and everything is ready to go. And that's not typically enough time to get all six crew members in the coxswain warmed up. So they take some time on the rowing machines before they even go near the boat to uh, start running through their routines. And that's some excellent drone footage as you can see the synchronicity of the rowers once again. Yeah, it looks like the Keith Bradbury Remax real estate rowing crew on the um, screen here doing just that. They are warming up. This is their second year. They're a team of pals. Some of them are my pals. Uh, great friends. We've got another family connection in that boat as Lauren Sinclair, Sinclair is in the boat and her father, Jimmy Carroll, is the coxswain, the one who's standing up there. Okay. Hi. See, like, so right now, would they have, because I miss it if they cross the buoy because they are stopped. Yeah, they're just warming up. Okay, see, yeah. there we go. Like, the race didn't start because I didn't hear the gun yet. So yeah, cool. they're out there for race number eight, which is starting at 1040. So okay. we're right on schedule here today. All right, today. we are, the regatta committee is definitely holding everyone to task and keeping things on schedule, which is fantastic. Running a tight ship. And speaking of running a it's tight a, ship. We are now joined <laughs> by his warship, Mayor Danny Brain. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you doing? Doing great, thanks. So, the Royal St. John's Regatta, which means this is part of your ship, too. Yeah, no, this is, uh, this is our signature event here in the city. Uh, it's, uh, it's iconic. Uh, it's, uh, it's just something that I personally look forward to uh, every year. And uh, it's, uh, you know, the uniqueness of the first Wednesday in August, having a holiday called in the morning, weather dependent, uh, is just what we're known for, is being unique. Uh, and uh, the, the regatta personifies that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So as mayor, what role do you play when it comes to working with the committee to make sure this event holds? Well, I'm, I'm mayor. I'm also on the regatta committee okay. uh, as a regular member, and I'm also an honorary member of the committee. So uh, I've been involved now for a few years. Uh, uh, you know, basically everything that uh, that's needed, we try to we try to do things to, to make things work its best. And we've made some great improvements here over the years. Uh, one of the big ones is improving the fan experience and the spectacle experience of the regatta years ago you come down and you saw the beginning and the end uh, but now with the screens at the top of the pond uh, you get the drone footage you get to see the full race and it's really got people uh, in but more involved in in the racing portion of it so we continuously look at ways that we can make it better for uh, uh, for the people who come down to the to the lake okay so we've asked everyone who's gotten the chance to sit down with us First of all, if they've rode in the Royal St. John's Regatta, so is that, oh, you look down, is that, are we, are we a proud former rower or have we never, like myself, stepped foot? No, I've, ne I've never rode, uh, but I've been coming to 
the regatta for as long as I can remember. Okay. Um, now ask him if he stepped foot on a soccer pitch. I bet he'll have a different answer. Yeah. <laughs> Mayor. I, I still play softball. Huh? <laughs> okay. Or I try. Okay. So <laughs> what would it take to get you in the rower seat? Uh, you know what? I would I would give it a try. One of the one of the good thing that's good things that's happened in the last year or so has been the use of the uh, of the short course yeah. and and allowing masters men's to to use that uh, for people that don't want to do the long course. They they just want to do the shorter run. So I think that'll encourage people who have a road to give it a try Absolutely. and uh, and to be able to compete on Regatta Day because it is about our community and it's about people who want to be a part of it. Absolutely. So are you saying that your first race would be a short course? <laughs> My sh my first and last will, <laughs> will be a short course. Okay, see, we are now getting the mayor to quote unquote unofficially on or off the record. He gets to hold saying that he will be rowing at some point. I think she'll be coxing a crew of politicians I, I, and yeah. celebrities. I am trying to convince our celebrity regatta crew <laughs> to join the race. So. Uh, can you imagine six politicians in a boat? We row? already uh, got they the They wouldn't opposition. go anywhere. <laughs> you missed it. We got the opposition saying that they were willing to do a mixed team for the regatta. So if we can get all the municipalities to come down and Yeah, row. we can. We can make that happen, but when you look at municipal politics, there's no political party, so exactly. we, we have to work with everybody, so Six, we're natural right? rowers. I think I think we are getting this together, Amanda. Yeah. You're hearing it first on Rogers. We are convincing some very interesting people. Speaking of working together, how does it... So this morning when we drove down here at 7 o'clock, um, I saw the city of St. John's barricades were ready to go to kind of redirect the flow of traffic, so this must be a big coordinated effort between the committee and the city to get everything flowing for today yeah right? there's a lot of coordination that happens uh, not only in traffic and that's a big one with our traffic department and our enforcement officers uh, but the cleanup of the pond for tomorrow yeah. and one of the one of the things that people are always amazed at is the how next quickly day, it happens you come down here and it's like nothing, nothing happened mm -hmm. and uh, that our staff are very proud of the work that they do uh, we put they put a lot into effort into it overnight they light up the the lake and and do the work so uh, there's a lot of coordination and collaboration that happens to make the regatta work and it goes off uh, um, very well. And certainly the fan experience you talked about, not only have these excellent dockside improvements been made, which was mm -hmm. another project with the city, but um, the concert that happens the night before. Yeah. yeah. yeah so Regatta Eve has become a big, Huge. Uh, a big night. Uh, and last night there was a very, very good crowd down here. There was bands playing in the, uh, in the bandstand, food trucks and concessions. Just a great evening. So it's turned into this two-day event now that's, uh, so, that's very, uh, it, that the public loves. And I know as a regatta committee member, you have the lunch, and how will you spend the rest of your regatta day? This afternoon, we'll uh, have, uh, I'll, I'll be down around the pond just watching the races and seeing people, and then our family always has a regatta party in the afternoon. Oh, cool. uh, we've been doing that for as long as I remember, and we'll uh, do that, continue that tradition again today. Perfect. We're going to ask you to sit with us while Amanda goes through what's going up for the next race. All right. Uh, race number eight, Sobeys General Workers Senior Women's Race. On stake one in the broker, the Lambs ladies, Coxon Emma Ramsey, rowers Rhonda Hart Pittman, Claire Avery, Joy Hart, Adrian Downey, Downer, Andrea Kearley, Dan Daw, Spare Katie Luther, and Angela Skinner. On stake two, Keith Bradbury Remax, who we just shot, saw a shot of as they were warming up in the white uniforms, Coxon Jim Carroll, stroked by Katie Handrigan, rowers Jesse Hanley, Lauren Sinclair, Ashley Lee, Lydia Stansbury, Katie Frazier, and Spare Carla Chater. On stake three in the Oz Network, Wellington At Atlas, Coxon Jennifer Windsor Brown, rowers Andrea Power, Yvonne Knight, Kelly Boost, Dina Cavanaugh, Cheryl Oak, Annette Larkin, Spare Janine Snellgrove, Coach Christina Ennis. On stake four in the Henley, we have Sisters in Fitness. I love it. <laughs> Coxon, Jim Ring, Rowers, Pam Fagan, Jennifer Parsons, Michelle Porter, Kelly Murphy, Juanita Bungay, Jennifer Murphy, and Spare Cheryl Coates. And on stake five in the Shell, the Newfoundland Herald. 
hot frost heat pumps. Again, we had iceberg heat pumps earlier, and now's the time for heat pumps. Maybe we can hear about a rebate <laughs> from someone. Cox and Derek Mercer, rowers Kim Hocko, Simone Lilly, Jennifer Golden, Ashley Rumsey, Carolyn Cook, Kathy Power, and Spare, Angela Skinner getting lined up and ready to go for the eighth race of the day, number eight at 10.40 a.m., the Sobeys General Workers Senior Women's Race. So, Mayor, before we let you go, if you were to haphazardly hedge a guess based on the information from the time trials, what show would you say would win this? So we had in um, stake one, their time trials had them at six minutes and 11 seconds. Stake two was at six minutes and 14 seconds. Stake three, six minutes, 16 seconds. Flat. Stake four, six minutes, 16 seconds and 0 0.80 and then stake five six minutes 19 seconds well, there's not much to choose from between these crews it's going to be a very <laughs> a lot of close tight race races. but yeah. i think i think uh stake three okay looks to be in very good shape they right. say that's the, the, that's the shortest fastest stake that's the yeah. myth out there so yeah. you must know a thing or two well he does know the pond and he, I think you might know a thing or two about the city, too. Exactly. <laughs> we want to thank you so much for chatting with us. Thank you. It's been a pleasure, Mayor, and hopefully enjoy the rest of Regatta Day. I certainly will. <laughs> so the rowers are at the buoys and at the start, and they seem to... So remind me again, the coxswains are holding on to the toggle, correct? The coxswains are holding the toggle. Sometimes they have to put it under the boat to make sure. So you can see the people in the reddish-orange uniforms closest to us. There's a... A, t um, a fin at the end of the boat yeah. that you pull on the ropes and that goes left or right to, and you turn the direction of the boat in that way. So okay. the, interestingly, and there's an eight second delay from when the gun goes off up there to when we see them moving okay. on our screen. So that's what's going on. That explains it. Yeah. So, and they're off. They're off and the drone is doing a great job of getting this start. You can see all the crews are off to a clean start. Yeah, and it seems at the very go, it seems so closest to us would be... Hot stake, frost heat pump, stake five. Okay, so yeah. stake four seems to be, from this footage, to be barely at the lead. Well, what would you expect from Sisters in Fitness? I, they are ready to row. <laughs> They're pulling out ahead, and yeah, we're just in the first minute of the race, so everyone's tied together, as is often the case in the short course. We go down together, and then there starts to be some distance when we start to turn uh, the kegs at the half course. As we can see that happening where the rest of the rowers are catching up to where we thought Sisters in Fitness would be taking the lead. Oh, That's this is right. going to be another nail biter, and I am so excited for it. Yep, lots of close races here today. And you can see uh, as they go by the boathouse, so this boathouse looks totally different than it used to. We now have um, the winner's circle. There's a plaque and with bricks commemorating all the former championship crews. It's really beautiful, nice place to spend some time um, here at Kitty Vitty Lake. And then across from the boathouse is the marquee, and that's an important marker for the rowers as they finish the start and also as they head back to the finish line. So when they get past the marquee at this point, it's time to enact the race plan, settle into your rhythm, uh, minimal settling on the short course, and then on the way back when they pass the marquee, you bump up and start your finish. So uh, the marquee also serves an official function of... Uh, Something to do with the regatta committee. Okay. <laughs> and people, the members of the committee are over there during the day. But as for the rowers, it mostly just serves as a landmark. So great drone shot. Sisters in Fitness, you're right, Laura Bell. Looks like they've got the edge here going into the turn. Okay. So, Mayor, Amanda mentioned that the boathouse has gone undergone some major renovations. Was that something that was part of the city, or was that part of the committee's work? Yeah, so back in uh, 2018, to commemorate the 200th anniversary of the regatta, uh, there was work done between all levels of government and the regatta committee to okay. make improvements around the lake. So the winner's circle, the uh, new dock, a new wharf on the other side of the pond by the marquee and also terracing the land over there to make it better for the concessions. So that definitely adds to the spectator experience. Yes, definitely. So uh, that was a great bit of uh, work done by the regatta committee under the leadership of uh, Charles Koch, who, was, mm -hmm. who did a lot of work on that at that time and was just inducted into the uh, St. John's Regatta Hall of Fame. Exactly. Uh, so yep. Every year they make the new announcements for the uh, Royal St. John's Regatta Hall of Fame inductees and also welcomed Ed, Ed Williams into the Hall of Fame this year. Yeah. 
championship record setting rower, part of wow. the uh, Crosby Industrial Crew that went the 851 back in uh, in 2006-7. And you are welcome to stay with us for as long as you want to for this, because we would love to get oh, sure. you as a non-rower, but expert regatta attendee point of view, because we have Amanda as our row expert, me as the newbie in the game, and you as a regatta attendee expert. Well, I got to tell you, the people on stake three that Mayor Breen predicted to come first in this race, the Wellington Altus crew, they row every morning at 5.15 a.m. Wow. See, yeah, not for me. I am a steady midnight rower. <laughs> well, midnight coxman at best. So what that means to get here in the boat and have yourself ready by 5.15, they wake up in the fours. They're close yeah. to 4 o'clock. They're up. They're on the go. Um, and they want to get their practices done so they can, you know, not, the earlier you get it done, it's like a, a flight, you know? The earlier it's out of the way, the less likely it is to get screwed up. I am going to it. disagree with you on the flight <laughs> because I will happily be ready for a 5 a.m. flight. And it was a good thing that the camera was focused on the drone footage because when you mentioned that 4 a.m. wake up, my stomach immediately hit my throat as to I could not be ready for physical activity and this kind of strenuous physical activity at such an early time. So once again, to the rowers and everyone who has ever attempted to row in a regatta, the level of commitment and dedication, I bow gracefully to them yeah. because I do not have it in me for that level of athleticism that early. Well, these young girls certainly do. On the screen here, we have the winners of race number seven, Newfoundland Power Under 21 Women's Race, JAT Excavating. So here on the screen, it looks like just the six rowers. Uh, their coxswain may be rowing in the next race, but for some reason, she's not there with them. Uh, so this is the Keith Bradbury real estate team in the white uh, coming up the middle here. Wow. See, they seem neck and neck with the team in the yellow. Yeah, the angles are deceiving though, because you oh, can see, yeah. Oh, okay, oh. This is still really It's mm. really close. Anybody's race at this point, number stake one has a bit of an edge, but maybe Mayor Breen's prediction is just bringing the good juju out to stake three. Mayor Breen, <laughs> if this race goes to your prediction, we might have you submit predictions at the beginning of every <laughs> race at this point. Just so we can get the odds, whether they are in our favor or not. And if they are in our favor, I would say hide for next year's regatta yeah. because the teams might be looking for you. Oh, yeah. Oh, this the is... The drone footage it really is a game yeah, changer. It hey. does. It's so nice. Yeah. We might have to give this to the main... Oh, oh, okay. See, in See, stake... Oh, 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 oh. oh, oh, oh. oh. Stake. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, this is definitely wow. going to have close. to be an official call yeah. because mm -hmm. I do not feel confident. I think I think it was going to be it's going to be the Lambs ladies and then Wellington Altus, but I'm not sure. Okay, I want to wait for the official time. It. But it was a great race, uh, nonetheless. Less than a second between t one, two, and three. Yeah. And yes, that's yeah. awesome. That was fantastic. And so we're going to say bye to the mayor. We thank you for <laughs> thank joining us. Thank you very us. much. Thanks so and much. Then great after seeing that, you. we'll be chatting with you guys before we go back to the winner's circle in a little bit. But we can see the rowers. They are committed to what they did. Yeah, so they're at the finish line now or at the at the proper finish. You can see space is a little tight uh, up at the top of the pond, the head of the pond, some people call it. So when the boats are coming across the finish line and they're at top speed, they really have to slow down uh, to prepare to make room for the other boats. And so we're gonna now go down to the winner's circle where Lori is meeting with the winners. Hi, I'm now with the winners of JAT Excavating for the under 21. So we have today Sicily. Cecilia. <laughs> I apologize. That's okay. So what does winning mean for you? Well, it's really exciting because we've been rowing for several years together and we work really hard. So it's definitely a good outcome that we like to see. That is excellent. So do you have any like, you know, uh, rituals that you do or for things for good luck that you do before you row? Not really. Not really. <laughs> you just wing it, hey? Actually, we used to eat poutine before the race. Poutine? <laughs> is there a specific place that you love to, you know? <laughs> Ziggy's. Ziggy's, of course. And I know that, you know, we have some long-term uh, family members here for Skipper Jim Ring. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. Uh, 
So how does that feel that you know you're living in the legacy? Uh, it's good, pretty good. <laughs> And I mean, you're all under 21, so you have social lives. How do you manage, you know, your social interactions and rowing? Well, we row at 7 a.m., so we just row before we work or hang out with friends, so it kind of just gets out of the way right away. That is excellent. So are you guys going to go now and enjoy the rest of the regatta around the lake? I think so. Excellent, excellent. So are there any shout-outs or anyone that you want to say hi to? <laughs> Hi, Aunt Lisa. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you so much. And again, congratulations. And we're going to turn over to Laura Bill and Amanda. It's going to be gentle. Amanda, and we Amanda. are now coming back for it was so great to have Lori chatting with the winners about one, what it's like to race in the regatta and seeing young women so dedicated to the sport, I, there are no words, once again, there are absolutely no words. We have the next set of racers going down and just, I guess, getting warmed up, but coming in to join us now, we have Edith, who, Cloud, can you help me pronounce your last name? Because I want name, I can help you, okay. Cloutier. Cloutier, oh, French? See? Okay. Wow. We have Edith Cloutier <laughs> with Rogers TV and as one of the sponsors of the Royal St. John's Regatta. I have a few questions. We want to get to know you, introduce you to our audience, and find out why Rogers is so committed to the Royal St. John's Regatta. And I think we're going to start there. So Rogers has been a sponsor for many years. Why? Is the regatta something that Rogers is so passionate Let me about? ask, turn the question around, how can we not support yeah. the St. John's regatta? This is an amazing event. And that's what we're passionate about, making sure we're bringing contents to people and being part of the community. And thanks you to Rogers TV. You guys are doing amazing. I mean, people across the island can watch the race in the comfort of their home. That's what we're about. We want to bring good contents, you know, being a Blue Jays game, out of the fog, the regatta. We're passionate about this. Oh, that's so true. So Rogers is such a community channel so why is it why does rogers the overarching feel it's so important to give back to communities within newfoundland lab because you do so much we do and i want to say it's part of our dna mm -hmm. this is what we like we want to like to give back to community where we work and where we live and it's important it being the rogers community grant the ted rogers scholarship we've given millions and we've been we've been we were on the ground when uh, for the relief the help on the fiona's Absolutely. hurricane it's important and we're also a major sponsor of event this one is one, um, and I'm going to announce officially that we are back next year. We're going to be the platinum sponsor, so we're very excited about that. Will we so. be back? We have to <laughs> dream team. We have to come back. Is that where I commit? Yes, yes. We're let's join let's the team. commit. Okay, perfect. Especially that we're matching, right? Well, see, we're color forward, <laughs> yeah. red and black. I told you guys we were on point accidentally, but on purpose. Yeah. So the viewers get to enjoy all of that. That's it. So I was talking with Amanda earlier, letting her know this is my first time being part of the regatta from start to finish. But you've attended the regatta before, but what was your experience like the very first time? Yeah, it's my second time. I, you know what? It was just wow. I couldn't believe the passion, like to see people, the venue is beautiful, right? Absolutely. And to see Fran's family coming together and celebrate and like cheering on the rowers is just a very amazing experience. And, and I do that quite a bit like in my job and this is my favorite one so i, I say it and i'm i just mean it this See, is we won't great. tell the others that you Please have a, no. this is the best event <laughs> this is off the record that she loves us this the most this is so off the record <laughs> <laughs> so we chatted briefly and we talked about how committed rogers is to community and investing back into the people that keep the stations that they're in running so do you mind sharing with us a little bit of the ways Rogers gives back to Newfoundland and Labrador. Yes. I mean, every day we work on improving what we bring to people of Newfoundland and making sure our services are up to par and we keep investing, like being in St. John's here at Mount Pearl, um, Bell Island, Grand Falls, just to name a few. But that's what we want to make sure that we bring the best connection, the best service to people of the Newfoundland. So this is what we do constantly. So part of the community aspect of that, you guys support a couple different organizations within Newfoundland and Labrador. Are there any that particularly tickle your fancy when it comes to your heart that you've been proud to support? 
You know what? This is gonna be tough because I'm on record. Like I love. We're going all. off record. No, but you're right. But you know you... what? Choices of You Community Center Alliance, the Gander Boys and 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 Girls Club. It's to name a few, but they're so all important in the community, mm -hmm. and we want to make sure we're part of it. Oh, Edith, it's been such a pleasure getting to chat with you, getting to let the viewers see some of the people who are behind the scenes that help make this what it is because for a community station it's thanks to support from Rogers that we're able to broadcast regatta and bring mm. so many of all the other shows that are on the network and to you guys course. are amazing you're doing an amazing job she is Keep our star Amanda. yes <laughs> so and not you. only are you like a major sponsor but Rogers sponsored a race race yes, number six and we were on the pound we like we did we, you do the starting or on we, the we pond? did on the, the turn oh, oh my god the turn uh, this okay. is so unique okay yeah. this is so unique uh, yeah it's amazing to be there and see it so closely. Oh, yeah, you're yeah. right, because when you're watching Olympic rowing, it's just a straight shot. There's it's no easy. turn. Yeah, it's easy. Yeah, it's so easy. <laughs> Olympians, but this one, we're the this third. The third is so important. Yeah, no, it's great. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much. No worries, either. Thank you for joining Thank us. Thank you. It's been Thank a pleasure. you so much. It's been a pleasure, Thank guys. You. Keep doing a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And going, so we'll have you sit with us for a little bit of while. We'll check out what's going down at the race. Um, we are getting ready for our next we're getting ready for the next race. I guess what is up next for us, Amanda? Next, we have race number nine. Oh, we are on to race number nine, are we? Okay. Scheduled for 11.20, and you can see that's Jackie Warfield out there warming up. Another long-term sponsor and the raison d'existence for many people for the regatta, India Gate. So they come down and they get their plate of Indian food and that's the regatta, but... So um, are you saying that at some point we have to run and find our plates of Indian food? I think if they can afford to have a, a break with, you know, while we're not here commentating, it sounds like a good thing to do, but okay. yeah. So the 1120 race, um, is this is where my heart is because my former crewmates mm. who I rode with um, they are out there rowing in an exhibition version of the long course okay so, so this is this is this one this is the one yeah so it's still exhibition it's not so even if um, say the men's team come top five short course or the women's team verso comes top five long course um, the championship times will stay the same because this is an exhibition race. Okay, so we're gonna let Edith go so she can go check out this race front line center <laughs> and we're gonna stay here commentating. Edith, it was so fun having you join Thank us. You. Yeah, and so this on the television is uh, Studio Verso okay. and I just saw, so they've been rowing, they rowed the long course in Harbor Grace they went to the Placentia Regatta, so there's multiple regattas leading up to this day. So there's the time trials, which happens here on Kitty Vitty Lake, and then there's the Placentia Regatta, which is mid-July, and then there's the Harbor Grace Regatta, which is the last Sunday before the St. John's Regatta. Okay. So um, Studio Verso rode the long course in Harbor Grace, but the short course in Placentia because they had some spares, so they decided to enter the short course race, uh, and they came second to the Daw and Burke crew. Okay. And I have a message here. Um, so we get some information. And interestingly, the number four seat here, Claudette Marie Warren, she's sitting in seat number four, so the fourth one from the back. And unlike all of the other seasoned rowers in this boat, record holders, multiple championships, you know, lots of rowing history behind them, Claudette is brand new. So okay. she wants to send a message to her crew and say, I'm writing this as the newest crew member to the Studio Verso team and as a first time fixie rower in my first ever St. John's regatta. So mixed in with all the veterans is Claudette in her first ever regatta. She has been welcomed into the boat and these are her words by such an incredible and inspiring strong group of women who are well seasoned both mentally and physically within the sport of rowing. See, that's touching to know that even with such a committed team of veterans that there's still room for a first timer exactly. to join them and still feel like I'm as part of the team as the people who have rode this time and time again. It's all about growing the sport. It's growing the sport and exposing people to the joy that rowing can be, uh, even if it is five o'clock in the and morning. I, see, I'm seeing the joy that rowing can be. <laughs> I just might be our midnight rotate. Because it can be, you know, there's tough parts like the waking up, the everyday, the, when you leave the house, you have to pack five or six bags because you have all these workouts. But 
at the end of the day, you push yourself harder for yourself and your crew than you would if it was just yourself. See, you know? yeah, I think that's... Give myself the goosebumps. That's the <laughs> team aspect that I think that people might not understand when it comes to doing a sport like rowing, that you don't do it just for you. You do it for the other people who are going to be rowing alongside you. You build a little family there and you want to do your best, not because it's your best, but it helps them do their best. And I think, I think that's why I'll be Coxman. I think <laughs> to remind people that it is a team and we are a family as we do it and not because I have any skill set to row. So I think that this is the first set of visors we've seen today. So we've seen, yes. we've seen no hats and we've seen hats, but Studio Verso is rocking these pink visors and Verso, we should give them a little bit of shout out because they are a, um, a welcoming, inclusive fitness studio. They have spin and rowing, is that right? Yes, they yeah. do. They have really cool row machines. And like what I got to know, like the secret trade trade secrets trade coming secrets out here. Again. While Studio Versa was doing their campaign before they announced their studio, they took rowing machines and stuck them throughout the city. So there are a couple photos of like the Studio Versa team with rowing machines at sunset and sun like sunrise. sunrise up on Signal Hill. I did not and know that. And I was like, so when they say they are committed to the art of rowing, <laughs> they are committed to the art of rowing. Absolutely. And who is this on the screen here now? It's another crew in the 1120 race. So the Verso crew is lining up at their stake three in their pink visors. And the men's crews will be lining up on stake one and stake five. So okay. stake one is the crew of um, Smith Jockley senior men, and they will be rowing the short course. So um, race number nine, the prime creative senior men short course, senior women's long course, general, general workers senior men's races. So three categories, one race. Um, stake one in the Miss Tubular, Smith Jockley senior men, Cox and Yvonne Knight, stroke Rick Kosh, Rowers John Hart, Dave Curran, Jimmy Wade, Sandy Snow, Blackie O'Leary, and Spare Rob Prouse proudly rowing the short course. Great job, men. On stake three in the Iceberg Gold, my pals, Studio Verso, Coxon, Emma Ramsey, Stroke, Stephanie Davis, Alyssa Devereaux, Claudette Warren, brand new to the boat, uh, Nancy Beaton, Katie Wadden, Connie Duffett, Connie's daughter Ella rode earlier, Spare Sherry Whalen and Christine Power, former Oz FM rowers, and coach Mike Power. Mike's been a big help to the Verso girls this year. And on stake number five, in the Cougar helicopter shell is the crew called India Gate, coxed by Jackie Warfield. Rowers Andrew Tobin, Frank Gogos, Brendan Coombs, Harry Locker, Keith Bussey, Sheldon Berry, and Iris Bussey. So I have a question for you. As you've been reading these terms, some of them I'm a little bit more familiar with, but what is a shell? Is that the boat? Yeah. Okay. Because <laughs> each time I'm seeing, because I'm like, I'm getting the team names and I'm understanding, but I was like, who named these shells and They're, what are they? Yep. So the shells are the boats and they um, are named after sponsors, the regatta okay. sponsors. So we'll see crews rowing under the name of Smith Stockley, which means when, a, when an organization sponsors a crew, it means they pay their registration, they buy their uniforms and you know, maybe some gym memberships, other things like that. But when an organization sponsors a shell or a race, it's a bit of a different commitment. Okay. So that is an exchange directly through the organization or the local business and the committee. Right? This is what Shannon was up to when Shannon was giving us the lower down. You on got being it. A spawn. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, I'm getting a better So we have some official race results up for race number eight. Okay. The Lambs Ladies, an official time of 558.19. Wellington Atlas, 559.23. Keith Bradbury Remax, 559.99. So not even two seconds between those one, two, and three places there. Sisters in Fitness, they were out of the gun hot, coming away first from that starting line, pulling across in 60809. And we have unfortunately a disqualification of the hot frost heat pumps, a time of 60561. So I didn't see exactly what happened for this disqualification, but it's likely what the most common reason is, is crews come in on the wrong side of the keg. Okay. Um, so I suspect either they come in on the wrong side or something happens at the turn where they unfortunately miss turning the right one that they're supposed to turn and unfortunately um that i'm not sure what happened there but it could be the case so okay so 
based on those results, can we say Mayor Breen was right or wrong? I think he was wrong. Wasn't he? He said that was going to be the third. So who did we have in third stake? In third stake. He was going for Wellington Altis, but it was the Lambs lady. So he was. So Mayor Breen is not the lucky charm for no. our rowers this year. So he gets to be safe next year as being just a committee member <laughs> and mayor. And we say just like it is a light role that he plays within it all. Okay, so closest to us here on the screen in stake one, coxswain Yvonne Knight is got her arm out and she's holding the toggle. Okay. Uh, Rick Kosh is, you know, he's coxed, he's coached, and here they go. The gun just went off, but it was a bit of a, a kind of an untimely start there. So we're going to see uh, the crew closest to us. Those men are going to turn at the half course kegs. Yeah. And the Verso crew in the pink visors are going to carry on all the way down to the long course. Um, Kegs. So why are they going to turn at the half course? Because they've this is an exhibition race, okay. and they've combined three categories into okay. one race. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you can see that crews stake three, which is the Verso women, and yeah. stake five, which is India Gate, they'll be going so on they'll all continue. the way to the bottom. Okay. Exactly. All right. So yeah. this is going to be an interesting one. It will be. And so. Now that we have the top five and the second five, so we have the top 10 men's times of yeah. the day organized and uh, com those races are completed, I will be looking to see how the Verso times stack up next to these long crew, uh, long course times of the all men's crews. Okay. And while we continue to watch this exhibition race, I'm excited to see how the short men's actually does. So, yeah. Considering that this is an exhibition and they are doing the short race, it would be cool to For see. For the what, first time. Exactly. Yeah. So, this exhibition would be cool to see what their time is compared to the uh, women's races who've been doing the short course, who are, we'll call them veterans at the sport as the men are entering this as the first timers. Absolutely. Super exciting. <laughs> Okay, and now joining us on our, we'll call it our host stand, we are joined by Jun Din, who is with the NDP. So thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. So we're excited. So you are now joining the announcer's booth. You are now an official <laughs> Rogers team member. Um, Frightening for you. It's a great team. It's a wicked team. We've had some great people sitting in here. So Amanda is our resident regatta expert. I am the newbie at the helm as a first time Full course regatta attendee. Ooh, excellent. So where do we find you? Are you a previous rower or just a very committed <laughs> attendee? I'm uh, I'm related to people who have rowed. Okay, <laughs> so you are committedly invested in I, the results of I'm regatta. I'm committed to watching and, okay. uh, and living vicariously through anyone else who chooses to do it. How's okay. that? Um, so <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna draw a little bit more out of you with that now. So anyone who has been in the hot seat has been asked some pressing questions. Yeah. If you were, we'll say, uh, not asked, forced, because we are now building these team of <laughs> unexpected rowers. If you were being requested or sequestered to row, yeah. would you be wanting to do the short course or the long course? <laughs> is there a short, short course? There is. Uh, I, I am doing the short, short course as Coxman, so yeah. that seat is taken, so oh, you need a new, well, then... you are somewhere in the boat. I, I think I would be the person helping to lower the boat in the water <laughs> and, uh, and encouraging the team. To okay, go on. so manager, is that is that your role? Yeah, that that I, I aspire I aspire to that. You aspire <laughs> to be the manager of our inter-party rowing team. You, uh, there you go. Team. Okay, <laughs> so as a longtime attendee and watching family members row, what has been your experience supporting people who are rowing? It? in the regatta oh i will say this uh there's a lot of commitment i know at one time my brother and his friends uh we spent the whole year they had given up drinking they were eating raw eggs they're <laughs> rowing out in the harbor in the dead of winter and i'm thinking and say and i and i think they came in third still that year and i was thinking yeah i'm good with it i'm good with being in a canoe and uh taking in the uh the atmosphere here i mean it's changed in many ways in terms of just in the uh the variety of foods that are offered mm -hmm. now. I mean, one time it was uh, French fries and, uh, and the traditional hot dogs. Uh, hot dogs. Yeah. Now you've got such a variety of ethnic foods. You've got, uh, 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 it's just fantastic. So you've got your, a full, a full introduction to it and the, um, uh, just it, the energy is still here, but it's, it's just, 
so uh, I, I, it's the vibrancy I've got, and of course the wheels of chance, so which I have. Uh, I managed to win one toy for one of my grandchildren, so I'm now on the hook to come up with another one before okay. the day is over. Okay, pressure's on. So, oh. that, so that's causing more pressure for me <laughs> than rowing, and, and figure which uh, that that. That's significantly stressful. Okay, so as an attendee, more so that has always been my role if I ever came down to the regatta, there are a couple of key points that I've loved seeing. One of them is the dunk tank, to which I consistently <laughs> never am able to dunk a person because my hand-eye coordination and strength, as we talked about why I'm not rowing, has never worked. If you were participating, would you rather be the thrower of the dunk tank ball or risk plunging into the frigid waters. It all depends who's on the seat. Would you be on the seat? <laughs> oh, that could be possible. I had to get a change, but yeah, that wouldn't bother me. Okay. Mind you, for my brother on the, on the seat, uh, yeah, I would be a throw. You would ball. be a throw. <laughs> so that is some family competition. To Definitely. Oh, okay. I can't say it'd be accurate or that he'd end up in water, but you know, that part You'd be long. shooting. Although my grandchildren did manage to dunk him last year. So. Okay, so we have successful din dunkers. <laughs> din dunkers. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to draw your attention to a bit of history being made here as the first men's crew is rowing the short course in an, in an actual regatta day. Uh, they've got a great time going. Um, you know, speaking of brothers, John Hart, who's sitting in five seat, his brother Danny Hart is a longtime coxswain. Certainly no strangers to the Royal St. John's regatta. Uh, many former championship rowers in this boat and they've got a clean race first ever short course all men's race and so that put, is pretty cool History. we're gonna put the unofficial time of five and some 559 which means they took 24 seconds off their time trials time okay. and a great performance by those seasoned veterans who uh, have been around the lake for as long as i can remember so with this being an exhibition, will we get an official time for these races? I think so, yeah. I mean, the unofficial time on the clock is not running, but um, just because it's in the program, it is a schedule, they will be uh, timing it as they would any other race. Perfect. Because I think the goal in the long term with making the short course by men and the long course option for the women in the long term is to have them an official part of the program. Okay. But for these first few years as we're growing, um, the interest and in kind of the changing of the distances, uh, they're just kind of, you know, easing into it, okay. you know? Change takes time, right? It's a po and it's positive. I think it's good absolutely. to have that variety and those options for people too. Yeah, absolutely. So another question we've asked our guests who happen to be in the hot seat is trying to get the flavor, as we've talked about, the food options at the regatta have grown exponentially. So I'm a definitely salty, savory tooth. Amanda, where are you leaning on things for food-wise oh, on a regatta day? Sweet, give me the cookies and the cakes and the donuts. Okay, where are you? Oh, I'll go with cookies and cakes, but I have to say, <laughs> I, I has, uh, but I have to say, it's salty and savory. Just the uh, the anything that. Uh, I got like all food. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, okay. yeah, that's true. Anything with uh, that's got a sauce on, I'm good. Okay, yeah. so we know India Gate. It happens to be one of the sponsors, and they yeah. also had a team rowing. And Ooh. as Amanda stated, most people come down for a plate of Indian butter chicken food. and yeah. naan. Yeah. And there are a couple uh, options to get that down here. So if you are watching and you have not made it either to your vehicle or you are not on <laughs> or the, the way bus, the or metro the, bus. the metro bus, your yeah. vehicle, or running down here, now is your opportunity to put or to the floor and get down here to be part of the Royal St. John's Regatta. It is the 205th Royal St. John's Regatta, so you don't want to miss out. There are lots of opportunity, lots of great races to watch, and just to be part of the festivities. I think if you aren't a racer and you aren't, well, if you aren't a rower and you have no actual knowledge as to what is going on, you can still come down here and have a great time intermingling with the community and feeling like part of something bigger. Mm -hmm. so, it's, a great, it's a great family event. Absolutely. I mean, it, you, you look at the children that are here uh, and the, uh, the families, it's uh, just an opportunity in an open setting to uh, uh, just to enjoy, enjoy yourself, enjoy uh, the, the, the games of chance and the mm -hmm. food and, uh, and, and actually with the food, the sample. A variety. Yeah. And Just like Costco here. It is. <laughs> and like we're getting the waft of the food. So once again, we are pre-warning. If you hear a growl, it is neither the puppies that are down here. It is just a tummy <laughs> that is looking for what the options are. So second year running, we have an all-women's crew rowing the long course, 2,500 meters. Super proud of them. Last year, it was, uh, I think there were three boats in the first running of the full course. And now um, this is a two-boat race. 
uh, between the studio, studio Verso women and the India Gate uh, men's crew. So awesome to see. And how will the rest of the regatta day look for you? I think we're, we're, we have a booth set up, so we'll be doing a little bit of a walk about the, uh, the pond and meeting people and attending the luncheon. And, uh, you know, just, it, it's just an opportunity. Sometimes people uh, come up and say hello. There's, they, have a, they have a few issues they want to bring up, but it's, a, it's had an opportunity to engage. I should point out, all joking aside, there's a tremendous amount of commitment to oh, yeah. take on this, uh, short and long, and I know it, it's sort of like uh, when you look at it, what you don't see in, in these races is the hours, the days, the months of practice uh, that go into it. And, uh, and sometimes there are early hours on a very cold uh, pond at a time. Amanda was giving me the run through that some of these rowers are year long trainers. They have been in this, they'll maybe take a week break from yeah. the end of this race to recover, to celebrate, look at some things, take a nap. I would <laughs> fully be on the take a nap process before they get back into training. And the weather has been interesting this year because I think the months of June were so cold and then in July we got into this big heat wave yes. so it went from one extreme to the other making it even harsher than it would be normally. Um, so we're seeing the Studio Verso crew cross the line and we heard from the Spingerif Brewing Company that their sponsor actually bought them wool toques yes. to keep them warm. Uh -huh. So we don't have an official time on the clock but you know they just put their all out there. You can see Katie doing her traditional spaghetti noodle. Uh, in two seat and they're coming in ahead of the India Gate crew. On this crew is Andrew Tobin. He rode straight from 2003 to 2013 and he said his Cox and Jackie Warfield coaxed him out of retirement to get back in the boat <laughs> okay. for this 205th regatta and um, actually another member of this boat, Brendan Coombs, they're old buddies. Uh, they rode slide seat together, Andrew Tobin, Brendan Coombs, you know, where there's one, there's the other. So it's really nice to see them continue their rowing journey together. I think it just shows again the power of a good coxman. Mm -hmm. Because if you will coach someone out of retirement back into a boat to train for this, it just shows the commitment and the love of the sport that yep. they have and the support of oh, their team. Oh, definitely. I mean, some of these people have been rowing for years, decades in some cases, or involved Absolutely. with it. So it's a significant commitment and a significant love of the uh, of the event so do you think any of your current grandchildren might be joining the squirts right that's the squirts? oh i'm sure at some point with the family influences there will be a, at, a, at some point i'm guaranteed guarantee they'll be a coaxed or coxed into it whatever you want to look <laughs> a, couple, <laughs> a couple more dins hitting the floor to the or to the floor teams oh this is and so that, cool. as a grandfather i'll be the one again managing manage team safely manager from the shore, safely from the shore unless <laughs> we maybe convince you to be a coxman on one well, of their rowing vessels. Know. That's right, maybe we'll get an NDP team in, who knows. <laughs> we have the mixed team of all parties that are willing to be. <laughs> Just the gauntlet was thrown down by the official opposition. Oh. So the gauntlet's out there for a mixed team of all parties on one boat. We can do that. Okay. But then it gets, but then it's going to come down who gets the lead, right? Uh, no, Coxman. Coxman <laughs> is independent. Oh, okay. Does so that be you? Yep. I'm okay. I, I, this I, might be, I might be able to agree to that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we are on, we are getting great things. So they're pronounced, or they're announcing um, the medals. This looks like the Momentum Health crew. My goodness, it feels like ages. That can't be just them no, getting that the medals No, that is not Because Momentum, Momentum had their logos on their shirts. Right. So this is the Sobeys General Workers Senior Women and the Lambs Ladies. That's right. You remember. I, See, you're a quick I learner. I am learning. This is working. So getting the medals now. So this is Jennifer Windsor Brown. She's also, uh, or Janine, oh, wait now. I'm making stuff up. This is yellow. Lambs Ladies. Janine Snow was the coxman, right? I gotta make sure I'm seeing the right thing here. Yellow hats. Uh, Jenny, yeah, that's definitely Jennifer Windsor Brown. So yeah. this is the Wellington Atlas crew. Okay. I believe they're being presented with their silver medals. Okay. Uh, so Cox and Jennifer Brown, she's on the far left here. She's also a regatta committee member. Okay. Her rowing family, uh, her and Chris, longtime rowers. Then we have Andrea Power, Yvonne Knight, Kelly Bust, Dina Cavanaugh, Cheryl Oak, Annette Larkin, and Janine Snellgrove. Uh, Christina Ennis joined up there by their sponsor, Wellington Atlas. 
the medal presentations for the Sobeys General Workers Senior Women. And yeah, it's Christina Ennis as one of their coaches. So yeah, you were right on that one. Oh, phew. I know a little. <laughs> it's so special, Enough you know. to be dangerous. Yeah. yeah. Just, a, it's like the jack of all trades, the master of none. And people usually stop and I don't remember the rest of the quote, but apparently it's great to be a jack of all trades. <laughs> so this is the crew that rose every weekday morning at 5.15 a.m. Oh, yeah, okay. no, that's a solid <laughs> support. You could not be one of you. And they want to do a special thank you to the sponsor, Wellington Atla Altus. Uh, for providing them with the opportunity to do one of their favorite things, which is rowing. See, and it's so great to see how committed and how long they've been at it. Yeah. Altus, that's how we So sit. this program says Atlas, Altus, okay, Altus. The other thing with this is you look at, uh, we haven't I mentioned here, I haven't anyway, with regards to just the, uh, the amount of work that goes into organizing this, Absolutely. because I would say that when, once soon as it's over, the committee is back at it again, so Absolutely. compliments to the hard work that goes into organizing. There's so many moving parts uh, in making this a uh, success every year. It's just, uh, I think, just as much commitment as those who are out in the pond. Oh, absolutely. Um, when we were talking to Ashley and Noel earlier, they were saying they get a one-week break before they get right back at the table to planning <laughs> this. And then we're talking to Mayor Breen, talking about, we talk about how amazing it is to see this all put together, yeah. but tomorrow it's going to look like nothing happened. That's right. And <laughs> the lake is going to be clean for all the strollers and walkers and pups that will be yeah taking advantage of the beautiful scenery that is in the city. And to the city crews who do the cleanup, and you're right, it's, uh, you come down the, the day after, you would know that uh, the regatta had even taken place. It's amazing, really, it's, how fast it happens. This and is an event. We have on the screen here now winners of race number eight, the Sobeys General Workers Senior Women's Race, and that was won by the Lambs Ladies. Uh, so we have Regatta committee, committee member Jessica Gallant here holding the silver platter with the gold medals. Um, they're being presented. I'm not sure who that gentleman is doing the presenting. And the rowers and coxswains, we have coxswain Jeannie, Jeannie Snow, who's been coxing for quite a while. Stroke, Rhonda Hart Pittman. Five, Claire Avery. Four, Joy Hart. Three, Adrian Downer. Number two, Andrea Kearley. Number one, Deanne Daw and Spears, Katie Luther and Angela Skinner. And I think they just convinced the, either their coxman or their manager to join them when they're trying to get her to be part of Well, the it's match. really nice because I think the committee recognizes what an important part of the crew and the rowing that the Spears are because hmm. oftentimes someone can't make a practice or a race. So they do make enough medals for both of the Spears, the coach, coxswains, um, all to have medals, which is really important. Because uh, it takes, you know, a village to make the crew tick. And look at that huge trophy. That is massive. That's a, and that's not even the biggest one. I mean, it's a beautiful one, but the, some of the, they've really upped the trophy game in the past number of years, um, especially since the 2018 200th anniversary. Yeah. They're really beautiful um, commemorative trophies. Wow. You know, the Spears, they're doing all that extra, all their practice as well, and there's a chance that they may not even get to row in this. Exactly. So, I mean, there's even more commitment in some ways. Yeah. I mean, you're mentally all in the boat, but yeah. there's only six physical seats, and so you got to work it out one way or the other, and sometimes you have eight people vying for six seats, and sometimes it's a struggle to get even six. Absolutely. Yeah, every year is different. And that's Tina Ring Hunt. So she's a committee member, longtime rower, coxswain, former champion rower, who was there uh, collecting the trophy. This is, this is such a fun race. I am having the best time doing this. <laughs> so... We've talked about what you're looking forward to at the end of this, what the rest of your regatta day. So when did your day start? Because ours started around 5 a.m. So as an attendee and a supporter of rowers, when were you up in Adam? Were you there for the call? No. Oh, yes, we were. We were up at, uh, was up at 6 because we had to bring, uh, I'm uh, with the owner of the vehicle, uh, the one that's bringing the supplies ah. down to set up. So we were here for the call. Uh, we were down at around 7 o'clock, quarter past 7 to get everything set up. and. Uh, and uh, that I don't I can't say I've always been down that early to see the beginning of the race, but that's one advantage about being, uh, I guess, in this position is that I've been actually seeing the beginning of the race over the last few years. So there's a special feeling at the beginning of the day when the crowds is. aren't here, but you know the rowers are just out there doing their best. Yeah. Absolutely, and yeah. you can feel it in the air. Like yeah. so, this was my first time being down here for the beginning of the race, and I could definitely feel the excitement build, and you could see the like people milling around and coming yeah. down, and it was definitely. So we're now going to throw it down to the winner's circle to see how the winners are feeling. 
Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. Hello, and I'm here with the winners, Lambs Ladies, today, and congratulations. So, oh, sorry. <laughs> and I'm with the ladies today, and so who am I speaking with? My name is Adrian Toms. Jeannie Snow. Joy Hart. Rhonda Hart Pittman. Claire Avery. Andrea Carley. And Deanne Duff. Excellent. Well, congratulations to all of you. So, what did you take to get here today? A lot of organizing, great sponsors, um, and uh, a lot of patience and hard work by everyone here and our spares. So is this your first time rowing or have you been in this for many years? No, this is our third year as a team. Several of us just started three years ago uh, and we are a bunch of moms. We have 18 children between the seven of us. Oh my goodness, so you are certainly busy. So how do you manage, you know, mom life and rowing life at the same time? We have one lady who uh, books our spares and figures it out between the, uh, the busy schedules of our kids. Uh, and we have families who are very understanding of us getting up very early and taking some time to exercise for ourselves. So it's been good. That's excellent. So, you know, what are you guys doing for the rest of the day? Are you enjoying the regatta, saying at Lakeside or going to go to bed? <laughs> one of us describes this as Christmas morning. So. So it's like Christmas morning for us. We're going to enjoy the day and have fun and celebrate together with a lot of the other teams because we've gotten to know a lot of the other teams, which has been great. Yeah, it is excellent. I love, like, you know, the teammanship here that you have. So is there anyone that you would like to say a special shout out to or say hello to? Well, our Cox, Jeannie Snow, she's been the helm number one and lamb's rum has been a wonderful sponsor and we've had some wonderful spares who've gotten us here uh, right from the start so that some of us have been away for various com competitions and practices and so we have a lot of people to thank excellent well again congratulations to all of you and we're going to take it back to laura bell and amanda and i have some things to say yeah and we are back so it was so lovely getting a chance to get to talk to jim and see how we're convincing people to join our regatta team for the next row. So we've covered a lot of firsts so far, but I know you have a few more firsts to share with me. A few more firsts. Uh, and yeah, before we line up the next race, I just want to take a note to talk about India Gate. So we mentioned that India Gate is another longtime sponsor of the regatta. Um, and they, this year, so this is the first time India Gate has sponsored a men's crew because okay. traditionally they've um, sponsored women's crews. Uh, and they have in the first time ever men's India Gate crew, they have number three, Harry Lockyer, who's a first time rower, uh, but everybody else uh, has rowed before. So the official times from that race were just up on the screen. The Smith Stockley Senior Men's 55296, Studio Verso 103802, and India Gate 122360. Okay, it will be interesting to check back and see where we are with those times. I'm going to tell you right now that my girls, Studio Verso, would be the, are the sixth place long course crew right now, Yay! which is <laughs> excellent because one of the arguments against allowing women to row the long course race was that, oh, it would take too long. Well, it we didn't. Can, <laughs> we can now clearly stamp that fable out of existence to show that the women are just as competitive exactly. as the men and in the they, long Well, course. they have a brand new rower in the boat and um, no, they didn't come first, but they performed well. Uh, so the just to- option, brand to, new rower is a great accomplishment too. Yeah, so let's line up race number 10, which I believe is the last race before the lunch break. Race number 10, the city of St. John's. We just had our some of our municipal councillors on here and Mayor Danny Breen. Um, this is a senior women's race starting scheduled for 1130. In stake one is the crew Planet Fitness, Coxon Yvonne Knight out again. Uh, and the rowers are Jenny Cotter, Laura Daw, Deidre Halliday, Amanda Harnham, Pamela White, Nicole Daw, Jessica Milmore, Talia Murphy is a spare, and coach Mike Shea. So multiple crews being touched by those individuals. Uh, stake number two, L and B Concrete Construction, Coxon Kevin Greeley. Stroke, Clara Manning. Other rowers in the boat, Kelly Benoit, Karina Greeley, Connie Cornick, Tammy Poirier, Karen Slaney, and spare, Tina Ring. On stake three, Tara Bruce Productions, Coxon, my pal, Nancy Beaton, and her rowers, 
Uh, so Nancy was just out with Studio Verso, and yep. now she's going to, what we call hot seat, is jump from one boat to another because so they're in the consecutive races. Okay. And the rowers in that boat are Hillary Rose, Catherine Fagan, Allison Newell, Sarah Hodder, Jillian Evans, Rosa Ernst, and Lisa Hounsel. And Nancy's excited to watch her daughter, Billy Rowe, later on today. Okay. Uh, another longtime sponsor and committee members, uh, P.F. Collins. So um, big thanks to Bernard and his daughter, Susan, and brother Ray of the Collins family for their ongoing support of this event. Rowers in the P.F. Collins boat are Craig Button, or no, Cox and Craig Button, rowers Robin Montague, Donna Billard, Krista Joy, Charlene Gooby, Sherry Lomond, Krista Gorman, Spears, Tara Bolt, and Susan Collins. Hi, pals. P.F. Collins, and on stake five in the Newfoundland Herald, Team Broken Earth. Okay. Um, so sponsored by the same group that does the relief efforts in Haiti, which is just an awesome thing. Coxon, Megan Willette, Stroke, Michelle Murphy, rowers Anna Smith, Catherine Jones, Sherry Marshall, Emily Daw, and Stephanie Jones, coach Ron Witten. Yeah, that's fantastic because the crew, I know we got to interview them with Out of the Fog before they went down for their most recent mission, and they are doing great work there with Team Broken Earth. They so are. it's cool to see them out of the regatta continuing to make an impact. Yeah, speaking of making an impact, just to put things into context, the fifth fastest men's crew was the Andrew McDonald General Contractor Limited. They rode a time of 1022.48 this morning. And then the six fastest men's were 1030, and that was the Canadian Armed Forces men. And so coming in the seventh fastest long course time of the day is Studio Verso in the top 10, seventh place, which is a huge accomplishment for them in the first, um, in, in, with Claudette's first time ever rowing. So just awesome. See, speaking of that awesomeness, we're gonna go down to the winner's circle with Mitchell with the men's first short course to see how they're feeling after their race. Hello everyone, I am back with the team of Smith and Stockley doing the first short men's race. Um, how was it? How did you find it today? Well, it was great and it's a nice row, you know, and then uh, the boys rode excellent. And uh, it was fun to do the short course and to get together and then and, and row this uh, at this historical day. And then and, and it was great fun and the boys were, uh, they rode great. Good stuff. Well, you guys did absolutely fantastic. Um, why now? Like, so why are you folks signed to the short race here today? Um, what led you to this point? At this point, you know, past couple of years, there's a ladies team that rode the full course. And we uh, decided this year, gotta be someone to start off to row the, the half course. So we, so, we, so we got together as, a, as friends and buddies and, former rowers that we all rode against each other and, and, and Sutton Black and Rick, we, we, uh, we rode in 1987 as green sleeves. So, uh, so the past 30 odd years, 40 years, that uh, we, we decided that, you know, this rode a half course and we were happy and, and, and it's good, good to do. Yeah, no, certainly. Um, I'll get everyone to introduce themselves. Fantastic, so. What's your name? My name is John Hart, I row number five. Good stuff. Ray O'Leary, row number one. Dave Curran, number four. Yeah. Randy Snow, number two. Jimmy Wade, number three. Rick Kosh. Excellent. So is there anyone that you folks want to thank today? Um, I mean... Gail Stockley, Smith Stockley, a great sponsor. And she's been sponsoring me. Smith Stockley, Smith Stockley, uh, Gail, Gail and, uh, and her husband Dave. And we thank the Stockley business for... They've race been sponsoring me ever since. Number nine? The late 80s, yeah. especially me, me and I thank Gail and, and their family for sponsoring us every year when I rode on the pond. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much, everyone. And we're going back to Amanda and Laura Bell. Thanks. And we're just getting some selfies here at the Rogers desk. You see on the screen here, Gail Malone who is a past president. She will be shooting the gun to start the race. You see the smoke goes up. So that is Gail Malone. And starting the race was uh, the husband of the Honorable Lieutenant Governor Judy Foote. So he called out, are you ready, number one? Are you ready, number two? They go through all five boats, and then they say, are you all ready? 
Okay. And then the gun goes off. So we have here um, in the camera closest to us on stake one, Planet Fitness, uh, in the 10th race of the day, City of St. John Senior Women's Race. And they're just panning across to show all five crews. We have closest to us, Team Broken Earth. I am really wondering if that Anna Smith is my friend Anna Smith. I didn't know she was rowing. Uh, or maybe it's a different Anna Smith. I'm sure there's more than one Anna Smith. Uh, then we have P.F. Collins, who, now which angle is in this? The, so, so Planet Fitness would be closest to us. Right. P.F. Collins would be in the, the yellow. In the, the yellow. Hot, the neon yellow. And then in the white hats and the white tops is the Tara Bruce. Productions, Cox by Nancy Beaton, okay. who just would have got out of the Verso boat. And then uh, on stake two, next to Planet Fitness, who we're looking at now, is LB Concrete Construction. Okay. So they're over the minute mark now in the second quarter of the race, where they're getting past the boathouse and down to the turning kegs. Sliding on their seats, getting that full body workout. As we have discussed, something that one is astounding two i am not quite prepared for yet so <laughs> well that's okay we're working on it we're working on it i think over the course of this and being able to sit here in the announcement they've seen a couple different positions that i would love to be in the female gunner is super cool yeah i would not mind starting the announcing for a couple races and asking are you ready number one to five and, and then, then you get to up. holler out, are you all ready? Are you all ready? <laughs> it will be fun to do. So we just had back on the screen there the, um, the was it the India Gate crew getting their, um, getting their second place or getting their uh, prize for the race number that they just completed. The exhibition race. Yes. And now we have the Planet Fitness going into the turn on official time of 2.20. So when you're racing for time or, it, or you're trying to set a record, you want to be going into the turn in like below 212. Okay. So remember when I was talking about how they cut the rudder, the coxswain starts to yeah. turn, you know, in that 210 ballpark. So this is, they're not really going for that right now, but um, of course the turn is indicative of the halfway point in the okay. race. So if you want to get under that six minute mark, you want to be out of the turn before you get to three minutes. Okay. So. Yeah. That's what they, if they make it out, they got about four seconds to make it out of that turn to be under that six minute mark. Yeah, and this is a really cool angle because you're gonna see now the stroke side pick back up yeah. when the coxswain says, okay, we're straight enough to for you people on this side to start rowing again. Exactly. And that's, they just did a beautiful job of it, the uh, Planet Fitness team. Yeah. yeah. So the Planet Fitness, who is on the screen here now, it's their second year together. Uh, last year, they were all brand new rowers, and they say they're back with bells on. See? <laughs> they had an amazing first year of rowing at last year's Platinum Jubilee Regatta, as we mentioned with uh, her, the, honor. her honor earlier. Um, so Planet Fitness, they're all fellow police officers. Oh. So they say, you know, rowing, the teamwork and the supporting of each other, uh, that's nothing new for them because as police officers, they do that every type of day to support each other through challenging situations. My God, it's giving me the goosebumps. All the feels. It's a feely <laughs> It's a feely kind of togetherness sport, I got to say. So they say that happily rowing and fitness is a much more fun type of stress than they are used to dealing with in their police work um, and slightly stress, less stress this year as it's their second year and they are in the same race um, that their coxswain, Yvonne Knight, was in with her own rowing team, so oh. they had to take a substitute in the boat with them. Oh, okay. So actually their coach um, stepped up, Mike Shea, uh, was available to, to the task, and he came in, in ahead of Yvonne's rowing team for some good fun and bragging rights. Okay. Yeah, so they want to thank Planet Fitness for taking them on as sponsor this year. Um, to make it possible for these six police officers, strong, courageous women uh, in professionally and their extracurriculars to row in this regatta. See, it's so much fun for me to see the different professions that decide to be rowers. Because instantly my brain thinks, okay, your team is Planet Fitness, you work at the gym, 
But it's so different to be like not anyone to be in a team sponsored by anyone. So that's fantastic to see. Speaking of professions, not only do we have a crew of police officer, but I'm assuming that Team Broken Earth could typically, uh, even though you know it's not a requirement to do work in the area that you're sponsoring. Uh, organization is a part of, but I'm usually Team Broken Earth consists of some medical professionals. It so absolutely does. Our premier, uh, Andrew Fury, who I believe will be coming on for an interview later, a former rower himself. Yep, and a former Team Broken Earth member. Founder, I oh, believe. See? Founder of Team Broken Earth, which is really awesome. So a note about Team Broken Earth, a volunteer-driven charity helping others around the world in need of medical care. So not only Haiti, but all over the world. An organization started right here in Newfoundland. Each crew member is a part of the Broken Earth family, rowing every day for a cause that transcends borders. Every stroke fuels their mission to reach Guatemala this fall, bringing vital education, medical relief, and unwavering support. So Team Broken Earth now has teams across all Canada and is proud to represent here at KDVD Lake that its origins here in Newfoundland, making waves in a global family. And they do work within the province too. They work with the gathering space too with their glasses program. So they awesome. are across borders on every level. Yeah, and just like we saw with the Fine Strokes where uh, the sponsor, Fine Strokes, Craig Whittle was also the coxswain, we have another crew doing du double duty here, PF Collins. Uh, so Susan Collins is not only uh, the sponsor, but she was also the spare for PF Collins okay. this year. So the PF Collins crew who's in this race has been rowing together for two years and made up of some PF Collins employees. So pretty cool. See, we're getting there. Yeah, we have police officers, healthcare professionals, PF Collins, which is like an international trade solutions team. Um, the team represents all corners of the province from from self-identified townies to the bay to Labrador. <laughs> so they can be found practicing on the lake during lunch times, which is the windiest part of the day. Okay. Always having fun. And they say any day on the water is better than a day on land. So these are true boat folks we have here with us. True boat folks, absolutely. Who else do we have out in this? I believe this is the last race number 10. Before this, we're gonna get into the break. Um, so a little bit on the Tara Bruce Productions, who Nancy Beaton coxed on stake three. Um, they were put together by their cox, Nancy, who rose with Verso and formerly M5. Never knew each other before. Really? Nope. Okay. Uh, so that's not them on the screen. That's Mike Shea. Um, so Nancy's crew, the Tara Bruce Productions, they each had mentioned to Nancy that they were interested in rowing and Nancy was kind of aspired them to commit and succeed in the support. And Nancy kept a silent track of uh, who was interested of all of her pals and they only went on water twice a week and, but now they're in love with it. Okay. They'll probably come back and be uh, much more committed. I'm sure Nancy would give them a great first year experience with the Tara Bruce Productions crew because Nancy is a latecomer to the sport herself. I swear if she found it earlier, she would be representing Newfoundland and Canada in the Olympics. She has got a lot of raw talent. That's her there in the um, white hat going off the screen. Just a fantastic rower person. And now she can add coxswain to her list of things she is awesome at. If she wasn't already accomplished, exactly. you just need more on that resume. Yeah. So as these crews uh, come in and they prepare to go um, for a bit of a lunch break. There's a couple things we want to let our viewers know. So during the lunch break, the St. John's Rowing Club, so as we mentioned, the Royal St. John's Regatta Committee is organizing the fixed seat races. But during the lunch hour, the St. John's Rowing Club has organized um, some, you know, not to disappoint the spectators, there will be additional races, not that will count towards the championship times, um, but the St. John's Rowing Club is pleased to run exhibition races this lunch hour. Wow. So the St. John's Rowing Club would like to send an official thank you to the Royal St. John's Regatta Committee for allowing them an opportunity to showcase the sport of slide seat rowing different in many ways. So not only the number of people in the boat, but the types of boat, the, the length of the races, the lack of a turn okay. and if you're curious to see how that looks come on down watch the exhibition races that are happening at lunchtime they will have three 
eight person crews. Oh wow. So these eight person boats are pretty impressive. Okay. They are very long. They are lifted in and out of the boathouse for every practice. Oh wow. Um, so there's eight people in a straight line. The coxswain is kind of tucked down with a microphone on them so they can get directions all the way to the number one seat in the back of the boat. Um, it's also the sweep style of rowing. So all eight rowers have one oar. Oh. Whereas in the sculling type of rowing, which you can also do at the St. John's Rowing Club, these rowers have two oars. Okay. So you're rowing in a single, a double, or a quad okay. if you're sweeping or if you're sculling. Okay. But yeah, they will be sweeping in three eighths. They will be starting at the bottom of the pond in the long course kegs, and they will race each other. This is a three boat race to the starting line. Okay. Um, so in addition to the Chevron Learn to Row program, the St. John's Rowing Club offers Learn to Row programs for youth and adults, development and competitive rowing programs. Uh, so today's crews feature many of the competitive rowers who participate in the competitive events uh, and they're halfway through the Learn to Row program. And they'll be really appreciating people's support from the sidelines, just like the people in the fixed seat program. Uh, the slide seat rowers who will be racing in the eights will be wanting your support lakeside. Um, the St. John's Rowing Club trains all winter at the indoor ERG studio with on water programming from May to October. And the St. John's Rowing Club really wants people who are interested in learning how to do slide seat to check out their website, sjrc.ca. Find out how to get involved. You don't need a crew of six. You don't need a sponsor. You just need yourself um, and, you know, a willing to try, willingness to try something new. Uh, so I would, slide seat rowing has been such a big part of my life, my experience in sport, and certainly my university experience uh, as a cruise on the mainland, as we say, <laughs> certainly focus on the eights in university rowing. So anybody interested in participating in varsity sports, Canada Games, hopefully, when they get uh, rowing back to the Canada Games, uh, the slide seat sport is one way to do that. So I'd highly encourage you to check out the exhibition eight races during the lunch break check out slide seat rowing at sjrc.ca. So if you aren't already looking for fun stuff to do and you aren't down at the regatta, Rogers TV will be broadcast. We talked a little bit about inductions into the St. John's Regatta Hall of Fame. For the next hour, we will be broadcasting some of those inductions and we also have an interview with Mr. Perlin. So if you happen to be watching the regatta, not here in person, but on TV watching us, please stay tuned. Do not turn off your TVs. We have lots of great information coming at you. You get to watch an induction to the Hall of Fame and an interview with Mr. Perlin. So sit back, relax. We won't be here for the lunch break, but we will definitely be out in the crowd filling up on some of the yummy snacks that we found here. So if you are not down already, come on down. We have great exhibition races. If you are watching because for whatever reason you can't make it down, please continue to stay tuned. We'll have great information and entertainment coming at you all day. And maybe she'll be in the dunk tank. Wait, 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 we'll discuss this dunk tank business a little bit later. The weather might be great for rowing. It is not great for me in the water, but we will be right back after a short commercial break. Focused on quality and convenience, there isn't much you won't find at Marie's Mini Mart. Homestyle breads, sandwiches, plus a variety of artisan breads and delicious single-serve desserts available exclusively at our Frecker Drive location. Marie's Mini Mart, with 25 locations wherever you go, there we are. Hello, I'm Loidera Cueto. I'm here at the rooms where we just finished recording a show in our cultural series. This is a place where you get to meet amazing individuals from diverse cultural backgrounds who are making significant contributions to the social, cultural and economic development of Newfoundland and Labrador. Hi, I'm Darren Hand. We have an exciting new show coming this fall called Pocket Universe. We introduce you to a variety of artists, filmmakers, and actors who share my love of sci-fi, horror, and all things out of this world. Newfoundland and Labrador has so many talented people in this genre that we can't wait to have them tell you their stories. Watch out for Pocket Universe coming this fall to Rogers TV, Channel 9. Share in the joy and laughter with Spirit of Newfoundland as they celebrate 25 wonderful years. 
Join your favorite spirit performers as they toast a quarter century of fun, food, and fantastic music. For ticket information and upcoming events, check out spiritofnewfoundland.com or phone 579-3023. Spirit of Newfoundland, a proud sponsor of the Royal St. John's Regatta on Rogers TV. I hope you got a chance to refill your beverages. We are now going to be having a few more chats because before our lunch break goes, we have some more fun conversations to have more races winners more selfies to take more absolutely more <laughs> selfies to take because by the end of today we would have been photographed with all the notables and all the fun people who want to see us as this regatta because i know it's my first and i needed to make it into my album of first for 2023 yeah. so that's what this year is all about and speaking of notables we have on the camera uh studio verso collecting their medals so i'll just give you the lowdown of who everybody is starting on the far left here is cox and emma ramsey so emma is also very involved with the slide seat st john's rowing club um a bit more junior than the seasoned rowers but the m5 Rowers have really taken her under her wing, their wings and really um, learned how to work together with her and they have a great coxswain rower relationship. Then next to Emma, we have Stephanie Davis. And then next to Stephanie Davis is the first year rower, Claudette with the dark hair. She's looking at the camera now, yeah. proud Labradorian. Okay. And then next to Claudette, who's bending over now to get her, her medal, that's Katie Wadden. This is former championship rower, Tracy Hogan, record-setting Oz FM rower who just okay. went through and shook everyone's hands, and Patricia Pittman and Siobhan Duff down there. Bunch of legends all around here. Of course, Siobhan, um, former stroke of, of Oz FM, and, and Patricia Pittman and Tracy Hogan. And on the other, other side from the Oz FM crew, we have Sherry Whalen and Christine Power, who were spares actually for Studio Verso, and they rode with the, the crew out in Placentia. Um, and then there's Ella Duffett with the blue spandex. That's Connie Duffett's daughter. Okay. So we saw Ella rowing in the universal corporate wear. Yes. And Connie is in the pink um, fourth from the right. So two people away from her, her daughter. And then next to Connie is Nancy Beaton holding the trophy. And next to Nancy with the trophy is Alyssa, who's got, um, her, I guess that's her daughter, Abigail, there. And... <laughs> Yeah, that's Jacob. I love Jacob. all the little rowers. I yeah. swear, I am so entertained by the little future rowers who are there wearing their medals proudly yeah. because they are next on the docket to join the medal team. I'm just going to take a picture of all my pals here on the screen in front of us as uh, we get ready for our next interview. But as is custom, Claudette Warren, who's the first time rower, gets to hold the trophy. Okay. And this is Billy Beaton in front with the red hair, who's Nancy's daughter, and she'll be rowing later today in the squirt races. I'll see, it's a full family affair. Isn't it lovely? It is. Okay. We'll do our selfie because we'll let you take the selfie because we are going to be joined. Do you want to take it? Bye. Can we do a pre interview selfie, Seamus? Sure. <laughs> you don't get a choice anymore. You we choice. do a pre interview selfie. No so choice. If you're watching, okay. you can see our pre interview selfie taking place. We are now joined in the hot seat by Seamus Reagan. I'm the one in the hot seat. Yes, you are absolutely yeah. in the hot seat. So as we start our pre air interview with you, and we're joining you, welcoming you to the announcer's booth. We have the first question that I ask. Okay. So Amanda is our regatta expert. I am the newbie who's also the future designated coxman. Right. Have you ever participated in the regatta as a rower? Oh, as a rower? Yes. Have she you? wants to form a celebrity I, I, I am forming my future team. She's recruiting. I am joining. <laughs> I'm very good at barking orders. Oh, no, so you can be manager. <laughs> there we go. Comes with the territory. Yeah. Yeah. So like boom. you got the booming voice. I got voice. the boom. Okay, voice, yes. so for our celebrity regatta race, we are forming our team. Yeah. So if you were rowing, yeah. are you doing the long course or the short course? Long. Oh, see, we have an endurance man. Yeah. Nice. So that is your commitment yeah. to it now. Okay. Well, of course he's endurance. What am I, what am I committing to? <laughs> You've already, the gauntlet has been thrown down for the celebrity race. So. Who who are the other celebrities? Um, so we have. Anyone who comes on the ride. Yeah, I, don't, I, I, can't, I don't know if I'm one. You are now Judy officially Foot. one. Judy Foote is willing to be in the lieutenant governor. Mm -hmm. 
shell. Okay, so okay, okay. we have a municipal shell as well as a provincial shell. So right. we are just gonna maybe form a federal and shell. The vice regal yeah, shell. Yeah, the vice regal shell. We are for we are, honor. Yes, we're having a full suite of interesting rowers. My God, the boat better not go down. Uh, <laughs> no, we never. Yeah. no, we have flotation devices okay. ready for everyone. Otherwise, oh, oh my. So you've attended many a regatta, right? Stop. Well, I've given up. You, yeah, I mean, you've given up count. I'm a <coughs> an older man <laughs> and um, <laughs> been coming here since I was, you know, probably on my dad's shoulders. Okay. Yeah. So as the regatta has grown and changed, we have seen a variety of food options. Oh, that is the best <laughs> part. So, oh my God, more than just hot dogs. Exactly. Thank you very much. So Amanda is Amazing. our sweet tooth. I am our savory salty friend. Where are we finding you on this regatta dine through? I usually find great curry across the pond. You're one of the curry I'm, people. I'm a curry guy. Yeah, I can't right. get enough of it. Yeah. I just think it's so great. And I think it's so great how the world St. John's regatta has changed as the city has changed and as the surrounding area has changed. And you know, we have so many more people here. Mm -hmm. um, and coming from incredibly different and sometimes exotic places where they, and they've introduced us to food and we just, we just love it. Embraced it. And yeah. totally. I mean, it was, I don't know, over a hundred years ago that you saw this whole East Asian influx into the United Kingdom. And what's the number one thing that people, all Londoners, all Englanders eat after right. maybe a few pints nice at 11 o'clock at night? Curry. Right. Absolutely. So yeah, it, you know, we're very adaptable here. I'm, I'm People love curry. So what? Just like we always love Chinese. See, and we're just talking food. This is this is the food part of portion of the race day. Yeah, Chinese food has had a long-standing tradition <laughs> in many outdoor communities right around the whole island. So what is your regatta day routine? Are you up at the crack of dawn like we were waiting for the call? Or are you uh, sleeping and I'll find out when I get up if I'm making it down to the Well, regatta? I don't play the roulette like I used to. Oh. So uh, <laughs> when Who I does? played the roulette, yes. um, yeah, I, you know, you had to set your alarm because you had to know if you were going to work. Okay. And, um, and it's, I can tell you it's one of the prime minister's favorite things to do. Okay. Um, you Is know, he, he here this year? He's not here this Aww. year, no. But he's been here, I think. I know. In 2018, times. I think he was here because yeah. Campbell Fian, who runs the security detail, I saw him early this morning and right. I said, no prime ministers to worry about this year. And he kind of said, thank goodness, because <laughs> he, I guess he likes, it's a to, whole... he likes to mildly play the roulette. He'll have like two beer. Uh, you know what I mean? That's about as much as he'll do. But he loves the idea of it. It's fantastic. I got to draw your attention now. This is the first time that a men's, all men's identifying team has rode the short course. So oh, this is awesome. Grace. This yeah. is great. God, it's, it's just changed for the better in every way. Absolutely. It's great. So, were you down yesterday for, because we've realized the regatta is no longer a one-day event. It no. is a two to, we're working into, well, maybe the, the future of the regatta is a week-long festivities. Maybe. Some people have taken it out a whole year, because, okay. you, you know, you can't start too early. No. <laughs> well, I, I'm one of those people. We certainly used to train all year round, but... Um, I think the timing of George Street Fest, it, it used to be like the whole yeah. week festivity, but now they have the pre-regatta concert, which is really nice. Yep. Yeah. Shandy Ganook plays here Lakeside and yeah. just awesome. Yeah. So, so you are, uh, have you, we've talked about if you are regatta roulette. Are there any memorable moments of when you have lost the roulette as some of us have? How did it feel the next morning? Not good. <laughs> Not, Not good. good. I wouldn't say it felt good. Uh, yeah, no, definitely lost roulette um, once or twice. Um, I wouldn't make it a habit. You would not <laughs> make it a it. habit to lose I haven't roulette. done it in a long time, thankfully. Um, but it's part of the fun. Like, it's just, there is no other place that I know of anywhere, and I'm sure they exist in the world, but they have a mandatory, you know, holiday that is weather dependent. So with your worldly a statutory holiday. With That's, your worldly experience as, you know, being part of our government, this is a world class event. Would you would you agree? I don't world class cheapens it. It's the uh, regatta. I wouldn't compare it to anything cheapens. else. Yeah. Like you say world class means you gotta compare it to other things. It's there's in a league of its own. Like, absolutely. Yeah. Like the regatta. absolutely. There's nothing like it. I don't know. I mean I just uh, I, I look forward to it so much every year. I love uh, trying to get friends and uh, family who are abroad to come home for it. Um, I always have a backyard party for a lot of old oh, cool. friends. Um, do you so, live nearby? Yeah, I do. Oh, cool. If, oh, yeah, yeah. 
Nice. Yeah, I, yeah, my, I, and I remember when we bought the house, I don't know, 10 years ago or so, it's like, Regatta. Oh, they're right next to Regatta. <laughs> yeah. You were probably like, check off the list. Yeah. Close yeah. to Regatta. I was able Grounds, to walk down here. Walkable. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You Absolutely. don't have to fight for a spot, exactly. a parking spot Twice. on Regatta Day. Just walk through the graveyard. <laughs> That's great. Walk we're not fighting for a spot in there. <laughs> <laughs> Although those, do. anyway, we'll get into that. We'll get into that. So, do we have a couple more races coming up? Have you been guessing or predicting who was going to win each of the races, or have you just been a happy spectator to watch everyone race? I'm, I'm usually a happy spectator. Although I'm going in now to the lunch that they they host uh, in, in the boathouse, and uh, I'd like to pick up for, you know some of my favorite teams are doing, okay. and then I dive right back in okay so. uh, it's more fun when you have people to cheer for so do you who, who, which people were you cheering for oh i'm not gonna give away anything just yet so no i gotta find secrets. out where my friends are That's, okay so i'm friends first friends, friends first. first okay once i find out where my friends are or you know i'm old enough now that frankly it's not so much friends it's friends sons and daughters okay so we're Family not going friends. to age yes. you on camera we're just we're gonna let that secret lay yeah. well i think we should recruit him to stay on camera because he's he has a spent a day or two in exactly. the in the broadcasting seat i love and i love uh almost afternoon television because morning television is totally different see that's why you go see to she's enduring. saying throw to a break so it is time <laughs> to throw see, to a break and get you mike well, to she can the here's what i learned at canada am she that. can write that <laughs> well you, you don't necessarily you have to do it now scenario. she'll kill you afterwards <laughs> um i think perry and the perry would come after us yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i think she just made that yes i think let's throw to a break, we'll throw to a break. thanks let's for throw watching break. <laughs> you're welcome Focused on quality and convenience, there isn't much you won't find at Marie's Mini Mart. Homestyle breads, sandwiches, plus a variety of artisan breads and delicious single-serve desserts available exclusively at our Frecker Drive location. Marie's Mini Mart, with 25 locations wherever you go, there we are. Hello, I'm Loidera Cueto. I'm here at the rooms where we just finished recording a Share in Our Culture series. This is a place where you get to meet amazing individuals from diverse cultural backgrounds who are making significant contributions to the social, cultural, and economic development of Newfoundland and Labrador. Hi, I'm Darren Hand. We have an exciting new show coming this fall called Pocket Universe. We introduce you to a variety of artists, filmmakers, and actors who share my love of sci-fi, horror, and all things out of this world. Newfoundland and Labrador has so many talented people in this genre that we can't wait to have them tell you their stories. Watch out for Pocket Universe coming this fall to Rogers TV, Channel 9. Share in the joy and laughter with Spirit of Newfoundland as they celebrate 25 wonderful years. Join your favorite spirit performers as they toast a quarter century of fun, food, and fantastic music. For ticket information and upcoming events, check out spiritofnewfoundland.com or phone 579-3023. Spirit of Newfoundland, a proud sponsor of the Royal St. John's Regatta on Rogers TV. change in crew and we are now joined by our future uh, announcer for the regatta yeah. <laughs> and obviously mr singh thank you for joining us a pleasure a pleasure okay so we are introducing everyone to our different roles in the regatta so all the viewers know amanda is our resident expert okay i'm our regatta newbie learning all the important things okay. that you need to know to one day be a cox person oh, right. of the regatta i love it we have had other political party members throw the gauntlet down okay. to be rowing in my future celebrity regatta. Oh, I would love to do <laughs> oh, it. See, we didn't even have Put to bribe in you in. Put me in the he team. gets points for most enthusiastic <laughs> oh, already. I'm there. Okay. I love it. And she will obviously be our manager. Yeah, she'll definitely manage it. Okay, so we have our youngest announcer joining us, I think, and she's like, I'm done, Dad. I've okay. done my announcing. I'm ready to roll. <laughs> so, 
this is my first full regatta, okay. but is this your first time attending the regatta? No, this is a good question. I was trying to remember. I don't remember, even though I lived here for almost six years. See, when I was a not, kid. No, trade secrets. Yeah, trade so secrets. I was here from... Two, in St. John's? Yeah, I was uh, two proper years townie. old. Actually, the same age, yeah, proper townie. <laughs> Probably the same age as my daughter, about two years old. She's a year and a half. Okay. When I first moved to St. John's. Okay. And we left when I was about seven. Right. But I don't remember the regatta. I remember a number of other things. I remember the winters. I remember <laughs> Bowering Park, where we lived across okay. from. Okay. So I don't remember a previous regatta. So this is the first one that I remember. Okay, so <laughs> a first time a regatta. Well, first cognizant memory yes, of a regatta. Yes, yes. Are you doing the long shore or the short, or the, or the short course? Long course or short course? You know what? That is a great question. He probably doesn't even know. I was just going to go along with it, but I don't actually know what that okay, is. Okay, so, Amanda, let's do the recap. Our long course is about how long are we talking? It's like 2,500 meters. It'll take you anywhere between 10 and 13 minutes. Okay. Short course, 1,250, take you anywhere between, you know, 5 minutes and... Four minutes and 56 seconds <laughs> and eight minutes. <laughs> You're good. Yeah. So what, okay. which one are you going to... I'll throw? go for the long. Let's go See, all the way. See, we have some endurance people. See, it's the, it's the politics in them. They just can filibuster the rowing. You're That's rowing. Go ahead. Okay. I so, do lots of uh, workouts, so I'm, I'm down to use okay. my stamina. Okay, right. so we realize for a regatta, the mm. call gets made before the sun wakes up as far as I'm concerned. What was your, were you regatta rouletting, first of all, to figure out your wake-up time? Did you oh, play the roulette last No, you night? know what? I asked about this, and one of uh, one of my friends who also is from St. John's said, there is a roulette where you don't know. It's one of the only festivals in the world where the holiday depends on the weather. Absolutely. Which my chief of staff was completely just confused <laughs> by. Like, how is that a thing? It's the only place. I love it, though, but we just said we're going to go with the time that we had said, and we just went all the way. So okay, I so. went all in on Okay, so you went all in on the yeah, regatta yeah. Okay, so what was our wake-up call this time? So uh, our wake-up call is very uh, unhealthy dependent. Okay. So our, when, our so daughter when wakes did up, she decide we were getting so up today? she's pretty much 8 a.m. every day. That's oh, her. She's, she's yeah. kind yeah, to you. Yeah, she's, she's pretty chill. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Yeah. See, we had an early wake-up call because... <laughs> As the camera shows, this beauty, as natural as it may be, right. took a little bit of work on okay, my point okay. after my regatta roulette was an ice cream sundae. Okay. And because I was not risking, we were supposed to be hosting last year and the call was no go last year. So I heard, was, that's right. So the regatta roulette won. Those yeah. people who went out on Tuesday night last year got to sleep in on Wednesday morning, but yes. not the case this year. No. Oh. So <laughs> that, that's the fun. So we're watching so you've gotten to be here and take in the grounds and see some of the fun yes what are you taking away so far as your most memorable point of regatta Ooh, i would say i met two teams okay that the one rowers? two of the rower oh, teams cool. uh one team was the first women's team to to roll the f the row the, the full course. distance yes. yeah and they got, took second place this year. So we got a picture with them and okay. chatted with them. That was really memorable. Did you feel cool yeah. getting to meet them? I felt pretty okay, honored. See, yeah, yeah. I was honored. Yeah, okay, yeah, you got to meet yeah, the celebrities yeah. of I the did, thing. I did, Super yeah, cool. cool. Okay, yeah. so regatta is rowing, which is all like the main point, but the food. A lot of us are yes. here to eat our way through the regatta course. Yes, yes. Sweet or salty? We I, have our queen of sweet. I'm savory all the way. Oh, really? I'm definitely someone who loves sweets, but I try to hold it back. And I'm going to start my day off with a savory dish first, okay. and I'll maybe finish it off with something sweet. Okay. So we're on the search for cotton candy. Oh. Because I smell it. I don't know where it is yet on this thing, but I'm rooting for cotton candy. So <laughs> if you're going sweet, Amanda, are you cookie, ice cream, or candy? I don't know. I don't discriminate. Oh. I like it all. <laughs> so if you're going to sustain your sweet palate because yes. you've managed to eat your savory first, where right. are we going? Ice cream or candy or cookies? Definitely not candy, okay. but I love ice cream. Me too. But okay. cookies are a close second, so yes. it's going to be tough. So I, if, I'll be torn. I hope you find an ice cream and cookie to make a sandwich <laughs> and thus make a more memorable best, regatta. Best of both worlds. Okay. <laughs> so will you be here for a while or is it back to Ottawa after the regatta? So I was here. I got here early. Uh, yeah. We've been able to spend a good number of days, Excellent. and after this, we're continuing the Atlantic tour and going to Halifax. Okay. So we launched our Atlantic tour here in St. John's, a place where I grew up, a special place to me, and then we're going to continue the tour by going to Halifax next. So awesome. there's some photos that showed you at George Street Fest. Yes. So this was, <laughs> if this is your first memorable regatta, it's your first memorable George Street Fest. Before 100%. we touch to that, so 
what was the band that drew you to George Street? Oh, Street? it was Washboard Union. Oh, now, I didn't know them. Yeah, they have epic beards. So oh. I think there was a, <laughs> a beard gang. I think there's a bit of a beard gang vibe, so I, I definitely was pulled in by that. Okay. But they're lovely music, Canadian band. They're awesome. Okay. Uh, I would have loved to catch Loud Luxury. I actually know uh, both of the okay. both the of the performers. Yeah, the okay. DJs. So that would have been cool, but I missed that one. But I caught the tail end of Washburn we Union. So we won't fault you on missing Loud Luxury, and I'm pretty sure you could write them a story now. <laughs> but before we let you go, we're going to throw it down to Mitch, who's down at the Winter Circle, to see what our winners are feeling like before we come back to chatting with you some more. Sounds great. Hey, thanks so much. Thank you. OK. okay. So <laughs> Hello there, everyone. Mitchell Drydak back here with uh, the winners of the uh, Labor Senior Women's. Um, how about we uh, start off by introducing ourselves? Uh, Amanda Hernum. Excellent. Deidre Halliday. Nicole Daw. Uh, Pam White. Yvonne Knight. Uh, Jenny Cutter. Laura Daw. Don Drew. Kayla Gullen. Excellent. So, I saw in your bio that uh, everyone here works with the RNC. My one question, well, I got more than one question, but what came first, the police or the rowing? So we're actually fairly new to this. Um, most of us have been in the police force for approximately 10 years. Um, however, it's just been the last, this is our second year as a team together. Um, but we uh, we really enjoy the sport and we've been pretty committed. And uh, yeah, I, it's something that we've kind of created a passion for for the last few years. Excellent. Well, congrats. Um, I wonder, do you guys have any kind of like pre-race rituals? Like what goes into it the night before? Um, uh, feel free to, you know, pass on this question. <laughs> There's There was a lot of texts back and forth, uh, a bit of pre-race jitters going on. Uh, I don't know if there was any pre-race rituals, but just a lot of like hyping each other up and kind of just talking to each other and trying to calm our nerves a bit before the race. Excellent. Fantastic. So, okay. Well, um, honestly, I'm a little bit surprised that the that the weather was uh, permitting. I was looking at the um, I was looking at the forecast tomorrow and compared to today, and I was a little bit surprised. Um, what would you guys have done if it was put off? Like, are, were you super prepared for today? Um, did it kind of like psych out or? No, I think we were prepared for it to go either way. Uh, we did most of our races around lunchtime or our practices around lunchtime. So I know that that was probably something that would have benefited us. You know, the, the ponds usually aren't great around lunchtime. So we were kind of prepared for that. Uh, but, you know, mentally we were we were prepared to, to race today. I love that. And now is there anyone that you folks want to thank here today uh, before I cut back? Thank you. And our sponsor, of course, Planet Fitness. Yes. Yeah. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. Awesome race. And uh, we'll cut back to an interview uh, with the premier of Newfoundland and Labrador. Oh, got it. No, I'm, I'm up here. I uh, took a job. I'm assistant professor in <laughs> University of Regina now. Perfect. And we're back. And we're back. <laughs> and we're going to do a secret selfie in four minutes so we can get some photos of us and the premier before yeah. we throw back. Selfies? Good. Perfect. And now we are joined. We've been replaced. We've replaced Mr. Singh with Mr. Fury. Welcome to the hot seat. Ah, oh, it's hot. <laughs> Happy New Year. No stranger to Kitty Vitty Lake. Yeah. So how does it feel to be back at the regatta, not rowing? I'm really jealous. Oh, yeah. uh, it's I hard, right? It. Yeah. I, uh, I mean, it's, I was saying to uh, my family as we were coming in, it's not so much the day, but all the training and the teamwork and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the lead just up. that sense of camaraderie. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, it's just so much fun. The day is fun, but everything else around it is also so much fun. So I, I miss it. We, we were threatening to come back this year, but uh, maybe next year. Who knows? So holding you to that threat of threatening <laughs> to come back. So everyone who's been in the hot seat has been asked if they are going to row in this celebrity regatta that we are pulling together, letting well, the Royal St. John's Regatta Deep Committee know <laughs> right now. We've had Her Honor, Judy Foote, was willing to join the rowing, join yeah. a rowing team. We've had official opposition David Brazel say he's throwing the gauntlet down for everyone to be part of this. We've had Mayor Danny Breen say he's willing to be in, and Jim Din says he will manage for Coxman, <laughs> <laughs> Coxman a well, show. Well, hold on now. Do I get to pick my team? Or? We're going to let you pick your team. Okay, well, there we'll... will be at least five shells in this I was gonna say at least five rowers would be a good start no, yeah, at least five rowers, but at least five shells going in 
what seat are you taking and what course are you going to do? Uh, well, long course. Oh, uh, nice. Can I have my old team team back, Team yeah. Broken Earth, we from the 200th, uh, the 200th anniversary? So okay. where were, was I correct earlier when I said your Team Broken Earth that rode in the 200th anniversary, were you all uh, healthcare workers? We were all orthopedic surgeons, all That's been to okay. Haiti. Uh, so it was just so much fun. Like, okay. it was so much fun. And the... The coolest thing about that experience for me was we won the race. Yeah. We won this the, one of the races. We didn't qualify for the finals or anything. But my son was five or seven at the time, and he thought we won the regatta. <laughs> we had we had a trophy and medals, and it was it, it was great. It was just so fantastic. That's awesome. And so, do you have a, a sons or nephews or anyone competing today? I have two nephews competing this year, and hopefully my son and daughter next year. So Excellent. Yeah, it's, it's what teams are your nephews? Competing? They are in uh, the two twenty race and the. 240 race. Pennycon, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. we'll yeah. keep an eye out yeah. for them. Yeah. So one is uh, one is 15 and one is 12. So the future, the oh, future, future of the rowers. regatta. Yeah, yeah. really awesome. from a long line of rowers. So. Oh, is that right? Yeah, so it should be uh, interesting to see how they do and mature and develop into a team. Yeah. Did they start with the squirts? They I'm did. Oh, yep. See, they did. I'm learning it's a great all program. the yeah. Yeah. importance yeah. of it all. Yeah. Super great. Yeah, yeah, the squirt program wasn't a thing when we were starting to row, but now it's really paying off because people who have been they've been rowing together for seven or eight years and they're not even 18 years old yet you know oh, i know i know yeah. and as you know part of the biggest challenge in the boat is coming together as a team exactly it's, a, it's not a collection of individuals it really yeah. is the, when you feel that lift of the boat it's because everyone is working as a yeah. team so and so know. we're talking about regatta roulette and everybody doing that last night but i'd say many of the crews <laughs> were getting together for dinners yep. strategy sessions or they may have done that two nights ago or tweaking their race plan and it was early to bed for us okay. yes the night before, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so as a non-rower this year did you roulette did i roulette no i did not okay. no, I, uh, he I was is in a premier yeah. roulette is safe for everyone i'm no, the prime minister well, rouletted was... once upon a time we uh we were in bonavista yesterday and okay. drove home and then i spent the evening with uh, my son playing, playing fifa we recreated the women's world cup on, okay. on fifa i'm so terrible at pick? it what team were i was you playing team haiti okay actually. Oh. Yeah, did you lose? so it was fun i lost one two and lost two okay yeah. and what team was your son playing uh he was whoever haiti was playing so we set up the whole bracket the okay. exact same as oh. the women's World Cup. Nice. It was excellent. Yeah, it was a bit of fun. So you had a different roulette. Experience. We had a different roulette. Okay. Yeah. But the Team I Broken lost. Earth, they've <laughs> expanded from Haiti now, right? They go all over the world. Yeah, so we right? started in Port au Prince, uh, hard to believe, 13 years ago. Oh my wow. goodness. Yeah. I remember yeah, that like it was crazy. yesterday. Yeah, and so now uh, I say we, but I'm not a part of it anymore for, right. for the time, right? We're in Ethiopia, Guatemala, Bangladesh, Port au Prince, wow. um, and there's others. I can't, I'm just drawing a blank on now. Nepal. Yeah, it's, a, it's wow. just a and, great And there's great different charity. parts of the Can Canada in Canada that are helping out now too. Oh, right? uh, yeah, multiple teams. We started here in St. John's, but it grew just by word of mouth across the entire country. So there's wow. teams from Vancouver, multiple wow. teams from Alberta, Saskatchewan has a huge presence. Uh, Manitoba has some people, Ontario has a huge presence, wow. and Dalhousie has a, has a big presence as well. It's very. It's a very cool charity, very special, and everybody should be proud of the fact that it started here. In, in very St. much John's so, yeah, Labrador. very yeah. much so. And you guys had very cool jackets when you were. Yeah, rode. remember those red ones? Oh, uh, I great. was going to wear it today, but um, decided not to. <laughs> <laughs> so before we quickly let you go and we go to our commercial break and our um, induction Hall of Fame episode, yeah. wanted to know the Regatta Roulette, Regatta food options have changed yeah. over the years mm. so we have our queen of sweet i am the senior monsignor of savory <laughs> where would we find you on the appetite uh well i'd like to I'd, i'm not going to pick one because i okay. every year i do do Proper three politician. things no it's not it's it's, 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 it's true i plate of fries okay for sure and then uh, some cotton candy if it's available. See, okay, it's and, here. And uh, the Indian food across yeah, the I mean, told the, you. So my Thanks. family's favorite is, is the Indian tent. Oh, sure. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I want to thank you so much for joining. And to all our viewers watching, we are going to go into our Hall of Fame induction and our John Perlin interview. We invite you to keep watching. If you're down at the regatta, make sure to check out the exhibition races going on. And you'll have some friendly faces joining you after. But we will be back in the evening to keep you guys posted on what's going on with the race and see who else wants to drop by and have a chat. So thank you so much for being Great. Thanks, sir. Thanks, Thanks for so having much. me. Enjoy the day. And we'll see you, you guys later. Good afternoon, everyone. How's everybody doing today on the hottest day of the year? 
Uh, to get things started, I'd like to welcome everyone here this afternoon. Ministers Abbott and Cody, MHA Jody Wall, Mayor Breen, Councillors Hickman, not sure if, I don't think the others are here right now. So we have uh, President Noel Thomas Kennel. Our Vice President Ashley Peach is running a little bit late, but she'll be along shortly. We have past presidents Brad Power, Gail Malone, Chris Neary, Don Kelly, and Charles Cook. Uh, we have our Honorary Life President, Tani Collins. Regatta Committee, Hall of Fame committee members, inductees, and your guests, to each and every one of you, welcome to the 2023 Royal St. John's Regatta Hall of Fame induction ceremony. My name is Candace Mogler. I'm a 16-year member of the Royal St. John's Regatta Committee, and I'll be your MC for today's event. This event is always such a pleasure to host because it's, everybody is happy. It's, it's a great opportunity to, uh, to honor our inductees and to share the history of how they got to where they are at this point in time. I'm now going to call upon Tani Collins, our Honorary Life President, to ask the blessing and ask that you please stand. This is my first official duty uh, as Honorary Life President. I did take the opportunity to thank the committee for this appointment, and I'll do this publicly as well. So I really appreciate uh, uh, the honor that has been bestowed on me. As we come together at this special time, let us pause a moment to appreciate the opportunity for good company, to thank all those past and present whose efforts have made this event possible. We reap the fruits of our society, our country, and take joy in the bounties of nature at this happy occasion. Let us also wish that someday people on earth may enjoy the same good fortune as we share. Amen. I would invite Noel to bring greetings on behalf of the committee. Good afternoon. On behalf of the Royal St. John's Regatta Committee, I welcome you here this afternoon to celebrate the accomplishments of two of our newest Royal St. John's Regatta Hall of Fame inductees. It's a pleasure to share the event with all of you, and I, wish, I would like to wish my sincerest congratulations today to Mr. Ed Williams and Mr. Charles Cook. During my years on the committee, I've been granted a unique perspective to see the incredible amount of dedication and commitment that our athletes give to the sport of fixed seat rowing. Ed Williams is, of course, no exception. Not only winning multiple back-to-back -back championship titles and even breaking the course record twice in one day, but what signifies a great athlete to me is passing that on, uh, passing on the passion and knowledge to others by way of coaching and as a coxswain. It's certainly commendable that you have spent so much of your life dedicated to the sport that we all love. Congratulations on being indu inducted into the Hall of Fame in the category of rower. As the president who welcomed me in my first year, I've also been honored to serve my years on the committee with Charles. And I've certainly seen firsthand the dedication and passion that he has for the Royal St. John's Regatta. It's hard to miss. <laughs> Always available to help out on whatever subcommittee needs a hand, often to Andrea's dismay. <laughs> he will never turn down and ask for help. He has been there for advice and guidance through all of my years on the committee, throughout whatever role I've been in. He certainly has one of the most varied backgrounds on the committee, having served in almost every role. He is an integral member of the Royal St. John's Regatta Committee. Congratulations on being inducted into the Hall of Fame in the category of builder. Each of your accomplishments with the sport of fixed seat rowing and the Royal St. John's Regatta will now forever be marked in history. What an incredible achievement, and I am honored to be here today to commemorate this moment with you. Though I'm sure others will also give their thanks, I would like to personally thank the Hall of Fame Committee with past presidents Don Kelly, uh, Gail Malone and Chris Neary, Bob Whalen, Mike Power, Wayne Purchase, Brendan McCarthy and Brian Medor. A special thanks also to the City of St. John's, Mayor Danny Green, the St. John's Convention Center for our lovely meal and venue this evening, this afternoon, committee member Candace Mokler as today's MC, Canadian AV and everyone that has made today possible. Your contribution is greatly appreciated. Thank you.
Thank you, Noel. I call upon Mayor Breen to bring greetings on behalf of the City of St. John's. Thank you very much, Candace, and good afternoon, everyone. A beautiful afternoon in St. John's. I was telling people out in the lobby that I take credit for the weather because I get blamed for enough crap that I didn't have anything to do with. I take credit for stuff I got nothing to do with, too. The good stuff. So, but it's a, it's a great day, and I hope everybody is enjoying the past couple of weeks uh, in the city. And on behalf of City Council, I'd like to welcome the presidents, past presidents, members of the Regatta Committee, Hall of Fame members, uh, especially the new inductees, and, and your families. We're very pleased to be able to host the Hall of Fame luncheon once again this year. It's, uh, to me, it's the kickoff to the regatta. And it's our way at the City of St. John's uh, to not only to recognize the Hall of Fame uh, inductees and all members of the Hall of Fame, but also to thank the regatta committee, Noel and Ashley and the committee and all the committee members for the work they do in putting off the regatta each year uh, in an age year uh, that, that it goes uh, when it happens on the first Wednesday of August, of course. <clears throat> I, I think that it goes beyond just organizing a regatta. You're entrusted with a piece of our culture and our heritage that's vital to our city and our province. And it's a big uh, undertaking, and uh, we're very pleased to be able to support you in the ways that we can uh, to make it work. I would like to acknowledge my colleague, Councillor Sandy Hickman, who's uh, here, as well as Minister John Abbott, Minister Chiffon Cody, and MHA Jody Wall. Although I came in and looked at the table, I saw a gap there between myself and Don Kelly. I didn't know if it was a Mount Pearl request uh, <laughs> to break us up there, Donnie, but it's, uh, it's, it's good to see everyone uh, back here again. And of course, we're here today to honor the two new inductees in the Regatta Hall of Fame, Ed Williams, has had a career, a stellar career on the pond, and uh, certainly worthy of induction into the Hall of Fame. Congratulations, Ed, to you and your family. And of course, Charles Cook, who, uh, as uh, Candace, as um, uh, Noel pointed out, has been involved in every aspect of the regatta. But I was involved with Charles on the uh, 200th celebrations, and when you look around the pond and see the work that was done there, the winner's circle, and all the other improvements were made. I can guarantee you it wouldn't have happened without Charles Cook. Uh, it was his tenacity and his work that, uh, that put it all together. Charles, it was a pleasure to work with you on that, and the results speak for themselves down there. The, uh, so we're, we're very proud then to congratulate all the inductees and, uh, and, and their families and to wish everybody a fantastic regatta day. I would be remiss though if I didn't congratulate Bernard uh, Collins on being appointed on his honorary life presidency. Bernard, congratulations. It's like a Nobel Prize for East End Townies. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's, it's fantastic, as you can tell. I love the regatta. The city of St. John's loves the regatta, and we can't wait to see you all next Wednesday. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor Breen. Before I introduce the next speaker, let me tell you a little bit about the history that brings us here today. The Hall of Fame was established in 1987 to recognize, honor, and pay tribute to individuals or crews on the basis of ability, sportsmanship, character, and achievement, or extraordinary distinction in fixed seat rowing, whether amateur or professional as well to recognize and pay tribute to those individuals, groups, or associations who have given distinguished service and who have made a major commitment to the development and advancement of fixed seat rowing in this province, and to encourage the development of all aspects of fixed seat rowing by permanently recording the achievements and history of such individuals, groups, associations, or crews. In its first year, back in 87, two crews and nine individuals were inducted into three categories, specifically the rower slash crew, the coxswain slash coach, and the builder. In its 36-year history, there have been a total of 79 individuals, 25 crews, and two entire regatta committees. In just a few minutes, we'll be adding two more individuals to this prestigious group 
And before we get on to that, I'm going to ask Don Kelly, Chair of the Hall of Fame Committee, to talk a little more about the committee and its process. Thank you, Candace. And uh, Mr. Mayor, for the record, it's three degrees warmer in Mount Pearl. <laughs> Good afternoon, and again, welcome to the Royal St. John's Regatta Hall of Fame Luncheon and Inductee Ceremony. We are so pleased to be able to continue the tradition of holding this event during the rowing season. I would like to thank the Mayor, Breen, and the City for hosting our Hall of Fame banquet. There, uh, these are still challenging times, and without the support of the City, this event would not have been possible. Again, thank you, Mayor Breen and uh, Councillors, Mr. Hickman, too. Appreciate it. I wish to pass along greetings to, on behalf of the Hall of Fame Committee to our inductees, Charles Cook in the builder category and Ed Williams in the rower category. Congratulations to each of you. We are proud to welcome you into the Royal St. John's Regatta Hall of Fame, and both are very deserving inductees. I would like to thank the Royal St. John's Regatta Board of Directors, led by President Noel Thomas Kennel and Vice President Ashley Peach, for their guidance and support of this event. All the past presidents are aware of the commitment of time and work that goes into running of the Royal St. John's Regatta. However, one can only imagine the trials and tribulations that has confronted the board for the past few years, post-COVID. They have done a stalwart job working through these uncharted times, and thank you for the work you're doing. A special thank you to Keith White, Jessica Gallant, and Michelle Hickey, as well as General Manager Michelle Gooby and staff for your contribution to organizing this banquet. The, the, excuse me, the logistics for such an event is numerous, time sensitive, and challenging. You've done it and in fine style. A special thank you to each of you, and we, we certainly appreciate your hard work. Also, thank you to Candace for being so gracious to MC this event. It is always without hesitation and done so professionally. Thank you, Candace. Lastly, I wish to acknowledge and thank the Hall of Fame Selection Committee members, Secretary Bob Whalen, members Gail Malone, and they're sitting in the table right there in front of me, uh, Bob, uh, Gail Malone, Mike Power, Wayne Purchase, Chris Neary, and uh, representing the media, we have two members, Brenda McCarthy and Brian Madore from BOCM. I certainly appreciate uh, your dedication to detail, your knowledge of the sport of rowing, and its history when deciding upon the inductees. Thank you for taking the time to contribute to the selection of this year's inductees. Our committee, as you're aware, make the selections. However, the more important and critical role lies with the nominators. Any group or individual has the right to submit an unlimited number of nominations. We encourage all of you who know of, these deserve, of those deserving a nomination to make a submission or two. The Royal St. John's Regatta Hall of Fame Committee is governed by a set of guidelines, and these are available on the Royal St. John's Regatta website. You may also reach out to any member of the committee who can provide you with additional information and guidance. Thank you. Thank you, Don. And now on to the formal proceedings and the reason we're gathered here today. Our first inductee for 2023 is Charles Cook. A stalwart and dedicated member of the regatta community, Charles has left an indelible mark on the Royal St. John's regatta. With unwavering commitment and a passion for excellence, Charles has served the regatta committee with distinction, making significant contributions in various roles over the years. His journey began in the late 70s, when he took to the waters as a rower in the Fun and Fast Men's Senior Team. As a rower, Charles experienced firsthand the exhilaration and challenges of the regatta, nurturing a deep-rooted connection and love for the sport. This personal experience laid the foundation for his remarkable journey of service and leadership within the regatta community, culminating in a legacy of achievement. Following in the footsteps of his father, Charlie Cook, who was a 2012 Hall of Fame inductee, Charles began his participation as a regatta committee member in 1990, eager to lend his skills and expertise. It wasn't long before his exceptional abilities were recognized and he was appointed as the Director of Ground Space. Embracing this responsibility wholeheartedly, Charles proved himself to be a capable and efficient leader. 
His unwavering dedication and meticulous planning were instrumental in creating an optimal environment for regatta participants and spectators alike. In recognition of his outstanding contributions, Charles was entrusted with the role of treasurer. Stepping into this position, he faced a formidable challenge as the regatta at that time had a burdensome long-term debt of $200,000. Driven by his determination and financial acumen, Charles worked tirelessly, implementing sound fiscal strategies and rallying the support of the regatta community. Within a mere three years, the debt was paid off and an impressive $100,000 surplus was accumulated in the bank a testament to his unwavering dedication and financial stewardship. Elevating his involvement further, Charles assumed the roles of Vice President in 2006 and 7, followed by President in 2008 and 9. His visionary leadership and exceptional organizational skills set new standards of excellence for the regatta. Charles' tenure as President marked a period of tremendous growth and success with his strategic decision-making and collaborative approach propelling the regatta to new heights. Recognizing his contributions, Charles was bestowed the honor of becoming the Hall of Fame chair following two years as past president. In this position, he chaired the induction process, ensuring the regatta's most exceptional contributors were rightfully recognized and celebrated. Charles fulfilled this role for an impressive six years. His dedication extended beyond administrative roles as he actively participated in various committees. As a long-standing member of the Rules Committee, he played a pivotal role in maintaining the integrity and fairness of regatta competitions. Additionally, Charles contributed his expertise to the 200th Anniversary Committee, assuming the chairmanship in 2016. Under his guidance, the Winner's Circle and the Hall of Fame Monument were realized, serving as enduring symbols of the regatta's rich history. His tireless efforts included extensive coordination with all levels of government, resulting in $3 million in funding, an achievement that exemplifies Charles' ability to bridge diverse interests and accomplish remarkable goals. Ever forward-thinking, Charles continues to actively engage with government entities to further develop the area around Kitty Vitty Pond. This includes projects such as Lighting Around the Lake, which underscores his commitment to creating an inclusive and enhanced regatta experience for all. Charles embodies a true hands-on spirit, readily stepping in to assist the boathouse manager and waking up at the crack of dawn to honor the 5 a.m. bookings. Furthermore, he did, did, diligently oversees the maintenance and storage of the regatta's boats, ensuring their optimal performance and longevity. In 2023, Charles' invaluable contributions continued as he assumed a pivotal role on the Finance Committee. Recognizing the importance of financial stability, he played a central role in completing outstanding audits and setting the regatta on a course for a prosperous future. Charles Cook's extraordinary journey with the Royal St. John's Regatta is testament to his remarkable leadership, organizational acumen, and unwavering dedication. Through his visionary initiatives, financial stewardship, and tireless efforts, he has left an indelible mark on the Regatta's history and set a standard of excellence for future generations. His tireless efforts have not only transformed the regatta into a financially stable and thriving organization, but have also shaped the physical landscape and infrastructure surrounding the pond. His warm and approachable demeanor, combined with his willingness to go above and beyond, has made him a trusted and respected figure among rowers, spectators, and fellow committee members alike. This exceptional dedication and outstanding contributions have made him a true icon within the Royal St. John's Regatta Community. For his contributions to the Royal St. John's Regatta Committee, I am pleased to announce that Charles Cook is inducted into the Royal St. John's Regatta Hall of Fame as a builder. Charles?
problem. They said I could speak for a little bit. Ah. Uh, President Kennel, Your Worship, Mayor Breen, uh, Royal St. John's Regatta Committee, uh, Hall of Fame Committee, um, Minister Cody and uh, Minister Abbott, uh, Regatta Committee members, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I would like to congratulate Ed Williams on his induction into the Hall of Fame. I hope will not, Ed will not mind if I make this comment, but it goes to his tenacity during training with his championship crews. I understand that early on, early on during the winter months, Ed and his teammates would go to Atlantic Place to run inside the parking garage, up and down each of the levels. One evening, my father, Charlie, coming home, came by Ed running, not sure if on Canaz Hill or Logie Bay Road, but in a blinding snowstorm. He stopped Ed to find out what was up and offer a ride. Ed said he was regatta training and that he had run from home, Outer Cove, I believe it was at the time, to Atlantic Place to run laps, and then he was now running back home. That's the kind of commitment that Ed had to rowing and to his team. It's congratulations, Ed. Well deserved. Being selected as an inductee into the Royal St. John's Regatta Hall of Fame is indeed an unexpected honor. It was announced by Don Kelly that I was inducted. I was at a loss for words, and I know some of you think that's really, really funny, uh, <laughs> as I really am. I almost always have something to say. My goal in joining any volunteer organization is to support it to my fullest through my energies, abilities, and to promote and further the goals of the organization. The regatta is truly a St. John's historical event steeped in 205 years of history and grandeur in which I take great pride in saying I am a member. That may certainly sound corny to some, but without active volunteers, many organizations have and will fail. In reflecting on my time and involvement with the Royal St. John's Regatta, I realize that I have not missed many events, although I must admit I did miss one regatta day, can't believe that, uh, since being elected a member. It would have been my 25th consecutive year at that point. I have spent so much time regatta related that my wife, without doubt, felt like a widow from time to time. Thank you for your patience, Andrea. I've had many great and fun times from rowing in the 1970s, late 70s, and from being on the committee, and I must admit, and I have met some very amazing people, both members and regatta supporters, many of whom have become friends and mentors. I did not join for what I can receive from being a member, but what I can give and foster to grow it. Being recognized for my efforts is truly humbling. I would like to thank Chris Neary for proposing and crafting my application so eloquently, and you just heard it. I only heard parts of it after I was uh, told that I was been uh, nominated to. Uh, to become a member of the Hall of Fame. And I also have to thank my wife, who I understand uh, was picking my brain for quite some time. I still can't believe she managed to get away with that one, uh, for providing information to Chris and his aid in his research. I had no idea this was being prepared. And, and like I say, I only saw Chris's submission several days after the official announcement. To the Hall of Fame committee, thank you for bestowing this on me, honor. Oh, and by the way, stand by. There's more to come. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Congratulations, Charles, and thank you for your words. Our next inductee of 2023 is Ed Williams. Ed began rowing in 1987 with the Remax crew, finishing up in 2007 after competing in numerous championship races with no less than two Placentia championships, six St. John's Regatta championships, two Regatta long course records, and 1994 Oarsman of the Year to his name. Ed's first championship was in 1999 with NTV, who would go on to win four straight championships. This would be worthy of the nomination in itself. What's remarkable is that Ed would go on to win two more championships with Crosby Industrial in 2006 and 2007. This team, considered one of the greatest of all time, would break the nine minute barrier in practice twice and three times on regatta day, including the historical 2007 regatta where the Crosby Industrial crew would break the course record not once but twice in the same day. This achievement is considered one of the greatest single regatta performances of all time and he and his team would be awarded the prestigious Lord Warden's Medal for their efforts. 8.51.32 continues to be the current long course record 15 years later. Now, on the 15th anniversary of this record performance, Ed is back in the boat, competing in the men's masters category. Ed's contribution extends beyond his success as an oarsman, 
working at the boathouse in the early 1990s, teaching many crews how to row. He also has competed as coxswain and coach. Culturally, Ed has also contributed to the regatta, writing a song about the 1884 tragedy of the death of members of the Torbay crew titled Ghosts Upon the Shore, and penning the famous poem The Last Race of the Day, which was added to the 1995 regatta program and currently hangs on a plaque in the regatta museum. Ed's achievements and longevity in the sport of fixed seat rowing highlighted by winning four straight with NTV and a record with Crosby Industrial, warrants his acceptance in the Royal St. John's Regatta Hall of Fame. For his contributions to the Royal St. John's Regatta, I am pleased to announce that Ed's, Ed Williams is inducted into the Royal St. John's Regatta Hall of Fame as a rower. Those who are familiar with me uh, can come to the conclusion really quick that I can stand up here and talk about the regatta for three weeks straight, nonstop. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. Um, I want to thank, uh, so blessed to have my kids here, my daughter Jade, my son Brent. Uh, Jade, who's uh, doing very well with her career, and my boy here, who's actually most likely a better athlete than I ever was. He's a three-time national uh, Waco kickboxing champion, so that's something to be proud of for sure. Uh, my beautiful wife, Connie, sorry. My handsome father, Ed, you senior or junior here? <laughs> and friends. Uh, as it was stated earlier, I did uh, start rowing in 87. A young man by the name of Craig James asked me to row. And uh, I said, sure, because it was 1987 and we were all bored to death. <laughs> we, uh, we started rowing uh, seven weeks before the regatta. And um, we never had a coxswain uh, at that time. There was a gentleman at the boathouse. His name was Albert Joy. He was actually the, uh, the uh, coxswain for the Hotel Newfoundland crew back in the late 50s. Albert Joy was always a great fellow. I loved sitting down and talking to Albert because he had such a, he had so much knowledge of the old time regattas and of course I love the history of the regatta in itself, right? Uh, so yeah, Albert took us out for the first week and um, we, we got a full time uh, coxswain after a while. We, our very first race we won, which was a great uh, result. We actually won by 12 boat lengths and that's unheard of, that, that doesn't happen in the regatta. So I'm not sure what happened to the other crews, but we won by 12 boat lengths, it was awesome. So I was hooked, I was absolutely hooked on rowing. Um, after a while I got a job at the boathouse and being around the boathouse uh, all the time, you got to realize the who's who of the regatta, the best of the best and uh, you know, I, I used to look up the crews like Stockley and, and Outer Cove and the police crews and whatnot, and they were always so much faster than everybody else, and I just admired them so much, and I wanted to be those guys so badly. So 1990 came along, and I finally got the championship race. My goal was to make the championship race. People got to realize that it's actually very difficult to be in the championship race, just to get there. So that was a big accomplishment uh, in the 90s. It was, it was just, a, it was, I was just so happy. I remember going down the pond, we, we did a turn, we came back and we, we got dead last. But that was okay, you know, because it was our first time and that's the way it should be. You should pay your dues uh, to become a, a champion. Um, I'm just gonna highlight a few things. I mean, again, I can stay here all day. Um, uh, back in 94 and 95, I got asked to row with East Coast Marine. Uh, they were a bunch of young fellas who uh, were, they had bad intentions and their training was, they certainly elevated my training for sure. I remember uh, training down in East Coast Marine. They were so good to us. There was a, a, a training facility upstairs in the building and uh, we used to put 25 pound plates on our back and put it on the old knapsack, you know, and run up Signal Hill. It was, we used to do that three days a week. It was absolutely, it hurt and I loved it because I love the feeling of being in shape. I love, uh, you know, testing myself. 
And uh, East Coast Marine actually, uh, you're going to like this one, Bob. <laughs> East Coast Marine actually fabricated a uh, Gander Riverboat for us. And we used to put it out in the Kitty Gulf. And in the wintertime, the fishermen would uh, break open the ice for us just, to, just so we could have our spins, you know. So it was a great community thing. They really backed us up, and that was fantastic. We never won the championship race, but uh, we did row 914, which was uh, a good time uh, for sure. But, um, but it, wasn't, it wasn't looked at as a great time. And that'll give you an indication how, how, how much faster everybody else was. I mean, rowing 914 and considering it's an okay time, you know. So. Then uh, 1999 came, uh, NTV asked me if I was uh, interested in rowing, and of course I was. And everything elevated again. The training, the coaching, and 1999, as was stated earlier, was uh, when I won the championship. I hate to say when I, because obviously it's a sport of uh, wheeze, but uh, it was my first year winning, and that was absolutely extraordinary. Uh, to come over that line, and be the reason why the gun went off, and be the we reason why everyone was cheering. It was, it was such a fantastic feeling. Uh, we ended up rowing, uh, sorry, we ended up winning three times more uh, with that crew. And our wins never really came easy with that crew. Like, I think three out of the four times we won the championship race, we, were, we lost in the morning, and we had to come back and regroup and, and fight for the win, which was, you know, it's very difficult. It's very easy to win when you're ahead, but when you gotta row through another crew to win the championship, it's, it's, it's a difficult task. So I'm quite grateful for the NTV days, for sure. Uh, speed this up a little bit. 2006, myself and Ron Witten and Bert Hickey had a conversation. Through that conversation, uh, the Crosby Industrial Services team was born. Uh, we found out quite quickly that we were a fast crew. We were doing some pretty fast splits very early on, late May. Uh, we surprised ourselves. Uh, so it, just, it was just an indication that things were working. And uh, we rode, we went for time, and we rode 8.55 in practice. So we went into the regatta with a, a two-second window, because uh, obviously the record at the time was 8.57.14. That morning we went uh, down to the pond, we, we, we did the course and we came in and we rode 859. So we were two seconds shy of the record. And we were devastated, we were distraught, we were upset. And I still say to all the guys that we were the only crew that ever rode under nine and were upset about it, you know what I mean? Like, that's where our head was. Uh, but it gave us, the reason to come back in 2007. We knew that we had a chance, we had a shot to beat the record. Uh, we, we elevated our training again. And in 2007, we came back and rode 849 in practice. Some say 847, some say 848, but the watch I saw said 849, so we'll go with that. Um, we went into the we went into the, that morning and we rode uh, 854, and that was fantastic. It was it was a great feeling. It was all that I ever dreamed of, and uh, we came back the next in the championship race. Obviously, as it was stated earlier, and rode 851.32. Um, I remember Siobhan Duff. We all know Siobhan. She was on Cable Nine, and uh, on the broadcast, she said. Um, they are, all, they are all experiencing what we all dream of. And that's exactly what rowing is about. Rowing is about people and individuals trying to fulfill their dreams. And I'm so grateful and thankful that I actually had a bunch of fellows with me that had the same dream that I had. And uh, so that, that, was, that was just fantastic. I'll just leave you with this. In, in 1991, uh, Smith-Stockley Cove rode 859.42. They were the first crew to ever row under nine. And it was absolutely outstanding. I seen growing men cry. I seen people jumping up and down like they just, I don't, like, like they just opened up the best Christmas gift that they ever has had in their life, you know? And I just remember the feeling of how extraordinary that was because nobody ever experienced that before. Nobody ever went officially that fast before. And it was absolutely something uh, that stuck with me forever. 
And in, in that bra broadcast, Dee Murphy, when Stockley Adderco came over the line, Dee Murphy said, you've just seen history, history, history. And I just want to say I'm so proud and so honored to be a part of the Royal St. John's Brigade of History. Thank you very much. Congratulations once again, Ed, and thank you. And if we can just <clears throat> give both of our new inductees one more round of applause. <clears throat> On behalf of the Royal St. John's Regatta Committee, <clears throat> I express our thanks to the city for hosting this event, the St. John's Convention Center catering team for the delicious lunch, and their staff for the behind the scenes efforts, Canadian AV for their continued support of our organization, and Michelle Hickey for photography. A round of applause for all, please. And um, that wraps up the 2023 Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Thank you everyone for joining us. to be here today with the newly minted honorary life president of the Royal St. John's Regatta Committee, Mr. John Perlin. Uh, John Perlin needs no introduction to anybody who has been following the regatta, but I'm going to give you a little bit of an introduction just to show you what he's done outside the shores of Kitty Bitty Lake. He's a former past president nationally of Duke of Edinburgh Awards, uh, president of the Wildlife Habitat Canada, uh, he's past chair of Community Sectors Council of Newfoundland and Labrador, past chair of the Salvation Army's Newfoundland and Labrador Advisory Board, currently board chair of Rising Tide Theatre, and is chairman emeritus of the Kitty Vitty Rennies River Development Foundation. That's just a couple of things, but today he's the honorary life president of the Royal St. John's Regatta Committee, and we'd like to thank John Perlin for allowing us into his home. Great to see you. My pleasure to have you here. What did you think when you first found out about the... Uh, designation thing. Um, well, I, I think, uh, Donnie, you know, I, I was blown away by it, uh, you know, when Noel Thomas, uh, Ken, Ken Thomas called me and, and said they, this is what they wanted me to do. And I was really greatly honored because, you know, while I've had all kinds of other distinctions given to me, uh, a peer group uh, nominating you as an honorary life president is really very special. Absolutely. Yeah. You should be honored. Oh, well. And it's not your first uh, <laughs> no. recognition uh, down at the, you've been in the Regatta Hall of Fame since yeah. 94? 94, 94. 94. Yeah. Um, so that oftentimes people say uh, in sports, a Hall of Fame is, is the, the pinnacle of where you can be. So what was that like? Let's take me back to 94 when you were inducted. <laughs> well, I think uh, I can owe the nomination to the late Don Wilson uh, as a builder, because I have to say, um, you know, I'm, to the best of my knowledge, I'm the only honorary life president that's never lifted an oar. But uh, it, it is a very special distinction because the regatta, the Royal St. John's Regatta, is probably the oldest sporting uh, organization, certainly in Newfoundland, if not in North America. Probably in North America, you're right. And while there were interruptions over the years for the wars and, and uh, various other reasons, uh, it does have this distinction. Mm -hmm. So how did you get started at the Regatta? I mean, you're, you, you're well known as philanthropic and, and getting involved in boards and charitable organizations. How did it come that you joined the Regatta Committee? <laughs> well, can I tell you a funny story? You go right ahead. Two friends of mine uh, and, and myself and some others were at Murray's Palm one night for dinner back in the early 50s. And one of them said to me, look, um, why don't you come on the St. John's Regatta Committee? We need a few Protestants <laughs> to balance up the Roman Catholics. Because uh, in those days, it was very much, uh, you know, uh, the, the, and I, I will say this, for the, the, the Roman Catholics knew how to raise money. Mm -hmm. uh, the Protestants may or may not know how to raise money from gambling, but certainly, you know, be, being from the United Church, which I was, uh, and w which I'm an adherent to, I suppose, um, uh, you know, they don't believe in gambling and, and bingo and things like that. So uh, it, it was an interesting introduction to the Regatta Committee. Mm -hmm. But, uh, uh, and so I've been there since the mid-50s, I guess, and uh, 
I'm probably one of the longest serving people today. Well, I think you're understating it. Been there since the 50s. Again, just let me read a few things here. Member of the Ways and Means Committee, Assistant Treasurer, Treasurer, Assistant Secretary, Secretary, Vice President and President. That's some of the titles that John Perlin has had at the regatta. One of the, probably one of the biggest marks you made on the regatta would getting the royal designation. Where, where did the thought process come for that? Well, I think, uh, you know, John, John O'Mara and I had been instrumental in a, the original coat of arms, which was granted by the College of Arms in London because Canada didn't have, um, you know, an arms mm -hmm. uh, granting organization at the time. And we felt that it was part of the history of the regatta to, to have something like a coat of arms which we could use uh, and to help promote the, the regatta. And uh, I think if you look at the motto, and I, I don't know what the, the actual literal translation is, but it really says maintaining the tradition. Mm -hmm. And it's a tradition that's gone on, sometimes interrupted, but for over 200 years. So you say tradition, I'm going to throw history as yes, that pre, word. Yeah. How important is history to the regatta, do you think? Oh, I, I think uh, the history of the regatta is extremely important because it went, it, it started in the harbor, as I understand it, with whaleboats, you know, uh, right. off, yep. off vessels. Yep. And uh, I don't know when, I, I can't really recall the time when they went to Kitty Vitty uh, and went to racing shells. But we are probably unique in the fact that we, we row racing shells that are fixed seats. Yes, absolutely. And uh, we did, again, I come back to, to the late Don Wilson, uh, who was very keen as a member of the committee to see uh, sliding seat um, rowing yes, introduced. Yeah. And he, he donated a couple of single skulls and things like that. And now I think we have a fairly active sliding seat absolutely is, yeah. program. And I think because uh, the, the, sometimes the thinking of, in the early days of my days of the, of, on the committee, some of the thinking was Neanderthal. And, uh, you know, uh, there were people on the committee that sort of said, what do we want them there for? You know, we're fixed seats. Yeah. And uh, thanks to Don, we did get the program launched, and I think it's a fairly active program today. It is still yeah. very, very much so. Uh, so joining in the, in the 50s, but sticking around as mm -hmm. long as you did, you obviously enjoyed, A, being part of that group, I would assume. Very much. Plus you also had a uh, quite a level of success in getting a lot of things done, which makes things easier to sit on committees. Oh, I if, think so, if you're, yeah. if you're moving things forward. Is there anything you're most proud of? Would it be the, the royal designation or...? Well, I think that that was interesting because when uh, somebody, you know, when it came up at, at the regatta committee and I, I said, well, look, you know, here's the process. You have to go to Ottawa and they will determine whether or not they will send them the request forward oh, because for, the, the, the sovereign uh, actually does, people may not realize that, but she actually does say yes or wow. no. Yeah. And um, they said, to me in Ottawa, uh, the protocol office up there said, it's never going to happen. And I said, but please send it forward, which they did. And about 10 days, two <coughs> weeks later after the thing went off, I get a phone call from my friends in Ottawa who said, uh, we don't know how you did it, but the answer is yes. And that, that was how it came about. Well, and I really think, uh, Don, that uh, it came about because the Queen had been here. Yeah. And and. That's quite an achievement. Did you did you did you think you would get the yes that you hoped for? Well, yes, I did because I, I really felt that with the Queen and Prince Philip having been yes. at the regatta, and a really funny story about that is that uh, because I was also very much involved in her visit to the province, uh, and you know we had a state dinner that night. I never did see the championship race that year, <laughs> so Prince Philip said to me. The next morning at Government House, when we were getting ready to go to Cornerbrook, he said, um, so who won the championship race? And I said, well, Your Royal Highness, I really have no idea. Because I said I was busy tending, <laughs> tending to, you, yeah. to your visit. And it became a bit of a joke between the, 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 the Queen and Prince Philip and myself. 
that I, as the president of the committee, didn't have a clue <laughs> as to who had won the championship race. More important matters off sh yeah. offshore or onshore. But, yeah, but they, they came down, and for years, you know, be, before the CBC uh, went to 24-hour service, you know, they used to have sign-offs. Mm -hmm. And the, one of the things that they did when the anthems and things were being played was they were running visuals of the Queen and myself walking down the, the path to the marquee uh, on the day of her visit. And anybody who knows me knows like a, I like a bit of sports trivia. And here's the question that you're going to answer. When was the only regatta to be run in July and why? Well, I, I think it was because Jim Channing uh, who was the, the uh, head of the uh, uh, pr Privy Council, mm -hmm. the, the clerk of the council, rang me up one day and he said, John, he said, you know, we're doing this visit, but he said, uh, would you come over and we have a chat? And he said to me, what do you think the regatta committee would say if you asked them to change the date? And I said, I'd probably get my head handed to me. And he said, well, would you please, because there is an opportunity for the Queen and Prince Philip to make an appearance. Mm -hmm. And the last royal visit, to the best of my knowledge, had been Edward VIII when he came as Prince of Wales. Uh, to, I think it was the 1919 or 1920. Oh, wow, yeah. Yeah, uh, regatta. So um, anyway, I went, much to my amazement, I went um, to a committee meeting, put it to them, and there wasn't a dissenting voice. Wow. Oh. Well, congratulations on that. <laughs> Because that's a difficult thing to do with a large body like this. Oh, yeah. And I mean, you know, and there were so many people that had their own views, mm -hmm. but uh, it was unanimous. Mm -hmm. And it was a spectacular event. Obviously. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I don't think they ever had more people than they were ever had since. Did, did she present, Queen Elizabeth present medals to yeah, some of the because, winning teams? Yes. She came down in the morning to watch, uh, you know, a couple of races yeah. and then came back after the government house garden party and that kind of thing. Uh, to present more medals, to present medals on the boathouse side. Yeah, yeah. and that's a, that's a lifelong history or long uh, memory for somebody who's received oh, their medal from Queen Elizabeth. Yeah, exactly. Really quick, yeah. Uh, so tell me some of the other things you're proud of. Well, I think largely because I was able to use the Queen's visit as an excuse. In, the, uh, in my day in the regatta committee, um, any, any member of the committee or anybody else, as far as I know, like if, if we were in a council election, uh, pr prospective councillors, uh, you could bring a bottle of liquor down and you could go to the bartender in, uh, in the marquee because that's where everything was run prior to the Canada Games um, and put your name on the bottle. And if I met you on the course, if I was, say, running for council, mm -hmm. I'd say, now, Donnie, why don't you go in and ask him for a drink out of John Berlin's bottle? And so I said, we, we really must get the liquor out of the, the marquee. And we agreed that it would go out that year, and it never came back. And I think part of it had to do with the fact that we then had very serious crews interested in trying to break the record. And you couldn't mix both of them. And one, you know, I, I really think that that was a major achievement. The other, the other interesting thing is, in in the early days, I can remember being on the committee when the committee lunch was held at the Newfoundland Hotel, and we, you know, there was a long lunch break, and we'd get in a bus and go up to the hotel, and I've seen pictures of that, yeah. you know, and have lunch and come back. It was all very leisurely, uh, but um, you know, these are things that that happened, and of course, once the marquee was in place that became the headquarters, really, mm -hmm. until um, the Canada Games, after the Canada Games, the boathouse. It was constructed, uh, correct. Yeah. That's right. So, so that's the great thing. The other thing uh, is that you had a lot to do with the way the stalls and the booths are set up today. Yeah. Uh, the, I guess that's the Ways and Means Committee or Grounds yeah, Crew yeah, or yeah, Grounds yeah, Pace? Or? Yeah, yeah well, it was Grounds Pace Grounds Committee. Pace committee yeah. And, I mean, it was, uh, uh, I think, Roger Crosby and myself were on it. Now, Roger was, you know, an engineer by training, and he decided to bring some kind of sensible, uh, you know, laying out of the ground space uh, to it. And um, anyway, you know, uh, we, we would do the um, booking of the space in, in the marquee, 
uh, you know, whenever we did it ahead of time. And then he would have the ground staked. But the rows and the rackets that would go on were without uh, Mrs. I th can't remember the lady's name now, but she came down in a hissing fit and saying, you moved me four feet. And, you know, I've been in that place for 50 well, years. That's exactly it, yes. Yeah. But, um, you know, and that's where the expertise, to be really uh, honest about it, uh, of the, the Catholic in Roman Catholic influence, was that a lot of the people who were there had knowledge of fundraising, you know, with wheels and, and yeah. things like that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, while th there is, I think, still great interest in the races, but the other side of it is the tremendous interest in the garden party aspect uh, of the regatta. I think it's called the largest garden party in Newfoundland. Yes, that's right, yeah. And it's, it's one of the things, of course, my background is sports, so I was, I always watched, I said to somebody one day, uh, I, they spent their childhood with their backs to the pond playing crown and anchor. Yeah. I turned around and I was watching the pond yeah. as, a, as a kid growing up. Yeah. But I'm from Outer Cove. Yeah. So it comes naturally to, yeah, to, to exactly. me, right? So uh, you mentioned a little while ago uh, about when, when the liquor was, was banned from the marquee, how the racers were getting a little more serious. You're talking Smith Stockley, of course, at this yeah. time, because it was that era, yeah. right? And they, Skipper Jim Ring and his crew started in 77 or 78 mm -hmm. to get to the pinnacle at 81. Yeah. What did you think of all of that, that, that little bit? Because that's quite a change oh, with the training and, and the work they were doing. Yeah, you know, and I mean, people, you know, the crews were very serious. I mean, they were training all year round. And uh, uh, I think we owed it to them, uh, you know, as a committee to make sure that they were facilitated in any way to try and break that record. And um, as you know, the Lord Warden's... The Lord uh, Warden's medal, uh, that's right. Went. And uh, the, uh, so I had to look up the precedent as to who, because the, the title of Lord Warden uh, is one of these funny titles that the, the sovereign can bestow on some member of, uh, of, of Britain. Hmm. And as it happens, I discovered that the then present at that time, Lord Warden, was uh, Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother. Oh. So I made contact with her office and... Uh, asked if there was any possibility that she, as Lord Warden, would do something about replacing these medals that had been in existence. Yeah, because they, they were provided after the Outer Cove crew in 1901. Yeah. And somewhere in that vicinity, they were presented or were well, the Lord, to anyone who beat the record, correct? Yeah. Well, see, the Lord Warden actually, uh, I forget who it was at the time, but he actually attended the regatta, and that's where the medals came okay, from. Okay, yeah. And he must have been here on a visit. Uh, to Newfoundland, and uh, anyway, I uh, contacted uh, the Queen Mother's office, and uh, when I was in London uh, sometime later, they asked me if I would come and meet uh, to discuss it with them, mm -hmm. and they ended up by agreeing to present the Queen Mother's birthday crowns. Okay. And it was, I think, her uh, 80th birthday crowns, and then the, the 90th birthday crowns, because the record got broken again, yes, right. and I don't know whether they they still have any in existence, but, but they were the actual coins mm -hmm. that were uh, used for presentation. During your time, you would have seen a lot of changes. I'm talking about on the pond now specifically in terms of there were service races, so the firemen and the policemen, mm -hmm. the wardens were race yeah. against each other, and then uh, there, of course the introduction of ladies yeah. rowing. Um, going from four boats back to five, which yeah. had been done, which a lot of people had no idea yeah. once they went to five. Um, and, and there was a, a number of changes and when Smith Stockley took over, because in the mid-70s, if you recall, I think there were as few as 12 races on a regatta day sometimes, yeah. right? And then once 9 12 mm, yeah. was there, and then it went, the, the RNC, or the outer call, went 9 3 mm. 4 8 the next year, uh, the interest really spiked, and there were... Erupting in excess of a hundred crews racing, yeah. racing sometimes on regatta. But it had become a very serious business. I mean, you know, I don't mean, uh, but the, the the training, as I said, yeah. alluded to earlier, uh, was going on all year round. I mean, people had gyms and you know. Uh, it wasn't a recreational run. No. Yeah. And you know, one of the I, I can't remember the year, <clears throat> but uh, John O'Mara uh, had to resign as president. 
of the regatta committee because the CPC said to him, it's either work for us or give up the regatta. Mm -hmm. or, or give up the regatta. Or, 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 yeah, yeah. But so anyway, so he resigned as president. And the next thing I got a phone call saying, would I please come back for at least a year as captain of the course, as, as okay. uh, yeah, right. you know, to get them through that particular uh, year. And the funny thing, Donnie, was that uh, uh, the first race, if I remember correctly, the first race of the morning, which was often run for timing, mm -hmm. uh, and with the electronic clock, and the clock broke yes. down. Yes, that's right. And suddenly all this wonderful committee that was going to help me disappeared. You know? Like mice when you turn the lights on. Yeah, so. and there I was, you know, trying to deal with this. But fortunately, you know, we still had manual timers, yes, and, right. and they, they agreed that they would accept the, the manual time. The, the interesting part for the Smith-Stockley thing to me is they broke the record at 2 p.m. in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. It was the first race when, yeah. when the top crews rode twice. And they actually, Smith-Stockley never did break the record. It was the St. John's Boys and Girls Club yeah. because it was a club race, yeah. right? And I, I, I remember walking down that day and how the sky turned. It became overcast, and the pond just went... And, and I get goosebumps now when I, when I say it. It was, it was amazing. Yeah. And it, it was a close race, I think, Star to Sea, where only might have rode a 915, if I'm not mistaken, something yeah, well, in that. Your, your memory is on it's, that kind of thing is yeah. much better than mine. But, it, so, but then, then there was a peak, and, and it, it just, boom, yeah. right, exploded. Um, was that, I know you weren't president then, but w would that have been difficult to, to manage over time? No, I don't think so, because I think it was the individual crews that, that decided that they were going to, you know, train all year, that it just wasn't a six or eight week program in the, in the summer. Hmm. And so they, they took it very seriously. And so it was just a scheduling thing for the committee yeah. then, I guess, at that yeah. point, right? Trying yeah. to manage that. Um, the other thing that is a big part of it, and we talked about this off camera, is that, you know, the regatta through COVID and, and nobody down there, it's hmm. a, it was a different yeah. feeling. It was, it was, it, it's, it's the 30,000 or however yeah. the number of people down around the pond that sort of makes the regatta. Oh, absolutely, because if there's a tight race, you suddenly hear people, you know. And new people do turn around. Yeah, yeah they do, yeah. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I, I think that that's been one of the reasons why we, we've had such a tremendous interest, mm -hmm. uh, in particularly by the women, in, in this. And I think, you know, I, I think they're now talking, I may be wrong, but I think they're talking about... Uh, if maybe there's some men's crews that would row the half course just, just, and turn the boys. Yeah, that's right. They're talking about that, and, making that available. You know, yeah. So I think that that's the way it should be. You, you know, uh, a lot of people want to row just for the sake of being able to participate in the regatta, and and they're not. I don't mean that they're not interested in winning a race, but they're not interested in breaking records. That's right. Yeah. So I think you'll see some changes. I may be wrong because I'm not. You know, I'm honorary. I might be ornery too, but <laughs> but I, I think. But that's uh, not a new title. No, ornery. Okay, just checking. <laughs> but uh, what, what what I'm saying is that I think it's an organization that has grown from jolly boats in the harbor uh, to a, a very elite sport in many ways and attracted a lot of people. Well, we've taken up a, quite a bit of time. I know I could sit here and talk regatta all day with you. Uh, I really want to thank you for letting us into your home and having this conversation and enjoy this regatta day in particular. But I know you enjoy all of them, yeah. but hope you enjoy this one. I will indeed. And thank you so much, Donnie, for, I for doing this. I appreciate, uh, I appreciate letting me be here. Yeah.
everybody. Good cloudy afternoon here in St. John's down by Kitty Vitty Lake. My name is Jason Piercy. This is Siobhan Cody. I knew your name. <laughs> I was going to be like, this is Siobhan Cody. And you were like, just in case he says CEO Bob or something. Uh, and we're here to host some races this afternoon. Exciting afternoon, Jason. Great yeah. day, Pondside. Great day, Pondside. Another side. great regatta. Very exciting times here at Lakeside. We've seen some great crews. We've seen some great times. We've seen some great energy. But you know what? The best thing about the regatta is, of course, all the people that you meet, all the friends that you see, even people you haven't seen for a year or two. So it's great. I, nice to see you here today nice again. To see you too. <laughs> I thought you were going to say the best thing about the regatta is the barbecue that Rogers gives away that's donated from Home Depot. That's what Fabulous. I thought you were going to say. Well, I can say one of the best things about, uh, about today is Rogers sponsorship. So I know that Rogers is a platinum sponsor of the Royal St. John's regatta. Great to see Edith Cochier here today and your commitment, uh, not just to showing all the races. And I know that you've been a part of the regatta for many, many decades, not years, Jason, many decades. How old do you um, think I am? No, no, not just you. I'm, well, I'll speak for myself. I can tell you that the, for decades I've been watching Rogers. Rogers uh, talk about the races. I remember back in the, when I rode in the 80s, uh, Rogers always being there as well. So yeah. it's great to have Rogers so, being so much part of our community. Yeah, so let's talk about your history in mm -hmm. racing and in the regatta, Siobhan, because I mean, you're here talking about sponsorships like you're running for something, you're looking for votes. But I know <laughs> that's not what we're here to talk no. about. So tell us a little bit why it makes sense to to have somebody who might be known for things other than racing and television commentary on racing, uh, why it makes sense for you to be sitting here with me. Because everybody who watches Rogers already knows that I just like, just yeah, constantly, <laughs> just jokes and smiles and making fun and having a good time. But I am really involved in the community. So they all know me and they know you, but I don't know if they know you as a racing aficionado and a long time serving regatta committee member. Well, certainly as someone who uh mostly grew up in St. John's. I'm from Grand Falls originally, but mostly grew up in St. John's. Began my rowing career back in the late 70s, early 80s when I was in university. And of course, rode, I think for eight years at that point in time, always wow. championship crews, um, always heavily involved, not just in really the formative parts of rowing and uh, being in part of those championship crews and, and pace setting crews. But then in the 90s, so for the last 30 plus years, uh, a member of the Royal St. John's Regatta Committee and having uh, served as um, you know, a vice president and director and all the way through the regatta committee and now uh, honorary life member well, because I mean, of got, course the, I have a different the, uh, the big rosette. Sat, the rosette. Uh, the it's rosette. Which is historic, you know. Uh, is th this is this is where So what does it say? It so says all, St. John's Regatta established eighteen eighteen. Right. But not it, the first year you were but involved. But this <laughs> No, hopefully not. <laughs> but this is all the different races, so the, all oh, the different cool. information. Yeah. So back in the day, this was where the information before we had printed programs, this is where the committee knew how what races were happening during the time. Would look they up literally the rosette would like, pull up, they would pull up their ribbon. It's called a ribbon and that was attached to the rosette and read what races were what. Imagine if all we did was this. Right? Yeah. But see the thing is through the magic of television, when they start to bring up information about the races, they just won't see us look at it because the screen will change. And then we'll be able to read it and we'll just get <laughs> off with it. Right, you so know, we don't have to worry about it. However, we do have a guest. Oh, we do fabulous. Have a guest. I'm going to scooch over and we're going to introduce, and I believe you know Mark James, I don't do. you? I do, I know Mark, Mark very, very well. Mark's He's a fellow member of the Regatta Committee. Yes. He's been on, he's an important member of the Regatta Committee. Oh, he's James. in charge of right. the finances. and. Great to have uh, Mark join us today, and of course, a very good rower. Now, don't steal my keys, Mark. Formerly very good rower. Formerly? Mm, well, Not me some too, more. but... Well, I could turn and burn at one point, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Mark, first of all, thanks for coming in. Thanks for saying hi. Thanks for sitting down um, and chatting about this. I know that... So, one thing that I always notice, a lot of the people who are, like, lifetime members, have been around a long time and have been honored, who wear their rosettes and wear their blazers, you're all the best looking, but definitely least comfortable people at the regatta every year. 
Just because it's got to be so warm, you know? Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, I think we're getting a good day out of it here now. I asked the hard-hitting questions. I, uh, but, I, I mean, I have to confess that, you know, on regatta days and race days, yes. I'm generally stationed at the top of the pond where we have a lovely timing tower. Uh, uh, unlike some of my other colleagues on the committee <laughs> that are stationed in far more inclement areas, right? Inclement. So, nice. uh, He's you know, but, but, but you know, I, I picked up, I picked up on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's uh, it, it can be trickier down I, there. I think you have a name that you call the bottom of the pond. Oh, well, the the Navy Seals of the, <laughs> the, of the regatta Seals committee. Regatta Seals. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. it can it can be fairly quiet. But if anything goes wrong down there on their watch, it's it can typically be like you know a Seals collision of a boat or something like that, right? Right? So they're, you know, a lot of heavy hitters down there too, right? Yeah. So speaking of heavy hitters, um, you said you could burn a turn one day. Yeah, yeah, you know, uh, so I, I still think I'm reasonably fit, but I mean, I don't know if I'm still uh, rowing fit yet. But I think uh, people misunderstand. This is something that I've learned. I grew up in a small town out around the bay, Norman's Cove, and like we would have dory races sometimes, but we right. didn't have like an actual regatta. Nobody, nobody rowed with um, with technique and with training and with, right. you know, you had a skull and oar and that's yeah. what you did. So I can do that. I can make my way through a kayak or a canoe, but I, I think people really underestimate the level of fitness it takes to even to even yeah. do the half course. Absolutely. Like it's yeah. like that's a sprint. Yeah. And it, it, that, exactly. The long course, which is you know formerly the men's course, but now yeah. the long course. I, I mean, it, it is it is a long, slow burn to yeah. get to the bottom of the pond yeah. and turn the buoys and come back and the short course is a sprint yes, yeah so finished. it's a marathon and a sprint I, uh, really yeah. and and i mean i have participated in both uh, length races like i was young enough to start on the on the half course and i've also been a coxswain on the on the short course uh, and i find the one thing about that that people may underestimate about that is just the the amount of thought that needs to go into it you either strategy. You're, you're either starting you're turning you're coming out of the turn you're finishing there's you're so never settled there's, into no you're base. never settled yeah. into that groove there's so much for for crews to execute uh on that course right so and there's they could burn like what, what happens sometimes in the short course is you come out of the gate so fast that your uh, adrenaline absolutely. and then when that burns you fall flat and yeah. you've seen it you've seen it in crews that come come out of the the buoys come out of the kegs and they go flat like the, the boat dies and yeah. you need the boat to lift coming out of the kegs yeah to but take the, the drag the difference away yeah. you got to be careful and that's where the coxswain comes in and it's mark just talked race. about it. you've got to have strategy coming you know coming out of that uh, coming out of the start of the race especially on that short course you can make up for it a little bit on the longer course mm -hmm. though it's also more tiring to be on the yeah. longer course but that short course if you burn too fast There's and too hard, you will die. Just, yeah. No margin of error. Yeah, it's like no. you know There's you're no using different systems. Yeah, that's a, that's the one that can make you throw up. You know what I mean, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's like a real hard leg yeah. day. Yeah. So, with with having the adjustments that we have, uh, men racing the half course and women racing the full course now, and and these are things that we're doing. I mean, to me, I know you guys are a part of the committee and you got all your rules and how things are supposed to go, and I totally get it and I have respect for it. But also, we get to see new records. Right. Yeah. Right. So, Which so, is cool. Yeah, that is an interesting part of 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 the racing different races is is getting those new records established, right? Well. And Mark knows this probably better than most because he's been both a coxswain and a championship rower. There is a lot of skill that goes into rowing, and, sure, yeah. and they and they work very, very hard. You know, very, very much on timing and how the and the movement of the rowers in the boat. And that's one of the things the cox, the coach, are always following through on. You know, Absolutely. when the oars hit the water, making sure the f sweep is full and long, making sure that the crew is um, conditioned, making sure that they yeah. are in cadence. Why are you here? Why aren't you on the pond? Why aren't you coxing? Why she could be. <laughs> right? That's what I'm like here going on like this. I'm like, who would it? It's like a... Yeah. No, like the, the, and, and the Don Cherry of of regattas just less races. She's seen a lot, and, and she does some great catering at the regatta, uh, yeah, mind oh, yeah. you, as well. Makes some great cakes for us. So that's, no, that, that's that's a bit of an inside joke. It's one of my favorite things is, uh, is Siobhan's cakes uh, at, at the regatta, yeah. Well, I uh, mean, 
I'm going to be live on air with you for a few hours here if I don't end up with Winter Chiffon's cakes. Uh -oh. They're gone. Uh oh, they're gone. You know, what is this? Mom, this is, this is two o'clock. No, 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 no. You can't like get Katie. one of those cakes at two o'clock. Let's in the be day, on live man. TV and talk about the thing you're great at. I'll tell, I'll tell the world how wonderful you are. Yeah. And no cake for me. No cake. Yeah. For me. That's all right. I've been through worse. So, what in your in your mind, your experience, and in your capacity as a as a regatta member of the of the committee? What do you look forward to that isn't race related? I don't know. Uh, in, in later years, I think I, I look forward to coming down before the regatta with my family, right? And uh, really, like, as, as a patron, I really like being able to come down here before the regatta, a little bit of a less crowd, some of the concessions that I'm more interested in, and then I get the full excitement of race day, and I get a bird's eye view for it, too, because yeah. there's no better way to watch the regatta yeah. than the, yeah. the way that it we're It really afforded, is Christmas. Right? Yeah. That's All what right. it feels yeah. like. So, speaking of Christmas, for Christmas, we get to talk about race number 11. So, let's go through our, our lineup here. Siobhan, This let's is going to be a great race. Coming up, we have in shell number one, Marine Institute. The crew is Whale and Wellness. And they've been together for a few years now. Some changes in the boat, but they've been together for, uh, for a few years. Cox and Gloria Brown. Terry Lynn Hoskins is a stroke. Samantha uh, Williams in number five. Melissa Power in four. Tori Costello in number three. And Jessica White in two. And number one is Susan Hardy. And of course, they have Spears, Amy Brown, and Jessica Dyer Milling. So I mean, before we get into our second shell, mm -hmm. our second crew, Mark, thanks so much. Excellent. Uh, and we'll see you around here and, uh, and we'll get some more information. Oh, actually, what, do you want to stay for the race? Sure. Commentate on us? Sure. Yeah, you're down with that? All right, let's That's do that. Great. So, well, that, uh, show number two. Go ahead, So Shabbat. That, that crew is just interesting. The crew I just mentioned in in, in number one are made up of registered nurses and, and uh, registered therapists. So take, in, in I have a soft spot for nurses. Yeah, I don't know if anybody knows that. I this. can see that. Shell number two, the Seahawk crew, Soki Grocery, Coxon, of course, a veteran of the lake, Richard Bailey, Stroke, Jenna Evans. Number five is Ashley Hutchings. Four, Kayla Crichton. Three, Grace Follett. Two, Leah Piercy. Number one, Jordan Sullivan. Of course, spare Olivia Dyer. So it's great to have them on the on the on the. Can, can I do this well. one? Sure. So show number three, of course, the CBC crew is Martin and Associates, and their coxswain is Melissa Snow, Stroke Monica Martin. I want to do this one because seat number five, Christina Stone. Uh, Dressler Stone, actually, she's a realtor and a member of my real estate team, oh, the fabulous. Ask Team. And if you think she should, she can row, you should see her sell a house. Huh. Number four, Robin Penny. Number three, Valerie Ducey, Crystal Payton in two, Tiffany Boone in one, and of course they got their spares, uh, Amanda Power, Kara Courtney, and Coach Clyde Tucker. Shell number five is a telegram. Crew: Keith's Plumbing, Coxon. George Wade, Stroke, Rhonda Earl, five, Sarah Halliday, four, Renee Furlong, three, Nicole Wade, two, Ashley Wade, and number one is Don Ring. Ring's, of course, known around the lake. Of course, so let's see how we're doing here. We missed we missed the start there. I don't know, they gotta turn that gun up. I guess you'll have to get turn on the gun that, up. Yeah, we might need to charge it, yeah. Up. Charge the gun. Yeah. You know, there's a three second delay between the sound of the gun at the top of the pond, the gun going off, and then at the bottom of the pond, our hearing the gun. We can see the smoke. Yeah. Takes three seconds for us to hear So it. we should probably be like, 0.75 seconds to where we are, <laughs> maybe, right? Well, right. It's, a, it's a great view coming from the drone, of course, and you can see the effort that the crews are putting in, the nice timing they have. Um, these, this crew is now feathering their oars, uh, pushing very much on their on their legs. Mark, the, you, you can you can appreciate and tell, and tell people the amount of effort that goes into the race through your legs and through your back. Yeah, so where Absolutely. are you feeling this now? At, at this point, like you're racing. So you're starting to feel this everywhere. So, I mean, there's uh, you know, there's a joke in rowing that the first 10 strokes are free, and then after that, it gets uh, pretty pricey, right? So uh, these crews are starting to really feel their exertion at this point in time. By this angle, we do look like now, oftentimes when you're watching boats come down across the lake, you've got a bit of a parallax from the angle that you're looking at. It's hard to tell where one yeah, boat is against really another. Like that. But th this is this is pretty fantastic. Yeah. And I mean, we're fairly even across the four. 
Well, it looks like number two is is going into uh, is is going to go into the turn first. I mean, obviously things can change, and but you, perhaps can, three. you can you can see them coming in. Three is picking up, but coming into the turning of the buoys. And I, I will say, and Mark uh, Mark having been a coxswain and a rower, will talk about how important the turning of the buoys actually is. This is the make or break on a lot of crews. Absolutely, and especially in a in a race as close as this one. Now we're likely going to see maybe some uh, changes in the placing. Uh, or uh, maybe a bit more separation between the boats coming out of the turn. Right? Yeah, and we're starting to see, you see the different approaches, so to speak. So you can see that uh, stake two, of course, is making, starting to make a wide turn already. Three is starting to lean in. Yeah. It's almost like they go out wide to come in tight around. Yes, and, and, and is that a, is that a strategy? strategy. Yeah. yeah. Because when I rode, when I, this is back going back in the, in the 80s, we actually would hook the keg and pivot, right. and right. that would slow down the boat. Now they're taking wider sweeps so that the boat actually actually doesn't doesn't slow down yeah so they actually just swerve around yeah seems to be so the, you'll the, see you'll see that so you see well there's a there's a lot of it looks to me like there's a lot of time been made up in the first state by um, by is that the odds of him crew no by marine institute so they come out because in the second state stake was a fair fair ways ahead going into the buoy and what a sharp turn across the absolutely first state. Yeah. Now this is where conditioning comes into play because you're yeah. tired now and they're coming back, yeah. but you'll, you'll see you'll see a stake number two picking up again. Whalen Wellness is in stake number one. Uh, stake number two is Soki Grocery. I know Soki Grocery has a as a veteran, as I said, Richard Bailey, uh, staring it. So you would have seen his knowledge coming around that keg. But you will see the conditioning coming out of, of this is a time when it's tiring now. You're starting to feel the yeah, pressure. This is, Mark, this is when this it is, really starts to hurt. Really uh, this in is the theory. Whale and wellness should be able to pull it out here. Like, Ho hopefully, like, yes. Theory, yeah, yeah. That's what, yeah. We, that's what I, I, if, I, mean, if, I would think that that's if their training is want. done, yeah, they yeah. should be able to pull it out here. And this is, I, I always just find when I'm racing myself, like that, this third quarter of the race yeah. is always the hardest because you're really feeling the fatigue and you're only half done. Yeah. Right? Uh, and when that strikes you, when you come off that turn, it, it, this, you know, the third quarter is a, is a dark time. Uh, in racing and now as, as they as they prepare to really you know empty the tank on the finish here now I find that you know my spirits used to come alive then and I would say that that's a that's a common feeling and for a lot of rowers. You, you right? know when you're getting close to the bandstand you can start to hear the crowd exactly. you can start to see people and then oh, it just yeah. sort of and like. And then adrenaline takes over. Yeah. yeah I mean the same thing that happens when you're running the Tele 10 and you start right. to get down towards Bannerman Park. And Absolutely. You can, and you can see people you can hear people yeah. and then it, it stops hurting the same amount but uh, Soki Grocery has really, really Picked pulled up. out. And they have experience in their boat. So they have, they, you know, they have some uh, some good good experience in their boat. They've rowed, to, some of them have rowed together since 2018. Some of them uh, were part of, uh, you know, per, part of other championship crews. So, you know, there's a lot of experience in the boat and you're starting to see it. Uh, while there's a really good two and three, Whale and Wellness, of course, and Martin Associates, uh, they're coming up, but they're, they're well behind So Key at this point. Now, as you said, you're coming by the bandstand, you're starting to feel that adrenaline, yes, that energy. Yeah. Absolutely, um, and, yeah. and people are really putting the push on now. The big thing is, of course, and, and Mark Mark will know this as Coxon is settling your crew, so they don't Absolutely. lose they don't lose their stuff. Yeah, keep Lynn. that's that's exactly yes. right. Keeping it together at this point in time and keeping that technique uh, nice and sound, because with all that uh, you know, what what I'll call quietness in the boat, uh, everything working correctly. That's where speed really comes from well, with as well. The, with the time trial, uh, uh, a number of just under 640, 639 nearly. I mean, they've got to be happy with 556 as an unofficial time. Absolutely, like, absolutely. That's fast. Like if you're, you're shaving yeah. 40 much seconds better. off. Yeah. Very, very strong. Yeah. And they've come on very strong from the time trials. They were in almost neck and neck within a few seconds of each other. And so Soki has to be happy with the with their effort here today. I think all of them should be pleased with their record. They've all come in, uh, you know, lower in lowering their time. So uh, and this good has for to be them. just absolutely grueling. If you're in one of the last stakes to cross the line, and everybody else is done, and you know where your time is, and you know like. Like now you're doing it just, just absolutely. For you're racing. You. You're racing yourself. At you're that point you're in time. racing yeah. your own yeah. your own uh, discontent, but yeah. also your own motivation yeah. and your own pride and everything well, that you've got. Yeah. 
put into this. Absolutely, and you're also racing, so you're also pulling out in the end. You don't know the time, so you're, you can't see any That's time. Right. That's you're true. very focused, so you don't know if your time is really good, you might make the championship. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. So, that's the, so that's, that's true. So that's yeah. a motivating factor, and the Cox will will use that. Yeah, he yeah. Will yes, use exactly. That. Yeah, because yeah, you don't know mm. what the next heat will do, Absolutely. or what the last heat right. did, their time versus right. yours. Yeah. I, thi I think it's it was our first race, guys. I don't know what about you. I think we nailed it. <laughs> I think so, yeah. yeah. Especially me. No, especially Mark. Well, well I mean, I'm learning a whole bunch of things here today. So, yeah, I mean, right? this is the one part of the regatta I haven't done. So, yeah. There you know. you go. <laughs> I think the, the one part of the regatta that I haven't done could be the actual racing. Well, you should I do it. That's, I think that's the one thing. Well, I don't know, man. It's hard. Like, my whole body looks like these, these scars. Rowing rowing might be off of my... Oh, I think, off that, of my, I think you'd be an awesome rower. For well, senior You're dedicated. Meds. You're focused. That's all. That's that's what you need. Well, you roll. Oh, you get scares on your bone when you roll. You know. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, Mr. Mark James, thank you so much. Not just for co-hosting and commentating with myself and Siobhan right now, but also for your commitment, your dedication as a committee member. Yes. And I and hope you get on the pond again. Yes, and, and I thank to Rogers and all of our sponsors as well. I mean, this truly is a community event that requires so many members of our community to come out and, and make an excellent contribution. Uh, and I know that's true for a lot of things, but that's no more true, I think, in, in anything that happens in this community than St. John's Regatta. Well, so. we love to hear that at Rogers because um, Community Matters is very much what our, and I mean, maybe officially through the CRTC, it's a mandate, but it's also very much a thing that we all individually you feel. feel. Exactly. So, thank yes. you, Mr. James. All right, guys, thank and, you. And uh, let's, let's chat we'll a little bit we'll about see what's you at coming the end next. of the races. Yeah. See yeah. you tonight. Go get in your cushy place at the top of the pond. Well, Thanks, Rick. <laughs> he's, he's, uh, he's up in the timing tower. But uh, Mark made a very good point. You know, we have to thank Whalen Wellness, Soki Grocery, Martin Associates, yes. Between the Lines Driving School and Pat Contracting, as well as Keith's Plumbing for sponsoring the cruise and really being the motivators for a lot of these, uh, for a lot of the great times that we're seeing of here course. today. And, and I would also like to thank um, the the Spirit of Newfoundland for the catering that they did here. Even oh, though wonderful. even though I didn't get on air till after lunch, I made sure I came down and got some lunch first. Oh, because well, why not? Delicious. Why not? I'm sure it was delicious. Not, what I mean, did it you was have all for lunch, right. Jason? Uh, I had I had a sandwich and a wrap. Oh, good. But I stayed I stayed <laughs> off I stayed off of the soup because somebody described it as velvety, which I thought was delicious, but it made me feel warm. Okay. It's like I'm already warm. Okay. So, it's, a, it's it's a nice day here, at Pond Side. No, no. The rain is holding out, and we're uh, we're experiencing overcast but cooler temperatures, which is perfect for all the concessionaires around and for walking I, around, seeing oh, all I your friends. Oh, do I ever friends. appreciate that? I remember just a, just a number of years ago when we when the Winter Circle was redone and we, before right. it was done, and they had recently retired everything in the back, so hot. and it was so hot. I was sticking to it, mm. and I didn't have a seat, and I was standing, and it was it was, it was awful. Speaking of things that are not awful. Um, we have we have another guest that I want to introduce everybody to, and also yourself, of course, Siobhan. This is Mr. Darren Hand. How you doing, buddy? Good. Glad Good. to be here. Yeah. Welcome. Nice to see you guys. Thank, Thank you, you for having me. No stranger to Rogers TV. Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. Universe, which is a cool show. Thank there's you. Some Appreciate interesting that. stuff. Um, and also, there's something new that you've been working on. And what? Okay, so I love. Yep. when people are unabashedly themselves, truly authentic, and go hard at whatever their joy is. Mm -hmm. So, um, the what's a, what's a good example? Cosplay yep. is a huge example. Exactly. Um, um, uh, uh, Role-playing yes. games like LARPing, yep. live action. Yep. Um, and we have more and more and more of all of these things. And the, the Newfoundland and Labrador nerd game is strong and vibrant and getting yep. more and more it's not even a subculture anymore oh my now God, it's no. just a no. whole new thing and that's a, a great time to bring up renaissance fest yep. or should i say renaissance Will you? <laughs> however you want to pronounce it i do not i, I do not want to say renaissance. <laughs> renaissance i do not want to that's, be that guy that's a little bit too highbrow <laughs> no we just say newfoundland renaissance festival yeah i like it so yep. let's talk about it what is it yep. well newfoundland renaissance festival i've been going to well First of all, I started Sci-Fi on the Rock 17 years ago. Me, me 17 a, years? Me, me and a friend of mine, yep, 17 years ago. I went to a convention in Toronto, and I came back and I said to her, she was working with me, I said, you know, we, 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 we should have something here. And now we're in like our 17th year, 
and I also, also go to all of our events, and I've been sort of playing with the idea of a Renaissance Festival for the last few years, and then COVID happened, and I had to put it on the back burner. And then last year, I said, okay, well, I'm gonna go ahead and do it, why not? Yeah. So I went out and uh, talked to the folks out in Paradise, rented the park, rented, got everybody there. We had vendors, uh, we had the local LARPing group, they, they put off the show. Because with a Renaissance Festival, it's, it's like a market and a, and, and a story to it. Sure. So yeah. like last year we had we had what we call a grand tent. That's where all the vendors were too that had like single tables. And everybody that's there, they only sell and make handmade stuff. So Because it need, it needs to it, conceivably be from a Renaissance type. Exactly, era. yes. That's the concept. Yep, yeah. Yeah. Like we had uh, folks there last year making butter. Le wow. Lever workers, uh, uh, blacksmiths people doing all kinds of like everything was handmade or homemade or a version of that so you probably won't be able to go there to get like spandex shorts to rope no no <laughs> no probably no. not but Sorry, you, Siobhan. No. But we'll you, find them somewhere else but you probably could get metal ones yeah right yeah. <laughs> chain, chain mail chain mail yes yeah, yeah. so uh what happens is that we have our grand tent with our vendors and that, and we also have uh, what we call realm lots, where we have local community groups like the LARPers and other gr cosplay groups and that, but everything has to be in the theme of Renaissance back, yeah. Renaissance back in time. Yeah. Now, with a Renaissance festival, there's also a story to it. Like last year, Saturday morning, the, uh, the Black Knight shows up, steals the jewels from the king and the queen. That's what happened okay, last year. Okay, cool. And so then after lunch, uh, the the king and the queen asked for volunteers to become knights. So we expected a lot of kids to show up and they'd be trained. To be knights. But we also got a lot of adults our age. It's like, oh, I want to do it too. <laughs> so it, it was. So everybody. I'm, rea fun. I'm realizing that as we're talking about this and the word the, the word yes, I was just an acronym LARP yep. has been dropped a couple of times. Yep. So for people who are watching who are like, mm -hmm. hell is a LARP? That's Perhaps a you might be one of them, <laughs> right? L-A-R-P, live action role playing. Yes. So ah. it's it's you dress up in in so it's like you're you're um, imagine you're playing a video game mm -hmm. about um, um, knights and mm -hmm. and medieval times and yes. blacksmiths and riding horses. So you dress up in character and run around with your foam swords and attack people and you act out the thing. Exactly. Yep. That's LARPing. Cool. Yep. So if you can imagine how exciting that is for a kids to show up and get trained to be a knight yep. and then to hunt down the black knight yep. and rescue the king and the queen's jewels from him. Like what an engaging, imaginative mm -hmm. and like fun. Fun. Yep. Just yep. fun. It happens it happens over a period of two days. So after lunch, what you do on Saturday, they all get trained in, they get knight. We actually have a knighting ceremony where they get on the, uh, the red cushion and the knight or the king oh, and the queen wow. does oh, with, wow. with the sword or the whole thing. Yeah, we actually, we were planning on doing it on the stage last year. You but, gotta get a sword in the stone. But we had that many people, we're working on that. We had that many people, we actually had to go down on the ground and make two lines, one for the king and the queen. Mm. That's awesome. Fabulous. And that's so, awesome. Darren, that's awesome. I'm that so glad. That rolls into Sunday. Yeah. And then on Sunday, then we have the, treasure hunt to find the uh the, well, the big battle first yeah and then the black knight got got defeated by the kids and then the pirates help out and they go on a treasure hunt and last year we had this gigantic treasure chest filled with chocolate loonies and they brought it back to the king and the king gave them all some candy and everybody oh, was everybody was happy this is amazing that's yep. amazing yeah yep. okay so i have so many questions about ask away no it's mostly about like what what roles I can play next time? Like, can I? I think I would be a great like, like, like white knight. Sir Lancelot. Sir Lancelot. Sir Lancelot. Do you I could do, do that. that. Yeah. I might, yeah, I mean, I'd be a little more Merlin these days, <laughs> but that's okay. We're gonna get into race twelve. So, uh, Banks Buffett District Senior Women's Race. The first show uh, is the residents at Lilladale. Their coxswain is Fabian McGraw. Uh, stroke Megan Willett, and their seats five through one are Sarah Sloan. Heidi Keating, who I went to high school with, actually. Oh. Laura Dodd, Julie Parsons, and Jennifer Miller, and they have a spare in Melissa North. Benson Buffett, District Seniors Women's Race. Shell number two, Smith Stockley two. Crew is Professional Chimney Services. Coxon is Jackie Warfield, who's been around the lake for many years. Stroke is Miranda, Miranda Heffern and Barry. Number five is Anita Lockyer. Four, Carla Hodder Drake, three, in seat three, Pam Broders. In seat number two, Ashley Lewis. Number one is Iris Bussey, and the coach is Keith Bussey. 
And then our next steak, the third, shell number three, the Ranger from Ecuador, Canada, Coxon, Tony Cadigan, stroke Melissa Jones. We see these these names. You mentioned Ring before, Cadigan. Yeah. Like um, there's several McGraws we see here in seat number two, Renee. Uh, seat five, Brenda Baird, Erica Kelland. Seat three, Amy Mix, Mix Savini. <laughs> I apologize, Amy, if I got that wrong. And in the first seat, Jenny Brace Spears, Sandra Walsh, and Rachel Kiley. And they're all from Equinor. And shell number four is Lambs Palm Breeze. Crew is Canadian Armed Forces Women. Coxon, Bell, Ben Colburn. Stroke is Katie Yarn. Number five is Martha Galtis. Number four is Michaela Harper. Number three, Joanne Sinnott. Number two, Kamiko Bellavance. And number one, Morgan Evans. And spare is Shelley White and Kim Lockyer. I'm, I'm, I can't help, and it's, maybe it's some sort of like, it's not a prejudice, I guess it, technically it is, but I'm sort of expecting the women's uh, military to be like, like hard down the stretch. I just, I want, I want our, our country will feel safer if they pull it all out in the end and don't get tired. Well, Shall they, number this five. is a, a fully novice crew too. Oh, well, so here we'll we go. See how they, we'll see how this they do. This is Rest NL, Cox and Lenny Williams, stroke Megan Lear, number five, Vanessa Farrell, number four, Brittany Dixon, number three, Stacy Sellers, in number two is Courtney Clark, and then the first seat is Heidi White with spare Jill Colburn. And they're getting all lined up here. We've had a number of, um, what I'm going to call guest announcers or guest callers uh, this uh, today, where people will go, uh, you know, people, be it politicians or the lieutenant governor, will go to the Time and Tower and they will call out and to start the race. Uh, and they'll call out, of course, are you ready number one? Are you ready number two? And so they'll they'll be shouting out to actually start the actual race itself. You were. You were on TV. Yes, you were. <laughs> well, the wonderful thing about live TV is sometimes some of the best looking people that you don't expect to see show up on camera. Up That's on my camera. man, Roger. Roger's fantastic. And he was giving very, very valuable information. We're getting ready for our start here. We're going to get everybody lined up. Now, um, Darren, not a rower, hey? Not a rower, more nerd. Yeah? <laughs> Big time. <laughs> so let's go back to race 11. These are our official re race results. Can you read those for us, please, Shma? First So Key Grocery, you saw them. They were out in front at 558.71. Whalen Wellness at 612.44. Uh, you saw them a little bit back from uh, So Key Grocery. Martin Associates, 615.85. Keats Plumbing at 634.57. And Between the Lines at 644.94. And all of them, I think, were a little bit faster than what they were during time trials, so they'll be pleased with their uh, with their changes. And as you can see, the the crews are now lining up, uh, getting ready to. Uh, you know, this is a really exciting time. Uh, the, you know, your, your coxswain's asking you to pick up the is picking up the toggle. You'll see now. Uh, I think it's in lane number one, uh, pulling it pulling up. And you know, it's an exciting time because you know you're asking the coxswain. The coxswain's picking up the toggle. You're touching up in number one, number two. Can you touch up? Can you touch up? And you'll yeah. see them. You'll see them touching up there, and uh, in anticipation of the start of the race. And as so I said, there are some celebrity guests. Uh, I've got a, guest if I can have a moment, Siobhan, I'm, I'm so sorry, just, just for a second. Um, it, we, we are aware, we know that we're experiencing some issues with delay on our audio, specifically on our YouTube channel. So we're re gonna reboot our service, our system here now shortly. You might lose the feed on YouTube, but you can go to rogerstv.com slash St. John's, refresh, and you'll get us back online because we keep track of our numbers we know that we've got some expats here from newfoundland and labrador who are watching all across canada united states and in other places who aren't able to watch on good old channel nine but they want to keep in touch with the regatta so we got a reboot we're going to do that and if you lose us on youtube check us out at rogers.com uh, uh slash rogers tv like we talked about and we're off and we're off. And you just saw Gail Malone, first uh, president of the Royal St. First female president of the Royal St. John's Regatta Committee, just shoot the gun. 
And as I said in our, in our last race, this is the moment where all the adrenaline is is there, and you're feeling it in the first minute going out to uh, yep. you know it's just past the first minute is just past the marquee. For those that are that are uh, watching uh, on uh, online, you may not see that, but the marquee is next to the bandstand, and you know you're really you're really. It, there's a lot of adrenaline you're pulling hard and then you settle into it so the coxswain's really trying to get the crews to settle into their stroke and you'll see the boats uh, lift on occasion um, lift as the as the as you're going in the water you'll see the longer stroke the longer pull and you're starting to see some of the crews pull forward now and and for anybody who is not involved in racing, but you live here and you know how much it rains, that concept of the boat beginning to lift up through the water as you gain speed is exactly why you should watch how you drive when it rains, because that's called hydroplaning. It's, it's, it's the exact same thing, but, that, but you want it when you're on the pond and you're trying to speed up. You certainly do, and you can feel it, you know, in the boat. These boats are pretty low to the water, I can tell you, and when, when you pull on your oar, your boat, you can feel, when the team is in sync, you feel the boat lift, and it is a, a quite a special feeling. But you're, this is an interesting field, as, as you can see, there's not much different distance or difference between them, and when the drone comes up and you see them going into the into the buoys, you'll see the difference uh, so, I mean, is got, the gaps are closing. Here. I mean, Darren is here with us, and he's he's talking about the Renaissance uh, Festival for Newfoundland Labrador that you're doing uh, August the 26th and the 27th at Paradise Park. Paradise and Park, Paradise. yes, sir. I mean, I feel like people were rowing back in the Renaissance. I don't know how you aren't a part of this. And right <laughs> next to Paradise Park is Octagon Pond, yes. where they got the Dragon Head boats. That's that right. goes way back to Renaissance times. So, I mean, I feel like next year you should have something to do with this. I will. I mean, I know that everybody at Rogers will be really mad if you don't. I will make sure I have right. something to do with it. Guaranteed, and, sir. And also, I mean, you got to reach out and Editor the Fog can get you on there to promote this. I didn't yep. even know it was a thing. The next time I will. Sounds um, good. Uh, Mr. Hand, Darren, thank you so much for everything that you do. Thank Thanks you, for sir. coming to hang out thank with Shabbat and I. Thank you, Shabbat. And uh, we'll catch up with you around the pond a little later on. I'm All right, thank to you, guys. Thank you, sir. Thank you. August the 26th and the 27th. Renaissance Fest in Paradise Park. Let's get back to race number 12. You'll already see in, in, in stake number five, they're, oh, they're already yes. taking the turn. And see how far ahead they are coming into the turn? It's really interesting to uh, to see, especially in stake number five. Normally the faster crews are in stake number one. And if you look at the times uh, in time trials, they were they, their time trial time was 7.05, whereas in stake one, it was 6.47. So so how this much advancement they big, big jump. That's big a massive jump. jump. And look, they're well out. They're a boat length out of the kegs already, the buoys uh, uh, in Newfoundland and Labrador, uh, in, in, in rowing here for those that are joining us from across the country, around the world. Um, we, call, we call the buoys boys, stakes, kegs. <laughs> all of them have different names, but they're all the same thing. It is actually where you turn. But you'll see well ahead now is the rest uh, and NL with uh, Cox and Lenny Williams and uh, Megan Lear is the... Uh, this, of course, is uh, Whale and Whale with their, I believe, when they pulled out with, with uh, Silver. In, yes. in the, the last race. So there they effort. are with their high fives. A great effort by the nurses and some diagnostic imaging folks. But uh, here we're back again. It's it's We're just up to the four minute mark. Um, an outstanding effort happening on the, on the pond. And I, as I said, big changes in times for the crews that are on the, on the pond. Lovely pond today. Slight ripple on the water, which is what everybody likes, a little bit of a lively water. So what um, does the lively water do? Does it give you the opportunity to like skip across as opposed to sink in? Or like, it, what is the benefit you of know, a slightly... Some people like it flat calm. And some people like it with... flat calm is where you want Well, it. some people some people say the water is dead when it's flat calm. And where when it's got a slight ripple, which it does now, uh, it you, the water is lively, so you, it catches your oar better. You know, uh, either one is good I for me. Like I feel like you need Sheldon Cooper or something to, to, <laughs> to like do talk the analysis. about like, what, yeah, like what, well, what, what we what don't want are waves. There? And no. uh, you know we've had we 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 haven't had a very windy year I, I have to say but look at the well, difference in this crew difference. you've got a crew in stake number five who rode 705 in time trials well in the lead 
well in the lead. Like I'd say, what, a, maybe a two boat well, lengths, well, but it looks like. Well, their time like trials means... was 18 seconds slower right. than the, who is it currently in the first stake. Yep. And now this is almost an inversion of time trials. First through fifth, it's very, very yeah. close. This is a noticeable change. Noticeable change is so going to be interesting. You can only imagine We're how excited to, they are now. Well, they're well past the uh, the uh, boathouse now, and their time is 5:30. Like this is, they're going to have, uh, they're going to be very pleased to have uh, have knocked off. I'd say yes. close on a minute, maybe even more, off their time from time trials. And so 10 it's seconds, exciting. Just 10 seconds, 12 seconds past the race record, actually. So for somebody who had a time trial, like nearly a minute higher than their well we're, it's our unofficial time but we're not off by that much my goodness look there at that. you go and they're we crossed at 554 so what a difference from that from time trials to now like that's over a minute almost and a I'm, minute 10 I yeah think that they must be very very pleased with that time and uh excited about what's uh, what might be in the future for them my goodness yes I love seeing the involvement of children in the in the ceremonies. Uh, well, 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 well done. Look at this seeing, really look close heat. A really the close. Children so involved in those ceremonies is probably why we we see the same names over and over again. Like, because it becomes a it's a part of your family. It, it absolutely. Right? It, you're, th this this is an important point, Jason. Yeah. The regatta becomes part of almost your blood. Like you, I as I said, I started rowing back. Uh, in university, way, well, way back in 79, 80, 81, yeah. 82. And I can tell you that since then, the friendships, the, the, the camaraderie, the, the, it's just unbelievable. And, uh, you know, the people that I rode with at the time, the people that I met at the time, have, we have lifelong friendships. It teaches you an awful lot about not just perseverance, not just uh, teamwork, but the camaraderie, the the feel the feeling of when that boat lifts, yeah. the feeling of togetherness, and, and that and the commitment, commitment, and a sense of self-accomplishment, right, and that accountability for something, yes. and, and and I appreciate that. I, I recently I'm only realizing now for race 11, we went through the stakes so quickly that um, we actually uh, missed someone when we announce it and I believe it was between the lines yes. at a driving school pack they moved they moved too quickly so and an apology we are sorry <laughs> we, we saw you race and you did fantastic we were just moving so quick guys it's live TV stuff happens <laughs> so um, I, sometimes I like to say when I'm when I look at time trials and and we look at the race and we're like okay who's here who's raced where and how experienced are people and you can almost make an estimate of what you think is 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 gonna happen and then you're like well are you expecting anything unforeseen and then we have somebody beat it by like a minute right? over a minute man oh man absolutely unbelievable and and what an effort they must have they they put in over the yes. last month to in to in or last three three four weeks well speaking of how much effort they put in let's hear a little bit about that as we toss over to mitch who's hanging out in the winner's circle Hello, I'm here with the winners of the commercial senior woman's uh, So Key Grocery. Now, first, I'm going to get everyone to introduce themselves, and then I got some pressing questions to ask. Um, so let's go. What uh, Cox and Mitch Bailey. Okay. Sam Power. Jenna Evans. Kayla Crichton. Grace Follett. Jordan Sullivan. Ashley Hutchings. Excellent. Thank you so much. Now, the burden question in my mind was going over your bio was, you folks didn't start practicing until two and a half months after everyone else. What the heck? What kind of lightning in the bottle do you folks have? How did I, my one question is, is how did you do it? How did you make up for it? Well, the girls have experience rolling before anyway. And uh, we just uh, work hard every every practice, and this, it came together. Simple, simple, simple as that. And the water is good too. Yeah. <laughs> it does seem like an excellent day for it. So I guess what's uh, considering that you folks, you know, you kind of got to it later than everyone else. How does it feel today to kind of come ahead and just like do it? Well, I guess like uh, you asked the question, we just made the best of every spin that we did have as a whole six. We also used spears when we had to. But uh, my first spin was time trials, and we won, and my 10th spin is today, and we won. So we made the best of it. It's a great team and a great year. That is absolutely wild. 
Fantastic. Um, so what did you guys think going in today? Like, did you expect this outcome? Or did it seem like a long shot knowing kind of like how late every you were compared to everyone else? Like, what were your thoughts going into today? Well, I watch every team we're against. I, I, every day I'm down watching teams roll, so I knew where they were to. I knew where we were to. I knew if we were close going into the turn, that we would have a better chance of winning it. And we had a boat net lead going into the turn, and then we just widened it up coming out. We had a great turn. Fantastic. I love it. Analyzing every minute. <laughs> Good stuff. Well, do you folks have uh, anyone to thank, like anything to say? What are our thoughts right now? Our sponsor, our Spears, and our families, and uh, Rich, of course, for putting up with our bit of a wacky season. <laughs> I believe it. Anything else? Any, any more? I guess a big thanks to Jordan for booking all our spins. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, we had a great season and a great spin today, so we're just happy how the outcome was today. And yeah, we're going to have some fun next year. Fantastic. Well, thank you, everyone. And uh, I'll throw it back to Siobhan and Jason. Can we just have a moment for my boy Mitch and how lively and pleasant and how great his energy is? You're killing it, Mitch. Thank you very much. Speaking of people who have been killing it, <laughs> and th th we were just like, he's killing us so much that so we're going to induct him into the Hall of Fame, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Charles Cook. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, well, I mean, we asked everybody else, and you're the only one that said yes, so no, I'm joking. <laughs> so, uh, honored to have you here. Uh, of course, uh, yourself and Siobhan have met before. You've both been around <laughs> the regatta and the regatta committee for quite some time. Of course, you were recently inducted into the Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that must have felt just like... Eh, I don't care. Like, how big a deal? That's amazing. That's I was deal. sort of overwhelmed, to be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, you know, I get I get involved with uh, uh, volunteer operations and like involved with scouts, involved with regatta, obviously. But I get into those organizations. I give my time and my efforts. Uh, and uh, it's no such thing as going in half-hearted. I mean, all sure. in. Sure. Right. So you know, getting a, getting this recognition was fantastic. I was sort of I was totally overwhelmed. Like, I remember when they first announced it. I was sort of. Okay, I didn't say too much, and then what, it was like a week or so later. I said, "Okay, here I am. I got it." It was sort of really surprised. It well, came, yeah. as a, came as a but, shock. But so well, you're surprised. surprised. How surprised were you? Not at all. Right? Charles has been a, 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 an incredible member of the regatta committee, a, an incredibly good rower. I rowed back in the, you know, I guess, the late, late 70s, 70s and early 80s. Uh, f had a good rowing career followed up by many years on the regatta committee. I'd say you must be 35 years uh, on the 1990, regatta committee. 1990, so... Hey. Up there. Up. Uh, <laughs> so many, many years there. on the regatta committee. Became president of the regatta committee, big contributions as president, and huge contributions as how, chair of the 200th anniversary was he committee. How only just he admitted? Was, he's, like, oh, how he, was this not <laughs> happened a decade ago? He, he was responsible for the 200th anniversary where he put in the winner's circle, and we've seen yes. the winner's circle today, and now, thankfully, he's been inducted into the Hall of Fame, and his name will go up on the winner's circle as well. It's uh, a... a testament to his contributions to the Royal St. John's Regatta Committee and a testament to the memories that Charles has been able to create for thousands so of people around the state. So, hold on now, when, when there's, there's a, a ceremony of sorts yep. when you're inducted, right? Mm -hmm. So, obviously, it was um, Siobhan that inducted you because she knows your life story. <laughs> She's talking about how fantastic you are. Mr. Cook, absolutely incredible. However, we do have another, another race um, we got, they're all lining up here. So we got to talk about this 13th race. This is uh, the Hebeway under 16 men's race. So in the first shell, this is the Outfitters. Steve Winters is the coxswain, stroke is Nick Winters. Uh, seat five, Matthew Earl, number four, Finley McGraw. See more of the same names we're seeing over again. George Parmenter in three, James Ryan in two, Caleb Yetman in one. And their coach, of course, is Steve Winters. And then coming up in shell number two, the CBC is Crew Madsen. And Coxon is Darren Hyde. Stroke is Seth Hyde. Number five, Andrew Piercy. Number four, Logan Ma uh, Mahone. Number three, Luke Piercy. Number two, Jack Toms. Number one, Grant Clark. Spear is Isaac Whalen. And coach is Jackie Hyde. And in our next shell, the Marine Institute, this is the crew from Pentagon. Cox and Gerard Barrington, another name that you'll see around rowing a lot, stroke Rowan Antle, Luke Radowski, 
Gavin Barrington, another one. Ryan Molin, Dominic Winter, another Winter. Braden Coonan in the first seat. Spare Ben Noseworthy and coach Mr. Mike Rudolski. And then shell number four, the Seahawk, is crew Outer Cove. Wolseley, and of course Outer Cove, uh, Outer Cove being well known down here at the lake. Coxon is Michael Shea. Stroke is Gabe Bartlett. Number five is Matthew Stokes. Number four, Ben Roach. Number three, Drew Randall. Number two, James Walsh. Number one, James Nixon. Spare Andrew Waterman. And in the fifth shelf in the telegram, this is the Unsinkables. Cox and Tina Ring, another name that's been around for some time. Stroke, Sam Felton, Raj Sanchetti, Adam McDonald, Benjamin Cowan, Michael Kane. Oh, I just could say Michael Kane over and over again. And in the first seat, Grant Bennett, Spare, Max, Dove. Of course, so the under 16, this is something that's kind of exciting um, to me to watch because I can remember when I considered myself to be like, my peak athleticism, it was moving from just under 16 up to 18, 19, 20. Yep. And then of course I just like moved out of the bay to St. John's, got a job and it all went downhill from there. But I can imagine these guys, they're they're at the age where like they're dreamers now. Oh, absolutely. They're like, we're chasing records. Yep. Like we're priming, we're getting ready. We're gonna build a crew that is gonna be us until we are we are the record holders. So well, the outfitters, for example, this is a third year crew. They've and been rolling for three years and they're, under 16. And they're exactly. under 16. And lots of these young men are in multi sports. Uh, this is not their only sport that they participate in. They, oh, they, they and we're participate off. in many other sports. So it's great to see them involved in the regatta. Well, You'll see them churning up water. Me, Look at that. Yeah, that the first stake to me, like those first few strokes are hard and fast Absolutely. and you don't get much grip. But no. then when you start to see the pull slow down the speed picks up and yes. in that first stake that appeared to happen even quicker yeah so some of the crews will actually go out and they'll do a, like a quarter half three quarters and then a full stroke and some crews will go out and just go full stroke hard on and there's different ways of doing it getting off the, off the line faster but sometimes going off with a full stroke gets you the ability to keep in rhythm all the way down the pond which makes a huge difference because you're not spinning tires exactly and, and it works for some there's a lot of adrenaline coming out of when oh, that yeah. gun goes off that's your Olympics. So, you know, your feet, you're sitting there and, you know, you're touch up number one, touch up number two, Coxon's grabbing the toggle, and then you're here, are you ready number one, are you ready number two, and then the gun goes off. The adrenaline is surging. So the Coxon will have strategies depending on the crew. And as, as Charles said, they might do a half stroke, they might do three quarters, or they might go out long. And you, you saw that from the start, they were churning up some water. It'll be really interesting to see how close they all are going into Well, the outfitters in that, in, in that first stake with, um, with Winters there as their coach under Coxon, I mean, they're a full, a, over one full minute in their time trial from from the Space fifth stake. Yeah. So like we we should be, I mean I know you do, they're super, super close in their time trial to um, to Madsen in the, the next stake over. But we should be seeing these guys come out sharp based on, on their history and the fact they've been rowing together for three years. Uh, certainly, but uh, what you saw in the last race, if you re if you remember yes. back to the last race, Rest, Rest NL actually cut a, a minute off their time trial. So anything can happen between time trials and now because, of course, the training and the, uh, and, and the conditioning that occurs between time trials and now. But normally, in a normal year, in a normal circumstance, the, you know, the, the better times in time trials will, will be the leaders in the race. And you're starting to see them coming into the, into the kegs now, to the buoys, uh, starting to make their turn, starting. This is where, if for those that, who haven't been rowing, the stroke side actually hold water and they don't row around the kegs. They actually hold water and bow side makes the turn. Yeah, so sort of like in my mind, you're thinking about an Argo pivoting. Right. Right, exactly. so if anything, you want, you want your short side backwards. Yep. Like, let's go on a dime. But th there, there's, there's strategy involved there too because if you come in and pivot on a dime, you've lost a lot of momentum, your boat is back down into the water, right. but a wider, more sweeping turn allows you to maintain some speed, some cadence. You, Let's go back to uh, official results from race 12, if you would please, Siobhan. This is Rest NL. This is the this is the crew that took a mi over a minute off their time trials, 556.01, Equinor, 617.92,
Uh, Canadian Armed Forces 61916. So that was so close. Professional Chimney Services 63333. The residents at Littledale 63346. All of them, of course, faster than time trials. They've all moved up, and I'm sure they'll be pleased with their results. What what a difference, though, from 33 like one hundredths. Of, oh. of versus 40s like that. I lost a championship so, so race. Tight. I rest, lost a championship race one time by less than a second. Yeah. And you're still bitter about it, aren't <laughs> I'm, you? I'm still <laughs> thinking about that race. You're still what bringing could it up. we have done 30 years ago. 30 years ago. I'm still thinking so about what could we, we have done. We look at our unofficial time now. We're approaching four minutes. Of course, record here. The race record is just over five minutes for uh, this, this under 16. And the outfitters are pushing hard here. They are, and they, I mean, they, they look like a nice, tidy crew. Lead. And as I said, this is a third-year crew. Uh, they're all 14 years of age. There are five of the five of this team. Look, now you're starting to see another crew come up. Uh, that's uh, that's really really interesting. That's the NTV network, I think it said on it. So that's stake number one pulling pulling up uh, quickly. I don't know if it's the angle, but they seem to be doing well. It can be hard to tell. So I think I think the the first and the third stake, of course, the third stake being Pentagon, it, it's hard to get a good idea of where they are with this angle. If we could, if we could see that real clean zoomed out drone shot and get a little better picture of things Absolutely. in context. Oh, uh, and here we we are our winners from our from our last race lining up, having some photos, sponsored by Benson Buff, of course. And again, you're seeing all these com great community partners being involved in the regatta, uh, giving giving back to the community. There, there are second place winners from from our last race, and here we are coming in Just real look, tight, look, real look tight. How look tight how tight it is. Close. Look how tight. So now I believe look this at is NTV. the Outfitters. No, I believe it's NTV. No, first one is Outfitters. Okay, correct? Outfitters. Yeah, in, well, in, in the NTV in the network, NTV network yeah. shell. And then Pentagon right the Thursday on. coming the in outfitters. is a very close second. Wow. And who did you say came in the close second? Uh, I believe it was Pentagon at stake three. Well, that's a, that's a, a, a well improvement of time. If you look at their time trials time, um, the yes, outfitters were at 550 in time trials down to 518. The unofficial time, and of course, Pentagon was 6:07, and they weren't too, they weren't very far behind. At all, and I mean, you got to think, you got to think that um, age and experience starts to matter at the, in this age group, because absolutely. right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And what you find is these guys, now that they're rowing together for a number of years, they keep on going. They're just going to grow better, 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 stronger. And you're going to see some really good competitive teams and they're, in the and future. They're picking off they're the of each of the other. Oh, absolutely. Exactly. The future of the regatta. Yep. Unlike us. <laughs> Our heyday is over. However, it was a fantastic hey, hey, hey. race. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> no, listen, yours, 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 you're on like, like another wind here now. Like winner circle racing, and then and then through the committee, and now in the Hall of Fame, like you are you are bronzed baby the shoes. The pinnacle, the, the, the pinnacle you are of now. success. Been around too long. Eh? Been around <laughs> too long. Or just long enough. Yeah, or just long enough. Yeah, I I enjoy it. That's why I'm still here, and it's it's a great bit of fun and a great bit of uh, camaraderie on the committee. And uh, do you want to get just what we're doing, again? right? To row? Yeah. I was asked this year about row masters, and yeah. I said, not on your life. No, why not? No, I, I think over time, your back gets tired, your arms get tired, and you know, my age at this point in time, maybe I would, but I uh, just don't think my back would hold out. That's the only reason why I wouldn't do it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you want, if you want to email into Rogers Television and demand that Mr. Charles Cook gets back on the water. I am sure if we get enough emails, he still won't do it. But it would be interesting to see if we got any at all. I'm just going to have to go rush out and get my phone. I'd like to see Charles back on the water. Oh, well, I guess that makes me make a new one back, too. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. There we go. Careful so, of course, for. Rest NL here Absolutely. Uh, with the Benson Buffett District Women's Race Winners. Rest NL. Race number 12, and what a, what a difference though. Like from, from their trial time to finishing this, like you, how excited and proud and just like uh, look at them when they got the off trophy. and looked look. at their own time. I mean, this is, this, is, this is their moment. 
they've been working for hard at this, getting up early, early mornings. A lot of them, uh, a lot of them come out at five o'clock in the morning, five thirty yep. in the morning to get on the water. They dedicate their time to it. This is their moment. This is their Olympics. And there's there's got to be such a massive sense of relief for for the crew, right? But also for the crew's loved ones. You're like, oh, oh my, yeah. can you Thank turn goodness. off that alarm for <laughs> four o'clock? Yeah, like, is it time? Can we take a break? And like, yeah. yeah, but just for like a month. Yeah. Then I'm back on the water again. And, and you know, it, it, it goes on for a lifetime because a lot of these rowers yeah. will go on to be, you know, row longer and longer or they'll come on the committee and it goes on. I, I know my fo my husband woke me up at 4.30 this morning and saying, you gotta get up, you gotta get up. You gotta go just make, just make a decision on the regatta, 4.30. Yeah. <laughs> no. Do you know what I was doing four thirty? Still hopefully, sleeping. Hopefully I was, uh, sleeping. I was sleeping. I was on my I way down sleeping. here. Yeah. You were already on your way. Now see, I, that's now that's see, how you in. get into the Hall of Fame. That's how I you, you got to get in. <laughs> that's how you get in the Hall of Fame. That's how you do it, Siobhan. So I mean, are yeah. you putting her on the ballot now for next year, the year after, or something like that? She might already be in there. You never know. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm not on that committee, so I can't tell you. <laughs> well. Having that said, I, I, I guess... I was on the committee for many years. I, you I, have. If you're not on that committee, there's nothing else I can get out of you here, Charles. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for your commentary. Thanks for your knowledge. Congratulations Thank on you your much. being inducted into the Hall of Fame. Uh, everybody is proud of you. And Rogers, thanks you for hanging out with us. Oh, you're more than welcome. Thank and you very much. And look at the thousands of people around this lake that are enjoying themselves because of all your efforts. Thank you, Absolutely. Charles. It's not just mine, thanks it's everybody it. else's. I'm a, Thank a piece you for of what it. You've done. Right? Well, our, our boy Thank Mitch you. is back in the winner's circle for some more stories with some more happy but tired rowers. So, Mitch, what do you got for us? <laughs> Hello everyone, I am here with the winners of the Benson Buffett District Senior Women's Competition. Um, excellent race everyone, congrats once again. Uh, before we start in the questions, I'll get everyone to introduce themselves, go down the line. So, uh, Lenny, Lenny Williams, Coxon. Stacy Sellers. Brittany Dixon. Megan Lear. Vanessa Farrell. Courtney Clark. Audie Weiss. Jill Colbert. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. So, like I said, excellent race today. What were your thoughts going into today? Was this expected? Like, what was the practice regime like? Tell me everything about going into today. What went into it? We, we didn't expect it because we've only had two spins on, on Kitty Bitty, time trials and today. So, it's a really good surprise. 556, can't complain. This is a theme of today. We have folks that are, you know, kind of coming in late and only doing limited amount of spins on the lake and they're coming in and taking it home. That is absolutely fantastic. It's a wonderful feeling to go to another town and win it. Pretty good. Fantastic. So I guess, how did you folks make the most of the spins on the lake that you got to actually partake in? I have no idea. <laughs> you <guys got> it. <laughs> no problem at all. I know putting on the spot, it's a, it's a little bit difficult, but honestly, I am always a little bit blown away that so much goes into this. And, and some folks, you know, the, all the athletes are fantastic, but um, that some folks just come in and absolutely take it home. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess at the, at the end of the day, um, Kind of, what do you have to say about it all? Uh, how do you feel after the race? I uh, feel great. feel great. Like I say, there's nothing like coming to another town like Placentia and winning your race and winning the championship even. You can't beat it. No, that is true. Well, excellent. Thank you very much, everyone. And we'll go back to Jason and Siobhan. Back to Jason and Siobhan. Thank you so much, Mitch. You're killing it out there, buddy. We're really enjoying it. And um, so you're the president of Mr. Charles Cook's fan club. I am because, uh, you know, there's a lot of people who give an awful lot to this regatta. And, you know, we all come down here and we enjoy the regatta year I'm, after year. I'm sorry. I'm uh -oh. sorry. Uh, Mr. The famous This cake just made. happened. <laughs> Mr. Cook. <laughs> from, the, from, from what? The folks at the sponsor, from the so smoke what's at the, the, the joke here is wow. I make cakes for everyone. Wow. Thank you so regatta, much, sir. It's been a long-standing tradition of mine. I make 
cakes and I send them around to all the different stations because they're all volunteers, there's 50 volunteers. And so during uh, regatta, they uh, they get cakes. Oh my and goodness! And now Jason's about to sample it because oh he, my uh, goodness! Because Mark told him earlier it's about like a, my like cakes. A, it's like rum. a citrusy vanilla it's rum. It's rum good. Cake. Is it? Is it a? a it's a spice rum? No. No. Oh, oh my I, goodness! I, it's, oh, it's, it's so it's moist, Siobhan. <laughs> So this is a tradition that's been going on about 30 years that I've been on the regatta committee, that I make cakes, bring them around to everybody, and uh, now you're, you're part of Mark's, uh, Mark's fan club, because Mark, uh, Mark mentioned it earlier, and, and he's been pining for them ever since, and Charles just gave them to him. My so. goodness. <laughs> I, I think I'm going to have to make Jason a, a, a rum cake next year. Oh, my um, goodness. But you know, Sam, it's... My, girl, my girlfriend, <laughs> Sam, if she's home watching... Oh my, she's okay, so, so, so jealous. Oh my goodness. Anyway, I'm glad you're enjoying it, Jason. Oh. So it's a, a bit of fun around the, we, we, as, as Charles alluded to, there's a lot of camaraderie around the regatta committee. We've known each other, some of us, for 30 plus years. As I said, Charles and I actually rode during the same, the same period of yeah. time. Uh, and so it's uh, it's fun, you know, and everybody thinks about the regatta and talks about memories that they have or meeting up with old friends or meeting up with your parents' old friends. I'm in such a great mood right now. <laughs> <laughs> I have to tell you, I feel so seen and heard and validated. But I tell you one thing, eat too much of that, you're talking about memories, eat too much of that rum cake, you ain't going to remember it. I'll, I'll tell you, it is so good. Well, so, like um... It. Our time is it together in this moment, at least. I mean, I hope, I hope we can spend more time together moving <laughs> forward. Uh, is 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 dwindling down. It's starting to. We got what do we got? We got one more coming, huh? One more race uh, that's coming up. It's a women's race. We've got two crews, and you know what's really fun about the regatta is you know there's the really heavy uh, competitive crews, and then there are the crews that come down for fun and recreation. And you know this is some of the crews that you're seeing now. And I, I note that one of them said Martin Survey said when they were being they were talking about it, they really love coming down together. They all know each other from university. Yeah. They love coming down. They like to be competitive, but they're here for the recreation, the fun, the camaraderie. Now, they're going to do well this sh to, well, today. I mean, Gord, Gord Delaney isn't going to cox any crew that doesn't have interest in working hard. All, all crews put the effort in. There's no always, doubt about always. it. Always, So they, even though they remark that they're here just for the fun yes. of it, they're actually competitive, and they're going to do their absolute best. So speaking of competitiveness, do you want to win a barbecue? You can win a barbecue through uh, Rogers, sponsored by the Home Depot. Sometimes I just call it Home Depot, but it really is the Home I Depot, know. even though their website is just homedepot.ca. Anyway, you can win a barbecue prize pack. Look at that. Oh, oh wow. four burners. It's got the side bar. It's amazing. Visit the Rogers booth at the top of the pond or visit us on Facebook at Rogers TV St. John's. And if you want, you can call Siobhan directly at 709-701-8606. That's not actually Siobhan's phone number. But I'll give you the recipe for the cake. <laughs> you will not. No way. I could be convinced. I could use a barbecue. Absolutely. I, Everybody could use a barbecue. I, I don't currently have a barbecue, but I and suppose... And we all love to win at the regatta. So we do. Time, please call in, because we yes. all love to win at the regatta. But I mean, I already feel like a winner, because <laughs> I've had some of this. And of course, I got to eat food from the Spirit of Newfoundland. Thank you so much for sponsoring, giving us some lunch here for all of our volunteers oh, at Rogers fabulous. Television. Uh, over lunch and again in a little while when we need to eat again. Thank you, Spirit of Newfoundland, and also to Steel Hotels, who, Mr. John Steele, yeah. of course, who, amongst other things, always puts together a solid musical lineup. Oh, and it he, he really does. So, let, like, let's talk about Iceberg Alley. For, I'm going to go on a little John Steele rant here because I don't know him as a, as a person. I don't know him personally, really. Um, but as a businessman, super smart. So he had plans, because the Jag Hotel, of course, and he had plans to make this like big entertainment space there, mm -hmm. this, so that we finally had a real music venue that we could bring big acts in, have enough people, so mm -hmm. that you, they didn't have to be $500 a ticket, that kind of thing, because capacity was always an issue for us. So Mr. Steele starts Iceberg Alley at the performance tent. So he, he gets a tent, a massive circus tent, and he builds, a brand of Iceberg Alley 
at the performance tent, gets the approval. Great times, too. A great times. While he's working on the approval to build the extension on his hotel for to be a real music venue, and now Iceberg Alley is its own brand, people forget about the tent. And when that opens, you can rest assured that Iceberg Alley will just move right into the Jag Hotel because they have the foresight to create the foresight to create that brand. Absolutely, smart man. Smart, so thank the whole you. family smart. Harry, you know his his dad, his brother, himself. They are great entrepreneurs, great business people, but great community people too. They give back to our community. You mentioned him about supporting yes. this. Uh, this broadcast today, um, but always being there for our community. So thank you for that. Thank you to, again to all the sponsors of all the crews and all the races today. We wouldn't have the regatta really without the sponsorships of the crews and the regatta yeah. itself. And speaking of the crews, race 13, it was the outfitters coming in the first 518.01, Pentagon in the third stake, just barely two and a half seconds past them. Uh, the under 16 Madsen then at 539.17, little shy of 20 seconds after that, the unsinkables, and then the boys from Outer Cove, Wolseley, just a second and a, and a hair past those guys in the last stake. And all of them besting their time trials times by by really a lot. Like amounts. A, 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 by up to a minute, and sometimes it's been almost close to a minute. So all of them uh, really showing great performance and hard work. They deserve rum cake almost <laughs> as much as Under 16, I do. Though. Almost as much. Is it that much rum? <laughs> they get a straw for my rum cake? So yeah. we're, we're, I guess these guys are going to get lined up here in a little bit and we'll have one more, one more race. And Look at the crowds around the lake. Jason. I know. I mean, so, it's a beautiful day. It's not too hot. It's I'm, not sunny. You have tens upon tens of thousands of people here making memories lakeside. We so hope I'm, that you're enjoying it as well. I'm five or six years into hosting things down here at the regatta, uh, not solo, obviously, with a whole team of volunteers and almost like nothing at Rogers happened happens without a team of volunteers, so to speak. Um, and w this is the first time that we've been in this location. So normally we're, we're much more like right down on the pond. And and like I, I would catch myself like wanting to watch like right. this and still trying <laughs> to be on TV. So there is something about this that allows us to be more engaged with the audience and with each other and still get a good look at the race. But there's a little bit of me that, that misses the energy and, the, and in, in your ear in the back. But it does make it hard sometimes to, to speak and be heard because they're literally screaming. Oh, it's, just, it's, so it's just such an exciting day. And you know, it's also exciting for the concessionaires, Jason. There are you know, tens upon tens upon tens upon great concessions here around the lake and, and lots of things for the kids to do and, and to win little prizes. But most importantly, there's a lot of community groups here raising money today. I, I mean, yes, very much so. I can remember the very first thing I ever did with Rogers TV. Not the first thing to air, because the first thing to air was when um, a mayor, Danny O'Keefe, got elected for the first time, and I introduced him as Mayor <laughs> Danny O'Keefe, because like, like, it was Doc, right? Yeah, yeah. So Danny Breen, of course. So I introduced him live, and he was like, that's not my name. <laughs> and I said, well, this is literally my first day. <laughs> so, so, but anyway, uh, one of the first things I ever did with Rogers was perusing the lake with a camera and a mic oh, and just talking to, people. talking to people and you always you always run into interesting folks from all walks of life from all over the province canada and the world, the world. and then our very own like most notable local people like you'll walk around the regatta you're you're bound to run into um alan doyle absolutely you're bound to run into mark critch you're you're well, well I mean, exactly. right? You're bound to run into <laughs> to, to all of the people from um, from all of the local productions, and it's it's fun and interesting to me because they're they're just members of the community like everybody else, and they love it, and it's where they came from, and to me, that's a big part of what the regatta is. I, that's what I'm learning. It's oh, not it's... it's not you know, dollar fifty holding up the wheel. It's not like 
it's part ship it's, trucks it's, it's part of that so yeah. it's the dollar fifty holding the wheel it's the concessionaire winning winning a little prize it's the chip truck it's the rowing it's all of it it's the memories it's the feel of St. John's really well you and, gotta and, think and really that Newfoundland and Labrador because it you know we're all we're all from somewhere yeah right <laughs> and and, and well speaking to people that are from somewhere Martin surveys this crew they're uh, they're they they know one another they've been around for a while Gord Delaney of course is the coxswain Heather Berry is their stroke Chelsea Morini in number five Chantelle O'Keefe in four Sam Windsor in three Caitlin Connolly in two and Krista Tobin in the first seat spared by Keely Blanchard and they of course will go up against in shell number three, Lamb's Palm Breeze, Crew, Bab Law Office, Coxon Lenny Williams, you've seen his name many times today, Stroke, Brianna Mercer Williams, number five, Leah Mercer, number four, Caitlin Lush, number three, Sarah Young, number two, Brooklyn Forward, number one, Erica Butt with a spare, Tyra White. And it's great to see them. Uh, they, had a t they had a time at... Uh, at time trials of 7.53.64 with um, Martin Surveys having a time of 7.28.50. So I'm sure they're looking to best that time, do their best on the lake today, put in their effort, and have some fun. Great to wait see, for them to get great all lined to see up. so many crews. You're starting to see it build back up post-COVID, you know, welcoming back many, many crews and encouraging more crews. So if you have uh, a few friends... There's a youthification also. Absolutely. There, there's a youthification in this. So, like, if we just go back five years ago, like, there, there, were, there were less crews, but there were less younger people. And, and, and now there's more younger people, way more female crews way more inclusive crews and now that we have women doing the full course and the half course it's like a whole new show kind of well, and no, I, I like that it, well exactly we even though our our, our motto is uh, about tradition right we still want to evolve as a sport and a community event and the regatta so we've been introducing things new things into the regatta over the last number of years yeah um but well, keep, but holding on to a lot of our traditions the sure. sliding seats the the way we the way we hold the regatta how we how we do a lot of the things we've maintained but while we progress as a sport as an and as a community event I think that it only makes sense to to grow if if you don't grow with the world around you as you grow you will be left behind and then your tradition just won't exist anymore so you need to remain relevant Absolutely. or else you you're you become a dinosaur you're just extinct you didn't move right 205 years this year it's hard to believe 205, 205 the oldest years. sporting event in North America. And you know, Harbor Grace is the second oldest sporting event in North America. So it's kind of fun that both of them are here in Newfoundland. Absolutely. And, and we're off. Oh, you see how hard there these we, guys are pushing. There we go. You see, so there, you there, see there, the there are a couple minutes in here now. And, and uh, I mean, we look at their time trials. We're looking at seven and a half plus minutes out of, out of these two crews. And that's a long time. It's a, it's a and, long And I don't mean it's, it's a, a long. long I don't mean the time is not a good time. I mean, if you if you think about it's your the balance effort. and it's the, the effort, effort, that the effort sustained yeah. peak performance, right. like, I don't think I could sprint and, and longer this, than 15 seconds. <laughs> and this is a sprint. Yes. I am telling you because it is fast, though there are parts of the pond I could tell you uh, it, it seems like forever, but that's when the coxswain, you'll feel, you'll hear the coxswain, you know, asking you to pull out 10 hard strokes. So Gord Delaney and I see Lenny Williams there and they'll be, they'll be asking for their best. And I remember being in Two the, very accomplished and experienced coxswains too. Absolutely. And it's wonderful that they take so many crews. You've seen them throughout this today taking on many, many, many crews. Some experience some very highly competitive and some new some new crews so it's great that they do that but you'll see you'll see both uh, Gord and Lenny hauling out the best they can really coaching their their teams to bring out their best and that's what they're doing right now so speaking of things we're doing right now we got Lori over in the winner's circle uh, and and uh, then while she does that 
myself and Siobhan, we're, we're going to take off for a little while. There you go. I'm going to so, go back to the bottom of the pond and continue you, to judge races all afternoon. Well, absolutely amazing. I'm going to hang out. I'm going to maybe go check out that that um, uh, Home Depot barbecue that Ooh, I'm, maybe I'm allowed to, to win. Call. I don't know. Am I, am I, can I win? Am I? Everybody okay. wants they to tell win. tell me I'm allowed to win. Uh, so we're going to switch out. We're going to get DC, fellow co-host oh. of Out of the Fog, and Mr. Brad Power, no stranger to the regatta. But first, here's Lori in the winner's circle. Hi, and welcome back. And we are with the U16 uh, winners, the Outfitters. And I want to introduce everyone today. So what's your name? Matthew Earl, George Primitive, Nick Winters, Kayla Pietman, Finley McGraw, James Ryan, Jake Evans, Jonathan Earl, Steve Winters. Excellent! So congratulations on your win, and I believe that you are all hockey players, is that right? Yeah, so how did you come from being hockey players to rowers? Um, I guess our training from hockey helps out in, on the pond, and we just all wanted to row together, so that's what we decided to do. That's excellent! So how do you find, you know, getting time to row and do hockey and just having fun? Uh, well, we often row in the mornings and sometimes in the afternoon, so that gives us a lot of the other t time in the day to do other stuff and hockey at night. So. That is excellent! So tell me now, what does winning mean to you? Well, it means a lot because that, that was our goal for the full year, and um, I guess we just can't wait for next year and try and go for the record. Excellent. Is this your first year? Yeah, in this age group. Oh, wow. So what are you going to do for training for the upcoming years? A lot more than this year, I guess. Yeah. So what did you do this year to get going? Um, well, we just started off on the water and just kept going some double days, which is nice. That is excellent. And is there anyone that you want to uh, do a shout out to or say hello to? Um, I'd like to say thank you to the Outfitters um, for sponsoring us and Steve Winters for being our cop for this year. Well, thank you so much and congratulations. And we're going back to Jason and Siobhan. I don't know what this is. Is this mine? Like. And we are back, back, back again. Thank you so much, Jason and Siobhan, for lighting it up, telling us all the things. And I'm just, you know, sucked on in here to sit in this chair and hang out with you guys with the one and only immediate past, the man himself, Brad Power. Hello, Nani. How are you? I can't believe it's surreal that I'm I sitting know. next to you. Two good lucky bay boys. Huh? Uh, exactly. And so much history yeah, absolutely. in our little town, our trinity, where three become one, right? So true. So true. I suspect that our community represents more championship races and, and gold medals and silver medals than any municipality in the province. Yes. And, uh, and we have a lot to be proud of, that's for sure. And the lowest mill rate, too. I mean, what do we want? <laughs> that is so but true. But enough about the economics of it all. <laughs> I will say you're right. Growing up in our town, um, the pride and history of the regatta is baked into us all. Indeed it is. It's, it's part of our life. Uh, it has been since we were all young. Uh, you know, I remember the days here on the banks of Kitty Vitty at five, six years old, watching, uh, you know, the dead heat in the 80s and, and all these uh, major races that have become historic uh, parts of this 200-year-old organization. And, uh, and of course, to be uh, to grow up with, you know, a father and uncles and cousins and my brother and pretty much everybody in the family road, including myself. And, uh, and now the, they're pretty much all Hall of Famers, too. So, but if you, if you look at our community, and I, I mean this, I think we have more Hall of Fame members and more championship rowers than any other community in the province. And it's simply because it's a group of, it's an athletic community, always has been, whether it was softball or hockey, but, but rowing was always the core sport. That's what yeah. everybody looked forward to. That is the truth. And I do think growing up, when you think back about our history of rowing culture, and, and to me, I was just so scared to death as a kid to dare to get in and row on the pond, and yet so many people around me, like yourself, just took to it and really helped to move the sport ahead. And how proud are you of your place in that? Well, Danny, I'm, I'm very proud. I am the first president of the regatta committee from the town of Logie Bay Middle Cove. Unreal. Um, hard to believe after all these years. I know, so full it circle. Was, it was uh, quite an honor and, and a real privilege. Um, I was the COVID president, so uh, <laughs> I was the lucky one to manage the organization through the COVID pandemic. Wow. Um, one of the first regattas canceled, of course, in 40 years, and uh, wasn't an easy, easy decision to make. 
But the year we came back, uh, we had all these uh, uh, COVID restrictions in place, but we still had a fantastic event. Of course, listen, like it's what you make it in all contexts. Absolutely. And yes, uh, we don't like to look back over our shoulder too much, do we? Because we're just really excited to be down here in the hive of what is happening around this pond. I mean, what have you seen? Well, this has been a really busy day. Uh, it started last night with the uh, 2023 Regatta Eve uh, celebration. Oh, yeah. We had uh, three phenomenal bands last night, the School of Rock, a bunch oh, of young kids. Unreal. They were great. We had uh, the old contemporaries who, uh, of course, play around St. John's all the oh, time. Well, great every group. Monday, Bannerman Brewery, they're That's there. Right. So just Absolutely. a little, if you know, you know. And, uh, and of course, Shekana rounded out the night and had everybody dancing and course, on their feet. Of course. And, uh, you know, the that, that part of the event um, has really just uh, started back into the 200th anniversary. Right. Now, people will remember years ago, there would always be a party around the lake the night before, That's right. uh, but a little bit more tempered than what you see nowadays. Um, but of course, we had uh, close on five or 7,000 people here last night, and the vendors did very, very well. Um, the uh, miniature donut vendor had a lineup of almost 30 people at 9.30 last night. No so they're doing way. quite well. And then, of course, this morning, um, you know, the top of the pond was full for the uh, the first couple of, of course, races, of as it always is. And uh, I venture to say we've seen 30 or 35,000 people here today, which is wonderful. That's unreal, and the numbers are amazing. And I remember as a kid with my aunt and uncle Wayne, Helen and Wayne, yeah. right, and Jeffrey and Jason. I know we're getting we're going to be geeks now, talking about our like. <laughs> lifelong friendship times in Logie Bay, Outer Cove, Middle Cove. But uh, growing, going down to the pond the night before and watching them set up the crown and anchor and we would be just marveling because we knew the next day where we would be and that is sliding those quarters on the <laughs> double crown, you know? So uh, very much a lot of memories of the night before. But to your point, there has been a lot of evolution and development around making that night even more of a preface event that draws, as you say, 7,000 plus people. I mean, that takes a lot of work onto itself. Do people realize... Well, you know, I think the entire regatta itself, people don't appreciate how many moving parts there actually are. Uh, the committee is 50 members. Uh, we currently have about 43. Wow. Yeah. Um, so we're a little short, and, uh, and we feel that pressure today. Uh, a lot of our members who would typically take a half day at the lake and spend the other half with their family are now dedicated 100% of today, uh, much like myself. Now, you know, we live for this, so we don't mind that. <laughs> but uh, in all reality, if, uh, if it wasn't for that regatta committee and the, the other handful of volunteers, and most importantly, the staff, um, this thing wouldn't happen. And, you know, planning starts tomorrow. Uh, this is not oh, yeah. something that we just start April 1st and, and go from there. It literally starts tomorrow. And, um, and, you know, we've got 200 years of practice, so we know what we're doing. Oh, There's yeah. no doubt about that. I think so. I always say that the regatta committee is, is like the ducks that are out there. Right? They're smooth <laughs> on the water and going crazy underneath. <laughs> But, but ain't that uh, like everything, you know? It is indeed. But the, the regatta has evolved significantly, Big whether time. you look at the uh, types of registrants that we have. Um, you know, another wonderful year for registrations, almost uh, over 70 crews. Oh, wow. Um, we had the most crews we had was the 200th anniversary with 156. And then we went down to uh, a little over 100 for the year after. And we oh, thought, really? you know, after that celebration, we'd see a couple of years where, you know, go down to 50 or so. But no, we've been able to sustain. Uh, again, the vast majority are female crews, right. which is great. Uh, but of course, we also see a lot of senior crews coming back um, interested in the half course. So today we had our first crew row the uh, first crew of men row the half course, which uh, is phenomenal. And they made history today, much like the the, the ladies that made history last year yes. rowing the uh, the full course. Yeah. But uh, further to the you know the evolution, we've uh, we've done a lot of work with the committee in terms of uh, gender diverse language and all of our policies and procedures. Uh, we're very inclusive and accessible organization, and uh, and of course the seats and the footings and all these things that we've changed over the years is all for the betterment of the sport. Of course, you know what people see when they come down here. Of course, are you know hundred vendors and uh, and races taking place. But the reality is, yes, it looks like it does years ago, but it's so much different, so much different. And of course, everything evolves in the right directions, and I think that the community support and the fame of the event itself is really something special and very rare. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, the commitment of the public to this, uh, and you know, let's talk about the vendors as an example. Um, the Hindu Temple, 40 years they've been showing up here at Kitty Bitty Lake. Uh, the wow. Torbay Volunteer Fire Department, 30 plus years or more. Uh, these are vendors that show up every single year. It's part of their annual fundraising, uh, but more importantly, it's part of them building their community. And 
Um, you know, we see so many of them come back every single time, and uh, that's what makes this day so special. It's those no, people. I do agree, and the diversity of what you'll see around the pond, I see ever blooming, ever growing, and I know that you know, in all of the different not-for-profits and associations that we're into here now, that becomes more and more of a priority. And I'm glad to hear that you guys are taking that to heart, and we're seeing that reflected in so much of the diversity that we're finding around the pond here today. Absolutely, there's there's two key functions of this: it's the racing, but also the garden party. And of course, during the you know the COVID pandemic, that's what we had to uh, forego was the, the garden party right. concept and uh, we heard from 100% of our vendors back then and they said we support what you're doing and that was that was nice sure. um, but they came back in droves the following year we, we didn't lose anyone in fact we gained vendors wow right? and uh, and they love uh, you know talking to their friends and family that drop down to say hello but um, you know wonderful group of, uh, of people here in this city who, who love coming down and spending their money and supporting those charities and nonprofits and so important to their annual fundraising that's so amazing and it does take a lot of the help and I know that we're watching races over our shoulder here, but I want to ask you and cut me off at any time. How important is sponsorship? Huge, huge. It's probably one of the biggest challenges that our crews face is finding an annual sponsor. Um, you know, what sport can you participate in where a sponsor or someone pays the full cost of your registration? Very few sports are like that. And But when we do find them, they're committed for the long term. Very rarely do we see a sponsor come in for one year. They're usually here for 20. Um, but we've seen some new ones since the 200th, and uh, they've stuck with us since then. Um, it does facilitate the ability for almost 70 crews to come down here at no cost to themselves, well, other than their personal commitment and their, their fuel, maybe, or something like that. <laughs> yeah, um, a couple of things. <laughs> but, the, but the sponsors also motivate the rowers, right? Oh, they yeah. get engaged. They, they want to be part of that crew. So the day of a sponsor just writing a check and saying, have fun, that's gone. The sponsors are here today. They're standing on the dock cheering them on the loudest. Um, in terms of the organization itself, we've done very well. Lots of long-term partnerships, much like Rogers, of course. Mm, amazing. And uh, really pleased to see such a turnout from Rogers today. And, of course, uh, your executive are here, too, which oh, is I know. wonderful. Rolling deep. Two years in a row that they I showed know. up, which is they, wonderful. And they love it. And how could they not? I mean, it's such a magical, interesting, rare, special sporting meets garden party event where Absolutely. everyone is coming out to stroll the promenade of the, of the wreath itself. And forgive me while I'm here. This just in. <laughs> Thank you. So let's take a little look here, Brad, because there's so much that we're talking about here, and yet we're talking about the results of race 14 over our shoulder here. Fab Law Office and Martin Surveys and their recorded times. Now, do you know everyone off by heart after all these years, or do you look over your shoulder sometimes and say, oh, I didn't know that crew, or that's a new team? <laughs> like, how does that work for you? Well, that's probably the biggest challenge of being a past president or, or a president or a member of the committee is trying to keep track of 70 crews or more. And I will tell you, back on the 200th when we had 156, um, I spent about 40 hours a week just here on the dock trying to, you know, meet everybody and, and figure out who they all were. But it's almost impossible because there's just so many. Right. You know, we have almost a thousand athletes that, uh, wow. that participate here on a regular basis. That's incredible. It really is. Yeah. So the uh, for race 15, uh, we've got I Design Limited sponsoring this race. I design, love right? them. Under 16 women's, here and we go. uh, we've got shell number one, the CBC. Crew uh, Sorensen School of Dance, Junior Girls, awesome. uh, Cox and Tina Ring, one of our new members of our regatta committee, and uh, Stroke is Maria Lockyer. We've got uh, Chloe Rogers in number five, Brianna Lee in number four, Claire Healy in number three, Cheyenne Field in number two, and Sarah Bennell in number one. And of course, very important to these crews, their spear, of course. Uh, Vanessa Elliott and Sophie Hoff Hawkins, and manager Evelyn Rogers. Boom, here we go. Shell number three, the Seahawk, and it's the crew with the Frontier Subsea. Cox Wayne is Kelly Buse, and the stroke is Claire Colford. Number five, Jane Kirby. We got Catherine Colford, Anna Thomas, Kate Pittman, Violet Avery, the Spear, Allie Ryan, and manager, Claire Avery. I Design, thank you so much for your partnership and support. And now we're watching them roll. Let's go. 30 seconds in at the jog. That's a good time. Good crew. I do note that uh, Frontier Subsea, um, you know, sent in some information about their crew for us. And of course, much like all of our crews, they're involved in soccer, hockey, and skating. Of course. Uh, we really find that rowing is the uh, seems to be the catch-all. You get athletes from every other sport 
and uh, people tell me it's some of the best CrossFit that they, they do uh, throughout the year is yes. come down here and roll. I agree. I mean, listen, you know, it's never just one sport with a lot of these professional athletes. They're active by nature, and I think one helps pay for the other depending on the sport or the activity involved. Absolutely. And this crew in particular, they have uh, they say here that they've uh, jumped out of the boat many times and ran right up to <laughs> King George V to play <laughs> soccer. So that's commitment. That is commitment. You know, it's a discipline, and that, I find, will carry them far in life, especially the younger crews coming up. This is where you cut your teeth. If you're able to get up that early, work that hard, balance all those responsibilities, then life is going to be pretty good for you. Absolutely. And I find that's the, the case with so many of us here around the pond here today. Yeah. Of course, what your viewers are seeing now is the uh, is the crew heading down the pond. And of course, you know, these kids, they're, they're, they're rowing their heart out. There's oh, no know. doubt about that. You know. And don't forget the emotional labor because, yes, there's getting in the boat and there's going up and down that pond, but there's every emotion and moment for months and months leading up to it and over their shoulder after the fact thinking about it what they could have done better and all of the reflection that happened so Absolutely. listen you know there's the thing you do then there's the emotion around that and those girls are giving it all they today. really are and listen a big shout out to the coxswains who are, are steering these crews it's not an easy job you know some people have said to me in the past that uh, you know the coxswain sits there and just turns the rudder no <laughs> it is so much more than that that coxswain right now is watching every single rower every moment that those oars go in the water and of course you know marking their point at the bottom of the pond to make sure that they give us as straight of a race as possible and uh, of course when they turn around that boy you can make it or break it right there no doubt yeah no it's interesting the coxswain's role is quite mysterious do you have to live it to know it in terms of becoming a coxswain well you know it, there's certainly a skill that you have to have um you have to be a leader you have to be willing to uh, you know coordinate your entire team and motivate them and keep them going um, but you know the regatta committee teaches coxswains how, oh, to, how to steer a boat we have a, a group that uh, that work on training we do uh, four or five sessions a year um, we have uh, many of our uh, uh, long-standing committee members who do this training uh, we also have a you know a mentorship program where coxswains uh, meet and talk to one another and support one another but I will say the last number of years we've seen a lot of new coxswains oh, wow. um, we've had you know a bunch that have been here for decades right. uh, but we have had that new generation come up through and actually one of the best turns I saw today was a coxswain who's only been here three years and uh, that speaks volumes. Wow we and it's interesting I think it's important for folks to know and to hear this during our time together is that yo you don't got to have grown up in the water to take a leadership role or a volunteer role exactly. to help this event do its thing because it does take a village to make this happen. It does, absolutely. Now, we've, uh, you know, we have all kinds of families, and when you look at the regatta program and you see some names repeated over and over, uh, you know, Power, Hickey, Cadigan, whatever that might Scattered, be. Scattered, yeah. But when you see new names there, um, you know, you don't have to have that old lineage to be a good rower. You yeah. know, we've had some of the best crews we've had in the pond were new crews. We saw a couple of records broken over the years by a crew that's only rowed once or twice, oh, you know, right. so it's it's phenomenal. And, and it is an easy sport. Down, right? It is, and I, you're right, and I, and I heard that. Once you get into it, you're into it. Absolutely, yeah. There's a lot of technicality to it, and of course, you know, you have to be strong, and you have to, uh, uh, you know, follow the person in front of you, make sure your oar goes in the water at the same time, and right. so on. Uh, but people learn that very easily. And uh, of course, these boats, the way they're built, uh, they're very, very safe. So individuals who may not be able to swim or may be hesitant to uh, go out on the water, they don't have to worry. They're fully safe when they're out there. Um, a funny note, uh, a lot of people don't realize, but these boats don't sink. So if one of those boats was to have a collision or was to take on water, as long as they keep all six oars in the water out straight, the boat will not capsize. And uh, if some of your viewers want to actually look on YouTube and look up Regatta Committee safety training, there are three videos of one of your previous guests, Siobhan Cody, and they sunk a boat about a foot below water and they rowed it back to the, the boathouse. And uh, you know that is, um, it just shows that really anybody can, can go out in the boat. You don't have to be an expert. You don't have to be a swimming pro. Um, and of course, we have all kinds of safety measures here to make sure that people are taken care of. So. God bless you. So we're watching it row, and this, this animal is pulling up to my right. I don't know what we're going to talk about, but I do. So <laughs> much. I don't know either. So much. So let's see here now. Five minutes Can and I 20 seconds. You on the new world? I don't know. Because <laughs> oh it's not like permanent, I don't think. You know, it's like. You see, Wait, are we on? Are we? Okay, what a. 
now. Yeah. And now I would like to take a moment and to welcome the one and only <laughs> Keith Power. Hello. How are you? Good. I'm just realizing I should have put on a bit of self-tanner, but anyway, here I am. Well, but I'm outside a fair bit. Where are you in the basement <laughs> making it all happen, writing it, and singing and dancing? That's exactly where I'm to. So yeah. I want to introduce, you guys know each other as well. Let's all get yeah. this little party going here. Yeah. So I'm so glad you're coming down on behalf of Spirit of Newfoundland Productions, who we love so much here at the Regatta, and it's yeah. a long-standing relationship with. I know, we love you guys too. We've been doing this for many years. I know we also cater to your crew, which is fantastic. I'm sure that all went well this morning and this afternoon. I heard it was a disaster. No, it was fantastic. <laughs> Couldn't heard, have been better. I heard. <laughs> But I'll have to talk to you about everything that happens after. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, I'm joking. Sorry. It's always flawless with you guys and your crew and your team. And 25 plus years. I mean, that's pretty special. It's 27. Oh yeah. My, but who's counting you? Well, not me. I wasn't around back then. Come on now. It's like me. <laughs> hi. Yeah. Exactly. Thank you for that. <laughs> um, but yeah, going strong. And I, you know, every year just keeps getting better and better. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, you probably are aware we had some hiccups this year. So after we sold the Masonic, we um, moved into Gower Street United yes. Church in the lecture hall in the basement. Yes. Um, lovely spot. Just some red tape kind of kept us from going. So we're bouncing around from venue to venue to venue, and seems like there's a there's we're settling now, which is fantastic. That's so great. Yeah, we've had a few shows in there now, a handful of shows, and the space feels good. The energy's yeah. great. Uh, yeah. That's so great. Well, I will tell you that Spirit of Newfoundland Productions has been in many buildings around our city of legends over the uh, many years. Listen, I know, they've developed at least four, maybe even five, from like just empty rooms to beautiful venues that are now thriving with other people. Exactly. Like, look, Tara Bruce is moving into the Masonic yes. Theater, like Spirit was there ages ago, right? And and not only that, not only the development of, of theaters, but we just pop up, El like we've been at the Elks Club, the Bella Vista, uh, Murray's Pond, you know, so many different spots. Not to mention all the hotels that we've, we perform at. Yeah, no, you yeah. guys have done so much in so many spaces. And I think that just demonstrates how um, flexible and valuable the company is in all of the yeah. performance arts and culinary, everything that it goes on. I mean, it truly is a brand about celebrating our province. Oh, and uh, Kathy and Peter, that's like ingrained in their blood is yes. culture, Newfoundland culture. How do we save the culture of our province and the people? I know, and it's through good food, good music, and lots of laughs. Kathy yeah. Hicks is one of the biggest tourism, cultural hospitality. <laughs> uh, she is. She is an advocate. She is an ally. Yeah, oh yeah. And in anything related to those industries, she is at the forefront driving yeah. it forward. What is it like to learn from and be around someone with such passion for your shared love? Well, you should ask her about me. <laughs> no, uh, it's great. I mean, we have the same visions. I've, I've been under their wing now for over a decade, so I have that same sentiment, and it just it just makes you be really proud to be a Newfoundlander, you know? And, and when we do shows to, um, you know, our, our local population is fantastic, but even just to bless the people that aren't from Newfoundland, to see what we're all about and make them want to come back to Newfoundland, you know, and spend their money in our in industry, in our economy. Well, we're going to come right yeah. back and ask you more hot seat questions. Can't but until wait. then, Lori, let's go. Ooh. Hi, I'm with the Senior Women's Championships, and this is Bab Law Offices. And who do we have here today? Uh, I'm Brianna Mercer. Danny Williams Cox. So Leah Mercer. Erica Bott. Brooklyn Forward. Sarah Young. Caitlin Lush. Excellent! So I understand that you've been rowing for several years now. We've been rowing for about four to five years now as a crew. Excellent! Yeah. So how did you form your team? Uh, originally we were all friends in the beginning and then we all decided that it would be fun to make a crew and I have my grandfather who is our coxswain. Oh <laughs> that is excellent! So what do you do for training? How long have you been training together? Uh, we've been training for several months now together and it's more of every night we're in at the pond practicing for about an hour, hour and a half every night. Lots of discipline. A lot. <laughs> so how do you manage that with your social lives and everything? Really, we chat in our group chat every day and we all work around each other's schedules to make a time that we can all make it so we can get our best practice in. That is excellent. So congratulations on winning. So what does winning mean for you? Uh, winning means that we get to show that our coxswain, he can give us the best with the best training that we can possibly get. Absolutely, and what does winning mean for you? Because I know this is more of a family affair. Yeah, of course I love winning. <laughs> like you do? Yeah, and uh, no, I enjoy every minute with them. They're such good listeners. Like, and 
get in the boat and do their thing, and that's it. Excellent. Ask for no better. Excellent. You guys seem like such a great team. So, is there anyone that you wanted to say, uh, you know, a shout out to or say thank you to? Uh, I want to thank you to all of our families and friends that's watching from their TVs at home, on YouTube, on Facebook, and uh, a big thanks, a big um, hi to one of my dad's friends, Brian, who's watching on YouTube right now in Florida or uh, St. Louis. Excellent. Well, that's and the uh, Bab Law Office, our sponsor. We couldn't have done it without them. Excellent. Well, <laughs> of course, our Cox Lenny. Well, congratulations, and we're going to throw it back now to Keith Power, Donnie, and Brad. We're back. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lori. So, Keith, let's Yo. talk summer. Let's talk what's happening. We're, what are we seeing on the Spirit of Newfoundland stage here for the rest of the summer? Let's well, go. Well, I mean, like I just mentioned, we are finally settling down into Gower, which is fantastic. Um, so it is conference season for us, so that keeps us busy in all the hotels, uh, bouncing around for those, which is very important to the industry. Sure. And we have two new shows that are in the mix now. Uh, the first one is our Ultimate Kitchen Party, which is just a good time to come out for anyone who's from here or not from here, especially, uh, to learn about Newfoundland culture, music, a feed of jigs dinner, can't go wrong with that. And we also do screech-ins in the middle of the show. So it's a great chance to bring any of your CFAs um, to our show. CFA is um, Cash from away, come from away. <laughs> I was thinking um, SFW, but I mean, or, or SFA, on, but that's a whole other. No, <laughs> that's a thing. Might be different. I too many acronyms, boys. Too many acronyms. And not enough time. Not enough time. Not enough time. Enough time. <laughs> but I do want to ask you. Yeah. Kitchen party. Yo. The jigs dinner. Yeah. Are we talking peas put up in this? Yeah, yeah. Stop the lies. Of course, there's peas pudding. Because sometimes you know. Oh, listen, that's, that's the real Jigs dinner right there. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Oh, my God, and we even give you a pea soup put... to start. Uh, oh, you wow. don't. I do. What a touting. Can't beat oh, that. Oh. Well, I'll be down. I know, right? <laughs> so that's one show that's been a huge hit. That's uh, it's Keelan uh, Purchase, Natalie Nosley, of course, who you know, and oh, Darren Martin. They, they're they're amazing. fantastic. Dude. I know, he got pipes. Well, he handed the mic over to me from 709. He sang uh, in that band for like eight years. And finally, yeah. he was so busy with his other musical projects in life that he was like, Donnie, it's time to fill in for him a bit. Yeah. He's like, do you want to take over? I was like, 709. Wow. And that's why you don't see them around anymore. <laughs> exactly. Uh. And that's what ended them. No joke. <laughs> they're better than ever with Justin Nurse, actually. Oh, is he part of that now? Yes, he's the oh, lead excellent. singer of them now, yeah. Yeah, all very similar voices. I see how it all works. Well, I'll tell you what, Darren is the king, and he's so sweet and wicked, and his voice is wow. Oh, yeah, for sure. Right. And Justin's up there, too, of, of course. Of course, they're all amazing, jeez. Um, and then uh, the other show that we have besides the kitchen party is the new one. It's um, kind of a, a concert and a um, tribute to all the musical artists that have been over to Newfoundland in the past, like, 30, 40, 50 years, all the way back, like the big names that come here, right? Uh, Tina Turner, Rod Stewart, all the oh, good ones, right? you know, David fun. Bowie, yeah, it's called uh, The Show Must Go On By, which is kind of the sentiment for our it. theater company it. when we were struggling to find a home, you know, sure. we didn't have a home, but the show must go on by, Indeed. and, and it yeah, it's great music, uh, of course, a wonderful meal again by our chef Christian, and uh, obviously it's funny. Paul, you're involved. Yeah, so it's my, that's myself, Kara Noftal, uh, Aaron Windsor, and our newest spirit member, actually, Dan Lasby. I don't I'm not sure if you know Dan. He's no, a great know. guy. Oh, yeah? Very yeah, cool. Fantastic. Listen, you're the octo threat, you know. Octo? You do it all. I know. Yeah. Oh, there's that one, too. Yeah. <laughs> um, what's your favorite? Of what? Of all the things that you do to do the things you do. Oh, interviews with local celebrities. Hello. Well, I mean, working. it takes well. one to know <laughs> one. Uh, everything. I just love sharing my gift and making people laugh. Making uh, people laugh is, is the best part of it, right? Even when I'm not in the scene, if I'm backstage, I'll just be there listening to the audience laugh. And the, the compliment we get all the time, it's like a mix of a complaint and a compliment. It's my cheeks hurt so much, my belly hurts so much. From laughing, and it uh, feels good. Those are the moments in life. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Did you always know that you'd end up in this industry? Um. Yeah. Mm. I thought about it, but yeah, I did. Wow. Yeah, I did. I, well, I went to acting school, and then after that, I just kind of, I, I literally fell into Spirit Newfoundland, and it just like skyrocketed. Well, I mean, let, you know, I'd be remiss if I did not bring up how many mainstay artistic performers have. Oh, Hold yeah. their skills and started off on the Spirit of Newfoundland stage. Oh yeah, we can go on and on and on with the number yeah. of famous hands from this province. Kellyanne Evans is just one of the so many. I know. Uh, and well, Katrina Bromley ended up on Broadway. Hello. You no know, I still deal. picture her back at Nonsense. I know. I love that show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. 
And you guys did another um, installment of that show a while back, but it's been a long time since you've done it ha that. It hasn't been around during my stay. Wow, yeah, that's a so long time. I've never, I've seen videos, but I have never seen it. I think Spirit Newfoundland is yeah. interesting because the original shows um, and the shows that you guys end up doing, you often will end up doing them again years later with new cast and fresh audiences. That's pretty fun. Well, when it's broke, I mean, it was okay. not broke. You don't need to fix it. Yeah, that's true. That. So you know, we just—it's not really recycling, but you just bring back people. Remember them so well, especially when it's been a decade. Our Grinch show, Grinch dressing and gravy. Exactly. So good. Yes. So funny, and people just call every year. Are you doing the Grinch again? Are you doing the Grinch again? It's like yeah. not yet. Maybe soon. Yeah, no, I know, and I yeah. myself had seen that show a few years back and died over it. And oh, again, yeah. Peter in that role uh, when I saw him in it, incredible. Yeah. So, like, what's next? Let's look into the crystal ball of life when it comes to what you do with that company. You know, upcoming shows, upcoming projects. What's the energy? Yeah, I mean, we're just, I think we're just on a trajectory upwards, right? We're just keeping going the best way we know how, bringing in new products. I'm always finding a way to incorporate new talent and just entertain the audiences in newer ways. Yeah, same old thing. That's it's, it's perfect. That's yeah. so great. Yeah, that interesting building down there that you guys are now in has a yeah. history onto itself. Oh, for sure. And a few other tenants are in the mix as well that are very synergetic, like Music and L. Yeah. Love are also in that space too. Yeah, I'm sure within the next few months uh, we'll see some kind of partnerships develop with sure. all the people in that building. It's just, it's too good not to. Because the conversation always in the shadows about, um, you know, more categories for awards and and you guys yes you sing the famous broadway and hit tunes that we all know from around the world and some of the shows that you do but there's also a serious original creation component to oh, spirit of sure. land that i feel in many field deserves more recognition and attention as a genre yeah i know it's it's insane so over the years we have brought on other shows like nonsense is not our show i love your perfect now change um is another one and there's a few more yeah. but there's over 90 original productions that spirit wow. of has written wow. and done yeah i mean you're looking at me like that i might be wrong but i don't think i am it's That's it's amazing. it's upwards of or over 90. yeah it takes a lot of work to write a show it's it's a lot it's a, it's a village of people you know come together of course most of our shows feature our band which is like some of the best musicians oh, in town of course. yes yeah give me some of those names boomer stamp hello sandy morris Boom. you know bill brennan Pal. brad jefford oh, uh, evan smith they're all amazing. Yeah, Frank Rosari has been with us forever. Oh, yeah, and a lot yeah, of them are still are working on Come From Away and Gander now. Oh, is that right? Well, we have Frank Rosari, our bassist, Evan Smith, uh, Shelley Neville, of course, and Peter Halley are all working with Come From Away right now. An amazing production. Yeah. I just saw yeah. it last week. You did? What a wonderful show. Well, I went out to see it, and it got canceled. Ah. But anyway, I'm rescheduled. <laughs> yeah. Well, this was my sixth time. Oh, yeah? Four, four times on Broadway. And Whoa. the one in Gander was the best. I didn't know you had so much money. <laughs> well Rash, or you know. And the one in Gander was the best. The one in Gander Fabulous. was the best. It, it was it was touching to see our own people on stage performing. Yeah. It was amazing. Of course, we had Katrina in, in the, on Broadway. Yeah. But to see Peter and the others there, it was absolutely amazing. I gotta wow. say. I bet you it's the best rendition of accents. <laughs> Absolutely, 100%. Yeah. Nobody plays uh, the mayor of Gander, Claude Elliott, like Peter Halley. Yeah, well, I read in the uh, the Toronto Star had a review out, and they sang Peter's accolades. Indeed, they did, in that. and rightfully so. Yeah, Well, Excellent. I'll be singing your accolades now for the rest of the day and beyond. I hope so. If we don't mind. No, I'll hear you from the other side of the lake. Grand. When I'm watching the boats, is it? Yeah, boats, exactly, right? yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hilarious. A real enthusiast. Yeah. Guys, no. we're taking a two-minute break. We'll be right back. We are down at the pond, living our best lives, and we'll be right back after this. Focused Thanks, on guys. quality and convenience, there isn't much you won't find at Marie's Mini Mart. Homestyle bread, sandwiches, plus a variety of artisan breads and delicious single-serve desserts available exclusively at our Frecker Drive location. Marie's Mini Mart, with 25 locations wherever you go, there we are. Backyard Bartender is returning for another season. I'm your host, Brian O'Connell, and this season we're going on the road and visiting some unique, historical, and members-only clubs in St. John's. We'll explore great wines and cocktails and make a few unusual drinks, some of which have almost been lost to history. Join me for another season of Backyard Bartender as we drop in on some interesting bars in your backyard, this season on Rogers TV. I'm Carl Wells, getting ready to record another edition of Carl Wells Point to Point. It's a program where I chat with members of our community and they talk candidly about their lives and careers from their earliest dreams to their greatest triumphs. I think you'll find it informative and entertaining. Please join us for Carl Wells Point to Point 
right here on Rogers TV. Come share in the joy and laughter with Spirit of Newfoundland as they celebrate 25 wonderful years. Join your favorite spirit performers as they toast a quarter century of fun, food, and fantastic music. For ticket information and upcoming events, check out spiritofnewfoundland.com or phone 579-3023. Spirit of Newfoundland, a proud sponsor of the Royal St. John's Regatta on Rogers TV. We are back. Welcome, everybody. We are Pond Side. And growing up watching this telecast every year, it's full circle moment that we're sitting here. And speaking of growing up, it's my boy, Brad Power, deeply involved in the regatta. Tell us the highlights for the people at home, my friends. We can all say, whoa. Well, Donnie, we've got, uh, you know, almost 20 races today, uh, about 30,000 people around Kitty Vinny Lake. It's not too warm. All the vendors are open, selling their fear. It's a wonderful day here at Kitty Vitty Lake. Wowee. And tell me now, just for the reminders and the first time tuners inners, talk to me about your history and what makes you so excited to be here today. Well, you know, I, I certainly grew up on the pond and, uh, you know, looking at the next race that's coming up, you know, these are people that I know and I've, I've seen these names. Well, let's, let's play the game. As an example. Let's right? talk about race 16. It's Robotha Mackay Marshall and the seniors women's race. Shell number one, Smith Stockley two, and the crew TNT Clarence Factory with the coxswain Lenny Williams stroke Jennifer Hearn. We're gonna count them down. Melanie Bishop, Tara Walters, Tara Green, Regan Reynolds, Samantha Clark, and the manager Lenny Williams. Lenny Williams playing a few roles here now. Shell three, the Stroke of Power, Chinese Association of Newfoundland and Labrador is the crew. Our cox is Richard Bailey. Our stroke is Jing Yu. And then Heijin Tan, Na Li, Yang Tu, Shishan Liu, and Tab Ro Zhu. And then we have the Spear, Hayuk Lai, and Mai Jai, if I'm right, and the manager, Richard Bailey. Now, I'd like to be evaluated personally in this. This is my own race, was to do that correctly. So I don't know how the results will fare, but I think that it's being judged right now. Absolutely. And listen, it's worth noting, this is the first uh, uh, Asian all-Chinese wow. ladies team uh, here at Kitty Vitty Lake. That's amazing. So big congratulations to them, and of course, the support from the Chinese uh. Association of Newfoundland and Labrador. And uh, you know they got a great coxswain, Rich Bailey, one of the best on the pond. Is that true? They're very lucky well, there. You must know who is who in the zoo of coxswains. Hey? Oh, without a doubt, without a doubt. But before we get into that, how about the results from the last race? Let's do it. Because they had some good times. This was the uh, I Design Limited Under 16 Women's Race, and uh, we had uh, the uh, two crews, Sorensen School of Dance, Junior Girls, and Frontier Sub C. Uh, the winners were Frontier Sub C under the direction of Kelly Bust, and they rode six minutes, nine seconds, and 92. And then uh, the uh, Tina Ring, who, uh, who uh, uh, coxed the Sorensen School of Dance, they came in, came in at uh, six minutes and 31 seconds, 0.84. There are some good times. Wow, we. And it's true, you know, and the conditions on the pond today have so much to say about what happens, and I wonder what you think about the weather today as it compares to ideal conditions. The easiest thing to say, it's perfect. This is great <laughs> for rowers, it's great for vendors. You don't want it too sunny, you don't want it too warm. This is an excellent day. That's great, I'm so glad to hear it. And now we're here now watching it all go down and the ladies giving it all out there, making it happen. And you know what I will say, high level looking in on the pond, it's the color coordination, and it's the le athleisure wear, and it's the fashion. Absolutely. And I wonder how the teams feel when they get a sponsor who comes out to pocket to give them the quality wardrobe for this day. I mean, well, it does help with the performance. I got to believe it. They are so proud to wear those uniforms, the, uh, the days <laughs> leading up to the race, and one of the best uh, images is uh, one of the best pictures is when they stand on the dock and they get the box of all the material and they start putting on their hats and their shirts and everyone's so proud to wear them for the first time and of course sponsors invest a lot of money into this so thank you so much it's true and we're getting a message now from our girl and we're going to see what she has to say to us so we can pass that right along to you we're going to throw soon to our girl Lori and the under 16 should we do it now we're going to go Lori take it away Hi, and welcome back, and I'm with the U16 winners, Frontier Sub-C, and who do we have here today? 
Claire, Kate, <laughs> Catherine, Violet, Jane, Anna, Allie. Excellent. Well, congratulations, guys. And so tell me, what does winning mean to all of you? Let's go through. It means a, <laughs> um, it means a lot. Uh, we trained hard for it. <laughs> So how hard do you guys train? What did you guys do? We were out here almost every day in the week and ate it in the mornings and nights and just like not stop growing. Oh wow, and you guys are so young. So how has training affect you guys and your social life? Oh, like I've had to cancel a lot of plans. <laughs> I would imagine so. <laughs> yeah, we like had like, yeah, we had to be here. <laughs> like I like it though. So. Good. And are you guys all friends? And yeah, oh, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, we're all friends. Yeah. So I practice. You guys hang out and do a bunch. Of, yeah. So, yeah. what's your favorite non-rowing pastime? Um, um, hanging out with my friends. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Like, Kate talked to me. Oh yeah, maybe swimming. Yeah, swimming. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. So that is great. So you guys are very young. So how old are you? Fourteen. So how did you guys form your team? Um, we were all a soccer team, and so we just kind of took our little friend group and made a like rowing team. Half of us quit though, but we still <laughs> like to row. <laughs> so, uh, did any of you row before today? Yeah. yeah, we've been rowing for four years. Four years! Wow. So basically, what are you guys now? Are you guys going to stay at the lake? Are you guys going to have some fun? Probably stay at the lake, play some games. Probably hang out in our mom's beer tent. Yeah. yeah, we're gonna hang out at ten. Maybe, maybe go get some food. Like, hang out, have fun. Yeah. What's your favorite vendor? Uh, <laughs> fries. <laughs> Snow cone place. Um, pond candy. Oh. All great places. So again, congratulations. And is there anyone that you would want to say hello or do a shout out to? Our sponsor. Yeah. My parents. dad. <laughs> and parents. My family. My dad and my mom. Uh, my dog. <laughs> my, my, my brother. Just my family. That is family. Yeah, that is excellent. Well, you guys have been so much energy and everything is. So, you know, thank you so much and congratulations. And we're going to go back to Donnie. Thank you. Yeah. Hello. And we're back. Thank you so much. <laughs> There's a VIP happening off camera for everybody tuning in, making it all happen. Thank you so much. Michelle, you are the queen. So Brad, we're back here now and we're getting ready. We just talked about the high level of what's going on with this Robotham Mackay Marshall race. And what are we seeing? What is going down? Well, we've, uh, we're seeing right now the uh, TNT clearance factory um, making it to the uh, marquee dock. They're about, uh, about a minute and a half out from the finish line at this stage at about 5.16 is their unofficial time. Okay. Um, talk about great drone footage. Hey, uh, shout out to, uh, it. to the team that are making this happen. Yes. Donnie and his team are doing great up there. But the, uh, if it wasn't for this uh, drone footage, we wouldn't be able to see as, uh, as much as we do in that boat. But this crew is doing great. They're working their backsides off. Wow, look at them go. <laughs> And once they, uh, of course, the uh, we mentioned earlier, this is a two-boat race, and uh, the uh, Association of, uh, Ch uh, sorry, Chinese Association of Newfoundland and Labrador right. supported the other team. Now, of course, there's a fair number of boat lengths between them, but let's keep in mind the uh, the other team is completely novice. This is their wow. first year. So great. And uh, I heard an interview earlier this morning with the Coxon and, uh, and a member of the regatta committee, and they mentioned about the, the first day that this crew went on the pond. It took them about 20 minutes just to get from the dock over to the marquee. That's not a long distance. That's usually 30 or 40 seconds for someone else. But then after two or three spins, they settle right in, and now they're doing great. Well, I'm so happy to see, and I'm so happy to hear about this entrance into the regatta. And I think that's really great for the regatta and also great for them to really feel included in one of our oldest sporting events, Absolutely. the oldest. We, we've seen a lot of diversity in this sport over the last number of years and it's great to see. Of course, we have a much more diverse population here in St. John's. We are lucky and, for that. And uh, we're so glad to see those individuals coming down and participating in this 200 plus year old organization. I think it's important for us as a, a, a place, a province to go out of our way to really do outreach versus waiting for what comes in terms of opportunities um, to embed more folks into the tapestry of what we do in any regard sporting events cultural and beyond so this to me is so great to see yeah. 
And uh, you know, we've uh, we also had an initiative here just a couple of years ago with Able Sale Newfoundland and Labrador. And uh, through that partnership, we saw a lift installed uh, on our dock to allow persons with disabilities to row. Oh, wow. So uh, we are really expanding here, and with the support of all kinds of community partners like Able Sail and Inclusion NL and others, um, they've been doing a fantastic job with making this sport as accessible as possible. So I agree. Very proud of that. The work that Inclusion NL is doing, Kathy and her crew, ever growing, Absolutely. is unbelievable. So needed, so appreciated. <laughs> This, uh, what your viewers or what our viewers are seeing now, of course, is Rich and uh, and his crew. Here they come. And uh, they're coming up past the penitentiary. In the last uh, 30 or 40 seconds of the race. I'm so glad that they've completed it, and they came in on the right side of the boy. That's there excellent. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> now you look at them. Yes, cheer, girls. Good for them. This uh, race was sponsored by Rebotha Mackay and Marshall, and uh, big shout out to uh, Steve and all the team over there yes. for supporting the go or no go call at 5:45 this morning. Oh wow! They've been big supporters of the regatta, so a big shout out to Steve. Of course, also a Luggy Bay boy. Oh uh, yes, so. I know. Isn't it amazing? Because you know, and going back to it for a moment, the history of what we are able to enjoy. I wonder what types of numbers. Outer Cove, uh, Luggy Bay Middle Cove, you know, are putting into the regatta in terms of crews because, you know, getting new crews to enter the regatta, as you said earlier in our hang, is definitely a commitment, but it seems to be on the rise. It is indeed. We've, uh, there's at least 12 crews that have come out of our community this year. That's what I can count, and there may be even more. Um, and of course, we have crews where, you know, at least one representative from Middle Cove or from Outer Cove. Right. Um, but again, they're, they're working, they're working very, very hard. They're, uh, you know, carrying the, the tradition forward. And, uh, and of course, they're enjoying themselves. And that's what it's all about. Indeed, absolutely. Yeah. It's all that and more. And the opportunity to come together with an entire community of rowers. I mean, what is that community like? And is there a party that goes down? <laughs> like, how do we all get together post hustle for well, the celebration? The, the party will be after the championship race, I suspect. I won't say where because we don't want to uh, despoil the fun <laughs> for those that know. Uh, but uh, yes, listen, it's an enormous community down here. Rowers that support rowers, coxswains that support coxswains, and uh, of course, you know, every evening uh, after the last spin, you see people gathered, you know, holding a little caucus over in the corner, and uh, and teaching one another and and mentoring, and that's really what it's all about. Um, the, one of the greatest sights that I saw a couple of years ago was a senior men's crew, um, and of course, we'll reference this crew in the next race. But it was a senior men's crew that took a novice crew and brought them over and started teaching them the technique that they hadn't picked up on their own. Oh wow! They spent almost two hours on the dock together. And those kids walked away with the biggest smiles on their faces. It was absolutely amazing, and they learned so much. Well, it reminds me of the mentor program that you mentioned earlier that you guys offer, and that is something worth noting to the viewers, that if you are interested to taste and see what it's like to be a part of all of this, there are many ways into the sport. It doesn't have to be like hopping into a cold shower. It can be one foot at a time, thanks to all the programs and services offered by the Royal regatta committee absolutely the uh, chevron learn to row program very active program that's amazing uh, we have a wonderful uh, individual who coordinated that for us this year i think we've had uh, a handful of crews that went through a handful of rowers and of course you know they usually come back next year and uh, that's what it's about sustaining the support right? indeed absolutely so now i'm looking at my list here and i'm looking forward to what is coming up next what do we think we have ahead of us now over the next few minutes brad well, you know, we have um, a lot of the, uh, you know, under 16, under 14 races. Um, a big, uh, big thing that we find here is that the uh, number of crews in these categories continues to grow. And, of course, that bodes well for the future of, of the sport. Right? Sure. And, uh, you know, a, a big, a big shout out to all the coxswains that, uh, that step up and take these crews when they, they've had nobody else. Right? Can I take a moment to draw our viewers' attention to the savage barbecue that is up for grabs? you got to visit the Rogers booth. Just over here by us, we're pond side. We're right by the boathouse, right where you want us to be. It's top of the pond. Uh, and then go visit Facebook at Rogers TV. St. John's, and you might be able to get yourself that. Thank you so much to Home Depot for what you do to give this out on behalf of Rogers. So again, top of the pond, check out the booth, and you could walk away with the King Grill, baby. So don't be afraid. And I think that's part of what we love here at Rogers TV is being down by the pond, engaging with the folks, all the folks that help make this happen and volunteer on the day of. It's pretty special. Well, it's, it's like an army. There are so many Rogers volunteers here today. It's wonderful to see, and a big shout-out to all of them. They're working so hard behind the scenes. They are indeed, and I will say, 
say that you know the entire Rogers community uh, is so incredible and of course out of the fog is what brings me to hang out here for the most part today and I do love so much having wicked folks like you guys and all sorts of organizations offering interesting experiences to the province to come on that show we start taping in September so if anyone is watching here this evening and they have something cool they want to talk about we are the place where local matters and come check us out and our little shout out as well we want to give to Steel Hotels and Spirit of Newfoundland who helped the regatta out in a big way and they are very deep into the Rogers family and we thank them so much for everything that they are doing to help this regatta go down today. Absolutely. So, so we've got race 17 coming up. They're getting ready. Or maybe, yeah, this is race 17. So yeah, we're taking it in, and if you don't mind, I'll give it a go. Race 17, Cineplex, under 14 men's race. Shell, number three, the Seahawk. Crew, number 10, clothing crew. Coxon, Mackenzie Farrell, and Stroke, Max Steele. We have Caleb Murphy, Ewan Colford, Jonah Murphy, Ethan Cole, and Ben Moland, and the Spear, Andrew Walsh. And the manager, hello, the queen herself, <laughs> Sheena <laughs> McCrate, another classic hand from uh, back in the day. Absolutely. So great to see her there. And you want to take this one over? Certainly. So in uh, shell number five is the Marine Institute. Uh, the Marine Institute, and of course the crew's name is Case Construction. Mm -hmm. uh, Coxon, Darren Hyde. Uh, Stop it. No, another Outer Cove, uh, uh, well-accomplished <laughs> rower, best way to put it, Hall of indeed, Famer. Indeed. Um, and Darren's been doing a great job with these yes. crews. He really has. Uh, stroke is Nick's, Nicholas Hounsel. We've got number five, Ryan Piercy. Uh, number four, Thomas Webb. Number three, Anderson McGraw. Number two, Finton Warren. Number one, William Lake. Uh, they've got two spears, Seth Broderick and Nathan Cal. And of course, uh, Darren is their coach, but a big shout out to Jackie Hyde, who manages the team. Unreal. The Hydes and rowing. I mean, let's, let's talk about it, they right? They are synonymous with rowing. You know, Darren has had so many crews over the years and so many championship races. Uh, by far, one of the most accomplished rowers here in this province. And our time in. Race 16, official results, TNT Dynamite at 7 minutes and 11 seconds. And the Chinese Association women's team is in at 8 minutes and 6 seconds. That is a very respectful time, a respectful time for a brand new for crew. For a brand new Big crew, congratulations amazing. to both of them. And the smiles on their faces. Listen, I want to take a tech while we're getting up for this next race and talk about uh, another cultural institution happening Indeed. in our city of legends. It's the 38th annual George Street Festival. And if I say that one more time in the next 24 hours, I mean, I'm very lucky to have a relationship with that association who is so focused on putting off incredible events in the heart of our downtown, under the stars, watching your favorite local and international artists take the stage and wow the crowd. It is a special scenario onto its Self, my uh, friends. You've got to be tired. It's been a long week. Well, I'll tell you, you know, my favorite thing is to be awesome and be gone. So I'm not going to be dancing <laughs> on the bar till 4 a.m. I'm in bed getting ready for the 5 a.m. call, you know. But I will say that to be down there with friends and family and visitors and to watch their faces as they walk our little street, it feels good. Indeed. And you're looking forward to tonight's show? Oh, Third Eye Blind with go. Nick Earl and the Reckless Hearts getting it started and Matt Mays in the between. Very excited. Classic classic night ahead and it's the last night of our seven night festival so if you didn't get a chance to check out the George Street Festival this year by all means hop on the social medias and go onto the website and follow us in our email marketing and get ready because we have a lip sync battle happening later in August featuring our top drag performers going head to head a la lip sync for your life RuPaul energy cool. and they're walking away with huge prizes from that night so you want to check us out to find out about the lip sync battle August 26th and then of course there's Mardi Gras and there's the back to school weekend which we're going to have a DJ battle on the street so it's always offering something special we might maybe do a little uh, regatta George Street collab at some point, you know? You know? It's the uh, trifecta of the tourism season. Indeed. George Street Festival, Newfoundland Library Folk Art Society doing the Folk Festival, and of course, regatta. Yes. And uh, that is the pinnacle of our tourism it's season, true. those three events. Those are the three events that bring in the crowds from outside the city, out of their houses if you live in it. It's fantastic. So please, George Street, check it out. So here we are. We're starting to see all the crews line up at the uh, starting line for race number 17, the Cineplex under 14 men's race. Uh, one of the crews you see there now is uh, Cajones, and uh, under the uh, direction of uh, Cox and Mike Rudowski, these, uh, these, these folks have worked very, very hard. I've seen some of them practice myself, and uh, I'm really looking forward to the outcome of this race. 
here we go. And certainly worth noting that uh, the uh, in the Seahawk, uh, the number 10 clothing crew, this is a crew that's been sponsored by the Ron Cadigan Foundation. Oh, wow. Now that is special with. to hear. Yep. They are a uh, first year crew from Outer Cove. And a uh, big uh, shout out to uh, Daniel Cadigan and James Cadigan and Barb and all the family for uh. supporting this crew this year. And uh, of course, Mackenzie Peril is, uh, is cocking them and uh, doing a wonderful, wonderful job. You know, these, these boys, very similar to many of the other crews, they're involved in absolutely everything, but they've made time to come down here to Kitty Vitty Lake this year and carry forward a tradition that many of their parents and family have. And uh, again, James and Daniel Cadigan, some of the biggest supporters of the Royal St. John's Regatta. You can't get better. And, you know, the boys, even in their careers now, show how they were raised and the values they got. And as a member of that uh, Cadigan Kinsella family, it makes me proud to see them doing what they do. Absolutely. To honor their father's memory via this. So true, so true. Donnie, while uh, your, our viewers are looking at the start of this race, some people ask the question, what is that green keg on yeah. the top of the pond? So the rules of the regatta, when you finish your race, you have to come in on the right-hand side of the keg of which you're assigned. Okay. So of course that means that number five comes in between five and four, and four between four and three, and so on. Right. But number one has all that extra space. So we put the green keg there to make sure that they come in at the same uh, same space as the other crews. A lot of people have asked me that question, so I thought I'd tell the viewers that Well, today. the more you know, you know? And they're off. And now it's impossible to tell in the first minute what is going to go down? When, Brad, do you start to get an impression visually that someone's going to get ahead and, and take it all? When, is there an energy or is it just the optics? Well, th that's a really great question that you ask because it, it's something that a lot of people are not sure of. They, they think that, you know, crews that come out fast and strong at the beginning are going to win the race, but that's not always the case. Um, you know, once you become between the boathouse and the marquee, that's a key indicator there on who's ahead. But it all depends on that turn. So when they turn that keg, you know, if you have a good turn, you can pull ahead a couple of boat lengths. And uh, we saw that just uh, two or three races ago, uh, a crew that posted a really great time in time trials, but had a poor turn today. Mm -hmm. And uh, they ended up uh, coming second in the race when in fact they won time trials by almost 20 seconds. That's wild. So uh, the real indicator is on the way back when they pass the jog, uh, which is the uh, where we put the boats out at the boathouse. And usually between there and the marquee, you can tell who's ahead. Uh, but you know, that last minute of rowing, anybody can win. And uh, if you're within a boat length or a boat length and a half at the most, uh, you know, you can pull it together in those last 30 or 40 seconds and, and win a race. Well, I've seen it all turn around on a dime over the years of being down at the pond, and there were some sure things that ended up coming in dead last, and some brand new ones you had no idea about that ended up taking the gold. Exactly. And I think exactly. that's one of the most special things about being down here at the pond and engaging with the races beyond the garden party aspects and all the booths and contributors and the fanfare of it all. It is what is happening on that water. Absolutely. By the moment could turn like that. Indeed. Now, of course, the three crews that we see here now are very, very close, maybe a you know half boat They're length in the difference close. between them. Uh, two minutes uh, at that point is a good time for uh, an under 14 crew. And uh, of course, viewers can also see the, the safety boats and the judges that are out on the water today. Big shout out to them at the bottom of the pond, making sure everything uh, stays, uh, stays in order. Now, what and kind of skills and talents do you got to have to be out in that boat? Well, first of all, you need to know how to drive a boat. <laughs> as simple as that. Well, I'm out. Uh, but no, actually, in fact, uh, the vast majority of individuals that uh, become judges here uh, or on the safety boats are usually seasoned regatta committee okay. members. Uh, individuals that have certain types of emergency training or skills that they can bring to bear. Of course. Um, but, uh, you know, we, uh, the regatta committee is a, a very um, diverse group. Uh, we have everything from uh, lawyers and engineers to teachers, nurses, we have a couple of doctors, there's all kinds of professions. And uh, we have people who row and individuals that have not rowed. Uh, we have individuals that have rowed today, which makes a little bit of a challenge having to move people around to accommodate a bit of a break. But we're so proud to see our own committee members out in that pond uh, enjoying themselves and supporting the sport. And, and from multiple boats as well. Yeah. Absolutely. So, of course, these under 14 rates, uh, races are what we used to call the squirt races years ago, the, the, right? the uh, squirt male and squirt female races. And, uh, of course, they only row a uh, quarter course. So they finished at the bottom just moments ago okay. and uh, had a, a time of about uh, 308, 309. And uh, I'm sure that they are exhausted down there now. That, that's, a, that's a tough race for, for young kids. I know, exhausted. When the camera was close up, you saw 
that they were giving it. Yeah, absolutely. So great. And of course, uh, you know, in the uh, interest of being as safe as possible here at Kitty Vitty, uh, under 14 wear life jackets. It's the only crew that uh, that wear life jackets. Okay. Um, coxswains wear life jackets on uh, practice days. And of course, our safety boats have all kinds of extra life jackets in the event something happens. Um, but uh, of course, for added safety for these young kids, we want to make sure they get back uh, back to the dock. So we uh, put uh, life jackets onto them. Been supported by a number of organizations in those purchases mm. last number of years. Oh, wow. But um, we've uh, been very lucky that we have had very few incidents here, and uh, safety is paramount to with everything we do. But right from the get-go, the first thing we tell a crew is you know how to disembark the boat and how to uh, to row properly so that they won't get in trouble. And uh, so it's, uh, it's something that they start right from the beginning. Oh, look, showing us what's what. And there we are. <laughs> uh, yes, it's interesting, just to go back to the drone technology piece, how much of an enhancement has that technological, artistic capability been to not only the marketing and promotion and fanfare of what we're putting on the TV, but also to accuracy and those split here Indeed. judgments. Indeed. So we, the drone has made, uh, played a major role in us uh, monitoring the uh, the use of our boats and, and monitoring the races to ensure that they, they go off according to the rules and so on. Um, the biggest piece of technology that we brought in here over and above the drone is the electronic timing system on top of the pond. Oh, yes. And uh, this was supported, I believe, by Nalcor years ago. Okay. And uh, Carl Burt, former regatta committee member, was instrumental in, uh, in supporting us and getting that. Uh, but essentially it's a camera that sits on top of the uh, the timing tower at K on the top of the lake and everything while we still have people with stopwatches right you'll always see that at Kitty Vitty Lake uh, we depend heavily on this electronic system and uh, we've had uh, crews come down to less than 0 0.02 of a second in the difference and that camera gets them perfect wow it's amazing yes yes as long as technology exists we can all watch each other and uh, everyone will stay inside the lines yep. and society will be amazing <laughs> <laughs> so what viewers are seeing now of course is the uh, the top of the pond near the uh, cemetery and um, our shuttle uh, of, for the week, Metrobus, they've been a big supporter of ours, oh, yeah? so big thank you to all the work they're doing. And uh, we've got uh, lots of people walking around, enjoying the day. One thing I love to off in the chair, taking was, a nap, I mean, I was, he's loving his life. I was about to say, that's the one thing I love the most, is people who set up for the entire day, they sit back and they love it. Listen, can we not lose our minds over the return of the Oz FM boombox? <laughs> I biked by it on my way here, and I stopped and just laughed, because that was in our childhood. It was, it was. You didn't know that there was an event happening until that boombox came through. Absolutely. It was so crazy, but now I'm bigger now, so it looks smaller to it me. Does, yeah. But as a child, it was like this triple-decker scenario. Yeah, you know. yeah, I passed by that a couple a couple of years ago out on Logie Bay Road, and I had to take a second look because <laughs> I couldn't believe it was there. Oh, that's amazing! Yeah. Well, the history of things, you know. <laughs> now let's see who's going on, getting their fashion on the go with the hot pink and black. And that, this is the color commentatorship I'm here for. <laughs> this is TNT <laughs> Clearance Factory and uh, Lenny Williams it. and his crew being presented their medals by uh, Gail Malone, our first female president. Oh, wow. That's and uh, one of our newest committee members, Justin Garrett. OK. And these are folks, of course, are the winners of Race 16. And how many volunteers and folks did you say again come together to make this a thing? Well, you know, between 50 and 60 individuals. Oh, but there's all kinds of service providers of and, of course, the staff over and above that. Um, it's, it's a big, big organization and a lot of touch points and, uh, of course, a lot of dedicated people. Uh, you know, the staff yesterday were here at 5 o'clock. They didn't leave till almost 9 o'clock yesterday evening and, of course, showed up again 4.45 this morning. Bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, ready to go. Well, I hope they take the day off tomorrow. Oh, they'll get a couple of days off. They deserve <laughs> it. They deserve it. Uh, big round of applause. Yes, we love that for them. Good job. Now, how many years, I wonder, have they been involved? And I guess some team members go from crew to crew, or do you typically stay in one for the long game? How does that work? Well, no, it, in fact, uh, you know, individuals go from crew to crew. We see that quite commonly. But there are a lot of crews that have been together for numerous years. They've, they've been together for 10 or 12 years. I know uh, there's at least a half dozen crews today that have been here close on 10 or 15 years. And, uh, and those folks are true diehards, right? They, everything they do is regatta. Wow. They, uh, from the 1st of April right up until October, they, they think about nothing but. And uh, it's a, a complete change in lifestyle to, uh, to jump into this sport because uh, you know some of the championship crews years ago would joke that they wouldn't drink a beer from January 1 until October 1. And uh, once they came off the pond, uh, they would still not drink because there was still a fall regatta or fall races that they wanted to compete for. Right. So, Unreal. Oh, we're going to stand by here and throw back to our girl Lori in the winner's circle. Take it away. 
in a few minutes. Not now. We could never do that now. So I'll tell you what, it's had a great time so far for me, and I am looking forward to the next races as well. And when is the championship race, I wonder? Championship races tonight at uh, 6 and 6.30, I believe. I've got to double check this. Looks. I think it's usually Sorry, around 6, six yeah? 6.30 and 7. Six oh. So the men's championship 6.30 and women's at 7. Well, don't go anywhere. But for now, we're going to go somewhere. Back to our girl, Lori. Check it out. The All Comer Seniors Women's uh, Team and this TNT. So I'm with Sam today. Samantha Clark. Yeah. Sam. Sam. Nice to meet you, Sam. And who are the rest of the team? Uh, Lenny Williams, Cat. Jennifer Hearn. Melanie Bishop. Reagan Reynolds. Tara Walters. Tara Green. Excellent and congratulations. So how long have you guys been rowing together? Uh, two years. We have two new people with us. But two years. Excellent. So what do you do for training to get to where you are? Because clearly what you're doing is working because you won. Well, our Cox, Lenny Williams, pushes us pretty hard. We don't miss a night on the lake or a morning. Excellent. Yeah, every day. Excellent. So what does winning mean to you? Um, this has meant a lot. It's been incredible. You know, we've worked very hard ever since May. We've been in our toques and our hats and our mittens, and um, we haven't missed a day. So the hard work has paid off. That is excellent. So, you know, is there anyone that you want to do a shout out today to, or someone that you want to say thank you to? Certainly our cops. I mean, Lenny has pushed us every day, and he gets up early with us. He stays till sun down with us, and our sponsor, um, Carol Ann and Neil Saunders. They've been fabulous. They come to watch us for practice. They're here today cheering us on. They've outfitted us, so we're very thankful to TNT Clarence. And I'm loving the pink. Pink is my favorite color, so I'm loving that. And now we're going to go back to Donnie. Thank you so much. We are back. Thank you so much. And that winter circle got me wondering some things. So I'm going to ask you all about that. What's happening over there with that beautiful winter circle that we see? So this was a legacy project for our 200th anniversary. And uh, one of the guests earlier, Charles Cook, was uh, instrumental in, in coordinating this with all levels of government. Um, this is, of course, our newest winter, cir winter circle. We, we spent years down on the back of the boathouse trying to cram you know, a couple <laughs> of hundred people in down there yes. and give them some medals. And, it, it never ever worked properly. We could never get good pictures. You know, family were, you know, five or ten feet back and could never really see the rowers. So, of course, Charles and the 200th committee decided to uh, work with uh, Trek Consulting. They are incredible. They Neil Da. Neil and his team are wonderful. He took and me on a walk around the concourse a while back that he developed heavily. Indeed. Taught me a lot. Absolutely. No, he's one of the best. And uh, supported by the city of St. John's, the provincial government, and the federal government, um, it was only uh, a couple of days before the regatta that it was actually completed. Wow. And we're so proud of it. It's, uh, it's of course, the highlight here at the boathouse now. It's so beautiful. And it lights up at night, so if people come down, come down in the evening at dusk and see how beautiful it looks. That's so incredible. Indeed. Yes, and I know he has done such great work and placemaking, as uh, folks may know, viewing this show. Indeed. It is a growing movement, and it's a growing priority in all the civic arenas, and you know all about that from the municipal life you live. Absolutely, right? absolutely. So, of course, uh, race 17 just finished, and uh, we've got the results. So the uh, winners were uh, in the Shell NTV network, uh, Cajones Rowing Crew with Mike Radofsky. Their time was 2 minutes, 58 seconds. We had uh, second place, number 10 clothing crew with Mackenzie Perrell's team, 3 minutes and 4 seconds. And uh, Case Construction Rowing, the Marine Institute, under Darren Hyde's direction, uh, 3 minutes, 7 seconds. What great times for these young people. Great times. Good job, everybody. And I'm sure you guys viewing at home or watching it all go down with the footage that we're showing you. Or you might be wanting to say, maybe I will head down. Is it ever too late? Never, never. This place will be going until at least 8 or 9 o'clock tonight. Sure. The beer tent is open till late, so feel free to drop down and check out Kitty Vitty Brewery and Crown and Anchor Beer. Well, I know my DJ buddies are over spinning in that tent, and my boy Slim Macho is about to hit it, so I yeah, cannot cool. wait to check that out. Because the beer tent, I mean, listen, it's a part of it all. It truly is, and it was one of the biggest parts that people missed during the COVID year. Yes. And uh, very excited to see the partnership evolve with the Regatta Committee and Kitty Vitty Brewery, and uh, in particular, uh, numerous other breweries throughout the province. Exactly. Um, you know, big shout out to, uh, to Justin Fong and his team. They spent countless hours here this week getting that tent set up, and the place was full when I looked down there earlier. Oh, and it will be full, yes. It will indeed. <laughs> yes, checking it all out here now.
So, I mean, ultimately, we're looking through the book here, and as someone who works in the arena of communications, sponsor appreciation comes in many forms. And getting the information ready for the print date required, I mean, that's its own effort. It is indeed. But it takes so many different things to make this event promotion happy because yeah. you think that everyone knows about the regatta, but some folks maybe do not know. That's right. So what kind of efforts do you guys feel that you put in as a, you know, a royal committee to help really get the word out about how special this event is? Well, we have a, an enormous communications plan. It's an annual plan, something that we, uh, we work on. Um, you know, we've got uh, a lot of individuals that spend a lot of time making sure that the program is completed, that all the ads and everything are out, all the collateral is on the boathouse, uh, wonderful signage and all that stuff. But we can eval we can jump into that further if you want to give an update on this race. I will, sure. We're talking about race 18, Marco under 14 women's race, shell number one, the stroke of power. With the East Coast catering, Coxon is Kelly Buis, and the stroke is Rochelle or Rachel Langdon. Riley Courtney, Avaya Churchill, Grace Norman, Bridget Connolly, Isabella Bourne, maybe Byrne, and the spear is Jane Lilly, coach Heidi Courtney, manager Heidi Courtney. A few roles for Heidi. Absolutely. And number 18, under 14 women's race again, shell number three, Smith Stockley two, Mares contracting, Coxon is Tina Ring, stroke is Rachel Cook, Bridget Roach, Hillary Sharp, my cousin's kid, love, Lola Windsor, Avery War, Ava Mer, and Spear is Callie Malone, and the manager, Cindy Roach. Absolutely. I mean, I can't hit. It's crazy. <laughs> Stand by. We're going to go in one minute back to Lori, and she is no doubt bringing the fun. So here we go, back to Lori. And we are with the Chinese Association of Newfoundland and Labrador, and I am with... Rich Bailey, Katsu. I'm Ya Ying Tu. I'm Hai Yan Tan. Mei. I'm Haley Lai. Su Hao Xu. Jing Ku. Shan Shan Liu. Na Li. Nice to meet you, and good job on such a great rowing. So tell me what winning means to you. Oh, running up. <laughs> <laughs> Winning is it's great to win, but uh, if you're not having fun at it, it, it doesn't it doesn't mean a thing, right? And, and there, I never seen see a team so happy to row eight minutes. Like other teams be crying, you know, but they were they were so proud, you know. And, that's, and this, you know, being a part of a great association. So this is is this your first time rowing? Yeah, ever. ever. Oh wow, that is. So how does that feel for the first time rowing? Very excited, yeah. and uh, because usually we we'll just be the people walking around, have a snack, enjoy other people racing. But this time it's actually ourselves. I feel very proud <laughs> and very special. Yeah. So, is there anyone that you would like to say a shout out to or a thank you to? Absolutely. First of all, uh, May is our one of our sponsors, Hello. and also Renny So. He's in Japan diving. He's also a sponsor. He sponsored my Soki grocery team too. So they did well, and uh, of course, I want to thank uh, the lady that tapped back there. She's hiding with you too, this lady here. She or she's all organized everything. The spins, the practices, everything. Right? My job was easy. <laughs> In comparison, but you guys did an excellent job today, and I'm so proud of all of you, so you should be proud of yourself. Okay, and we are going to go back now to Donnie. And we are back. You are joining us down Pondside for this annual do-up that we have. The Garden Party meets Rowing Bonanza. And it's funny, you, you mentioned the Garden Party aspect, and I've never heard that. But the second you said it, it's like, of course this is a garden party. <laughs> the biggest garden party in North America, is the way I look at it. <laughs> and you know what? And I think that should be said more, because that, to me, is exciting and interesting. Because some folks feel maybe uninvited to the idea of sport and spectatorship and rowing. They may don't know it. But what they do know is coming on down here to see friends and family and all the booths and everyone out having a great time. There's always there's something for everyone here. You know, like, again, we know people come down, and they, they come down for the food and they never watch a race. But I will say today, as I was out on the safety boat and sailing around the lake, um, I saw more people watching the races than ever before. So it's great to see that interest. And, uh, you know, the, the vendors that are here, they're focused solely on selling their wares and, and you know, making their dollar and so on and getting the, the money into the coffers for the charities exactly. and nonprofits. But they love the races too. A lot of the vendors come over the night before looking for the program, saying, I want to see who's rowing. I want to see who I'm going to watch tomorrow. 
And uh, again, just speaking of that community, right? Everyone supporting one another. And uh, I've got to say, this uh, this day, it's wonderful to see it. I'm so glad to see the crowds. Of course, this morning we had a unanimous decision to proceed, <laughs> but it was uh, wasn't easy because the winds had changed and, and so on. And uh, you know, our viewers, they should know that. Uh, this is the only organization, the only municipality in the country that a uh, volunteer board of directors and a committee of 50 people actually make the decision on a municipal holiday. So very unique. And have you ever come down to the mat where it's divided and some are saying let's do it and some are saying no, we gotta wait? <laughs> Over the years there's been some pretty tight decisions, but uh, most years it's a unanimous decision. Uh, of course we had a delay the last couple of years. Um, but of course we recognize that delaying by a day is a significant inconvenience, uh, not only for the individuals wrapped up with this regatta, but also the individuals throughout the city too sure. who work and, and commute. Um, so we're glad when it goes off on that first Wednesday in August, uh, but it is a big challenge and uh, Mother Nature can sometimes be great, she can sometimes be bad. She can and, be bad. Uh, we had a year where there was only two millimeters of rain predicted and we ended up having 30 millimeters. And, uh, that, was, uh, that wasn't a very good year, let me tell you. Oh no, that must be stressful. Absolutely. So now here we go. And look, the ducks are saying, what's going on? Of course, this is Marco, under 15 women's race. In the stroke of power, East Coast Catering, Smith Stockley 3, Maris Contracting. The stroke of power, I wouldn't mess with them, that's for sure. <laughs> and look at the fashion, you wouldn't lose those guys in the woods. Decked out with a neon moment, check them out. Of course, Tina Ring is coxing that crew. Uh, Tina has, I think, eight races today exactly. or something like that. She's, uh, she is a diehard. Well, the Ring family. Indeed, indeed. Kitty yeah. Vitti's finest yeah. down the road. Oh, I mean, Randy, of course they took to it. Yeah. And, uh, and they've been around for decades, generations. Yes, and, uh, true. They were actually one of the only families to have their own private boat on Kitty Vitti Lake is at one point. that true? Well, one morning, uh, some, of your, some of our viewers may know about uh, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean and the Black Pearl. So, this one morning, it was a fog bank at the at the boathouse, and all of a sudden, this white boat with six rowers and all black came out of the fog. Only boat on the pond, and I said, "That's the white pearl." So this was the rings on, in their private boat. <laughs> That's so, unreal. Yeah, yeah, what a beautiful and fortuitous place to live and have such a history with the sport itself. I mean, Indeed. it's amazing. And this place has grown significantly. I, yes. I looked at a couple of pictures in our museum the other day, and there were barely any trees along the southwest bank there of Forest Road. And now you can barely see the buildings or properties up there. So rowers years ago would be able to, you know, pick a spot on the bottom of the pond and steer toward that. But oh, wow. the, the layout has changed so much and the growth has changed so much. It's very hard now to, to, to do that, right? But um, again, we're very, uh, very appreciative of our neighbors because it's not an easy thing to be adjacent to the regatta. So big thank you to all those that live on the Boulevard and Forest Road for their tolerance. And, you, you know, you know, you're very right because, you know, but I can only imagine that when they all bought their houses around here, they knew what time it would be I come suspect the so. first Wednesday. We were night. there before them. <laughs> yeah, no, it's incredible to watch all the development that happens around our city, and it's so exciting to see that. But even in historical places like this, it's ever changing across the pond over there from the military center Absolutely. to all the housing up there. I mean, listen, things are always evolving down here on the pond. So true. And of course, uh, further to the uh, Winter Circle redevelopment, the uh, the other legacy project was the redevelopment of the North Bank. Um, so if uh, if individuals go over there now for the uh, the vendors, they'll see uh, two accessible walkways okay. uh, that ensure that anyone can reach these vendors and uh, brings you right up to the road and the sidewalks. Um, beautiful redevelopment over there and by far one of the best spots for vendors to set up oh. and uh, certainly worth, uh, worth a look when you go over. That's amazing. And I guess everybody um, who has businesses in different scenarios operating around the pond is are participating and I suppose that is one of the things in terms of relationship management that you guys do a great job of is keeping everybody connected to the energy. Well exactly and uh, you know we've uh, we worked very very hard to make sure that everyone feels included here and that everyone feels that uh, that they are part of this community. And um, uh, Michelle Hickey, um, individual uh, that we both know quite well. Yes. She's our director of hospitality. She's amazing. Uh, Michelle is also our acting director of rowing, so oh. she's the liaison with the crews this okay. year. Uh, we had uh, Jennifer Windsor Brown took a leave of absence to uh, to take care of some family stuff, and uh, Michelle stepped in. Uh, Michelle has hosted, I think, two or three socials this year. Uh, sellout crowds at Kitty Vee Brewery. That's what the it's about. It really is, and uh, and of course the rowers love getting to know one another. They learn from one another and uh, we're happy to facilitate that in the work that we do. Absolutely, so great. So now what's going on out there in the pond? They're stopped, did they go the half length and now they're done? What's That's the story? It. They, they row the uh, the half course, or, oh. well, quarter course, I guess is the way to put yeah, it. Yeah, right. 
and uh, thankfully today they're rowing down to the bottom of the pond and finishing down there. But if the wind had been in the other direction, they would have started at the, the bottom of the half, uh, half course kegs and rowed to the top of the pond. Okay. Now that's usually a, a nicer scenario because it gets, of course, the parents and family get to see them finish. Right. Uh, but I guarantee you down on the side of the bank, down toward the, uh, the half course kegs, there's uh, all kinds of families down there cheering them on. I'm sure of it. <laughs> Oh, that's so awesome, so look, special. Look at these proud uh, proud young fellas here in the winner's circle with Mike and his team. Right? That's he's another hardcore rower for life. Well, indeed, indeed. He's uh, rowed with numerous crews and uh, very, uh, very happy to pass along his, uh, you know, his knowledge and uh, and foster the, uh, the the future of of this sport. Listen, you know what? KT is huge in every industry. Volunteer, Capital Corp. I mean, knowledge transfer is so important, especially when it comes to the history of a sport like this. Do Absolutely. you agree? I agree, 100 percent. We have. Um, you know, all kinds of individuals that, as I said earlier, have been here for decades, and the moment we lose them, uh, things will change. So we've worked very, very hard to match crews with other crews, with former coxswains. Uh, you know, my Uncle Mike, as an example, Mike has been around for decades, you know, countless uh, championship crews. He's coached all, you know, all the best crews here at Kitty Bitty Lake. He still coaches to this day in his 70s and is happy to support any crew if they have a question. And that kind of knowledge uh, is f it's thankfully being passed on through crew, uh, the various crews that are sure. here. And uh, there's you know another dozen people like Mike here. So wow. Very, very lucky. Yeah, no, indeed, absolutely. So here we are checking it all out. And I'm already looking ahead to see what is going to be going on. But we are soon going to throw over to Mitch at the winner's circle. Let's go. One, I am back with the winner of the U14 men's. Um, first off, congrats, everyone. That was an excellent race. Um, I guess I just want to ask you a few questions. So. What, uh, how do you feel after winning today? You and your crew, I understand that you folks are um, a hockey team together as well, like on the same team. So what's it like to be here and win at the regatta? Oh, that's like, that's a dream come true, basically. Yeah. Yeah, it's really nice. Good stuff. Excellent. So I guess, like I said, you folks are on the same hockey team. How does like the teamwork that you guys do on the ice, do you find that it helps you here? Yeah, we communicate a lot and all that. We really know each other since like the first grade or like, yeah. Good stuff. I absolutely love it. And honestly, you can see how the teamwork like plays into it. You guys did absolutely fantastic. So I guess my final question is, um, is there anyone that uh, you folks want to thank? Uh, like, um, well, my Nana and Pop are watching at home, and I just want to say thank you for, to them. I love that. Thank you. And what about you? I want to thank my parents and my brother. Fantastic. I'll thank Mike. Good stuff. <laughs> I want to thank Derek Locke. He's the one that made all this possible. I love it. That was a compliment. I want to thank my parents and Derek Locke. He made everything. Like, uh, I'd like to thank Mike Radowski for coxing us and Derek Locke for making this happen i'd like to thank derek and mike a beautiful i love it and now let me get your names real quick we'll go backwards first jack clark uh liam costello liam walsh matthew rudofsky maddox cody davis corin nathan stanley fantastic well thank you very much everyone and congrats again on the race uh we'll go back to donnie and brad and we are back pond side at this year's regatta. So excited, Brad. How many years? For the regatta? This year, yeah. 205. But who's counting? That's crazy. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? Longest continually running sporting event in North America. And very, very proud to say that. That's so exciting. Yeah. And I want to ask you, you know, the championship race is coming up. What goes on to everyone as they qualify? for that special Climax event? Well, it's uh, it's not an easy situation, uh, you know, to, to be waiting. Uh, many of these crews that are rowing in the championship race would have rowed, of course, early this morning. And uh, they've been watching the other races to see what the times are coming in as. Um, I suspect in short order, we'll do the uh, shell draw in the boathouse. And uh, for our viewers, what that means is yes. uh, the fastest crew gets to choose their uh, keg and boat uh, oh. before others. So, you know, first crew gets the uh, the best boat usually and the best uh, best keg. 
on a day like this where the pond is so calm, uh, really the keg makes very little difference. Uh, but of course, people who uh, may have a, a tighter turn or a wider turn, they'll choose whatever keg they're most comfortable with. Um, over and above that, uh, Donnie, they're, they're resting right now. I bet. They, I guarantee you that most of them are either at home. Uh, very few will be walking around the lake, and they're certainly not over in the beer tent, that's for sure. <laughs> but uh, they're resting, they're clearing their heads. Um, some of them will likely be, you know, looking at the recording of this broadcast and studying those other crews sure. and see how they're, uh, you know, what, uh, what little intricacies in their technique that they can capitalize on. And uh, furthermore, I guarantee you they're seeking as much advice as possible from every coach they can get their hands on and every coxswain just to make sure that they can make up those extra couple of seconds. Because it is a game of inches. It truly is, yeah, absolutely. We've seen some dead heats here over the years. Uh, you know, back in the 80s, we had one where uh, it was nothing but cars lined off on top of the pond because it was so late at night and so dark that they, uh, without those lights, we wouldn't have been able to get the race get underway. Get out of here. But they waited for a perfect pond. And uh, that year, it was, uh, you know, less than a centimeter in the difference. Uh, we haven't seen many close races like that in recent years, uh, but you never know. You know, it's, uh, it's anyone's game out there today. Let's see what happens. Well, with the conditions as they are, as per what you said earlier on, I mean, I wonder if you come to a regatta per year, do you ever get a sense of breaking records? Is there ever the energy that something unique is going to go down? But of course, it always does. It absolutely. And, uh, you know, every year there's usually one group that, uh, that comes very close to a record. But of course, you know, the infrastructure here is starting to age. And many of our uh, major records were set years ago when the boats were brand new and right. so on. Um, you know, certainly not bad mouthing those boats. They've, oh, they've, no. they've held up quite well for, uh, for the amount of people that use them. Um, but it's very hard to break records, as simple as that. Uh, we've seen a couple of crews uh, a couple of years ago broke uh, two records in one day. Uh, but this year, I'm not aware of any record uh, records being broken. Uh, but you never know. There's still a few races left yet. Speaking of which, you want to call it out. Absolutely. Race uh, 18, the official race results. East Coast Catering in first place, 2 minutes, 38 seconds and 12. And Mars Contracting at 2.53.73. Again, some great times for the, uh, the under-14. Let's go to number 19, it's the Domino's under 14 women's race, Shell number one, the Seahawk, the crew, Ork in Canada, the Cox, Tina Ring, our girl back again, Stroke, Charlie Hill, and then we got McKinley Kennel, Lily Moores, Lily McKinnon, Billy Beaton Coulter, and Grace Ellard, Spear is Libby Richardson, manager, Stephanie Jones, coach, Tina Ring. And number 19, race dominoes under 14 women's. Shell number three, Marine Institute. The crew is the Outer Cove girls. Go Outer Cove. The Cox, Julie Parsons. The Stroke, Aaron Bonia. And here we go with the crew. It is Sally Cody, Charlotte Nixon, Liv Randall, Carly Green, Jasmine Hickey. Spear is Nora Goose. And the manager is Janet Dixon. And Donnie, I want to point out, uh, so this race has children from a past president and our current president. So, of course, uh, people will recognize the name Chris Neary, yes. uh, the coxswain of uh, j &E Enterprise Limited, Chris being our uh, past president just before I served as president. And, um, you know, with the uh, Orkin Canada, of course, Tina Ring, committee member, but Tina is uh, coxing. Um, uh, McKinley Kennel, who is the daughter oh. of our current president, Noel Thomas Kennel. Full circle. Absolutely. And of course, Chris's daughter, Olivia, is in the in the uh, in the J&E Enterprises uh, team. <coughs> these uh, these three teams in particular um, have worked very very hard. We've seen them here on the dock, uh, you know, almost every couple of evenings, and they are so energetic and so excited. They love it. Now, of course, you know, for many of the individuals you see here, there it's it's again in their blood, uh, but. You know, when you have a, a member of your family, like your, your mom or your dad, who invests, you know, 40 or 50 hours a week, for you to come down and participate in that <laughs> oh, yeah. and see your mom and dad, that's a wonderful thing, right? Yeah, no doubt. You know, I know McKinley and Olivia are quite, uh, quite proud to be in the boat, and we're quite proud to see them there. Well, they are a rowing family, to be sure, and as you say, there are rowing families in the making every year here at the regatta, and some to come. So it's pretty exciting to know that, you know, the best races and the best families growing up in the sport we've yet to see. Pretty wild. Mm -hmm, indeed. And, of course, uh, worth noting that uh, Craig Whittle is the uh, coach of j &E Enterprises. Uh, Craig, a very, very accomplished uh, coxswain himself. Uh, I think he has a number of crews here today, too. So 
a uh, big thank you to Craig for his support of the younger crews because he's uh, he's made sure that knowledge transfer has taken place. That's no sure. doubt. And I mean, that is an intimate thing, isn't it? I mean, the programs that the regatta offers to help folks get into the mix, but it's the people themselves who know all of the things. It's pretty rare. How do you stay in touch with them and how do you make knowledge transfer a priority in what you do when there's so many things that you need to keep your eye on? Well, it's, it's important that individuals that, uh, you know, come down here to row, that they, they don't just row and jump in the car. Stick around. Listen to the other crews. Yes. Watch the other crews. Um, you know, there's, I always say there's free clinics on our dock every single day. There's <laughs> always someone that has something uh, valuable in terms of technique or style that can, you know, in, uh, you know better a crew's uh, time by two or three seconds. Right. Uh, we had one crew this morning uh, increase, or sorry, a decrease of 20 seconds off their time. And that was just since time trials. And that was because they brought in a new coach, an individual who, you know, uh, supported them and took some video of their, their uh, practice and gave them some solid advice and 20 seconds made up on their time. That's excellent. Wow. Okay. And uh, we just have, you know, a really dedicated group of individuals around this lake. Um, I think we have uh, close on 30 coxswains or 40 coxswains uh, that have been new to the organization over the last number of years. But the other 10 or 20 or 30 that have been around a long time welcomed them with open arms and made sure that they felt you know as part of the community as part of the group uh, but more importantly passed on that knowledge and told them you know how you properly turn the keg and you know what uh, what you can say to your crew when you're in the last minute of rowing and you know certainly one uh, one skill is the start uh, a lot of people don't realize you don't just you know put your oar out and grab the oar and pull the water there's uh, you you do a half stroke and then you do a three quarter stroke and then you do a full I stroke. Didn't know, I didn't know. And before you know it, the boat is going. Right? Wow! So it's uh, you know a lot of people don't realize that there's a lot more to the skill uh, of rowing than uh, than we we realize. But um, there's so many people that have come down and shown these kids and uh, you know again seeing the the crew on the screen there, yes. they. Um, if it wasn't for that coxswain, that, that's their that's their go-to. That's the person that's going to give them as much information as possible and as much support. Um, but as I said, crews don't just compete against one another. They support one another. And yes, it's all important that you go out and get your gold medal or your silver medal or your bronze. Sure. But the reality is everybody's here for fun. That's right? true. There's lots of competitive crews, but there's all kinds of recreational crews. And I, you know, I'm quite proud to say that every time I see a boat come into that dock, most people are usually smiling, and that's, that's a wonderful thing. <laughs> oh, as you crack off an oar, that's a whole other story. Yeah. Which, yeah. you know, uh, for a moment, what strange events have you seen occur on the pond over the years? I can't imagine. Well, two things in particular. Uh, one was last year, my wife's crew. Um, they had been practicing all year, and our former executive director, Leanne O'Neill, who was stroke of the crew, uh, as they were turning the keg, after all summer of practicing, she snapped off her oar. And I remember I was on top of the pond and I was looking down and I knew something had gone astray, something had gone awry. <laughs> and all I saw was Leanne holding up the no oar handle in the way. ear. And of course there was nothing she could do for the rest of the, the row back to the top of the pond. So they were devastated, of uh, course, after all, uh, all yeah. summer practicing. Yeah. Uh, but great experience. Of course. Nice. And uh, we've seen a couple of um, incidents where boats have collided, one on top of the really? pond, and one on the bottom. Yep. I gotta say that surprises me to hear just based on all the efforts that you guys make via the boys and all the things that you do, but hey, accidents do happen. They, they do, and uh, you know, it doesn't, it's not always a, you know, a new coxswain or anything like that. Some of the most uh, seasoned coxswains here have had accidents. Um, but again, very, very safe boat. So sure. once the hole was in the boat, Can't sink, I hear. they were okay. They didn't sink. Um, but again, the, you know, it happens. Um, the one that I think of in particular on the top of the pond, uh, it was a T-bone incident, uh, but it was one crew that had finished and another that hadn't completed their race. And these are big boats, you know, they're four and 500 pounds. Uh, so to stop one at the head of the pond where you've only got about a boat length and a half, it's not easy. No, it wouldn't And say. especially if you're going for time well, yeah, and you want to have the best time, you're going fast. So uh, we've seen that happen. Uh, we had a collision on the uh, turning kegs years ago. Uh, that was a dangerous one and actually facilitated an update to all of our safety planning. Huh? Um, and that was the, uh, I mentioned earlier about the videos that are on YouTube. Um, that was actually following that collision on the bottom of the pond. So we have rules in place now uh, that's, you know, ensure that these type things don't happen. <laughs> we have uh, five kegs, whereas years ago we used to have four. Um, so, you know, they are rowing tighter together and closer together. Uh, but, for instance, if uh, a crew, two crews come into the kegs on the bottom of the pond together, um, the crew that is first has the right-of-way. Huh. So another crew may have to stop completely, and we saw that uh, today in race number four. 
uh, they had to uh, to stop, let the other crew go through, and then pick it up again. Wow, eh? And it meant that unfortunately that crew may have uh, you know placed in third or fourth when they might have been first. Well, that's uh, a learning lesson for next year, I suppose. It is absolutely, and and these things happen. Um, you know, no matter how much experience you have, no matter how good you are, um, mistakes happen, right? And and Such accidents happen. Absolutely. So what are we seeing here now? They're getting into position for the next race, it looks like to me. Yep. And this, of course, is the final uh, final regular race of the day. Okay. Uh, race number 19. This one's supported by Domino's. And uh, the race record here is 237.60. Now, I don't think any one of these crews are going to get to that uh, that uh, uh, that time. Uh, but I know they're going to row very, very hard, very uh, uh, very diligent to try and, uh, and get as close as possible. Um, I will say though, Tina Ring's crew, um, they've got about, um, you know, almost 40 or 50 seconds on these other two crews. Oh, wow. So it'll be very interesting to see how they do here today. But uh, they're lining up, and I guarantee you their anxiety is high. Oh, they are yeah. ready to work. Anxiety and anticipation live on the same street. Indeed. So it's hard to know whether it's one or the other, but and they are getting into position with all the ducks. <laughs> now, listen, speaking of uh, bizarre things that have gone on, any duck fatalities to report? No, no. Uh, <laughs> our viewers may remember Michael the Goose, who was here at Kitty yes. Lake a couple of years ago. Michael caused a lot of trouble around Kitty Vitty Lake. He was uh, friendly to some, me included, but he wasn't so friendly to others. Uh, former uh, CBC host Jonathan Crow got chased out of a boat one day by him. Well, he found out his but, last name, I suppose. I think so, that's right, <laughs> good one. <laughs> But uh, we even had uh, sweaters and T-shirts made with Michael on the front. No way. I had one experience myself with him, and I had uh, backed it or pulled into a parking spot just up by the penitentiary. And as I went to put it in reverse, the car in reverse, I could see Michael in the, uh, the camera, the backup camera. And he would not move. I had to get out of the car and go over <laughs> and try to shoo him. And then he tried to bite me. Uh... Anyway, he didn't bite me. He did move along. But uh, he had a little bit of an attitude, but the rowers loved him. He was, you know, everybody, uh, you know, always uh, spoke very highly of Michael the Goose. Um, unfortunately, he's no longer here. Uh. But, uh, you know, we, we've, uh, we used to have otters here at Kitty Vinny Lake. Oh, really? Yep, a couple of years. We had uh, otters, uh, you know, playing around on the floating docks down there during the championship race. That was quite the sight That's to see. That's cute. So you never know what you're going to find here. It's, you know, an enormous park, Kitty Vinny Lake. That's true. Um, you know, Rennie's River uh, comes into this, uh, this lake. And, uh, you know, it's an enormous ecosystem up there of salmon and brown trout and so on. So we see things all the time down here that you wouldn't otherwise see. Wow. Um, I will say, though, um, you know, they've, uh, they've tried to reintroduce salmon and other uh, fish here in this pond. And uh, people who have come down here maybe 50 years ago would uh, be the first ones to say, never swim in Kitty Vitty Lake, never jump in there. But in recent years, the lake has become very much cleaner. I believe that. And, um, and they've, you know, a big piece of work with the Grand Concourse yes, of the city of exactly. St. John's in order to do this. But um, I would anticipate we'll see a couple of people jump in the lake today. Uh, I do hope that Brian Fischel does not swim across the lake. You we won't go there. You read my mind. will <laughs> live for having his moments of jumping in the lake. Not that we are condoning or condemning. No, no, no. We're just saying it's happened. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so, of course, the crew is now passing the marquee. And they go. Uh, oh, look, you see someone feels in the lead. And of course, we see this is Orkin Canada here in front of us now with Tina and McKinley and her friends. They are so excited. They're pulling their hearts out. Three minutes, 51 seconds in the time trial. Let's yeah, see how it all goes. They're making good time. Today. A little over a minute past the marquee. Uh, Tina, actually, worth noting, Tina is using um, an assisted um, uh, speaking device. Well, I wanted to know about and this. This I is see the it. first time we've seen this used in racing here at Kitty Vitty Lake. We uh, updated our rules just recently uh, to accommodate it. Huh. Um, but we were finding, you know, individuals like Tina or Jackie Warfield or, or others who have, you know, four and five and six crews, they lose their voice of leading up to the um, Whereas they can speak calmly and, and quietly into this microphone and the entire well, crew amazing. can see them. That's an example of tech really coming into the oldest corners Indeed. of what we do. Absolutely. And I often wondered, how does the person in the back know yeah. what's being shouted? Because there's a bit of a distance, and based on the elements and the wind and things of that nature, it's hard to really ascertain, I'm sure, from it that is. distance back. So now that I know yep. that there's like mics and tech in play, um, interesting. My, my father rode number one for a number of years. That's the, the position yep. furthest away from That's the right. coxswain. 
and he said to me, the best advice for a number one or number two is to learn how to read lips. <laughs> because some days you'll get out there in a heavy wind, and no matter how exactly. loud the coxswain yells, you can't hear them. Yeah, no, I bet. But uh, I will apologize to the neighbors on the boulevard. I'm sure at 5.30 in the morning, they're not too fond of hearing the coxswains yelling and screaming. So our apologies over there, and thank you for your support of the regatta all these yes, years. Yes, indeed. But uh, I know Jackie in particular, she could barely speak after regatta a couple of years ago. Wow. And, uh, God love her for taking so many crews. She did a wonderful job. That's so great, and I'm so glad to hear that these types of tech enhancements are allowed. And it makes me wonder, how much feedback and updating are you doing to the bylaws and the operational guidelines and all of the things that allow this uh, machine to do what it does? Well, the, uh, a lot, uh, you know, simply put, we have a full rules committee uh, led by uh, Wayne Purchase, a longstanding uh, committee member. Um, you know, they go through numerous uh, inquiries throughout the year um, that rowers send along suggestions or, you know, look at the Olympics and say, why can't we do this or why can't we do that? Right. Um, you know, our, our motto here is uh, let the races be governed by tradition, uh, but we're not ignorant of the fact that things change sure. and, and we need to change with them. Um, you know, two big things outside of the change to the rules for these listening devices. Uh, we did change uh, some of the names of our courses. We used to have the men's course and the women's course. We got rid of that. Um, now we have the long course and short okay. course. We also opened up those courses to the other categories. So uh, women can row the full course now and men can row the short course. Uh, so that was uh, some major, major changes and, uh, and very, very, uh, uh, very much about the, the future development of the sport, uh, getting people involved. Um, getting people back who rode previously who probably don't want to row that full course for 12 or 13 minutes but would be happily happy to go for five or t five or six minutes sure. um, further to that uh, there were two major changes here at kitty lake over the last 10 years one is the uh, seats so we have standardized seats right um, you may recall when we were young yes. uh, donnie people came down and they wrapped tape around the yes. seats the biggest piece of <laughs> foam that you could ever get and exactly. you'd wrap it and of course that destroyed the boats unfortunately um, and so we, we brought that in, made that consistent, so everybody was on an even, uh, even playing field. Um, but uh, the footings was another thing. Um, you know, people were adjusting the footings, doing different things. So we actually installed uh, ergometer footings uh, huh. in these boats. Uh, so again, everyone has the, the same thing. No, no one crew has an advantage over the other. Wow. But uh, those are some of the major changes, uh, language changes in all of our policies to be more consistent with the Olympics. And uh, of course, you know, we're open to any changes that, that the community may want to suggest. Um, very receptive to the experts, the rowers, you know, helping the committee to, uh, to navigate through what, uh, whatever might need to change in the future. And of course, as technology changes, we will have to change too. So uh, we know that our boats are very, very unique. Uh, very hard to find a builder for these boats, oh. and uh, we will certainly need some new boats in the years ahead. Um, so if anyone knows of anyone that uh, is a master builder, uh, of course we have some great boat builders here in Newfoundland, so I suspect we will find someone. Um, but uh, many of these boats are 10, 15, some might be 20 years old. Uh, we have fiberglass, we have wooden, uh, fiberglass being the newest ones. That's right. Um, well, I think we have 24 boats all together. Uh, but, you know, technology is changing. Um, you know, maybe our you know, future boats will actually have these uh, audio devices installed. Uh, you know, maybe they'll have some type of tracking mechanism for GPS or something like that. So I'm uh, very interested to see what the future holds in that regard. But technology changes every day, of as course. we know. But uh, we're very open to, to whatever may come for the years ahead. It makes me wonder, when it comes to the rowers in the regatta and the amount of time and effort that goes into making the event and the race happen for them, and then you speak about Olympics. So what's the correlation between what happens here on the pond with what sometimes ends up happening on the Olympic stage and how much of what happens here goes into that? Well, you know, the, you know, we're very unique. We were one of, uh, I believe, only two or three fixed seat rowing uh, organizations in the country, or sorry, in the world. Right. Um, I know there used to be one in Ontario, and there's one over in Europe as well. That's right. Um, very fortunate that we have numerous regattas here in Newfoundland and Labrador for fixed seat. Uh, you know, the Placentia Regatta, the Harbour Grace Regatta, Labrador West. Um, we have the Portugal Coast St. Phillips, the Monday Pond Regatta, and a bunch. Um, but, you know, we have competitive crews that go to Canada Games. We have uh, organ or people that have gone to Canada Games and come back here. Yes. Uh, we have rowers that row in the United States uh, in uh, fixed seat, or rather uh, sliding seat. 
and and they bring you know their experiences back here and awesome. and of course support the crews that want to go further. Um, our vice president and captain of the course is a Canada Games uh, um, uh, athlete. Uh, Ashley Peach was a Canada Games rower years ago, and um, of course she has um, you know brought some of those uh, skills and uh, and some of that knowledge back to Kitty Vitty Lake. Um, we want to make sure that this sport, like every sport, is accessible to everyone, that people have ease of participation. There should be no barrier to coming down here and sitting in that boat. And of course, the Olympics are, is a great organization to follow when it comes to that. They've done wonderful work over the last decade in making it more accessible. And uh, so we're, we're happy to follow their lead, especially when it comes to the rules and policies. Um, you know, the, the gender diverse language coming out of our constitution and out of our rules, that was a key thing that the Olympics did a number of years ago that we followed their lead. Love us. Yeah. A moment, may I, to talk about grilling season. We're living it, we're loving, it's giving. And we're here to talk about the Home Depot stepping up big time every year to help us out. And Rogers wants you to know that you can head up to the top of the pond where the booth be's at and try to get your very own barbecue on the go. So just so you know, if you're down here or if you're at home on the couch and you're like, I could use a new barbecue, well, come on down, man. My weight. <laughs> well, the smell of barbecue and the smell it's, of food it's, it's, has been coming over us numerous times here. I know, it's wafting. Oh, it well, the is. food trucks come out for the regatta as well. They do. Which they is, do. It's, it's pretty special, you know, to walk around the pond and to see the diversity of classic boots that have been there for, you know, ever. And then new offerings yeah. that must make the organizing committee pretty exciting to see all the different interests that you get it does yeah we we see as i mentioned earlier we see new vendors every single year uh but we have a lot that will come back you know ziggy peel goods winky's wedges all these folks are here <laughs> every single year i think winky's wedges has seven trucks or five trucks here um, oh, wow. you know they love coming down and serving their customers uh, there are some vendors that this is the only event that they do in the run of a year yeah. so there are individuals that come down for those vendors specifically knowing that they won't get to see them anywhere else um, you know, the, uh, I mentioned the Hindu Temple earlier. Uh, we have the uh, Kinsman Club, uh, the Lions Club of Pooch Cove. You know, all of these groups. The they've the, this is their biggest fundraiser of the year. They're happy to come down and, and engage with the community. And uh, you know, again, some of the biggest smiles on the top of the pond today are those vendors that are up there just selling ticket after ticket after ticket. Totally. God love them for being there. And a lot vendors. of them raising money for all the different community-based causes that exist here. Absolutely. So. And of course, we're very happy through our organization to support those causes too. And we can talk about that a little later. We will do. But for now, we're going to throw it to a break. It is the annual Regatta TV Fest, and you're watching it with my boy, Brad Power. And your boy DC will be right back after this break. Focused on quality and convenience, there isn't much you won't find at Marie's Mini Mart. Homestyle bread, sandwiches, plus a variety of artisan breads and delicious single serve desserts available exclusively at our Frecker Drive location. Marie's Mini Mart with 25 locations wherever you go, there we are. Backyard Bartender is returning for another season. I'm your host, Brian O'Connell, and this season we're going on the road and visiting some unique, historical, and members-only clubs in St. John's. We'll explore great wines and cocktails and make a few unusual drinks, some of which have almost been lost to history. Join me for another season of Backyard Bartender as we drop in on some interesting bars in your backyard this season on Rogers TV. Hi, I'm Carl Wells, getting ready to record another edition of Carl Wells Point to Point. It's a program where I chat with members of our community and they talk candidly about their lives and careers from their earliest dreams to their greatest triumphs. I think you'll find it informative and entertaining. Please join us for Carl Wells Point to Point right here on Rogers TV. the joy and laughter with Spirit of Newfoundland as they celebrate 25 wonderful years. Join your favorite spirit performers as they toast a quarter century of fun, food, and fantastic music. For ticket information and upcoming events, check out spiritofnewfoundland.com or phone 579-3023. Spirit of Newfoundland, a proud sponsor of the Royal St. John's Regatta on Rogers TV.
We are back. It is Pond Side Life, and we are loving it. Um, your boy DC, this is Brad Power, and we are talking all things regatta. Well, we're 10 minutes away from the old supper break, I hear, and then the championship races get ready to rock. Tell me all about it. So the regatta committee behind the scenes right now are checking the uh, boats for the championship race. Um, we have a huge operation here, so midday, uh, we take all the boats that are on the dock and we put them back in the shell house and we take out another set of boats. Oh, and wow. then, of course, when the championship comes around, depending on what boats the crews choose, we have to do that change around again and, and take more boats out. So, of course, you know, some of the drone footage you've seen, the, the rowing shells moored off uh, throughout the lake. This is usually the only day that we do that to help facilitate that turnover. Um, there are, of course, boats that people like. There are boats that people dislike. So uh, I'm not surprised to see certain ones are up moored off because people want nothing to do with them. I won't say the names because that's uh, that's not fair to the sponsors. Uh, but people are superstitious about their equipment. I and, bet. And, and you know, to be quite honest with you, they're all four or five hundred pounds. They've all got six seats and a coxswain really? seat and a rudder. But well, how do you the, change them over, Brad? Well, you know, the uh, oh, so uh, the boathouse itself. We've got two lifts in there. Okay. Um, and all 24 boats go in the back shell house. Oh uh, we have a, sorry, an inner and an outer shell house. Yeah. Um, we store them, uh, you know. All year in there it's a heated facility um, but the changeover requires five or six staff uh, they have to put you know numerous boats out in the water to be able to facilitate bringing others out it's not an easy task um, and uh, you know I, I, I can't say enough about our staff our manager and assistant manager and the dock assistants they are working their bums off today. Wow, they really are. and uh, they're making sure of course all through the uh, Sounds good. Read, uh, you know, th throughout the year, they make sure that these boats are at on tip-top shape. And uh, people like John Barrington and uh, Noel Conway and George Wade, they've been down here for the last couple of weeks checking all the oarlocks, checking all the pins, checking the footings. Uh, just up until yesterday, there was some new uh, PL uh, premium and some glue put with a new footing in the boat, <laughs> you know, right up until the last minute. Wow. So uh, we couldn't win the shell house yesterday because of the fumes, but uh, that boat is now out operating perfectly today. That's amazing. And, and they are aging, right? That infrastructure is, it is getting up there. I, I feel like your mentions about aging infrastructure is leading us to a general awareness vibe to the potential sponsors and cash givers out there who value this historic institution. Absolutely. Well, listen, and we are looking for individuals to support us in that regard. We've got some excellent shell sponsors right now, very, very grateful. And uh, we want to make sure that the future of the regatta is protected and we need good boats for that. So, so race number 19, the official results, Bork in Canada. 301 Wow, hey, look at that. j and &E Enterprises Limited, second place, 325.62. And Outer Cove Girls, third place, 3 minutes, 27 seconds, and 54. Well, and they took a minute they, off their time. They did. The Outer Cove Girls. did excellent. Congratulations to them all. And look, there's Hillary there, right in the middle of the pack. Congrats to the fam. So great. The pride and the relief. Absolutely. are both very strong. And in first Chris place Keith, in our the boy. U14 women's race, racing Keith Whiter, Director of Communications. Of we East thank Coast you, Keith. Catering. And uh, to uh, Keith's left and our right on the screen is uh, former President Chris Hickman. Oh, wow. And uh, Chris is the uh, the owner of Marco. Yes. And uh, one of the, uh, was instrumental in the construction of the new boathouse oh. uh, over 15 years ago. Wow, we. Yep. You this know, a, a fantastic brand, a fantastic local family who does such good work to give back to our community. And that is very seen by many of us. And I think it's very important for the sponsors and all the historic people involved in the regatta to know we see you, we appreciate your absolutely. contributions, yeah. and it's what makes us love the brands that participate in the annual regatta. Yeah, no, well said. Uh, you know, individuals like Chris uh, and companies uh, like Chris's uh, during the pandemic when, you know, sponsorships were drying up. And, and operating was tough and money was uh, sparse, um, Chris dropped off a $5,000 check and he said, good luck, wow. here you go, my support to, to the organization and of course long-standing sponsor and so on. And, uh, and I, and I, I want to reiterate the fact that he was instrumental in the construction of this building. The boathouse right now is the epicenter of the regatta. Uh, without it, we it's would true. not be able to function. Uh, the crews have you know, access to all kinds of facilities, washrooms, change rooms, and so on. There's an ergometer room in there. Uh, but we're so proud of the second floor, our museum. 
all of the artifacts and old pictures and I old trophies. I did not know. Yep. I did not know of this museum. It is, and uh, certainly individuals can phone the boathouse and book an opportunity to uh, drop in and have a look. Well, I'd uh, like but to do a lot of the fog show maybe down there and have you show me around yeah, sometime. Excellent spot. Excellent I'd love spot. that. There are hundreds of pictures on the wall of crews right back to the 1800s. No way. Uh, we have some uh, artifacts that uh, go back to the early 1800s. Uh, of course, 1818 being the first regatta. Um, I think we have a medal from 1820. The solid no gold. Way. Absolutely amazing to see what we have up there. And of course, families continually, uh, you know, bequest things to us as individuals pass on, or just you know, drop off an old medal they found in a box. Um, so you know, we're really happy to get these things uh, because we never want to lose the history associated with this uh, organization. Well, but, it reminds me of you know what happened with the CLB and the efforts that they had to go in to restock the history of 131 years of doing what they do. And so I want to ask you in our final moments of hanging out here, the CLB play such a part in the regatta every year. I'd love to hear from you on your feelings around that. Well, Danny, I'm glad you bring it up because ever since I was a young boy, the CLB band was one of the, the first things I look forward to coming down to Kitty Bitty Lake. And this morning as I sailed across the pond on one of our whalers, I heard the band start and uh. I thought, this is regatta day, right? Uh. That's the, the first, that music, that sound, those people, they've been with us, you know, since the beginning almost. and. They are such a wonderful group of musicians. They love it. They're over enjoying themselves. But it's a an amazing sound. And when you hear Up the Pond played uh, by that many people, yes, it is something to behold. I will tell you, the CLB is a fantastic organization. And whether it's the band or the brigade side of what they offer, it's all about learning skill, having fun, and giving back to the community. And for 131 years, the That's CLB great. have been doing just that. And we owe them a lot. Yep. And of course, when the uh, the CLB burnt years ago, the old Blue Peter was destroyed. I yes. believe it was the boat, uh, but I think they have the Beothic up there now yes. on, the, on the ceiling. Um, you know, they are very proud of their connection to the Royal St. John's Regatta, Indeed. as proud as we are to have them here. Yes, of course. And uh, I look forward to going over and seeing them shortly and uh, and thanking them all for their work. That's amazing. Well, we're going to throw over to Mitch and he's wrangling them up, and so we're gonna have him talk, and I love seeing Mitch at Out of the Fog, Roger Studios, helping out every week to make that show happen. He's behind the scenes, he's back in the booth, helping with all the things, and now there he is in front of the mic today, and we're so thankful to have Mitch and Lori and everybody helping out to make the regatta, and of course, we got LA, and we got Jason, and all the hands that we love from Out of the Fog, and I'm just happy to be included, and now it's over to you, Mitchy Baby. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. And we're here with the uh, East Coast catering team. Congrats. Uh, that was quite the race, and we have a lot to talk about today. Um, so first, I'll get everyone to introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Bridget Conley. I'm Rachel Langdon. I'm Isabel Born. I'm Grace Norman. I'm Avea Churchill. I'm Riley Courtney. I'm Jane Lilly. Thank you very much, everyone. So uh, we got a couple things to talk about. So first off is you folks have only been a team for two years. Is that correct? Yes. Excellent. And your first win, your first race was a win in Placentia. Yeah. So what was the evolution like coming from winning your first race to getting here? Did you feel like there was a lot of, uh, you know, practice and such that went into it or was it was it just coasting because clearly you folks are doing fantastic it was really a lot of practice and just pushing ourselves to our full extent good stuff that's a great answer so i also heard that you folks came in super close to breaking a record here today what a, a wild performance so i guess how do you folks feel like winning coming so close to a record it was fantastic I mean, we did our best and there's really nothing to complain about. Good stuff. That is a great answer. So I guess at the end of the day, is there anyone that you want to thank? Anyone you want to attribute the success to? What are we thinking? Just everyone who helped us through, all of our parents, everyone that supported us. Good stuff. Do we have any shout outs here? Yes, yes. Um, East Coast Catering for sponsoring our team. That is a good answer. Anyone else? Yes. Our uh, Cox and Kelly. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much and congrats again on so close to a record. A bunch of fantastic races under your belt. Uh, and we'll go back to Donnie. And Brad. Yep. 
and we are back hanging out Pondside, and I've had a great couple of hours catching up with my boy Brad. He has such a deep, rich, passionate history with the Royal St. John's Regatta. And look into the crystal ball. What's to come? What is the future of this amazing day on the pond and the event you guys work so hard to put off every year? Well, we're going to see uh, two amazing championship races come up shortly. Uh, we're going to see uh, some wonderful times posted, and we're going to see a lot of people come in and have big smiles on their faces. And as I said many times throughout the broadcast this afternoon, that is what it's all about. Um, you know, I know for a fact that there are people who, um, you know, want to come back next year, have already messaged me saying, how do I register a crew? Uh, I know my wife has messaged me a number of times saying, I'm never not rowing again. So uh, I look forward to what crew she's going to be on next uh, yeah, year. No doubt. Um, but you know what, we're so proud of this day. We're so proud of all these crews and all these athletes and the time and effort they've given. And of course, uh, you know, I want to thank you, Donnie, and I want to oh, thank God. all the team here at Rogers. You guys have been some of the most dedicated supporters of the Royal St. John's Regatta. You know, as a past president and as a regatta goer all my life, thank you. Um, because if you can't be here at Kitty Vitty Lake, you can be at home watching the broadcast. And uh, of course, they get to listen to you and me and <laughs> catching up and, and so on. But it's been a great day. Really it happy is. with the way things have gone. And the best is yet to come, may I say, as always Absolutely. in life. The championship race is coming up. And the celebration thereafter, and as you say, this pond will be bopping right up until past 8 o'clock this evening with all sorts of folks who are just living the memories of the effort that takes all year round to bring home on the pond here today. Absolutely. I'll, I'll say this. I hope they enjoy their evening. Um, drive safe. No drinking and driving. And, uh, of course, the boathouse is here. It's a safe place. So if anyone needs anything or has any trouble, come on down here. Someone will help you out. But a uh, big shout out to, uh, to all these crews and especially the 10 crews that are going to row in just a little while in the two championships. They've worked so hard for this and they've, uh, you know, they, they know that uh, this is their last chance to post that really, really good time. And, uh, you know, the message to all your viewers, I love the fact that you're watching Rogers today and watching us, but come on down to Kitty Vitty Lake. Yes. Experience the energy on the top of that pond for a championship race, and especially on a day like this where the weather is fantastic. Uh, that's one of the best regatta day ponds I've seen in a long time. Well, that's great to hear, and I know. And I always talk about making history, and I think that it's possible. You never know what's going to happen, and that's the exciting part about sport is you don't know how it's going to roll. And every year, there's stories to tell and amazing things that get recanted for years to come. Absolutely. And when you come down to Kitty Vitty Lake, there are all kinds of uh, plaques around Kitty Vitty Lake. Make sure you stop and check out that history. Yes. Because even, you know, from the benches to the Higgins Marquee, there is a very, very, you know, 205-year rich history down here. And it's this is our regatta. This is St. John's and Newfoundland and Labrador's regatta. Uh, we need to be proud of that. Not many organizations have survived as long as this. Not many organizations can pull together 30 or 40,000 people on a given day in St. John's. Uh, you know, we're so proud of that, and uh, and I want to make sure that this goes on for many, many years. So, encourage everybody to get involved. Right? Go to our website, stjohnsregatta.com. All kinds of information on how to uh, join a crew or start a crew. There's even a letter to help you get a sponsor. Like, there's oh so God. many supports and resources there. Uh, we're also, for you, sir. Well, exactly. <laughs> no, that's the one thing we will not do. <laughs> However, we will, we will be there cheering you on at the side of the pond, I guarantee. But also, that's any amazing. future vendors that want to come down, loads of resources online for them, too. And uh, this is a huge community. We want everybody to be part of it. And we want everybody to be proud of it. This is the St. John's Regatta. Okay? It's nothing like it. No, that's for sure. Now, Brad, final question I got to ask you. Would you get back in the boat again? So, at the top of the pond this morning, I was reminded about, uh, I think it was seven years ago, I had just finished my day at work, and there was a young crew that couldn't, uh, didn't have a coxswain to take them out. So I got out of the car, took off the suit jacket. Those people that know me know I always wear a suit, and uh, you know, you've known oh, that know all that. my life. So I took off the suit jacket, I stood in that boat, and I took those kids out for their spin. They came back, did an excellent job. Um, I've rowed a number of years myself, uh, almost seven years, right. and I loved it. Um, now that I'm finished as president of the Regatta Committee, I may go back. Is that right? I, I do think, though, I'm going to support my wife first. Because uh, I did. Commit, she loves it too. She does, and I did commit to her this morning that I would cox her crew. So oh, we, you we, did? We will see what happens. Um, I haven't coxed her crew in a long time, and uh, the last time was actually with the Masters crew with uh, the Outer Cove uh, Senior oh. Men's. And uh, with uh, Ronnie Brennan, Ronnie of course oh, has yes. passed on, but Ronnie right. is one of our uh, one of our best coxswains down here over the years, very well accomplished. And uh, so he did the race days, and I did the practice days. So, but you know what? I'll I'll 
what is it, brush off the, the booklet with the <laughs> yeah. information, and I'll, I'll uh, shake off the cobwebs, yes. and maybe I'll be out in that boat. We'll see what happens. Well, you never know, and I might say myself, you never know what happens in my life either. I mean, I always say I'm all smock, no jock, but I mean, I could find myself in that boat any day, Absolutely. too, because you're we, really weaving it for me. You're really enchanting. We would love to have you out there, Danny. It'd be a great experience, and if nothing else, Come on out and we'll we'll just take you out for a spin. You don't have to roll. Well, I would love that too, because you know I think that's an interesting um, idea is having someone be able to get in the boat. Yeah. And obviously there's some realities they need to sort of be uh, you know able to do that. But I think that's a very interesting experience. So I think that's really what's going to get people super excited is actually being able to feel the energy of that. For sure. For sure. And again, our learn to row program. You can come down, sit yes. in the boat. We'll show you you know how to hold the oar, how to, to pull the oar. We'll tell you about the technique. We'll bring you in on the ergometers and you can learn in there as well. Um, again, our website, I, I can't express it enough. There's all kinds of information on, on how to properly row and so on. Um, so anybody that's interested, just give us a call. We'd be more than happy to help. Um, our general manager, Michelle Gooby, is here. You know, She's more than happy to help people navigate that process. Um, I think uh, general at stjohnsregatta.com is our email address. stjohnsregatta.com is our website. Uh, check it out, right? And uh, as I said, uh, they open offer to you anytime. If you want to go out for a spin, we'll take you out. Uh oh, be careful what you offer, because <laughs> you don't know. And now we're here watching the screen and watching the Orkin Canada winners race number 19, and the team is looking so proud. And this is the moment for them, you know, to really stand together and say, we did it. And all the work that we put in is paying off, because look at us now. Well, I see the big smile on McKinley's face, and I spoke to her last night and this morning. And she was so excited to go out there and post a good time. And lo and behold, they did a wonderful race. <laughs> and I'm wondering how Tina, uh, Tina Ring's neck is, because that's a lot of medals around one neck today. Oh, no doubt. <laughs> yeah, it speaks to success. And I see Tina around all the time. And she lives it as well. Absolutely. We're lucky to have folks like Tina really helping to move the sport forward. And uh, Donnie, I want to I want to note before we, we go any further that the Hall of Fame uh, committee just announced two new Hall of Fame inductees, oh. uh, Ed Williams and Charles Cook. Charles, okay. of course, was on the broadcast earlier. Yes. Um, but on the back of the winner's circle is where we have all the Hall of Fame names engraved and the new ones from recent years just went up so of course i encourage everybody to come down and see those names the crews and the old committees and the individuals who of course were rowers and builders of this organization they are the true history and the true champions of the royal st john's regatta and uh, happy to see that they are um, you know going to be noted for many many years on the uh, the back of the winter circle that's amazing and that is such a beautiful installation and congrats to all involved it really has created the official centerpiece for recognition and celebration that you deserve in this this annual event Absolutely. so beautiful yeah. and what a wonderful moment for Noel uh, to present look. her daughter's crew congratulations <laughs> to them all that's oh, a proud that's mom so right there great. <laughs> look at that <laughs> this is why we put all the time and effort into it this well and exactly who knows it. who these kids will grow to be because of how this experience shapes them in all the ways and I think that's important for us to reflect it's not a standalone and you come down and you go. What you walk away with is for life. It is, it is. Many of my uh, closest friends were individuals that were in this boat with me. And I remember walking down from Gonzaga, down Randy's River Trail. Well, I'll tell you what, it's been a pleasure as always. Thank Indeed, you so uh, much. I look to forward to running into you in all the places that we do. Absolutely. But for now, final throw. We're going to do over to Mitch in just a couple of minutes. He's getting set to talk to the final crew winner to get ready for what's going to be going on. Well, yes. Oh, yes, exactly. Yes, exactly. Uh, you know, guys, I'm sorry. What's hey going there. on? Hey there. So congrats on the excellent race, girls. We'll just make this nice and quick and um, kind of see what's your name, how old you are, and if there's anything you want to thank. What's your name? I'm Olivia Neri, and I'm 11 years old. Anyone you want to thank? Um, Congratulations, Orkin Canada. My dad and the sponsor. I love that. Fantastic. Uh, my name is Kaylee, and I am 10 years old. <laughs> and I want to thank Chris. <laughs> awesome. My name is Elsa, and I'm 11 years old. And I want to thank my parents for signing me up for this. Um, my name is Mary Jane, and I'm 10 years old. And I'd like to thank both of my parents for helping me. My name is Jenna. I'm 10 years old, and I would like to thank all the coaches. I love it. My name's Hannah, and I'm 10, and I want to thank my mom. My name's Emily, I'm 12, and I want to thank Chris. 
awesome. Well, congratulations, everyone, again, and uh, have a great night. Thanks for coming on with me real quick. I appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks yeah, no problem. All right. And we're good. And thank you so much, guys. We'll be down by the pond kicking it here for the evening, but back over to you. <sighs> I know, me too. <laughs> There's a lot happening here at Kitty Bitty Lake, isn't there? <laughs> this is never enough, I'll tell you. So, Brad, final thoughts for the viewers at home before we say peace to the telecast moment here. Well, I want to thank them. I want to thank the viewers for being part of this broadcast many year after year. And uh, like I said, so proud of what Rogers has done here. So proud to see people like yourself and Jason Piercy and, uh, and others who... Uh, you know, dedicated your time and uh, as volunteers and supporters of the sport, um, you know, thank you for everything that you've done. It's uh, you're bringing an awareness to again one of the oldest traditions in St. John's, and uh, and we're so proud of what we've got here. But without the support of our media partners, without the support of Rogers in particular, we'd never be able to do it. Understood, and I do agree with you, and I appreciate that. And one thing I do feel patriotic walking around this pond because of so many folks that contribute so much. But yes. On behalf of Rogers, it's a pleasure to be hanging out here all day, reporting to all the viewers at home, and not just in the province, but beyond, using all the technological devices that we got from the smartphones right down the line. And so it's going far and wide. So anyone who's local watching this, just know that you are joined by many, many people who are obsessed with this event, whether they can be here in the province or not, they are all tuning in well, to this. A shout out to my aunts in Ottawa. Oh, there you go, good example, yeah. And of course, we've got the, the last crew. Officially? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to go. Officially throwing it to Mitch. We out. Excellent. Hello again, everyone. I'm here with the winners of the last race. So we're going to make this a little line here. And uh, tell me your name, age, and if there's anyone you want to thank. We'll start. Uh, my name is Charlie, I'm 11 years old, and I want to thank Tina. I love that. My name is Lily, I'm 12 years old, and I want to thank Tina too. <laughs> my name is McKinley, I'm 11 years old, and I'd like to uh, thank our sponsor. <laughs> my name is Billy, I'm 10 years old, and I'd like to thank my mom for getting me into this, and Tina. <laughs> my name is Lily, I'm 11, and I'd like to thank my family, our sponsor, and Tina. My name is Grace. I'm 12 years old, and I'd like to thank Tina. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm Libby. I'm 11 years old, and I would like to thank my parents and my pop for taking good photos of me. <laughs> <laughs> he took the best photos ever. I love that. Okay, now, anything that anyone wants to say real quick before we wrap it up? Yeah. We just won a regatta! Good stuff. You guys... <laughs> That is awesome. Well, you guys absolutely killed it. Obviously, you folks feel good today. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Good stuff. So what was, like, the training regime like? What What did you guys do to prepare last night? Tell me. Sleep. Uh, sleep. Good stuff. Sleep. Do lots sleep. of stuff. Woo. <laughs> I love it. Look at that energy. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, everyone. And we'll go back to Donnie. Thank you so much, Mitch. You're doing a great job over there hanging out with all the winning crews and the excitement and the thankful energy is incredible for us to be watching. Now we're done here, like I said, before we went over to Mitch, but we are going to be taking a little bit of a break. It is the luncheon at the boathouse is what you guys are going to be checking out. What goes on over there, by the way, may I ask? Lots of great speeches from our important sponsors. Oh, and of course, Lieutenant Governor was present oh, wow. and she said a few words. Uh, our President Noel, it's, uh, it's worth watching for sure. Well, tune in, check that out. And then afterwards, you know what's up, coming right on back here because it is getting down to the mat and we are going for gold. This is the Rogers telecast. It is a day at the races and we are living. My name is Noelle Thomas Kennel and as the president of the Royal St. John's Regatta, it is my pleasure to have you all joining us today at today's luncheon in recognition of the 205th Royal St. John's Regatta. Welcome to her honor the Honorable Judy Foote, Lieutenant Governor of Newfoundland and Labrador, and his honor, Howard Foote. Premier Dr. Andrew, Fur Andrew Fury and Dr. Alison Fury, His Worship Dr. Mayor Breen, 
sorry, Mayor Danny Breen. <laughs> Lisa, we do need more doctors. <laughs> and Anne Breen. <laughs> members of the House of Assembly, members of Parliament, Royal St. John's Regatta Committee members, past presidents, honorary life members, and honorary life president, Mr. Bernard Tanny Collins. Sponsors, absolutely welcome, and special guests. I'd like to introduce the head table. I'll get them right this time. <laughs> so allow me to introduce Her Honor, the Honorable Judy Foote, Lieutenant Governor of Newfoundland and Labrador and Honorary Patron of the Royal St. John's Regatta, and His Honor, the Honorable Howard Foote. The Honorable Dr. Andrew, Andrew Fury, Premier of Newfoundland and Labrador, and Dr. Allison Fury. His Worship, Danny Breen, Mayor of the City of St. John's and Honorary President of the Royal St. John's Regatta, and Anne Breen, Honorary Life President of the Royal St. John's Regatta, Bernard Tanny Collins, and representing our Platinum Sponsor, Rogers, Edith Cloutier, President of Rogers Atlantic Canada, and Anna Lawrence. Thank you. And I will do the land acknowledgement. So we respectfully acknowledge the province of Newfoundland and Labrador as the ancestral homelands of many diverse populations of indigenous people who have contributed to 9,000 years of history, including the Beothic on the island of Newfoundland. Today, this province is home to diverse populations of indigenous and other people. We also acknowledge with respect and diverse histories, the, the diverse histories and cultures of the Mi'kmaq, Innu, and Inuit. And I would like to, at this time, ask our Honorary Life President to come and give us uh, our grace for this, e this afternoon's meal. As we come together at this special time, let us pause a moment to appreciate the opportunity for good company and to thank all for whose efforts have made this event possible. We reap the fruits of our society, our country, and take joy in the bounties of nature at this happy occasion. Let us also wish that someday people on earth may enjoy the same good fortune as we share. Amen. As president of the Royal St. John's Regatta Committee, I know that I speak for myself on behalf of the entire committee when I say what an honor it is for us to have each and every one of you here with us today. A lot of time and energy and hard work on the part of so many goes into each annual regatta so having the opportunity to take the time to come together and celebrate this day with you all is a privilege. My family and I have been involved in the regatta as rowers and committee members for many, many years. My grandfather, I'm sure you've heard me say, starting his love for the sport as a rower in the garage races for rowing for McKinley Motors. Once he joined the committee, the rest was history. So much history. My mother, my husband, and myself following in his footsteps. I imagine him smiling down on us this afternoon, beaming with pride. For me, the regatta has always been about family, community, and caring for the tradition, carrying on the tradition of fixed seat rowing. And what we all love to remind everybody is the oldest organized sporting event in North America. Like so many regatta families, we recognize that passing the torch to the next generation is an important part of keeping this historic event alive. And it's for that reason, with all of the wonderful moments to be excited for today, I'm personally most looking forward, to, I, I know I can't cheer yet, but <laughs> looking forward to seeing my 11-year-old daughter row in her second regatta later on this afternoon. No bias, no bias. <laughs> I'm pretty proud mom. Uh, the Royal St. John's Regatta means so much to so many. In part, its significance is the tradition of coming to the shores of Kitty Vidi that first Wednesday in August 
hopefully, to see the races, take a chance on the wheels, and share in the spirit of community and sport. But it's also important to recognize one of the other reasons the Royal St. John's Regatta has sustained these last 205 years is its ability to adapt and embrace change as it comes. Over the, over the years, we've seen many changes in many different ways. Adaptations to the rowing shells, introdu introduction of advanced technology to capture race results, and the use of drone footage are all advancements those first few rowers and spectators never would have dreamed of. Even the nature of our races has evolved over time. Last year, we saw women competing for the first time in a long course race, and now today, we saw the first men's crew competing in a regatta short, regatta day short course. Despite the many years behind us, these moments remind us that there's still so much history to be made. I suspect, however, that the most important constant that has seen us through these many year, years is the unwavering commitment of the rowers, coxswains, coaches, vendors, volunteers, and sponsors to the sport and event that we all so dearly love. There are few better examples of dedication than the young crew making a 6 a.m. spin in the cold rain with a toque, or the people of the Hindu temple who spend countless hours pre preparing food in anticipation of each regatta day, or the coxswain who is balancing the needs of multiple crews, the volunteers who take time away from their work and families to repair boats and prepare the shores for vendors on the big day. I see all of you and I recognize that all you do to make the Royal St. John's Regatta possible, and I thank you. I also wish to thank our many sponsors who without their generosity, the Royal St. John's Regatta would not be the event it is today. In particular, I want to say a big thank you to our platinum sponsor, Rogers, for sponsoring this beautiful luncheon. Also, th thank you, yeah. <laughs> Also, a thank you to our caterer, Fireside Catering, for preparing a fantastic meal for us here today. And thank you again to all of you for doing us the honor of being our guests here today. I hope you get the opportunity to enjoy this afternoon's races and concessions and encourage you to share in the excitement of this evening's championship races. And with that, I would love to introduce, I think Her Honor, the Honorable Judy Foote, has some remarks for us as well. Thank you, Noel. So in addition to being here as the uh, Lieutenant Governor for Newfoundland and Labrador, it's a pleasure to be here as the Honorary Patron for the Royal St. John's Regatta. I'm just so thankful that this amazing volunteer committee who met at 5 this morning or 5.30 decided not to call me <laughs> for advice. I was up, but I'm glad you didn't invite me down at that hour of the morning. Thank you to all of the volunteers who work so hard, and I understand the volunteer committee is 50 persons strong. It's amazing that you come together and I know that it's not just for a couple of weeks, but it's basically the entire year. Once one regatta finishes, the other one starts. So thank you for your time, your devotion, your commitment to this amazing event. And for me, the regatta has always been a feel-good event. It's where you come and you smile the whole time you're here. You're having fun. It's a community event. And what happened today as we walked around, His Honor and I, we, we just take a lot of pride in going and speaking to individuals who are here and asking them if they're enjoying the event. But there, we ran into several people who have moved back home from Alberta. One woman in particular is living in um, Central, but wanted to come in for the regatta. She's been living in Alberta for 30 years. She said, I couldn't wait to get back home. And there are so many like me. I said, well, we want you back home. So there are many wonderful things that happen here at the regatta. And we're celebrating 205 years. Where else? Obviously, it's the oldest sporting event in North America. It's wonderful. It's the greatest garden party. 
that you're ever going to find, uh, about 50,000 people I'm told to expect. Well, we had a garden party on the grounds of Government House a little while ago. I'm glad we didn't get 50,000 people. <laughs> but I'm glad that you're getting 50,000 people. I also want to acknowledge Charles Cook and John Williams, who've just been inducted into uh, the Hall of Fame, St. John's Regatta Hall of Fame. Um, individuals who've given so much. So I think we need to be acknowledging these incredible people who do so much to make a difference in the lives of others. And that committee, that 50-person committee, is putting in so much time and talent to make a difference in the lives of all of those who gather here at uh, the lake. And when you're pond side, you get a real sense of, uh, of this is where you need to be. You know, in this wonderful city of St. John's, and it's an honor for me to be here with all of our uh, invited guests. You're all invited guests. Uh, but to have the opportunity to acknowledge, uh, and I'll leave it to his worship to talk about the impact the regatta has on the economy. Uh, but I just want to say that from my perspective, the difference that you're making in the lives of others, bringing people together, making sure we have a good time is really important. And the fact that there's so much happening that is not positive, that you are making such a difference in bringing that positive element uh, to what's happening in uh, not just here on the Avalon, but in the province as a whole. So thank you for all of your contributions. Uh, thank you for making a difference. I appreciate it. And I don't know why I'm the only one wearing a hat. Oh, no, Donnie has a hat on. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good to be here with all of you. And thank you again for including me. Um, I really enjoy being a part of this initiative and uh, starting a race and uh, his honor starting a race. And uh, I will tell you something that really does excite me is that as a first woman lieutenant governor, that we have a woman president of the St. John's Royal Regatta. And we had one other, only one other, and we're talking about 205 years. Where's Gail? Gail Malone. There she is. So I think we need to acknowledge that there are, have been oh, two. And you will understand why we were all rooting for the women teams. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. We love having you here at this event. It's great. And I'd like to invite the Honorable Dr. Andrew Fury, MHA Premier of Newfoundland and Labrador. Well, thanks, Noelle, and uh, it's an honor and privilege to, to be here today. But. Uh, before we could begin, um, this time last year we sat here and I sat next to uh, just a wonderful human being who's, who's left us since, and that's uh, John Perlin. And I think we can all feel his presence here today. I know that he's looking down somewhere and is woefully disappointed in the outfit that I have on. <laughs> as, uh, as, uh, jeans and a polo shirt uh, to the Royal St. John's Regatta, uh, but uh, he is missed and the last time I saw him was here at this event and I'm sure we all miss him dearly. I love the St. John's Regatta. It's, uh, as I said, I think last year, it's towny Christmas <laughs> filled with uh, all the magic and pageantry that's associated with such a special event. The excitement the, the night before even have our own carol with up the pond it's it's truly something that is extraordinary and unique and i'm sure seamus and joanne and siobhan and others will tell you as we travel the country people ask what is so special about this event called the regatta and it forces you to stop and think and you can really only come up with a couple of couple of different answers because it's truly magical now, is it, is it the magic of the competition and training? And I've been a part of that for a couple of years, and that's all fun. Is it the magic of coming together as a teamwork and to, and to feel the boat lift when all the, the oars are rowing in the same direction at the same time? 
Is it the magic of me pretending we won the race and my son to this day thinks we won the regatta in 2019? Is it the magic of the uni and the uniqueness of having a provincial holiday, or a, sorry, municipal holiday pending the weather announcement in the morning? Or is it the concessions in the largest garden party that exists throughout the province? Really, all of that is truly magical, but it goes beyond all of that. I think what is special and what is magical about the Royal St. John's Regatta is that it truly amplifies and exemplifies community and a sense of community and our pride in that community. So while the races are important, the concessions are important, the true magic is the sense of community and what it means to be a part of something bigger than yourselves. So that magic, although we're not going to tell the mainlanders the secret of any magical tricks, that magic requires magicians. And everyone in this audience, everyone here today, is part of making that event happen. So thank you. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for committing. Thank you for continuing this incredible tradition, this incredible legacy, this incredible magic moment not just for St. John's, not just as a towny Christmas, but indeed as something that we all celebrate as Newfoundlanders and Labradorians at home, and I have to tell you, loudly across the country. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Premier Fury. And next, I'd like to call upon His Worship Danny Breen, Mayor of the City of St. John's. Thank you very much, Noel. And first, I'd like to acknowledge my colleagues, Councillor Hickman and Councillor Bruce, who are here joining us today. Uh, first of all, uh, Your Honor, if you're having attendance issues, I think Ziggy Fry's a cash wheel in the beer tank would do it. <laughs> it's all it's always great, you know. I gotta tell you that I always I always mention to people that in our household the three biggest days of the year were Christmas Day. We're we're sorry, we're we got a day, St. Patrick's Day, and Christmas Day in that order. <laughs> and we would get so excited on Regatta Day, and we always got a new shirt. Back then, we got a new pair of sneakers for St. Bond Sports Day, and you got a new shirt for the Regatta. <laughs> so I usually phone my brother on Regatta Day and say, oh, I got a new shirt. I don't know if you got one now. <laughs> but we always, and those are just the little things. That's those memories that the Regatta gives us. And the Regatta, for me, is about memories. It's about coming down, walking down Lake Avenue and remembering seeing my father standing under the tree at the head of the pond, watching the races. We even, we were one of the first ones to put a, put a bench there with a plaque on us. It's up there now that says Peter Breen, a man who loved the races. And we'd go home and come back after lunch and mom would come with us. And uh, we were gonna put a plaque there for mom that said, for Kitty Breen, a woman who loved the cash wheel. Because <laughs> she didn't know there was a boat on Kitty Bitty. But her biggest thrill was when somebody won something at the cash wheel. It didn't have to be her. It was when one of the kids won something. And when you get back to the house, did you win anything? And if you won something, that made her day. And it's those memories, you know, and last week we we inducted uh, Charles Cook and Ed Williams into the Hall of Fame, and we have, you look at the pictures of the people who've served as presidents. Honorary President, like President Tanny Collins, who I was so thrilled to see Tanny receiving that honor. I made the comment at the uh, Hall of Fame induction that being the honorary life president of the regatta is the equivalent of a Nobel Prize for East End Towns. <laughs> And there's nobody more worthy of that honor, Tanny, and a very congratulations ag again. But I also think of other people over the years that we see around. I remember we used to know where all the, where all the boots were, Harold Herding cooking fries up, on, up at the head of the pond. And, and you know, one of my favorite memories of the regatta was when we made there a few years ago, his last year alive, Edgar Hertree was made uh, an honorary member of the regatta committee. 
and to see him that day and the joy in his face of being given that honor of something that he loved and truly loved. And I, you know, I, I don't walk past the cash wheel when I don't hear Edgar's voice <laughs> selling me ticket, babe. <laughs> I said I wouldn't make fun of Edgar. <laughs> but I, but in, in closing, I'd just like to give another thank you, it, certainly to the Regatta Committee, all the work that they do. I'm a member of the Regatta Committee. I don't do any work. They just have me around. <laughs> but I, you know, I want to thank the, this, our staff at City of St. John's. Uh, the work that goes on here in the tra planning for traffic, the cleaning up, one of the big miracles of this whole event Absolutely. is everybody walking around the bar saying, geez, why they did some job cleaning that out, didn't they? <laughs> Every year, we get a traffic jam, people coming down to see the place cleaned up. But they'll, they'll be out as soon as the race is over, they'll put the lights on, and they'll start cleaning up around the lake. But it's the pride that they take. I was down here last night, they were picking up the garbage and that. All of them had a smile on their face. They love being part of it. They love doing it. City of St. John's loves doing it for the people of St. John's, people in Newfoundland and Labrador. 205 years, and we're going to be here for 100 more at least. Thank you very much. I'll invite Her Honor up again just for one moment, if you can all grab a glass. <laughs> so those of you who were involved with the regatta last year would know that it was, of course, done to mark the Her Majesty's Platinum Jubilee. This is the first year that we have now had the regatta under the king. So if you would join me in a toast to King Charles III, please. Le voix du Canada. And last, but absolutely not least, probably the most important people here today. I am looking at my new shades on the table. I think we all got some. I would like to introduce Edith Cloutier, President of Rogers Atlantic Canada. So LOL, welcome to Regatta 2023. I'd like to acknowledge my fellow guests at the head table and other distinguished uh, attendees, and thank you for being here today. A special thank you to the catering and waiting staff. They've done an amazing job, so thank you so much. It was a wonderful and lovely lunch. So I am Ida Cloutier, President of the Rogers Atlantic Canada, and I'm thrilled to be here today on behalf of our Rogers team in Newfoundland and Labrador. Last year, it was my first time, so when I hear all this story, I get a little bit emotional because I just, it was such a great opportunity to attend Regatta, and I loved it so much that before the day was over, I told my team, we need to be back. We need to be the sponsor and take part of this very special event next year. So here we are again this year. I, can exp I cannot express how excited we are to team up the, Ro the Royal St. John's Regatta as a platinum par uh, partner and sponsor, sponsor of this luncheon today, and as a broadcast partner so that people can enjoy the races from the comfort of their home across the island. We even have a special offer, I just need to mention it, in a market right now. So stop by our Rogers tent at the top of the pond to learn more about it, our services, our special regatta discount. This is such a special event. You've tried to describe it. I don't know, it's difficult to describe, but it brings the entire community. It, it's, it allows families and friends to get together as they cheer up the rowers. I was on the water nut uh, at the beginning of the day, and it's just a very special place to be. So we're very grateful to be part of the regatta story and be able to share the races with people across the island on Rogers TV. Connecting Canadians to a world of possibility and memorable moments like this event today is at the heart of what we do at Rogers. We're working each day to expand and improve our network and services in Newfoundland. Being in St. John's, Mont Pearl, Belle Island, Grand Falls, Bishop Falls, Corner Brook, Humber Valley and Little Rapids, all to bring better and more reliable services to the people of Newfoundland. Speaking of memorable moments, I have one last job to do here today, and I'm happy to announce that Rogers has already signed on to return as a platinum partner to the regatta <laughs> next year. Thank you so much. Enjoy the races, and remember, Riz Rogers is there with you from start to finish. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you very much. And that concludes our luncheon formalities. Uh, we do have.
Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to the 205th running of the Royal St. John's Regatta. My name is Jason Piercy, and I'm here with a couple of friends and co-hosts of mine. Amanda, obviously. It feels like I haven't seen you in so it's long. It's been a while. It's been <laughs> like a while. Two regattas. I know. We that just haven't is, crossed paths. That is regrettable. <laughs> oh, and also, Laura Bell, my girl. What's up? How you doing? So we're. I'm doing well. We are here to talk about racing, uh, and I know that that's something that's deeply entrenched into your upbringing. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that you're. And mm -hmm. that, but mostly, you're here for the color commentary, the bright, beautiful spirit. And, uh, and... Just keep feeding the compliments. My head isn't big enough, Jason. So. <laughs> no, I mean, it is. But, <laughs> all right. So, when... So, I, I was here earlier this afternoon when we did the, the afternoon segment after lunch before supper. And supper, dinner, supper. We're in Newfoundland. And then to come back for the championship races this evening. So, now at 6.30, we'll have the men's championship. Correct. And then at 7, mm -hmm. uh, we're going to have the women's championship. But when I was leaving, my phone was like blowing up with all these notifications, like of different social media platforms and emails and news outlets and stuff, um, with negativity. Oh, oh no! Yeah. Why? Yeah. What? Whatever it's about. Day. Well, I, I, yeah, but it's only regatta day here. Well, forget like, anyone else. That's well, all that matters. In lots of other places, it's something else. And as I was scrolling through, I was like, "What's with? There's so much negativity." And then I had like a circumstance in my own life. And I'm gonna tell this little story here now, and I think it fits in well, because when everybody else is spitting negativity, how about we brighten things up and we say good things? There we go. So that's what this is about, okay? okay. So I'm, I'm walking by, I'm leaving, and I'm only half paying attention because I'm sort of, you know, uh, despondent and a little annoyed with all of the Crows. crappy yeah. notifications and stuff. And, like, and uh, I hear somebody say, uh, Jason, and I'm like, I'm a white dude in St. John. There's, there's a lot of Jasons. <laughs> and it gets louder. Jason. I'm still walking. Jason. Jason. And I'm like, OK, maybe it's me. So I stop. And I'm like, I'm looking around. And I don't see anybody that I recognize. I don't see anyone that I recognize. And then there's this big dude. He's got to be at least six foot five. And he's thick. He's strong. Like, he looks like. He, he looks like what I would look if I was a foot taller and went to the gym all the time. <laughs> OK. And he's making eye contact to me. He's looking me right in the eyes. And I'm, I'm intimidated. He's a big dude. And he's walking towards me. I'm like, this got to be the guy that was calling my name. And he gets up real close. And he kind of like looks down on me and into me. And he goes, um, you're Jason Piercy, right? And I was like, yeah, yes, sir. <laughs> and he takes a deep breath like he's trying to control his emotions. He goes, and I go, because oh, I'm scared. And then he says, I was the first responder out of response team six from Kenny's Pond Fire Department, um, the first person on the scene of my accident almost two years ago. Oh, wow. And he, he, his whole face softened. And I just looked at him, and he was telling me stories about stuff that I don't remember, oh, wow. and like things I was saying, I don't have any memory of it. And I was just looking at him, and I started to cry. And, and he's this massive dude, right? Like, I'm a child next to him. I'm 220 pounds, but I'm a child next to this guy. So I just look up at him, and I don't say any words, and look him in the eyes, and I just go, oh. like, like in my eyes say, can I hug you? My body just says, and we, we paused in the middle of the regatta with people going by everywhere and I'm I'm hugging this 300 Crying. pound monster of a man Aww. tears down my eyes Aww. and whereas I was leaving I was like that's the kind of brightness that you should get notifications on your phone with yeah. that's really nice so while that won't show up on anybody's phone <laughs> at least it's a story to tell oh now racing or something <laughs> well, Amanda? that's where I come in because we're so happy that he was there with you and you're here with us today because right here on the screen we have last year's champions the NTV men's crew uh, the men the long course men's top five rowing times of the day are out there warming up um, so we have NTV last year's champions who will be looking to improve on their time this morning we have the fine strokes plaster and painting uh, who are hoping to come in first across the line again as they did this morning we also and have many times over the and many years. many times before that's right 
Um, we have Capital Home Hardware with, um, they came in second this morning. And here's the NTV boys again. Uh, of course, Dean Hammond was a coxswain of M5 in 2018 and 17. Uh, and the crews on stage four and five are the Andrew McDonald General Contractor Limited and East Coast Kia, coxed by Gord Delaney. And we're looking at the, the, the people who are coxing all these teams and, and, and it's so, I won't say it's funny. I, it just, it feels like if you're sitting here and you're doing this for like 10 or 12 hours and there's things that, that you notice that come up over and over again and the, the familial legacy in rowing in St. John's and in the regatta and how you see the same last names over and over again. But, and it's gonna be the same when we get to the senior women's championship race on the short course. But for the men's race here, Craig Whittle, Kevin Greeley, Gord Delaney, Jim Carroll, Dean Hammond, these are the same names that Cox Championship crews year after year after year. And I like that because it shows how much investment it takes to become a champion when it comes to this. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll line up the, for the crews for the men's championship race. On stake one in the Pomerloo, we have Fine Strokes Plaster and Painting Limited, Cox by Craig Whittle. At the front of that boat, two seasoned brothers, James and Dan Cadigan. Eric King, Brent Payne, Adam Cavanaugh, Matthew Manning, Spears, Jamie Travers, and Craig Whittle. And we get into the, the second stake. We've got the Capital Home Hardware crew coxed by Kevin Greeley, stroke Jason Wade. In the front of the boat, we got Brad White, Doug Jackman in the third seat, Ian Power, Morgan White in number two, and Johnny Houlihan in number one, manager Dana Reed and coach Ray Cadigan. That's the Cadigan name over and over again. Okay, so introducing my first time, um, <laughs> the crew we have from East Coast Kia and Cox by Gord Delaney, who's a name that I have heard multiple times today. Um, rowing, we have Ian Morris, Thomas Dyer, Tyler Howell, um, Ty Mittelmore, Nathan Ryan, and Luke Power. And for spare, we have Riley Cadigan and managed by Charlene Devereaux. And on stake four, we have Andrew McDonald, General Contractor Limited, Cox and Jim Carroll, Stroke by Perry Duran, rowers Brian Healy, Joe McGraw, Steve Ring, Gary Squires, and Dale Kearley. Moving on up into that fifth stake, Iceberg Gold Shell. There's the NTV crew. Dean Hammond, of course, like you mentioned before, championship cocks uh, repeatedly in the past. Stroke Paul Hussey, Dexter Decker, Mike Barnes, Frank Norris, Mark Duff, and in that first seat, Blaine Edwards, spared with Chris Roach and their coach, Tyler Young, and Alyssa Devereaux, who is no stranger to <laughs> this NTV, NTV and Rogers coverage as well, and managed by Donnie Decker. That's right. We saw Alyssa out earlier with Studio Verso as they rode the exhibition race uh, to cover the men's or the God, I got to get my, that out the of my head. The, women's the long, long course. course, the <laughs> long course. It's uh, not a it's not a gender. It's a race. So, so can, while we wait for these guys to set up and we, we get ready for for the starter on it, can we talk a little bit about how we now have uh, a men's short course yep. and a women's long course or men's half course, women's full course, whatever way you want to look at it. I know that officially these are considered exhibitions. Right. Right? If they were not considered exhibitions and say um, a women's team on the short course had raced um, a, a particularly well and then the men who were on the short course, their times lined up such that they would compete against one another if it weren't in a championship, if it weren't an exhibition? Like, how does that work? Because we don't officially have records now for the first time we've ever run these, but everybody who's out there knows yeah. that if, you, if this is the first time that's ever been run, then you know you have the record, even if it's not official. Well, what it, it means to have this exhibition category is that it's giving uh, crews who would like, no matter if in the male category or the female category, to row either distance. So because it's exhibition, what it means is that if a women's crew on the long course happened to make the top five fastest crew times of the day, they still wouldn't qualify for the championship. 
okay? Yeah, yeah. E b because it's exhibition. Right, but if it were an exhibition, then it would be a further change because we've just changed the distances. I don't like it, Amanda. <laughs> I don't like it. I, I feel- You're preaching to the choir I here. I don't like it, I don't like it. Anyway, so, um, Laura Bell. Yeah. <laughs> Not your first regatta. Yes, it is. Uh, technically, we will... Yes. Right? Okay. But not your first. Okay, we'll call it second, but official first. Uh, see, see, you got... Next. What was the first one? Was an exhibition. The first was one it? was an exhibition, okay. yes. Okay. So this is your first official regatta. Yes. What's the vibe? The vibe's vibe really check. cool. Vibe check. Uh, vibe I'm down to do it again. As the first, the couple of guests would have saw the first time, we have recruited a small army. That well, will be a in celebrity a celebrity forward team. Well, I mean, I, I, when you just said that you'd be down to do it again, I, I made eye contact over here. You can't see yeah. off screen with our volunteer coordinator, Julia Perry. So she she organizes a whole lot of this. And she took her pen up and she was like, Laura Bell is in for 2005th <laughs> running of the Royal St. John's Regatta. 206 next year. Yeah. 2005th, I just 206. said. 206. For as 206. long as they will let me sit here, I well, will sit let's here. Let's talk about how long that is. 205 years, that's a very, very long time. Like, I'm I, I'm covered in gray hair now. I'm only 40. Like, how long is 204 years? Um, so Five years. It's a couple more rounds around for you. Um, <laughs> we hope you find Tucker Verlasting's water stream, whatever it was, so that you can join us again. But I would say hold firm, eat your vegetables, and maybe you'll join us. Well, I, I guess it's, it's, it's vegan or nothing. All right, uh, <laughs> the, the boys are getting lined up. We're getting ready for this championship race. Amanda, based on their their time trial numbers and then the the first heat that they went through this morning and the differences in that because there was one, was it Andrew McDonald? No, what? Fine Strokes was miles ahead of everybody this morning. So either, like, you what know, is that? maybe NTV and the Capital Home Hardware crews shut it down when they saw that they weren't in first. Maybe that explains the gap in the time, but maybe not. So and is that a strategy? Would they like save some for later in the day? Cause they well, knew they were gonna be- Well, you know, when you are rowing these two long races, uh, one in the morning and one in the evening, sometimes crews do get a bit strategic when they realize that top spot is not within their grasp. They may uh, make some alterations to their race strategy on water. Uh, so they're not, you know, killing themselves for lack of a better word uh, to come second or third. So because realistically, if because this is the entire first heat. Yeah, correct? it's exactly right. So normally throughout the day, we'll have the second long course race or the third long course race, some of the times are fast enough to squeak into the top five, but not today. It's an exact replica with the exception of stakes and boats, but bodies in the seats, exact same as this morning. And and their time, that first heat and who is in which stake, that's assembled based on time trials because th that's what you're trying to put together. That's correct? right. So okay. time trials is how they determine the order of the first races on Regatta Day. And so this afternoon, all of these crews would have returned to the boathouse or a representative. So here we go. This, the race has just started. Uh, and you could see the fine strokes coxswain there drop the toggle right before yep. the gun went off. And they're off to a clean start here now. But so in the afternoon, they would have returned to the boathouse and participated in the draw. And in the draw, they select which boats they want to row in and which uh, which stake they want to race in based on their time. So fine strokes based on the result this morning would have got their choice of boat and stake. And they chose that boat. They chose the first stake. They chose the Miss Tubular, which has set a number of records. And the Pomerloo was selected by NTV. And maybe that's a lucky choice for Dean because that's the boat we were in in 2018 when the M5 crew set the uh, So I got a question record. for you now, though, Amanda. Yeah. And, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and bet Laura, you're thinking the same thing. Maybe, let's see. Okay. You you spoke about Fine Strokes, Craig Whittle. Fine Strokes is the name of his plastering painting company. Great guy, great painter. Uh, and he dropped his toggle before the something. Can, <laughs> can you translate that? Am I not speaking English again? Yeah. No. <laughs> okay, so we went over earlier today that when the boats are lining up at the start, there's a rope that's connected to the orange starting kegs or buoys, whatever you want to call it. They're labeled one to five, the buoys. And then the rope that is connected to them, there's a handle on the rope and that handle, it's rubber and slimy and it's called the toggle. So to hold all the boats in place, those toggles are a set length. 
so that all the boats are evenly lined up and the coxswain has to hold on to that until the starter and the gunner who's starting the race sometimes they get like judy foot started a race her husband started yes, a yeah. race sometimes they get chris andrews from shani ganook like all sorts of celebs and local legends i did one once jason <laughs> piercy the likes of jason piercy starting races up yeah, there they ran out of other people <laughs> <laughs> i doubt it so you've got the closing of the first quarter here they're going through the short or the half course kegs around two minutes so that's pretty typical of a men's uh competitive men's cruise but anyway they're long past the part where they drop the toggle now and they're going past these turning kegs so if there was a half course race happening now they would be turning they would be turning these kegs as we'll see with the championship race that's happening at seven but for these top five competitive men's crews they're going on to the second quarter of the race now when they uh, approach their turn at the bottom of the pond so if we go back to the little bit of an upset this morning as as fine strokes kind of came out and like a big jump not just in in place but against their own previous time trial time it does that have you thinking given that that they pick their own boat and they pick their own stake that they're an odds on favorite you know just on the lineup of names alone in the boat i think there are so many championships between well, the Cadigan them. brothers for well the james alone. and daniel and they're rowing for their dad ron Cadigan, who is a long time participant yes. in the sport and then brent payne got the placentia blood in him and that's a long uh line of a rowing community there and matthew manning and adam kavanaugh of course members of the crosby crew that have um broken records so yeah i mean I think as as hard as not to take anything away from Capital Home Hardware or the NTV past champions, but I think I've got my money on fine strokes. Okay. Yeah. I hope I didn't lose any friends, but that's it. That's who I'm going for. I think they're going to, uh, but the question is, you know. I don't want to worry about losing the friends because it's not like this is live on television or the internet. <laughs> right. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about it. But you know, the like question anybody is, will ever see it, in, the, in their media uh, package, the Fine Strokes crew is talking about how much they have to juggle, the family life and the kids. So, but this second race, it's not just 10 minutes and you're done. They've already done this once already. Yeah. Yeah. Their legs are fatigued, their lungs are tired. So the question is could they squeeze in enough practice spins that's what they're called spins okay. and training to get that conditioning that's going to get them through this uh up the, back up the pond to the start so to the finish as a as a because you were a rower for a very long time um have you done the long course much i not much because the thing that we train for and you know perfected or mastered was that the short course so the length of the short course is 1000 225 meters and the long course 2450 meters so for for time i participated in the harbor grace regatta with the verso crew last year and that was my first official time rowing as a spare with studio verso of the long course but in slide seat the typical length of uh, a race is 2000 meters in north america some rowing regattas in europe are 2500 meters and they take about eight to ten minutes so um, if there's, if it's a slide seat race where there's no turn, yeah, I've done lots of long sure, races, yeah, yeah. but I've only done one official exhibition, uh, long course fixed seat race in Harbor Grace last year. So looking at a, at a full course like this and yeah. just imagine, like we're talking about like, like the, the course record is just under nine and a half minutes. 851.32 set by Crosby Industrial Services in no 2007. Seven. Okay. Rowing in the tubular. And you're, you're all in for that entire period of time like i i can't go <laughs> full bore at anything for any more than well except perhaps talking for any more than maybe like 15 seconds and then i'm spent like <laughs> the level of fitness we go. we talked about this and she was letting me know that some of them have been training for a year i think for me to even begin to attempt this it's a two-year training <laughs> and then a hope and a prayer because the level of not only upper body and lower body strength, but the mental strength of this, having to keep your mind in the game, making sure you're in check with the rest of the rowers to make sure that synchronicity. I, I know I don't have it. I don't have our hand-eye coordination to do mo <laughs> most things, much less this. Well, you were talking about the mental toughness. Amanda, at what point when you're going through a course like this, do you cease to exist in the world anywhere outside of what seat number 
and what cadence? Well, that, really, like, the it, whole does day, it all disappears, right? The whole day, you have to be in your own little bubble. Um, you know, there's so many people on the banks or the shores, your family, your friends, they're cheering you on. Um, but then when you get together with your crew and your coxswain starts calling out the orders, you have to shut that down and just do what you've done in practice so many times. So we see these uh, rowers coming back now. They're about to finish the third quarter of the race as they pass the half course kegs and get into the final leg of the race. And it, it looks like fine strokes might be maybe a boat length. Yeah, well, we have in this frame right now, there are three boats. So we're definitely looking at um, the East Coast Kia in the turquoise and then trying to get, oh yeah, here we go. The, so there's four boats in the frame now. I think on stake one, you're correct. Fine Strokes has a commanding lead as predicted. Uh, we're just missing one boat from the shot, so. I mean, we'd almost have to make the assumption that they, they would be later back in the race, because I don't feel as though we're. See, that little streamy shadow. <laughs> you feel as though that I feel like that there out. is something in that streamy shadow, if not <laughs> ducks. may have been okay. on the way, on the way. No, no, no oh, see. Oh, here we go, here look we go. So that, this Jason. is the fifth crew I was looking for. So he, we have closest to us is Fine Strokes, Classroom Painting Limited, and I think over there on That's stake it, five, NTV. NTV, Dean Hammond. So um, NTV you former- You this, that they could come out hard. NTV former <gasps> champions, they're not going to let this go easy and fine strokes, bunch of veterans and champions in the boat, they're not gonna let it go easy. So uh, dog fight here, they're not giving an inch, but it looks like fine strokes has a commanding lead yeah. over the NTV crew. I would love to be in the boat. Like you were talking earlier, Amanda, about how you guys had a GoPro set up when you were rowing. I would love to hear what the coxswain is saying oh. to get them pushing that hard, that insane. I don't think we can have it on air though. No, no, not at all. Like I've, I've, I've played a lot of hockey with Whittle and of course uh, the Cadogan brothers, big hockey players also. And so I'm, I'm used to hearing him on the ice. I know what he sounds like. I could probably predict what he's screaming here. However, my mom might be watching and I don't feel like it's a good idea. You know, to be fair, there's a lot, it's not all just F-bombs. Oh, there's lots of psychology, you know, every rower gets um, motivated differently and that's the job of the coxswain. And of course, in this case, the coxswain is not only the coxswain, but he's participated in every aspect of the program. Craig Whittle is the sponsor, the spare. The coach, the coxswain, um, really just giving his and all to the sport. And his body movement and feels like he's rowing. And he's again, his fine strokes, cross the line, unofficial time, 9.16-ish. Yeah, and not to, you know, let it go here, because uh, second place in the men's championship race is also a huge deal. It looks like it's going to be Capital Home mm -hmm. Hardware, who are coming in, coxed by Kevin Greeley in the blue shirts here, rowing. Um, they must have come hard down, yeah. the, down the third quarter the third quarter, fourth quarter, they had to because and, NTV and, appeared to be ahead for uh, a Yeah, there. maybe it was the angle or the shot, we yeah. couldn't see it, but I thought NTV was coming second, but they certainly just crossed the line. Third place there for NTV on stake five. And now we have racing for fourth and fifth place of the long course championships in the turquoise East Coast Kia Cox and Gord Delaney, who will also be out in the next race with his uh, women's crew, Noonan Piercy. He may have been out in every race today. It's very possible. <laughs> and Gord, as I was saying earlier, can't say enough about these great guys. They're in the under 21 category. They've been rowing together since they were young. Uh, stroke uh, Morris tragically lost his dad in the Cougar crash and you know who he's rowing for today. Of so course. honoring the legacy. Uh, and here we have in the fifth place, Andrew McDonald, General Contractor Limited. Those men also no strangers to a championship race. So great rowing by all five crews. I can only um, see the faces and whether whether they're faces of somebody who just meddled or somebody who is disappointed or somebody, it, they all have the same look of exhaustion. exhaustion yes. <laughs> and it's hard to tell if it's disgust or elation because there's, you time that so that that final stroke is the only one you have left. Yep. Yeah. So on the screen there now, or just that was in the shot that was NTV, and now we're going to the um, Andrew McDonald general contractor. So here's the NTV boys again. Of course, when you win a championship in 2022 and you come back in 2023 
and you don't. It is a little, you know, it's hard. Sure. But every year is different, and that's what keeps the regatta interesting. These, they, it's the hardest they ever trained, so they've got that motivation. A shot of the championship crew here now, fine strokes, being congratulated by their friends and family on the shore. Uh, really, I think I read an article, uh, their, their crew came together late, because as we know, they did not win time trials, but they really got their act together uh, after well, time trials. they did this morning. They did this morning, and they certainly did again tonight. So looks like they did juggle their busy schedules, get in enough training, um, and this year, Brent Payne, Matthew Manning had babies on the exact same day. No way. Yeah, so this is... Uh, there's it wasn't this morning. <laughs> it was anybody. definitely not this morning. For anybody who was wondering. I think it was in March. Yeah, so the crew's congratulating each other here. Great camaraderie uh, after a hard year of training. Um, I know Capital Home Hardware, NTV, and Fine Strokes all put in a ton of work, so it's great to see them get their moment of fame here now. I wonder where you get where you get the stamina to take like after just going I would not. full gas and now to do your victory spin and go back go across the boathouse and like that can't be easy. Well it's not so with. bad when you won and you're on the high. <laughs> See but, yeah. I would think they would be like a tugboat. I would I would <laughs> definitely as the new V2 regatta I would ask as a tugboat just lure us back to where we need to be All right, for so, the end of so it. So next year Rogers is putting in a team. Okay. And you're you're in that boat. I you're yeah, I've already boat. said I will be Cox yeah, person. Sure. For that I'm not rowing because I can yell the things yeah. to keep you all motivated and get your head in the game. <laughs> we might have to go high school. So musical this torture. is a great <laughs> shot of the young uh, Kia intermediate or the under 21 crew coming up on Andrew McDonald general Cra contracting and some of the members of that crew they were in championship and record setting crews in the 90s. Oh wow, so okay. You might refer to it as the late 1900s. Come on, <laughs> oh, here. do not. The late, late 1900s. 1900s. Oh. <laughs> and the 2000s. So we have names like, uh, you know, Jim Carroll, whose daughter was also rowing today, uh, Steve Ring, Gary Squires. They've been around forever. And you, once you get the rowing bug, like yes. Laura Bell was saying, you get bit and you're back year I, after year. Jim has been sitting at this desk with us year after year for and, and helping to commentate much like yourself. And uh, and yeah, it's always great to see him around us. And it, to know that he's still a part of this and he's one of those legacy families. Carol, Ring, Cadigan, Barrington. Devereaux. Like oh, Devereaux. Yeah, there's so many yeah. of them, right? <laughs> but there's, uh, there's the boys. Yeah, and their crewmates, for, you know, like uh, the Steers Insurance crew described this year's crew as a version of their crew. And of course, this is another version of the Fine Strokes crew because um, we see old members or members of this crew like Brent Hickey, Mark Perry, they're down around supporting, but for one reason or another, they couldn't commit to uh, being a permanent crew member this summer, but certainly there's uh, lots of others supporting them from afar. Going by the timing tower here now. Everybody cheering about. You can hear the crowd, like even from sitting here, how excited they were as they were crossing the finish yeah. line. So I have a question, Amanda, as a regatta newbie. We say the running of the of the race, but we're rowing. So can someone please explain running versus rowing the race to me? <laughs> That's a great question. The the rowing of the race, the running of the rowing race. Oh, well, yeah. it's the running of a spin, which also makes no sense. Yes. Yeah, spin. Actually, that's a, cause people are like, oh, I have I have a spin, I have to go. It's like, oh, you're in a cycling you're, you're club? A cyclist, <laughs> you're yeah. a cyclist. But the spin, for the viewers at home, a spin is what we call um, the practice times. And they are booked. It used to be in the olden days, they'd be booked on a chalkboard. You come down and sign up. Then it, switched, days? Then it switched to the telephone. We'll get Owen Devereaux okay. on here to tell you about <laughs> <laughs> Him and Roz met at the chalkboard, and now they book it all online on Verabook. But and the, the spins are 45 minutes and not 35 minutes. Another change that's happened recently. Okay. Yeah. Well, there we go. Now, final. No, well, we'll call this final for right now. Newbie question. Okay. So when we started, we said that they did the like a ballot to figure out what boats they were going to be in and what stakes they were going to be in. So the first race was that just pre-picked for them, or did they get a chance to decide what they were doing? Jason, do you want to take this one? I, I, that, I, I will take it. Um, be, so you're going to get what you asked for. I don't know if you're going to want. Will it be right? I don't know if you're going to want what you get. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say that that's based off of the same information, just as opposed to the times of the first heat dictating who 
what you know the ballot for who picks boat yeah. and who picks steak. It would have been done off a time trial. Exactly. Hey. Way to go. Jason, I think you're well, It's like six, seven years at this now. I'm getting there. <laughs> I'm getting there. Thank you, Roger. Okay. Yeah. I took you under my wing and Ty <laughs> all I know. <laughs> Not quite. But you know, you know a lot more about this than I do. So I'm really I'm I know we're gonna take a minute here before we get our, our championship ladies all lined up. We got medal presentations and stuff. I'd like to take a moment to remind everybody that you're running out of time to win the barbecue. All right? Exactly. So the Rogers, the Rogers booth is just up at the at the top of the pond. You wanna go in there, you wanna win that barbecue. Stainless steel. It's from it's from the Home Depot. Not just any Home Depot, the Home Depot. There it is. Look, it's stainless steel. Shiny. What did I tell you? Look at that. Like That's Megan at least Stallion. five burner style things that I see there. <laughs> right? Exactly. That one will cook your burgers. And invite us if you win, because we have reminded you multiple times that you deserve well, this barbecue. I mean, if you if you think about it, this barbecue has been in the making since 1818, <laughs> when the very first exactly. St. John's Regatta was held. I don't even know if it was royal at that point. Were I'm milking we? the barbecue too much. It's I'm always been royal. Why don't we thank Steel Hotels and Spirit the Spirit of, of Newfoundland for keeping us fed yes, with yes. delicious food all day. Thank you so much. It's been a great day here at the Rogers Tent. New location this year. Last yes. year we were in the middle of everything, right near the winter circle. But so, I, what do you prefer? What do you think? As, because as a newbie, yeah. I'm gonna say here. Yeah, what? Well, she has no comparison. I, but let's let's so take the fresh eyes. To this. <laughs> What's with Amanda? Amanda is using her legacy of regatta knowledge. Fair. Okay. Okay. But I'm gonna say I'm happy with here because if we look behind us, we can see the winner's circle and area without having to be in the chaos. We can watch well, the crowds go by okay. and okay. still be part of the conversation. Speaking of winner's circle, we're gonna fill some people with some people. We're gonna fill the window circle with some people shortly. Here are your official race results for the Senior Men's Championship. So Fine Strokes Plaster and Painting at an official time of 9.15.71 took off three seconds from wow. their time this morning. Impressive. And a whole load of time, a boatload of time off their time trials time. Second place as we saw Capital Home Hardware. So this morning they rode 9.51, their time trials was 9.39, and just now they rode 9.34.62, so potentially a new best time for them. Um, oops, nope, that was a mistake. Capital Homer Hardware this morning rode 9.42, and in time trials they rode 9.35. Still a maybe a new best time, because they rode 9.34 yes, just now. Yeah. Right, so NTV, they rode 9.41 in the championship race, compared to this morning they rode 9.51, East Coast Kia just now did 1021, and this morning they did 1020, almost the same. Andrew McDonald General Contracting, 1022 this morning, 1029 right now. Five very impressive season competitive championship crews right there. I mean, the only way I think that Five Strokes could have done better is probably if, like, I was in their boat. Oh, probably. Okay. Or me. So is the gauntlet going down again? Speaking of Five Strokes, here they are. There's the guys with their high fives, with their hugs. One of two Catering Brothers. There's the other one. You know, people probably recognize James because he has a communication. He's a celebrity. He now. has a communications yeah. role with the Royal Newfoundland Constabulary, so That's right. he is no stranger th to the television. And maybe we should get him over here one day. I think we should absolutely <laughs> do that. Yeah. However, in order for him to do that, he's gonna have to put his oar down and stop <laughs> winning championships so that we can we can pull him away from that. I don't think but, we'd win that that uh, toss up. I mean, he's he's still got he's still got a lot of years left in him. Yep, that's right. And so we can see the um, all the men's crews now when they get back to the shore will congratulate each other on a great season, uh, a great race, a great two races, a great day. Because, um, you know, they're going to see each other, other all again next year. So awesome. And that's the young Penny Kia crew who yeah, scored so Delaney Cox. You say they're, they're early 20s? Is that, or they're uh, under 21? Yeah, they're, um, they have some new categories. So it used to be, uh, and I'm a fan of these new names, but it used to be Midget Juvenile Intermediate, and now they have categories the under 16, under yeah. 21, under 18, under 16, under 14. Another, I think, progressive and positive change. I like that. It's so more descriptive. Are, right? It, yeah. it's, it's easier to understand. It's, it makes it more um, approachable. Yeah. It makes yeah. it more digestible. If I were to sit here and talk about you know, it, hockey is the same way, squirt and Adam and midget and peewee, yeah. and, and sometimes you don't know what that means. So under 21, under 18, under 16, you have an idea of who those persons are. Yep. So that under 21 team, 
the the East Henry Coast Kia. Kia. Yeah. yeah. So they've been rowing together for a couple of years now. Mm -hmm. And they're already in the first heat and in the championship race. It's huge. Yeah, they're so where, the future of the regatta. Where are they, they going to be? Who is going to be winning and breaking records when when we're sitting here with one of the Cadigan brothers? <laughs> when the Cadigans uh, uh, retire, right? Yeah, that's. Yeah. I mean, it it's got to be the, these guys now. Whether they're they're still East Coast Key or not, I mean, that remains to be seen. But because people do move around sometimes, mm -hmm. but obviously they're they're starting early. They're learning things. They're sticking around, and learn what you learn when you lose is a whole lot more valuable in life in general than what you learn when you win. Absolutely, and they now have a taste of what it's like to row once in the morning and then manage your mm. whole day and whole regatta experience around coming back for the nighttime race. Yes. And once you experience that, you don't ever want to not, you don't want to miss out. Yeah, but I also feel like that's a different experience when you're under 21 than it is when you're 40. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. I mean, the exhaustion like, level might like, not kick in I was, as heavy. I was here for a couple hours in the afternoon, then I had to come back at 6.30, I was like, I need a nap. <laughs> So did I. We took a nap. <laughs> <laughs> around. I drank two Red Bull. <laughs> Shout out to Red Bull. Can I get a sponsorship? <laughs> if it's what's keeping you running, I'd say yes. <laughs> so we've got our, well, we're going to have some conversations with, with some of the, the men's teams, so maybe even some of their family, some of the championships. Uh, but we also have our women's short course championship coming up in a little bit. Exactly. And so, um, some repeat performers in that. We are going to see Gord Delaney, who was just out with East Coast Kia. He'll be out with his Noonan Piercy crew. And we have the High Flow Drolic. You know, if they win this championship, that will be four consecutive years of championship rowing um, races for them, which is a new milestone. Uh, so, but th that means the pressure's on. And they've got two, three good crews nipping at their heels. So this is going to be a super exciting race to watch. And they've been... Uh and they've been close to the top for a long time, time, and to finally have somebody coming in, to like nipping at their heels like that. And so we're gonna get we're gonna get to them real soon. But in my ear here right now, we've got some family members awesome. from from with with Mitch and with Lori Lydia Loveless, who we're gonna have a conversation with. And I think this might be one of the first times that we've done this to speak to the family live on air of somebody who just won a championship or won a medal. And I think it's great, Mitch, Lori. Let's see. Excellent, thank you so much. So Mitch and I are here now with some family members. Excellent, so first we'll get you folks to introduce yourselves. Um, so today with us, we've got... Landon White. Excellent. And I'm his dad, Mark. Fantastic, well, thanks for chatting with us, Landon and Mark. Um, it's been a long day. Have you folks been here like the whole day cheering them on or what? We were actually ticket number one in the parking lot over there uh, first thing this morning, so yeah. <laughs> wow. <That's> and amazing. <laughs> That is some absolute dedication. I yeah. cannot believe it's it. My father and I's tradition since I was very small. Yeah, we're always the first ones here. Uh, my family's been in the rowing for years and years and years. My grandfather's a Hall of Famer, so it's been in our family. It's just something that we do. Yeah. That's incredible. So, how does it feel to like you know be here and seeing your your brother you know do the races? Yeah. How is that for you? Uh, it's fantastic. Um, within our family, we've had, oh, my, my family's huge, uh, and every one of us has at some point got in, into, the, into the boat. Um, we always joke and say that we don't really have family reunions, we ever get us. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, I love that. So, do you roll yourself? Uh, I gave it up a couple years ago. Uh, when he got a little bit older, I took some time because it is uh, extreme dedication. However, my brother, he just rode in the championship race. They came second, and my uncle steered that same boat. Uh, and that's uh, so Kevin Greeley's my uncle, and Brad White's my brother. Oh, wow. So it's a family affair. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So, Landon, I have to ask, are you going to take up the mantle? It seems like we've got quite the kind of uh, the heavy hitters um, in the family. Do you think that you're ever going to get into rowing? Uh, yes, probably in a few years time, but mostly yes. <laughs> Good stuff. I absolutely love to hear that. Um, we've seen a lot of rowers today where it's kind of like a family affair. It certainly runs like in, in the blood and I'm finding that it definitely takes a certain kind of person. You hear about the trials on the lake. You hear about the practice that goes into it. Folks who really dedicate most of their lives to like coming here today and doing it. Um, 
And that's absolutely fantastic. So it's nice kind of like cementing that with you folks here at the for end. Sure. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for meeting with us. And we're going to go now to Julia and Donnie. Jason. All right, here we are back again. Thank you, Lori. Thank you, Mitch. Um, this is Julia Perry. They were just talking to a family member of one of the rowers, and they're talking about family and legacy and the involvement and how it's in your blood. If there is something that can be said to be in the blood of Rogers TV St. John's, it is volunteerism. And Q, Julia, volunteer coordinator. Hello, thank you. Hello, Hi. Folks. It's been a fabulous day. We're just so happy to be here. Congratulations to all the winners and to all the participants. And a special and thank congratulations you. congratulations to the losers, too. Well, the participants. That's hard to do. Anyone that participated. That so badly, Any, anyone that participated. We want to congratulate them all. And people behind the scenes, the regatta committee, everyone. But a special shout out to our amazing Rogers TV volunteers who have been here through the day. You know, we went on the air 7 a.m. We got a 20 page running order. We got, you know, fabulous hosts, commentators, camera people, behind the scenes. We got our uh, production crew doing graphics and, you know, it's just our, our production assistants. Uh, it's been a fabulous day. Um, and we got you, yeah. Julia. Well, you know, I'm here we because I love you all and it's just a <laughs> fabulous day. So thank you to everyone and uh, enjoy the rest of the, the races. Oh, we can't wait. Not only can yep. I not wait to enjoy the rest of the races, I can't wait to enjoy the rest of the food mm -hmm. that Oh that my goodness! New plan is yes. for us, and yeah. I'm, I'm taking some. I'm taking Sam. If you're watching, I'm bringing home sandwiches, baby. Yes, I'm gonna, chili. I'm gonna do it. It's chili. Yeah. It's, I'm taking it's chili. chili. You can it's have chili. sandwiches. We had All fabulous. Right. Right. Yeah, we had fabulous catering from Spirit of Newfoundland. And I mean, I feel um, like obviously yeah. there must be a hotel room waiting for us down at Steel. Yeah. And Obvious, <laughs> like John, Mr. Steel. Sorry, <laughs> Mr. Thank Steel. You That's so what you much. meant, right? <laughs> Our fabulous sponsors. Yes, and the Home Depot for the barbecue. And the hotel. Can't wait, to tell, can't wait to tell somebody that they yes, want it. somebody get the barbecue and we'll be calling you to let you know. I'll deliver it. Yep. I will. That means he's staying <laughs> for food. So just in case he shows up at your door, please have an extra burger for him I'll or like a steak. hot dog. Don't what am I? Be, Jason. I'm delivering a barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> Least they can awesome. do is give me a steak. We're having fun. And that's now, all that matters. So you see the back end of all of this massive production, mm -hmm. Julia. And Lord, like you've been here, like you were here longer than me today. You were uh, here, uh, the crack early, of dawn. Crack of <laughs> dawn, <laughs> bright yeah. and early. Yeah. At least yeah. they let me sleep in. So you guys have seen all of this all day, much like for weeks. Lori, not only all I know, day. Yes. Our crew have been working on this for weeks. How the line and setting stuff yeah. up, and and I don't know. I don't know if everybody at home no. who watches knows that like almost everything, almost everything yes. that Rogers TV St. John's puts on the air or produces in any capacity yes. comes 98.3%. Uh, that's specific. I did math on it earlier. <laughs> you Let me did. check. Yeah. You did. Mostly, comes mostly from volunteers. We'll check that later. Yeah. Yes. It's very true, yes. right? Yes. Uh, you know, our volunteers are doing programming. Our volunteers are crews. They can learn how to be camera people. They can learn how to be hosts. You know, there's... I mean, it's I, amazing. You can go to Rogers. Let's do this. Also, <laughs> yes. You'll teach me one of these days. Uh, one yeah, of these sure. Time for a shout out to anyone out there who wants to volunteer. Oh yeah, join no, us. Absolutely. Come down. One hundred percent. Go you to RogersTV.com. Jason needs a break, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm holding in there. It's okay. See why I love working here? Because you guys. You know, your guys are great. Yeah. Aww. Yeah, all our bomb are fabulous. Yeah. She kisses? Aww. I got the best Aww. job, You're Jason. So you I'm do. Like, like, you I keep us in check. We will oh, yeah, be we're like, you rearranged know. like people I mean, wandering without you. It. Okay. I, I, I kind of still am. Yeah. I don't you really... are. She is your adult. <laughs> I, well, I mean, okay. I'm not my own I call adult. myself mom to everyone around You are. You keep us in line and out of trouble. You're also a friend. Yes. Okay, so we do have another race coming up. We do. Okay. We've got the women's championship race. Yes. And for the for the half course, for the short course. And before we get to do that, of course, we're gonna set up all of the stakes. We're gonna talk about all the crews. We're gonna probably we're gonna get Amanda to come back because she mm. knows lots of it racing. Because I know nothing. And I mean we're we're like we can fill some time. We can say thank you to some people that we care about straight from our hearts. Um, but we, we gotta bring the pros in for some information about yes. racing again. So before that happens, yes. 
I want to ask you. Okay. Okay, because you've been around for a little bit too. We were talking about this yep. earlier. We have moved. Right. Okay, so we're up here now. Mm -hmm. And we're a little bit further away from the winner's circle. We're not in the crowd. It makes the production process of things, the audio, the video, it makes that stuff a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. Right? From, from a Rogers TV perspective. Yes. I kind of miss being down in the vibe. <laughs> like in, in, the, in the winner's circle where I could hear people like cheering and grunting and groaning and you could smell the hot dogs and the sweat. So I don't know why I said that last okay, time. Okay, yeah. <laughs> but, but I kind of, I, I, I like that energy. I, know, I like this too. I very much do. But I did really, really like that energy. And uh, so maybe I can get down there one of those times and be back in I, the hot dogs. I think this is his way of saying he would like to join the Winner's Circle team with Lori and Mitchell next year. And he's ready to do the 16 hours of standing well, we, in that circle. <laughs> and okay. take these notes right. down for him. Now, Julia, thank you so much yes. for everything you do with thank Rogers. You thank you for we'll coming let it get on with the race. The world appreciates thank you. you and your work. Let's talk about the Kent Amateur Senior Women's Race. So. In our first stake, the Da and Burke crew, Coxon by Denise Carew, stroke Lindsay Freeman, that's Megan McCabe, Beth Davis, Megan Saunders, Amanda Muse, Katie Breen, Spare Nicole Saunders, and their coach, Jack Fagan. And also, Welcome back, Amanda. Thanks, guys. Did you miss me? Absolutely. I did miss you. <laughs> On stake number two in the Palmer Lou, we have Smith Stockley, Cox by John Barrington, stroke Maggie Carew, rowers Anna Barrington, Hannah Martin, Mackenzie Cal, Tessa Thorne, Mel O'Brien, spare Wilhelmina Martin, coach Wilhelmina Martin. Okay, and in shell number three, we have the Miss Tubular crew, Noon and Piercy, who we've been talking about all day already. Cox by Gord Delaney, back again. Stroke by <laughs> Krista Brown. Um, rowing, we have Laura Roche, Carrie Ann Ennis, Allison Jones, Jennifer Carroll, and Kayla Cadigan, and coached by Zach Meany. Gord Delaney is a fan of Miss Tubular. Like that boat, if he gets a chance, that-, that mm, It's like, going home like, with him. Right? Absolutely. So, High Floor Drolic, who is uh, no stranger to the women's championship race in Iceberg Gold. Coxon, Robert Roach, stroke Catherine Kelly, been around for some time. Teresa Butler, who has always been killing it and won lots of records herself. Nicole Hamlin, Jenny Wadden, another name that's been around a long time, Wadden, Sarah East, Tracy Roach, and of course their spare, Ellen Glidow, Glido? I had that this morning, I wasn't I'm sure I'm not either. sure, and Anna Walsh, of course, being their coach. And on stake number five, rowing in the Dictator, is the Cal Group, Cox and Haley Ivany, and rowing in that boat, these uh, women have been rowing together for a number of years, stroke Shannon Driscoll, Stephanie O'Quinn, Heather Gillis, Courtney Langmead, Hannah Burton, Jennifer Kryzak, Spear, Lindsay Hallwell, and coach Andrew Williams. So what's interesting is in, in the previous race, in the men's uh, uh, full course championship race, there's an NTV crew. Yep. And in, in this women's short course championship race, there is no NTV crew, but there are, are a couple of NTV... NTVers. NTVers. <laughs> yeah. Yep. On competing in com on competing crews, yeah. So that's that's somewhat interesting. It's almost like NTV wants to be like like the premier sponsor or something. When clearly it's Rogers. That's Rogers. Hey, we're best friends. We're sharing camera feeds yeah, with I NTV. Know. They're doing us a solid. I know, but I figure if I, needs if, a little competition. If I, if I say if I say <laughs> enough inappropriate stuff, I, they won't make me come back and do it over a year. And that's your way of ending in the winter circle, this. Jason. Sixteen that's hours not, standing. Not we're gonna kick circle. you out next. <laughs> I can't wait. I gotta pee. It'll be great. <laughs> I think it's really important to remind everyone that the crews who are out warming up now. Uh, there was less than a quarter of a second between the first and second place teams this morning, and anything can happen uh, in the, until you've crossed the finish line. So, yes, High Flow Drolic are the favorites going in, but this is going to be so tight. I, I'm so excited to watch this race. It's going to be super nerve-wracking nail-biter. It was the nail-biter that got me hooked, so yeah. I am equally as committed to this. And now I know I couldn't say I had, like, favorites or someone I was hoping to win, but I have to say the crew with some NTVers, I know a couple of the rows and now I really want them to win. But this is off the record on the record. Off film the record on forever the record. forever on the internet because <laughs> nothing on the internet dies. That's true. Which which maybe maybe that means that I should probably clean up my sense of humor a little bit. Clearly I love being here. I'm a big fan <laughs> of it. I like to do it. I like to have fun. 
And one of my favorite things about it, because I'm such a community guy. I thought that's, you were going to say like comedian. My, no, <laughs> that, that no, too. No, those guys get paid. <laughs> no, I'm, uh, I'm such a community person. And collaboration is a massive part of community. And we talk a lot about all the volunteerism at Rogers that allows for these kind of productions to happen. But I don't know if everybody realizes that it also all of the feeds, all the recording, all of the filming, all of the drone stuff, all of the cable and what, that's all collaboration across all the media, everybody, mm -hmm. all of the media stuff. We all share the same information and we're all fans and we all trade cookies and lunches in between because our vans are next to one another. We're so, trading cookies, that's what true. we're doing yeah. here. Well, at I mean, the I've, done done it. I've done it. Sharon Snow took my cookie. <laughs> no, you know, speaking of, let's talk about, um, you mentioned the NTV, so we have Amanda Muse, which many, many of the people who are watching would watch her on the NTV broadcast nightly, I would say, and she is rowing it with the Daw and Burke crew, so not only an accomplished journalist, also an accomplished Very rower. Yeah. We also have Katie Breen, who is with CBC. Yes. Um, Heather Gillis was formerly with NTV, but I her. believe now she's with CBC or government. Or I think CBC. Well, I mean, I think you could create an argument that the CBC is the government. I mean, they're, <laughs> Stop. They're, they're funded. Let's not make it political. <laughs> anyway, Heather Gillis is married to, um, in the NTV boat, Blaine, who just rode his second race of the day, Blaine Edwards. Uh, so lots of couples, lots of, you know, family started here at the Royal St. John's Regatta. We have the Carew family represented here. Denise Carew is in the boat closest to us. Coxing, woo! <laughs> well, I mean, okay. So, so you wanted for, the winner's circle. I know. I know. I said I wanted the energy and the noise of the winner's circle. So somebody just that, that just came by, and uh, hands in the air, yelling and screaming. You probably heard them through our mics, but they didn't realize that they weren't on camera, and I feel <laughs> bad for them. I wish, I wish they were. So we're getting ready for this championship race. Coxins are lining up. They're holding on. The so toggle. The whole man of the toggles. No, I did not. We, this just in. Holy cow. We heard that the high flow hydraulic stroke, Catherine Kelly, is out with a shoulder in injury, oh, which oh is goodness. a huge deal. It makes this a game changer. So I'm just going to go over for the people watching at home. The gun just went. You saw an early start by the people there on stake two. The people in the purple, that is the Daw and Burke crew who's been winning everything this year. So they'll be pouring their hearts out trying to come across before high flow hydraulic, who we just learned is rowing on stake four, but they had a last minute crew change. So their stroke, Catherine Kelly, has had an injury to her shoulder and we've been told someone else is rowing. So maybe if we could get a look at them, this in the white is the Noonan Piercy crew, uh, stroke by Krista Brown, older sister of Nikki Carew, who is here watching. Uh, after punching a tough day. So shout out to Nikki Carew and the Carew family who is here supporting her. And in the yellow is High Flow Drawlix. So the crew with the last minute change, so we've been told, is still uh, looking like they're pulling out ahead. And it's not like a last minute change to, and I mean, when we're talking about former championship teams and people who compete uh, and, and to do really well. So it's not like there's a weak member of the crew, but to lose Catherine Kelly, to lose your stroke, to like that's, that's right before your championship race yeah it's a kind of a big deal but i mean that i don't know how involved their spares have been their spares are listed as ellen glado who rode with them last year and she i believe um rode on the mainland as we say but i don't know how much she's been training this year so um you know we'll see if they can sustain their um four years in a row of championship races with this this is hard on the head to be honest it's like you have a plan for the day yes. six people you envision your race about how it's going to go and then all of a sudden boom you're rolling with the punches you're having to change up your lineup so we'll see how well they can adapt so the the placement of Catherine in the boat where she's sitting in the boat how how does her absence because because you're talking about um, you're you're very much in your head. You're only in the moments, right? And you've done this same thing over and over and over again. And now the person who used to be is not there anymore. It's a different person. Like, how much does that affect you as a competitive rower? Well, I'm not sure what they've done with their lineup, but certainly having the stroke seat change is a big deal because 
if you're at the back of the boat where I sit, and yes. number one, no one's looking at your back the whole time. No one's looking at your so, hair. No one's yeah. looking at your braid. But Catherine is up there in sixth seat, and everyone is used to following her lead. Um, so this will be, I don't know, maybe they've moved um, possibly Nicole Hamlin, who rose in four seat. She may be moved up in six. Uh, I'll have to get a close look and see um, what the lineup is looking up in, well, like in the I high mean, flow boat. I, I hope that we can get that. I hope we can get close enough so that you can say, oh, I know who this is. And then we, because that'll give us some more context. All I'm thinking is just the mental game that now changes for the entire row team. It's just sitting there trying to figure out, you knew, does it, does it cause a psychological shake about the oh, rest of the rowers now thinking, maybe this is going to be the thing that throws them off their game. Because we talked about the synchronicity of knowing who's rowing and when they're rowing and feeding off that energy. Is that is the whole energy in the boat now off? And But we also talked about maybe the spares have been as committed to the team yep. as the other rowers. And what does it do for your competition? What does it do to the people in the stake next to you and on the other side of you who are like, wait, Catherine's not there. Exactly. And like, what are the rules about when you when you announce that? When you make a change to your lineup, when do you have to do that? When, like, what are the rules? Well, as that... long as the spare is listed and registered as part of your crew, you can switch in and out um, at will. But it looks like the high flow hydraulic crew is not being harmed by um, the last minute lineup change because at this angle, it looks like they have the lead as they're rowing by the boathouse here into the fourth quarter. So the high flow hydraulic crew has on uh, high visibility yellow tank tops and they're in stake four. So they are committed to that row and it doesn't seem like the change in stroke has affected their ability to compete or their synchronicity. Exactly. And they have a couple boat leads from what I can tell, the drone footage would be the definer for yeah. us, but it seems like Oh, it's the, about oh, a half, oh yeah, now it's about we have. Yeah, it's about a half a boat length and yeah. it looks like Don it, Burke is second. And by the changing up now. Yeah, well, when the lay of the land changes. So they're at the marquee. The crews are now starting their finish. They're bumping up their stroke rate to try and um, make sure they expend all their last moments of energy. So this is a high flow hydraulic crew. So that looks like I think they do have Ellen on six seat. Yeah. Nicole is in four. Uh, Teresa is in five. And so it looks like their spear just set right in. Um, in Catherine, Catherine Kelly's must be um, having, you know, cheering on her crew from wherever she is watching because you know she, her heart is in this boat as they take it across the line. Great rowing from the high flow hydraulic crew as they row to their fourth consecutive championship. Great rowing oh, by see, high that's flow that's fantastic. My question now would be, as a spare, do you practice in every seat? so that if you have to be thrown in at any point, you're prepared to be any of the rowers? Would, or do you practice for any particular seat when you're a spare? Oh no, you have your same seats and you stick to them. So I'm just gonna repeat, we have Cal Group coming across here in fifth, fourth, fourth place in um, the Noonan Piercy crew came across fourth with Gord. Um, in second place after the high flow hydraulic crew, we had Daw and Burke. And then in the uh, black, they came in third. That was the um, the Smith Stockley crew. So the under 21 women who. So John Barrington is their coxswain. They came in third. But also we have John Barrington, who's John Barrington's father, who is the um, at the um, in the safety boat at the bottom of the pond. So the high flow hydraulic women celebrating here, fourth championship in a row. Super pumped. Super excited. Last minute lineup change, wow. They really pulled through there. So that was the nail biter we were predicting it would be, especially with that change of seats and the captain being out. So I say this was a true and true thorough win for high flow and hydraulic. Yeah, they really rose to the occasion here and they're celebrating as they should be. Uh, they had an awesome row, an awesome day. So in the number three seat there on the high flow hydraulic, Jenny Wadden, who is a uh, sister of Katie Wadden, uh, the Wadden's no strangers to championships here for regattas and rowing. Uh, Tracy Roach is in the one seat. You can see the crowd is absolutely going wild and congratulating them as they do their victory lap, we'll call it. Absolutely. And we have Sarah East also in the boat, Nicole Hamlin, Teresa Butler, 
And as we were just advised at the last second, Catherine Kelly, due to a shoulder injury, the stroke of the uh, dominating high flow hydraulic four years of short course champions in a row, um, sat this one out due, uh, due to a last minute injury uh, and was replaced by their spare Ellen Glido, but it did not harm the crew as they rose to the challenge and crossed the line first. So we have Lori standing by with another interview from somebody from our previous race and have a conversation about that. And then when we come back, I've got, I got some thoughts. And I, oh. I, I want to I, I quickly bring it on it. <laughs> but first, but first. Buckle up, folks. Here is Lori Lydia. <laughs> he has some thoughts. <laughs> Thanks so much, and we are here with Jennifer today. So Jennifer, how are you enjoying the races? I love them. I love the regatta. That's excellent. So do you come to the regatta all the time? Is this every year? I never miss it. That's amazing. So what's your favorite part about the regatta? Do you have traditions that you do or family and friends that you meet up? I love everything about it. I love the games. I love the food. I love the races. Uh, I love everything. I love the bandstand. Yep. Everything is just so great. So, you know, after this, we're going to get some food. So is there anywhere that you would recommend? Oh, yes. Uh, if you haven't had Hindu Temple, I don't know if that's still open, but I had that around 1130 a.m. Uh, so, yeah, this is my second time here today. Oh, yeah. I was going to say you were here very early. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. I came this morning and back for the races. Excellent. So what's your plans for the rest of this evening? Oh, who knows? Uh, I'm here to watch my friends give out the championship trophy and so i'll photograph them and uh yeah we'll take it from there that sounds great well thank you so much jennifer and i hope you enjoy the rest of your day back to you 46 36. thank you okay. so much Lori. and also Thanks. how about that shirt i love the regatta too do you <laughs> i do too sure? <laughs> how are you doing we miss okay you like so so back to what i was saying saying earlier all right so we all know how it would feel to be the spare that gets the call up because the, stro the stroke can't go. Yeah. Okay? And what you're feeling and that intensity and that drive is, is everything I've waited for. Like, you're the understood at study and it's like time to go on stage. Like, this is the moment. Obviously, that would have been, like, very empowering and you take a lot of that, that juice and, and you turn it into a victory. But what was it like to be Catherine? Uh, I was just told she's here, so she's on site watching the races um, with her injury. But just to speak a moment, you, you, the Spears, um, she may be the under, understudy because she's not a permanent crew member, but uh, a very accomplished rower. So Ellen has raced at very high level national competitions. Um, so this, you know, competition is her thing. So I think she was ready to just jump in there when her team needed her and it's a nice feeling to be wanted like that so um yeah you just roll with the punches and do what you can i think it's more than a nice feeling especially now that they have the championship title i'm going well, in retrospect <laughs> yeah like looking back at it you could be like yeah it was, everything was fine it was great i was amazing but there had to be a moment there like that's got to be a hard decision it's got to be a hard decision if you're the stroke and you're like i'm not 100 percent but how much am i can I row at 90? Can I row at 80? Can I row at 75? Like, at what point can I not go? At what point in, am I hurting our team and our three, four, five years in a row of, of placing first? At what point am, am I hurting us and our legacy? Mm. And that decision-making process probably gets a whole lot easier when the people that are waiting to take your seat are of the caliber. Well, I was just going to say it's excellent that they had that spare to draw from because this happened to us, our stroke. Katie one had an injury in her ribs one year. We were rowing in Placentia. She rode the morning race. It didn't feel great. It kind of pain got worse throughout the day. And we didn't have anyone to, yeah. to and so we just had to leave. And we were a no-show. And it was disappointing because you, you go out there to compete, you go out there to race, but Things happen. Injuries happen. This is sports. This is life. You, uh, our, our bodies can only do so much, right? That's so, true. So I'm going to ask a question. Yeah. Do you have to have six rowers? Uh, yeah. Well, okay. I did see some a note here that uh, Don Burke crossed the line with five rowers in Harbor Grace, but okay. yeah, that's the rules. You normally have okay. to have six. I don't. I don't know what happened in Harbor well, Grace. If you don't have an <laughs> even number of rowers, the boats all. Yeah. Off. Like how? Yeah. How are you gonna? I was like, would the oar stay? just not put the oar out and you just? Hope? Well, we have seen cases where the oar cracks. So and the oar breaks. Like Bradley Power was talking about that happened uh, to his wife, I believe, and. 
Yeah, she was just carrying the oar, and because no, it was cracked, no, she couldn't she, row. She, she hit him with it, though, because <laughs> he was just doing his Bradley Power stuff. And <laughs> Kidding, we love Bradley Power, of course. <laughs> Brad was here just a little while ago with uh, Donnie Cody, DC, uh, earlier this afternoon doing some commentating. And uh, Bradley's been around the regatta for such a long time. And there's also a picture of Teresa Butler with a cracked off oar. So even oh. in races, uh, the equipment can falter, and then you're rowing with five row oars but hopefully all six of us are still in the boat you know like would it be a weight <laughs> imbalance thing like well, i have so many see, questions see, you've, got, you've got three three oars on one side yeah. and three oars on the other side if you lose one and don't lose one on the other side to offset now you've got more power coming from one side than you do from the other yeah but so it's almost like you start to veer oh. yeah you would absolutely pull to one side but the um toggle or the the coxswain can compensate um, with the tiller, so the steering okay. in the fixie boats is so big. Like on the slide seat boats, the rudder is just about the size of a credit card, a little bigger than a credit card. But on these fixie boats, the rudder is like this big fin that when you pull it right or left, it can really change the course of the boat. Okay. I want to yeah. get a credit card that's like the big thing. <laughs> I want to like walk in and be like, well, how would No you limit. Like, <laughs> My ah, huge please. credit card. And then like, yeah, that's what we would do. All so right. I think we're being delivered some results now. Is that what we got here, Amanda? Official what results. What do you have for us? We have official results. So we had the official results for the long course and read them out. And now we are going to read the official times for the short course. First place in a time of 5.10.99. That's great. a great time. Well, yeah, what? great time on stake four, high flow drawlet, Coxon Robert Roach in the boat, the Miss Tubular. On um, place two was Daw and Burke, time of 5.14.38. They were on stake one, uh, Cox by Denise Carew. Third place, Smith Jockley. Time 5.15.14, great row by those up and coming um, young women cocks by John Barrington. Then we have Gord Delaney's crew, Noonan Piercy, uh, rowing on stake three in the Palmerloo. And then fifth place, the Cal Group at a time of 5.27.97, uh, Coxon, Haley Ivany rowing in the Dictator. The dictator. That's how they say it. <laughs> I know. The well, dictator. I mean, they're aggressive about it. So yeah. high flow, high flow hydraulic pulls out a win with a last minute change. When they're when they know that we're gonna have to make this change, and they're aware of the fact we gotta pull somebody, gotta put somebody in, and um, stroke coach management, Everett Coxon, they all decide together. I guess what they're gonna do, what the strategy is, based on people's strengths and weaknesses. We'll move people around in the boat. Do you have to tell your competition, hey, we're doing this? Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay, so it could be a secret. I guess because we are in Newfoundland and everything is one degree of separation, yes. word probably got out yeah. that Catherine wouldn't be rowing, but, you know, you don't have to. No. You wouldn't announce so that, right? would it No. Make, or would you say it's a throw off the game well, because they don't know how strong your spare actually is? Oh. A lot of very like they go considered. in thinking, okay, they've lost their stroke, they're not as strong, but you throw in a spare like High Flow did, who Lord is Bell, you amazing. <laughs> I'm playing I, to win. I am thinking strategically and she doesn't cox, even row. My future <laughs> rowers need to know what kind of cox person I will be when we're in that boat. She's out for blood, I folks. I am letting you know we are winning this celebrity match. I also like how she has now coined the term cox person. Yeah, I didn't connect. I didn't correct her on it because it's great. It's cox it. swain. It's cox hey. swain. But cox person, that's not, fine too. It's not cox men. Okay. It's cox swain. Cox swain. And there's an S in it. Weird. Okay. Like, See, this is the same yeah. as topsail, topsail situation that I'm still not okay with. <laughs> okay, I'm still struggling. 